In Santa Clara, partly cloudy and cool. Highs just 58 today. Weather brought to you by Robert Half. Nine out of ten hiring managers are having difficulty hiring today. Robert Half is here to help. At Robert Half, we know talent. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Somehow, some way, we'll try to get through this. As the journey ends with a thud, the 49ers lose Super Bowl 58 in overtime to Kansas City. And it may be one of the most excru- excruciating, painful losses in 49ers franchise history. Bay Area sports history. Bay Area sports history. I almost put a poll up last night thinking about what's the biggest losses in Bay Area sports history. Father's Day 2016, 2 Game 6, Giants, Angels. You know, Kirk, um, Gibson. Ter- Kirk Gibson, Tuck Rule, Raiders, Patriots, Brady, which starts off the dynasty. But I don't know what it, where this one stands. But I know last night, folks, as I say good morning to everybody out there getting off their graveyard shift and, and all the overnight dancers and all the teachers, all the students, all the cops, all the young Niner fans, all the people who sat up there at the bars last night, watched the game, everybody at home. I could not watch the game back last night. I cannot do it to myself. It's the first time in a long time I've been able to say that where I shut the laptop down maybe after the first drive and just sat there in darkness in my hotel room, Shasky, in complete darkness, thinking about what could have been. What could have been? But the drought continues. The 49ers haven't won a Super Bowl since the 94 season. And we got to go through this again. Another offseason, another draft, another training camp, another season. And all the stars in line for this team. All the stars in line for this team. But as we said on Friday, premium players have to make gold jacket plays. Well, the Chiefs' premium players made gold jacket plays. The premium players and the premium head coach did not make premium plays and gold jacket plays for the 49ers. And they're going to have to wear this one for a very, very long time. My apologies for being so long-winded, Shasky, but... It's yours, man. It's it's this is gonna be a tough one to get through. It's one of the hardest games to stomach. I'm never gonna get over this one ever. I already know it. To your point about like watching it back, I couldn't even watch it back. It was just it's devastating. Yeah, yeah, special teams mistakes. I mean, you get an extra point blocked. You muff <laughs> another punt. You muff another punt. I mean, you want to talk about PTSD from the punt returns? Yeah. Niner fans have PTSD. Uh, the third down, stopping Mahomes with his legs. You know, let, let's start with Mahomes. We'll, we'll get to the Niners aspect. People keep dice it. Oh, you didn't even play that great. That was a Michael Jordan-like performance. And it was like a C-plus Mahomes performance. His legs on third down, third and one in the fourth quarter, third and one in overtime. His ability to make plays and to extend plays, it's just, he's an all-time legend. And we said it when we were walking out, and somebody turned to us and goes, yeah, he's Michael Jordan. And that makes us... The Utah Jazz. Wow. You know how hard it was to hear that? Yeah. And now I'm thinking to myself, watching this guy get his third Super Bowl, we are the equivalent of the Cincinnati Bengals for his Joe Montana resume. We've lost now, not once, but twice to him. And in this one, he turned it over. He turned it over. He left it on a platter for you to go and seize it. And the inconsistency with play calling, the, to me, the contradictory, I'm aggressive, but then I'm not aggressive. I'm going to give it to McCaffrey, but now he fumbles, and so I'm not going to go to him, and I'm going to go away from him. You don't touch the ball for an entire real-time hour coming out of the second quarter to the third quarter, and then we're going to come out passing when we have no rhythm. Losing Dre Greenlaw the way you did felt very Bowman-like. Losing one of my favorite players, and then 
not capitalizing and not punching the ball into the end zone, settling for field goals, giving that guy the ball again, you knew, you knew in overtime, you better get six because that guy over there is getting six. Three is a minimum for him. Six was what you had to get. And I just... You know, the, the Shanahan stuff, no one is saying run him out of town. He's a great coach. But there is something to these big games. There is something to it. No one's saying we need yeah. to throw him out with the bathwater. Right. But, my God, like the, 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 the allocation of timeouts. I'm looking at the, the end of the second quarter. Mahomes is marching down. There's 109 on the clock. I'm saying to you, call a timeout. They're scoring. Yeah. They're going to score. Well, yeah. You're going to need to score more you points. You need to call this. a timeout before the second down. Before second down, and you didn't do it. And then on third down, with the clock ticking, you called the timeout? It made no sense. I, his clock management toward the end made no sense. And then in his post-game presser, he says, well, when you're facing a Mahomes or a Brady, you got to be aggressive because you well, got to know what well, that guy does. Well, then Shanahan, or to Shanahan, guess what? You, you settled for three. Well, that it is. He, he, he did. In the first half. He did contradict himself because in Super Bowl 54, when. It came down to being aggressive at the end of the first half. He didn't call a timeout, which made me go crazy. Uh, this wasn't as egregious, but at the same time, it's you got to think in real time. The 49ers scored. There was four. It was 4:46 in real time p.m. They didn't touch the ball again until about 5:48 p.m. Which you called and then, immediately. Which I called immediately. I said you got to you got to do something here because you're not going to touch the ball for an hour, an hour in real time. And then when you do touch the ball in the third quarter. This is what flipped the football game. It made it a game. The Niners dominated the first half. Yet, the Chiefs felt very fortunate to be down 10-3. 100%. But I wrote this down, Shasky. First three drives in the third quarter. The 49ers run nine plays. They go three and out, three straight possessions. <laughs> After an interception, you don't score. You set up at Kansas City 44. You get no points out of it. Go figure. But three possessions, nine plays. They ran eight passes. Ran the ball one time. One time. Eight passes, one run on their first nine plays of the second half after not touching the football for an hour in real time. You know how much clock ran off in that third quarter on those three possessions? Three minutes and 16 seconds. So now you put your defense at a disadvantage to where they're getting back on the field. And you know what? Today's not the day to get on Steve Wilkes and his defense. They play well enough to win the football game. They played well enough. You held the Chiefs to 25 points for crying out loud. The D-line showed up for the most part in this football game. Drake Greenlaw lost. Fred Warner was trying to get Oren Burks lined up right. Tig Brown played his ass off. Lenore, Charvarius Ward played well enough to win. This falls on Shanahan and this offense. The receivers not getting separation from the DBs. Where the hell was George Kittle? I just, it's it's a disastrous loss. This is one you just don't get over. You just don't flip the page. Everything we talked about in late July that led up to this point. And you blow it. And you left, the, you, you said in your opening monologue, Shasky, that Mahomes was leaving the game on a silver platter. I felt the complete opposite. I felt the Niners oh. were leaving the game on a silver platter for Mahomes. You were dealing with the devil I, I, over and over and over. You know who's on that sideline? What are you messing around for? You fumble on the first possession. You, you, you get the extra point blocked. Ray Ray McLeod, what are you doing? You got to call poison, poison, poison. Get the hell away from the football. Get away from it. You left the game on the platter for Mahomes. He did it twice in the final sequence. It ended a regular. I don't know why Andy Reid went for the field goal six seconds left, but you you left the game on a platter for number 15, and he took it from you. He ended up taking it from you. But you know what? We're going to all talk about this game. Again, this is two straight Super Bowls the Niners gave away. Two straight Super Bowls they just gave away to Kansas City. I, I just I don't, I don't even, like, if you can't win it this year, when everything lines up for you, you had all the health in the world, and then you're just you're going out in like a body bag. Every every other play, someone's walking off the field. Debo hurt. Kittle comes out of the game in crucial times. Nick Bosa coming out of the game in, in crucial on a crucial drive with two minutes to go. Season on the line, and you're on the sidelines? And then you come out back again on third down? What? I, I, they didn't throw to Ayuk enough. Kittle was non-existent. Juice was more of a factor in the passing game than George Kittle. Wow. You know? And then... 
Look, the reality is the offensive line got suffocated. Chris Jones unblocked on one of the biggest plays of the season. How? How does that happen? How does that happen? Third linebacker? You knew it was going to play a factor. All year I said to you, Dominic Flanagan Fowles yeah. and Oren Burks should not be on the field. I know D. Winters and Jalen Graham are young, but God damn it, get them up to speed. That third linebacker losing Al Shire was going to catch up to them. And when Dre Greenlaw came out, I knew they had a whole hour and they were going to change up their game plan boy, to be able they. to scheme the middle of the field. Oren Burks, when you watch that game back, you will see this guy yes. pre snap scrambling. Gibson missed tackles left and right. Lenore comes out in crucial spots. All that being said, you held him to 19 points, basically, yep. in, in in regulation. And if you would have told me the defense held them to 19 points with short fields, you you muff a punt, you give them the ball right, right there in the 16-yard right. line. Yeah. Like McCaffrey marching on down, you give them the ball right there. Like, I thought this defense played well enough to win. We could pick apart situational third downs. They had a beautiful third and one in, in the end of... Uh, at the end of yep. the overtime there where, where they have Kelsey coming mm -hmm. across the formation, a fourth down play that mm -hmm. was beautiful. That guy didn't even have the greatest game ever, but he's one of the greatest players I've ever seen in my yeah. life. And you know why? Because you can never, ever count him out. Nope. And when there's pressure right in his face, he gives magic every so, single time. The guy's he a wizard. He does. So Dre Greenlaw goes out. Kelsey's going crazy in the first half. He had one catch for one yard. Well, he got going in the second half. He ended up with nine catches and 93 yards. Who's the first team all-pro tight end? George Kittle. Two catches, four yards. Debo Samuel, 11 targets. 11 targets. Three catches, 33 yards. Their cornerbacks? Locked up the Niners. That was one position. of the best cornerback performances I've seen they, in person and since maybe the Legion of Boom. Well, they, they locked the Niners up. Debo Samuel again, 11 targets, three catches, 33 yards. IU, three catches, 49 yards. Kittle, two catches, four yards. Those three guys, and I believe they should have force fed IU because should have flipped it. 11 targets for IU, six targets for Debo because he was getting no separation from any of those DBs. Eight catches, 84 yards from Kittle, Debo, and IU. That just can't happen in a big game. You know, Can't happen. B, I'm, I'm going to keep going back to it like, you know, Shanahan tells us all year, I, I, I trust my quarterback, I trust my quarterback, I trust my quarterback. And then there are situations that happen in the game where you're saying to me at the podium post game, you're facing one of the all-time greats. It, Brady and Mahomes, you just have to treat them different. And you say you have faith in your quarterback. And multiple times you had opportunities to either stop the clock, to get the ball back, to be aggressive, because you tell me you trust them, or to go for the gusto. You cannot sit here with a straight face, Shanahan, and think three points in overtime was going to get it done. No one on the planet who supports the Niners thought giving the ball to Mahomes yeah. with just a field goal yep. was sufficient. Yep. No, and I'm they, not even saying, B, I'm not even saying they should have gone for it in fourth and five or whatever it was. Fourth or four. It was a long five. It, it was closer to yep. five. Like yep. to me, it was closer. Close. And I get it. It's a tough spot. You had ran out of gas. It just felt like they got into the red zone and everything got. Suspect. Well, guys miss blocks on the third and four. When you throw an incomplete pass to Jawan Ju Jennings, and by the way, IU could beat his man, and we watched him. It, he ran right Wide in front open. of us. Wide open back in the end zone and on the drag route. And, was just, and, and Chris how? Jones is a Hall of Famer who makes gold jacket plays, and, he's, and he comes through unblocked, and he disrupts the play. He makes plays when you need him to make plays. Yeah, and, and contrast that to Nick Bosa, fourth and one, Kansas City in overtime. They baited Nick Bosa. Uh -huh. They knew he was crashing down yep. on the line of scrimmage. Yep. He lost containment. Mahomes, easy pickup for first down. His legs. They go on to win the football game. But how you know about, what? How about man go ahead. Kelsey? Season on the line. And what are you and I saying? Who's got Kelsey? Who's got Kelsey? I'm watching well, Gibson and Oren Burks. They're like pointing at each well, other. Well, it was all day. Wide the open half. over the middle. And Wide then they open. do the crosser. I'm like, guys, if you're going to go down, go down, double teaming Kelsey and beg, beg someone else. Beg Val Valdez Scantling to beat you. Beg McCole Hardeman to beat you. I, I well, you know, when I think about this game, when I think about this game, the third quarter, yeah, the third quarter, no doubt, flipped everything no because doubt. Mahomes comes out and a defense again. They get a stop. You get an interception. You get an interception. The young Tick man Brown, Jair Brown, who saved the game in regulation with Absolutely. a great tackle on Kelsey, Absolutely. got himself hurt. You get the interception. You set up at the Kansas City forty-four yard line, and you come out and shotgun. You come out and shotgun, and you throw the ball. Next play, false start. 
Aaron Banks. So now you're facing a second and 15 at the Kansas City 49-yard line. You throw the ball again in completion. And then Purdy scrambles for four yards. You get nothing out of it. You don't even get a field goal. Not even a field goal. Next thing you know, you force Kansas City to another three and out. You set up your own 36. That's good field position. First down, Juwan Jennings minus eight yards. Minus eight yards. First down passing was just not there. And I get you want to loosen up the defense with the run because Kansas City was stacking the box. But you got to get creative and you got to do something. It, it just eight passes in the first okay. nine plays of the third quarter and you allow Kansas City to stick in. Things are getting light. By the way, on the punt, Townsend, the 49ers got away with the running into the kicker on that play. They didn't call it. When but I- they Ray Ray, he fumbles with the ball. And next thing you know, Kansas City has a lead in a game they had no business leading because in the first half you completely dominated you completely dominated it they had nine in the box and they were daring you to beat them on the outside and the Niners couldn't do it no nope. the Niners could not stretch the field and beat them over the top whether it be the wide receivers the you know, offensive line holding up I thought Purdy wow made some plays here and there and I also thought he missed a couple of plays a couple of big plays you know like I don't think he was the reason they lost this game nah, he wasn't. but he didn't do enough to snag it. And I think well, in these games against all-time greats, you got to do enough to snag it. And I think it's a combination of things. Here's the other thing I don't want to hear. You went away from the best player on the team at CMC. Christian McCaffrey. I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He had eight touches in overtime. He had 30 touches overall. So you're telling me, in regulation, 22 touches yeah. for the greatest 49er running back season we've ever seen is sufficient to win against Kansas City and Andy Reid? So the one thing I don't want to hear from people is, well, he got the ball 30 times. Yeah, because eight of them were in overtime. <laughs> the game went to overtime. <laughs> exactly. If you would have lost that game exactly. in regulation, which you almost did, because yeah. it, was, it was you know six seconds to go. Andy I Reid, one more Andy Reid should have taken one more shot. Should have taken one this, more shot. This loss will never sit well with me. No, it won't. Ever. Super Bowl Miami. It's the most I devastating mean, loss I can I mean, remember. but then again, it reared its ugly head. The, Shanahan sits here on the podium after the game saying, well, you know, you're going to get Brady. You're going to get small holes. you got to be aggressive. Well, you didn't do that in Super Bowl 54 at the end of the first half. And I'm still haunted by that. I'm still haunted by that. It's just an absolute and you know sickening. What? Sickening loss, Shasky. I, I just you know, you know why this feels like Seattle. You know why? why? You why? Because you lost the heart and soul, and he probably Drake not going to be back for a year. Drake and not Greenlaw. only that, you start to think like, is the poor guy's football career now on the downturn? I mean, I, I don't want to. You just you, you did to tear your Achilles the yep. way he did. Yeah, you lost the heart and soul on both sides at one point because you lost Debo for long stretches of this game. Hey, he three. was on the sidelines. George Kittle's on the sideline on the big ho- on the play before the Chris Jones second and twelve. Yeah. You get called for a holding. Willis, who doesn't play all season, the rookie out of Oklahoma gets called for a hold because Kittle's on the sideline with the shoulder injury. Did he all of a sudden comes back on the field? And I'm thinking to myself, these guys are dropping like flies. What the heck is going on out here? Two minutes to go. At the beginning of the drive, and I turned to you and I go, why is Bosa on the sideline? Oh, I, I said thought, that too. I, was, I thought Bosa played really well in this game at times. But I'm like, guys, you get conditioned all year to stop this guy right now. Too many times our premium guys are on the sidelines. Yep, way too much. I, it's just Well, their premium players made plays, ours didn't. Straight up. 888-957-9570. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch brought to you by... First NorCal Credit Union, shout out to the Comcast Business Text Line. We see over a 1,000 people on YouTube right now. I'm it's hurt. not even 6.30 yet, so shout out. It should be a big day on YouTube. Big shout out to Pete's Coffee for getting us to the Super Bowl. We love you. Uh, we got our Pete's Coffee going on right now. Uh, we love hey, you guys so much. You What's see his up? report, ESPN. Yep. Multiple 49ers didn't even know the own. Yeah, the own, well, own, you own know what? Well, I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to hear about it. What difference does it make? What difference does it make at this point? I don't want to hear about, I didn't even know the overtime rules. But you know what? Score six, all right? So go score six. Not button up. False starts. Holdings. Pre-snap penalties. Just not button up yesterday. Not good enough to win a Super Bowl against Mahomes. Block PAT. Fumble putt. Just not taking advantage of turnovers. Not taking advantage what? of great field position. Just unbelievable. We're going to talk all of, we're going to be talking about this for a long, long time, folks. A long, long time. We got a break right. here, Shasky. Say that sorry. thought. Uh, your phone calls, 888-957-9570. Line them up. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to you, United Empire. I feel for you. I truly feel for you. 
That's what's coming up on the game. Brought to you by Fremont Bake. Full service baking. No compromises. With heating bills as high as they are, proper weatherproofing is essential.
Shows here at 957 the game. Go to breaky slash 957 888 957 9570. You know what, Shaska? Let's get Film on Mike on here. I need to hear from Film on Mike. Uh, I believe he's on hold right now. Film on Mike, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. Hey man. That's that that's a cold one right there, buddy. That's a cold loss. Um I I'm shocked. I'm uh, stunned, disappointed. I don't want to hear from any, you know, any other fan base giving us kudos. Yeah, I don't know if y'all see Marshawn Lynch, but Marshawn Lynch was doing something that was, was totally out of pocket. Uh, damn near more if you want to sock Marshawn Lynch if I ever what, seen what him. What did he do? What Marshawn Lynch did? I didn't see him. Mar- he, yeah, he, Mar- he, he was on Little Blood. He was on Little Blood TV, and he was going around saying, "Are you a Niner fan?" And he was just basically saying, "F you," and going around, and it was it was just it, it, it's just so out of pocket and uncalled for. But the thing that hurts is that I know these players are great, and it's like it, it just hurts because they're not bad players; they're great players, and for them not to to, to accomplish what I felt would have been very unifying for the city in which we, we need and the whole Bay Area. The Bay would have exploded. My last point is this. For the life of me, I do, I do not know why um, the flat in between the 7 and 10-yard line, the whole for two, three years, has hindered and haunted us. Why are you trying to flip the player? Let Warner take whoever come inside. Let whoever's on the outside keep that player on. Like, like, why are we like that play has haunt? I'm serious. That play to the flat on the goal line is always open. Why? Yeah. Like it, 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 it kills me. And. I love ninety five seven a game. I swear to God, I do. But I, I might have to take like a four five month break, man, because this is this yeah. is just. I don't know how y'all gonna do it. This well, is I gonna got, haunt I got the Warriors, us. Man. I, I, I'm fine. I don't mean hey. to say that, but no, hopefully the Warriors can carry me through. I'm gonna need the distraction film all. No, we're gonna break down my my three city baseball teams. That's yeah. what we're gonna do. We're going to go straight. We're going to bypass the Giants and go straight to Pony and Mustang Baseball oh at SFYBL. Filmo Mike, you in? He called. You know. Filmo Mike is depressed, Shaz. He's 30, disheveled. It's been 30 minutes, and we and we haven't addressed it. And I'm going to get right on it. Like, Brock Purdy was not the main reason why they lost this game. But if you want to win a Super Bowl against that guy, you can't go five wide and empty set over and over and over and over again and not make a team punished. You got, you got to punish them for that. And I want to look at where the throws were on this. He had a couple of nice intermediate throws, but in terms of stretching the field beyond the numbers or throwing it over the top, yeah. hitting a seam route, there really wasn't much. 
There, there just wasn't. Now, I think you credit the defensive line for the ferociousness with which they got after Purdy. They blitzed. I, at one point, Next Gen Stats put yeah. it up on the on the board. It was 55% blitz right. rate. I saw By, I saw after the game. Well, I was well, watching Sports Center a little bit. They said 44% okay. uh, pressure rate okay, in that second rate. half. All right. The pressure got ratcheted up in the second no half. And and But that's where, like, the greats, Mahomes was pressured a lot. Right. I thought I saw Bosa chasing him a lot. Randy Gregory, Chase, Chase Young. Chase Young had a game. He had a game. I, I can't be mad at Chase Young. But, like, Mahomes, the longer the play goes, the more you just, oh, my God, he's going to do something incredible, whether with his legs or with his arm and throwing it. And it just felt like we needed a couple of plays outside of structure. You know? And and they just they, they couldn't deliver. No, that's not all on Brock. Right. But you could see some of the limitations. I thought he played good, but they needed a great game from the quarterback. You have got to take it you from his bloody hands. You know what, though? The lack of separation from Debo. I, you, I can't argue. And you still... For this day, Juwan Jennings had a hell of a game. He, he made one game. Super Bowl MVP. I'm not mad at Juwan Jennings. I thought he set the game. tone with his run blocking. Juwan Jennings played his ass off. Through for I, got, I have no problem with Juwan Jennings. But something that's been missing in this offense, another thing. Not only they finally got the running back and the pass catching running back, but a threat to take the top off the defense. Just a threat to get down. This is where you draft Danny Gray. To be a threat to take the top off the defense. And you don't have that threat. To at least... Kansas City was sitting 12 yards off the line of scrimmage. Their safeties didn't play deep at all. They knew everything was going to be in the middle of the field. And again, this timing offense gets timed out at times by great defenses. That is a problem. But I'm thinking about this, Shaskin. We're going to get to the lines. Anthony and Fresno's next. Hang on tight. But not winning that Super Bowl in Miami. The pressure of not only getting back to the Super Bowl, of but winning it. I watched this in real time with Jim Kelly and the Buffalo Bills. Each Super Bowl they advanced to, the pressure and pressure and pressure mounted for them. Mounted. You know, you think about all the teams that have come up short. Pete Manning in early part of his career, not winning early. The pressure and pressure mounted and mounted and mounted. I always think back to, what if Brady didn't win that first one? What would it look like? Well, Mahomes winning that first one. They came back and won it, and now look at them. Three and five years, right? But if they don't win that, they'd lose the next year to Tampa Bay. Who knows how it plays out, but... All of a sudden, the pressure mounts for them, and Shanahan feels a lot looser. The Niners in that second half, you could feel it from the bleachers. You could feel the pressure mounting, saying, we don't want to lose this, but how do we win it? How do we just take this game? I'm glad you bring that up. You're not winning that game against that guy and that coach and that team without scoring touchdowns. Yeah, you got to score. You gave him the ball back with 153. You were lucky to escape and get to yeah, overtime. no doubt. Then you score another three. That's two times you settle for field goals, okay? You held them under 20. You should win that game. The offense has to carry them. Yep. You're loaded yep. on offense. And I get your point on separation from wide receivers, but but B, like, you got Brandon Ayuk. He was right. the second most efficient wide receiver in the game. You got Debo Samuel. Debo, Ayuk, and Kittle came up short. Eight catches, 84 yards between the three of them. Now, you can blame play calling. I say guys got to also make plays. Yeah. And then I look at CMC and I say to myself, 22 touches in regulation, it's, it's not, not enough. enough. Not enough He's at all. He's the best player on the team. So he had six carries in overtime. That means he had 16 carries in regulation. That's not enough. Which is not enough. Not enough. Let's go to Anthony and Fresno. Anthony and Fresno, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. How's it going, man? Hey, I think Shasky hit the thing right on the nail right now. McCaffrey only getting the ball with 16 times in regulation is yeah. is criminal. But I just want to sum it up real fast, guys. Kyle Shanahan has been the common denominator in the blown Atlanta Super Bowl, which, yeah, the defense gave up a lot of points in that game, but at the end of the day, he's third and eight at 50 yard line with a 28 point, uh, a 23, um, a 25 point lead, and he calls a rollout with Matt Ryan. Just criminal. Then we go to the 2019 Super Bowl, fourth quarter, stops running the ball with Debo when they couldn't stop that, that outside zone run that was destroying the Chiefs. 20, uh, the, the 21 NFC Championship game, he goes away from running the ball in the fourth quarter once again. And today, how do you not run the ball in those three possessions at least one yeah. time or throw a screen out of halftime? You pick, you Entity. pick, him, you pick, Entity. yeah, eight yeah. passes, yeah. one run. He's the eight offensive. passes, one run that ran off three minutes and 60 seconds left off the clock with the offensive player. Of the how, year. how do you, how, how is that not criminal? But no. everyone will sit here and not hold him accountable. Oh, no, and it's ridiculous. And it's ridiculous because he has been the common denominator in all of this. 
everyone will say that Brock Purdy just doesn't have it to make these big plays or there is no separation. But Kyle, can you can't call one screen. You can't call one jet, jet sweep. They're all fronting the line of scrimmage. You can't, you can't throw a, a play, at least a play action. If you're going to throw the ball right there in those three possessions coming out of half, uh, halftime, not one play action, it's all dropbacks with an offensive line where your right side has just right. been getting destroyed with McKivitz. I mean, that loss yesterday was, I mean, that, that win for the Niners was gift wrapped if Gif. Kyle just doesn't overthink it. And he yeah, overthought it. It's all right, again. Anthony. Well, it's all right. Thanks for the call. We got a break in a second here, Shasky. Got a break. I, I just, I can't believe. The game plan sometimes with Kyle Shanahan, he overthinks himself. He went for it on fourth and three, down three, and we were like losing our minds. He got it, barely got it to Kittle. Uh, but it, there's a lot to Wait, digest. Kittle here. was the, on this team yeah. yesterday. Wait, the, what? the difference between elite and good was on display yesterday at the quarterback position. There's no doubt about it. And you know what I thought about last night in darkness? I sat there in my bed in a hotel room. For about 30 minutes of complete darkness. Not even just my head's behind my head thinking they scouted Mahomes and now he's going to torture us for the next decade. You could have had the guy. You could have had the guy. You could have. This is why the trickle down effect from your first draft is still looming large for this football team back in 2017, whether you like it or not. You have to take a quarterback to build your franchise. It's what every organization does. That's the way the NFL, the most important position in sports, is the quarterback position. And when you take Solomon Thomas, you're still paying for that. In many may, in many ways, and I'm not, Solly's a good guy, but you're still paying for that What's blunder. You're still paying for that bad pick. You could have had Mahomes. You could have had him. I, I know you want to get into the coach. I want to get into the premium players. Oh, after premium this. players not playing like gold jacket players? And, uh, yeah. Not making each, gold jacket each plays? one of these guys left something on the table. And they may have cost themselves a bid to the Hall of Fame. It's a Warriors game day brought to you by Xfinity. Hey, the Warriors have won 6-7. They won 6-7. We know they win championships. They know how to close. The Xfinity 10G Network made for streaming live sports. What's coming up is your phone calls, man. It's going to be all about you today. 888-957-9570. Can't wait to hear from people back in San Francisco. How sick are you about this one? Oh, I can't imagine the feeling. I can't imagine. We're sick. We're live in Las Vegas here. That's what's coming up. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. Hey, it's Willard and Dibs for Safeway. And Safeway is the perfect one-stop shop for all the Valentine's Day needs. Dibs, big Valentine's Day guy. I'm a huge guy for that. Yeah, yeah is that coming up? <laughs> it's right around the corner. Roses, a dozen beautiful stems for $24.99. 12 stem roses in an arrangement for $59.99. And the roses last a long time. New York steak, just $5.97 per pound. Digital deal, plus two lobster tails for $10. If it's roses or steak, you're in. Maybe it's chocolate. We have chocolate dipped strawberries. Yeah. They're delicious.
plays. All for good yardage. Take it back to him again. Ball is on the ground. The ball is out. Karloftis is there for Kansas City. The first signal is a chief recovery. What I can't live with is when I do stuff that I didn't plan on doing or that I didn't do and second-guess myself. And um, I'm proud of what we did today as a coaching staff and as players in terms of we worked and we did everything that we planned on doing. We just didn't get it done. And any play that didn't work out, yeah, you always look at that stuff. But that's, that's how every game is, and that's what we work at. That's Kyle Shanahan, head coach of the 49ers after they lose Super Bowl 58-25-22. to You heard the first sound bite there. First drive of the game, Niners going right down the field. Beautiful drive. Beautiful. Uh, converted a key third down. And then, of course, McCaffrey fumbles, our money man, the offensive player of the year. You just hate to see it. He had fumbled twice all season long. And you hate to see that happen to him in the biggest game of his life. And self-inflicted wounds, man. This was not just on Shanahan, folks. If you want to blame Shedahead, blame Shedahead, but I'm not. It's on this entire offense. This entire offense had averaged 29 points a game this season. Holding calls, false starts, blown timeouts, bat route running. I mean, that's that's on this entire football team. It's not just on one person. It can't be. It's a 50, but but I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, Steve Wilkes, Deserves his flowers along that defensive front, that yeah, front seven. I, For the I, most part, they played their ass off, Shasky. Let's start at the top. If you were to just name the best players on the team, Christian McCaffrey. Yep. Had a fumble. By right? the way, I, everybody on YouTube, our internet is a little jakey up in here right now, so uh, you can't see us on YouTube. Uh, take the call out of the studio, Lutman. Take the call out of the studio. We don't need the distractions right now. Our Zoom is down right now, but we can see all here is hopefully on YouTube and Twitch. Yeah. So bear with us here. Bear with us here as we try to get some internet. Our internet is completely out right now, completely out. So we'll try to do that. Go ahead, Shaq. So let's start at the top. Like Christian McCaffrey, best player on the team, by my 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 estimation. He had a huge fumble. You just can't do that in a game like this. And he was great. He was great. He, he fought his ass off. Second drive of the game, okay, after you get a three and out, all right, on Mahomes. False start 71. Then a hold on 71. Yep. It just derailed the entire drive. Yep. All after, right? after a great improv play by Brock Purdy, yes. throwing across the field yes. to a wide open George Kittle, yes. that was an it play. That's what I do. Okay, Purdy, the moment's not too big for him. I never felt like the moment was too big for Purdy yesterday. That's the one thing about the second year no, quarterback. No, he was good. I thought he, I thought he held up well great. with his poise. Not great. Like, like there's not a great. distinction. And, and, like, no one is saying he lost the game. But to win a Super Bowl... He had been excellent all year. He was great all year. But the reality is in the playoff games, he was just good. Yep. And, and, like, that's the difference. And I'm not trying to rip the guy. He's in his second year. But part of what we're talking about when we talk about franchise quarterbacks, when you want to win a Super Bowl, you have to be yep. great. I, I'm glad you brought that up because he was good. But after like, next season, he's going to be eligible for a contract, something to bookmark. Next year is a monster year for Brock Purdy. If he wants to get paid by Kyle Shanahan and his 49ers regime. I, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, it's a huge year. Now, it is what it is. Now, Debo's game was just weird. It was weird. There were some odd plays where he looked like he was out of sync. Uh, there was a bunch of sweeps and fake jets and stuff. Nothing was working. Nothing. He had a, a, an opportunity to high point a ball in the first half in the end zone. And I thought there was excellent coverage. And they were all over him. Uh, Purdy missed him on a touchdown pass. Then they got a right. touchdown later to Jennings. But Debo wasn't great. He was in and out of the lineup the whole game. Hurt. Hurt his hamstring. He didn't look 100%. But, like, Debo wasn't great. Ayuk? No, I thought Ayuk played a good game. But he didn't get the ball enough. Well, he's the number one wide receiver. He needs more targets. Debo Samuel being able to get 11 targets and Ayuk just getting six. You have to force feed Ayuk. Sometimes you just got to get greedy and say, you know what? Remember Mike Tice with the Vikings? He had the Randy ratio. Yes. Every four plays, he goes, I got to figure out a way to try to get Randy Boss to football, or at least a tip to. With Ayuk, it's almost like, you know what? Every six plays, let me just feed him. Yeah, I know. Let's let's see where but, he's at. But, but like, then you go to Kittle. Did Kittle play in this game? No. Is he just a glorified offensive lineman? And, like, I look at it, it's cute and it's great for everybody online to talk about all these great run plays that Kittle has. And, look, there's a lot of value to a team. I pay you $20 million a year to be one of the premier pass catchers. You're another wide receiver, okay? And I watched a guy 
who is one of the greatest players in his position. And they, look, there's just a, we were talking about good to great. We yeah. talk about that with the quarterback. Yeah. Kelsey is one of the all time greats. Yep. And when the game was on the line over and over and over again, either he was the mismatch that they attacked or he created space so that others could get open. And I didn't see our good no. tight end, who at times plays great, get that same attention. I can't wait to talk to Baldy tomorrow about this and what happened to George Kittle. But I know Travis Kelsey over the last two games against Baltimore and against the Niners. Travis Kelsey had 21 targets. He had 20 catches. 20 catches on 21 targets uh, for nearly 200 yards. And yesterday, again, he had one catch for one yard in the first half. Well, he exploded in the second half for eight catches and 92 yards, and he was the difference maker. What a big-time tight end. This segment, by the yeah. way, Shasky, is sponsored by Go to State Lumber, serving the Bay Area for three generations. When you succeed, we succeed. Visit GoToStateLumber.com. We'll get to the calls in just a second here. I'm going to get to Bay Rob next, but I, I just— And that's just offense. That's just all—I mean, offensively. I mean, listen, Chase Young showed up. I thought K-Law had some moments. Hargrave had some moments, but you know what? Their premium players played like they were going to get a gold jacket. Like, our premium players play like they're going to come sh- come up just short of the Hall of Fame one day. Seriously, but those are like, legacy games. I, I don't know how you view this, but like I understand second half, you, they were gassed. Hargrave, Armstead, Chase, Bosa, Randy Gregory, Gregory yep. were exhausted. And this is where complimentary football matters. Now, now look, in my mind, you're getting paid $125 million guaranteed, Bosa. I'm sorry. Conditioning should never be an issue. No. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, I know, no. no. That understanding that, Joe Shasky never played a snap of football right. in the bigs. He don't know nothing about what it means to be Bosa. But do you think Max Crosby? Well, do you think I was just Reggie say, White? Do you think Aaron yeah. Donald? Do you think Lawrence Taylor is going to get off that field well, with the game on the line in the fourth quarter with Patrick Mahomes on the other side? No. Well, you know what's funny about that? We're in Max Crosby Stadium. That's Legion Stadium. And, it brought me back to when Dick Vermeil looked at Andre Carter, Rams Titans Super Bowl. Andre Carter's off the field in the final sequence. And Dick Vermeil saying, "What the hell are you doing off the field? It's the Super Bowl. You need to play off. You need, it's the Super Bowl." He was so disappointed. You may never get this chance again. Dan Kimball's just talk about that two years ago. These chances don't come around very often. They just don't. I the final two possessions of the game. Not the overtime. Yeah, overtime a couple of times, but regulation. Why are you off the field? I, I, Final drive of the game, you're off the field. Off the field. I, I, I don't it's get it. It's inexcusable. And it then is inexcusable. Everyone, wants, everybody wants to tell me, well, you know, he could sit out in, in training camp, and you know, I'm not worried about his conditioning. You know where I'm no. worried about his conditioning? The final quarter of the Super Bowl with the well, greatest quarterback we've ever seen on the other sideline. No That's excuse. why I'm paying you 125 million. But that has nothing to do with holding on to training camp. There's everything no, to but do I'm with. Saying, like, but, but, yeah, no, I hear you. Well, but you know what? Well, he should have been conditioned. His mama, he told us he was conditioned already. So I'm taking you at your word. Bay Rob. And, which, but let's it, get to Bay Rob. It nullifies what I thought was a great performance from Bosa. Bay Rob, what's happening? You're on a roast. Hey, butcher boy, uh, Bonte, good morning, first of all. Very disappointed. Hey, bro, I kid you not. It feels like I was drowning in 2019, bro. I was living that nightmare again. Ample opportunities for us to take advantage, the offense to take advantage of what the defense have done, and we didn't do it. We Just like you said, Butcher Boy and Bonte, dancing with the devil, bro. Dancing with the devil, and I knew he was going to come back and get him. And I blame this on Shanahan and the offense. They didn't yep. show up for the defense, bro. I blame yep. this on them. And another thing I would like to say is he did not set Brock Purdy up to be successful. You notice in the fourth quarter when we was rushing Mahomes, Mahomes always had a running back somewhere around to drop that yep. ball off to in case we came in here too fast. He had an outlet. On that 34, when we was going down for that winning drive in the fourth quarter with two minutes left at 34, bro, one first down, and we basically down there got that Super Bowl, bro. Yep. You knew yep. Mac, you knew Spagnolia was coming with the heat, bro. You mm-hmm. should have had an outlet for Purdy, and he did not yep. have it, bro. Typical Shanahan, just like you said, overthinking it, bro, the great pumpkin, bro. He blew up right in front of our face. At the time, we needed him, bro. I'm, I'm very 
disappointed, bro. It, it, we don't know how hard it's going to take. It, what I've been crying about for the long, longest, Butcher Boy, us having a wide receiver to blow the top off. Bro. I just said Ain't that. Ain't nobody Bay scared Rob. of us. Bay Rob. Bay Rob, I just I just mentioned that last segment. Well, that's it. You watched I just the whole mentioned, first half. I mentioned that last segment. What did you say to me the whole the, game? What? Full first half. What did I say? Look at how boxed in. Oh, yeah. Game. Yeah, the safeties were playing 10 yards off the off the line of scrimmage. They were not threatened. They played Brock Purdy as if his name was Jimmy Garoppolo. And I'm not calling Brock Purdy Jimmy no, Garoppolo. Better. But Spags in that yes. defense did not respect the downfield throwing ability of the 49ers. They don't respect their vertical passing game. And for the life of me. Hey, this has been going on for since Jim Harbaugh. Can I get a deep threat? Quiet as it's kept. Ted Ginn Jr. and dare I say Kyle Williams was the last time I felt like, boy, we got some damn good slot receivers. Special teams. Like, well, Kyle Williams on offense made plays deep down the field. I know you're right. But, you're but, right. So, so, like, deep down the field, take the top off the defense, loosen them up. Here's the other thing. We're going to look, look back at this because I'm with Bay Rob. I'm looking at the offense at Shanahan. This was the year the offense had to pick up the defense. I, I agree. And the defense has been carrying this organization for so many years. Well, the defense showed, they showed up yesterday and they showed out. I am so damn proud of that defense. I'm so damn proud of Steve Wilkes and that defense. But I look at this offense, 3 12 on third down, money down. How many times did we see just three man routes on third three down? 3 12, is that what they were? 3 and 12 on third down, Chasky, money down, the most important down in all of football. And they were that's, behind schedule. That's the quarter. Patrick Mahomes, um, Kansas City, they ended up 9-19. and 19 At the start, off horrendously on third down. Nine, I'm looking at it right here. Like, you get an interception. Mahomes gave you an interception, Bonte. What'd you say on that throw? Where is he throwing the ball? He, he was rattled. Where, Mahomes was rattled at that point. It's a one-hour pause between balls. Right. Between the Niners having the ball yep. in the second quarter right. <laughs> and in the third quarter. And then it's a purdy throwaway. Yep. A Banks Full start. Snap, full start. Full start. A Debo crosser with meh accuracy, a Purdy scramble, and a punt. Okay, great punt okay, coverage. Guess where they set the guess where their first out was though, Ashaski? The Kansas City Chiefs 44 yard line. If you get eight uh, yards, I, Jake Moody was on it, point yesterday. Okay. Jake Moody was on point. Well, until the extra kick. Well, you know, he got that block, but he bounced back <laughs> and made another one. So then then you get another huge stop on Mahomes to start the third quarter. Uh that's two in a row they get stops. And then it's a purdy scramble, and he spins, and you have an eight-yard loss to Jawan Jennings. Oh, it was awful. Awful. You so now play behind second and 18, you're, you're guaranteed for a third and long. Yep. Then the third possession, okay? We get to the third possession after they kick a 57-yard field goal. A CMC run for no game. The first CMC touch of the second half. Goes nowhere because it was such an obvious play call that <laughs> Kansas City had 11 guys in the box. Felt like they were playing five yards off the line of scrimmage on that play because Kyle Shanahan was... The most predictable ask run up Madden the gut. Dive. <laughs> it was an ask Madden square oh button gosh. dive. Then a purdy collapsed pocket, incomplete to Ayuk, and then a, a, just a no throw to Debo McDuffie all over it, and then you punt again. And to me, that was the game. That was, that that was when the moment of flip. Series sequence that was, yep. where you had opportunity. You had two stops yep. and a field goal. That was the point in the game where you didn't move the ball. Yep. You didn't get any yardage. Yep. You didn't burn any clock. Yep. You had no rhythm. CMC touched it one time on a predictable play. And I want to throw this notebook against the wall. Well, you know what's funny about that third quarter sequence is that they ran off three minutes in 13, 16 seconds. So your defense is on the field the entire third quarter. It, it, the entire third quarter, it's the defense is on the field, just, hanging off for dear life. And then you give them a short field because Ray Ray McLeod, and you saw it coming all year long. All year long, I was like, one day he's going to fumble. You just know it's coming. And it happened in the freaking Super Bowl. In the Super Bowl. And you gave Mahomes a short field. Boom, first play, 16 yards down the seam. Now you got a whole new ball game. And now you're like, boy, we're in a game now with Mahomes. Again, you're dancing with the devil all game long. And the devil got you. The devil you got gave you in him the ball City twice with a chance to win the game. <laughs> you gave him, and you were lucky to go to overtime. Like, was just come on, yeah, man. Niner right. fans, be realistic. Here's the other thing, and, I, and you're going to call me crazy, Bonte. This goes against all football coaches' principles. I am so scorned from punt returns ever since the Kyle Williams play. I've said it, and I'm going to keep saying it. Why do we even put a guy back there? <laughs> Why do you even put anyone back there? No, I'm dead serious. Just take uh -huh. the ball back. Wherever you get it, just get it back and just let it land. If it lands at the one, so yep. be it. 
I knew the second that happened, I go, this game, we're not going to win this game. You cannot have an extra kick, extra point blocked no. and a Whoa. punt muff. How funny. And a punt muff and expect to beat that. How group. funny real was quick, it? Uh, real quick, guys, not to cut you off, Bonte Jaski. Uh, Spadoni here, by the way, in uh, San Francisco. Thanks, um, Ray Ray McLeod actually did not muff that ball. It was hit it off. Was of, the, it was off a Durrell. foot of Darrell Luter. Yeah, Jr. I know. Okay, just so I just was yelling, kill, kill, kill. He was yeah. ready to kill, 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 and but just come up and fair catch it. Was that a, that wasn't off of Ray Ray at all? No, no hit, hit off the, the foot. And Ray Ray actually tried to save the play. Oh, he, he tried to actually, save yeah. the ball. The gotcha, 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 gotcha. Wow, I, I totally bought. That's still a disaster. They didn't but show us a replay. You know what? No, yeah, they didn't, they didn't show me. I saw Ray Ray, and I just assumed that it was Ray Ray the whole time. Again, I have not watched a game back. And I'm probably not going to watch but this Bonte, game back for a very long time. But that's that's another example. Darrell Luter, who's been on IR right. all year, he's playing in the Super Bowl as a gunner. Like, I, get away from the ball! Somebody's going to be yelling, "Poison! Poison! Poison! Get away! Poison!" Anyway, you're listening to 9570 Game KGMZ KGMZ FM and she was San Francisco. Shout out to YouTube, Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Let's get back out to the lives. RJ and Fairfield, man, what's up, RJ? Good morning. One word, guys. I'm just, uh, I'm numb. I'm numb. I'm, I'm, I'm just mad, man. Um, everything we worked during the playoffs, you know, the win over Green Bay, the win over the Lions, all those magical drives mean nothing now because we didn't get that chip. Yep. And um, I, I'm just, I'm just mad because Kyle Shanahan, man, once again, just he's not a situationally, he's not a good head coach. He's more, he got out coached by our defensive coordinator. How many that, that fourth uh, in the fourth quarter we had the opportunity to milk the clock and 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 we couldn't convert that third down yep. and he settled for a field goal. Last thing you want to do is give Mahomes the ball and I, I mean great we went into overtime but come on guys like that if, if there was a play to be made we needed a touchdown or milk that clock and then kick the field goal to win the game. Um, <clears throat> man, I'm hurting guys and and uh, it's not looking good. Look, you no, want to be an all time great. If you want to be an all time great. The two final possessions, you have you have to know that you have to get a touchdown. Well, one of the two has to be a touchdown. Shasky, you get the ball right. It's it's sixteen sixteen. You had it. Look, that goal line stand. We're not going to be. RJ's right. RJ's right in this sense. All the great memories, <laughs> all the great individual statistics, all the in, individual awards. Nobody's going to give a damn about that. I certainly won't give a damn about that next year. You will not hear me go into the next season. Oh, man, well, we got the offensive player of the year. We got this. I, I don't care about all pros anymore. I don't care. I don't care. I don't. Because when you have a goal line stand like that with five minutes to change left and you get the ball back, five minutes, 46 seconds left, and you milk it, RJ's right, third and five, two minutes left. You have the two-minute warning. So you have basically three to four minutes to diagram a play for one of your premium players. The pass with the Jawad Jennings. It's no disrespect to Juwan Jennings because he had a great game. But that play on third and five, McCaffrey, Ayuk, Kittle, some sort of pass to one of those three has to be done. I have to give it to my premium players. A diagram of play for money time. Like, Jennings did a great job on fourth and three. Fourth and three to Kittle. Yes. They get the first down. When I was like, what, he's going for it? Great. He went Dan Campbell on us, and he converted. But on third and five, after having a two-minute warning and all that time to draw up a play, you drew one up to Jawan Jennings when you could have iced the game there and not give the ball back to Mahomes. Where's Ayuk? Where's Kittle? Where's the creativity? Where's the offensive genius in Kyle Shanahan? Situational football was atrocious yesterday for the 49ers. Well, the other part is that Debo was on the sidelines for a lot of those. those, those Hamstring. Yeah, yeah. He's on the sideline on that play. Uh, it's just... <laughs> He was on the sideline for that play. Your, your point about the playmakers is well taken because you need to utilize your playmakers if you're not going to throw to them as distractions. On the third and one or fourth and one where Mahomes scrambled, they dragged Kelsey across the formation and brought everybody's attention toward Kelsey yep. so that Mahomes could do that fake pump fake thing mm -hmm. as he's running with his legs. I thought Purdy's legs 
weren't utilized enough by Shanahan in this game. Yeah, he was in the pocket. He's a sit duck a lot. And Spax just teed off on him in the second half. How many blitzes did he said? Again, three and 12 on third well, down. The guy That's we had the games. Karloftis and 54 were excellent in this game. The two white boys, the 56 and 54, the linebacker and the D end were excellent yeah, in this game. Uh, Leo Chadal. Uh, excellent. Leo Chadal. And th their defense as a whole, Bolton had big hits. They're a great team defense. Absolutely. A great team defense. Let's Absolutely. go to uh, suffocating. Yep. Let's go to Daniel and Oakley. Daniel, what's happening, man? You're on the roast. What's up, guys? I, I'm sick to my stomach. I cannot watch this anymore. I mean, we have our OPOY at the two-minute warning. If I'm Kyle Shanahan, I'm looking at him in the face. I'm looking at Trent Williams. I'm telling him I've given you the ball twice. Go get us five yards. He's your OPOY for a reason. This is how we got to play. We can't, we can't come up with, okay, we're going to throw to Jawan Jennings in the money time. I can't watch Shanahan do this anymore. Huh. Like, this is what it's all about. This is where you make your money. Give it to McCaffrey twice. We live or die with that. And I'll be okay. You know, you know, Daniel, we're a Y half. I heard from a lot of Niner fans. It was tough for me to talk last night. There's a lot of Niner fans who say, you know what? I just need to take a step back. I'm too invested, and this just hurts. I, I don't, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. After losing the NEC championship game to the LA Rams in the fashion that you did, after going to Philadelphia last year and we talked all offseason, well, we didn't have our quarterback. We didn't have our quarterback. And then we get back to this point and you have a double digit lead again. Again. You completely dominate the first half. You come out in the third quarter, no show, but you still have a chance in the fourth quarter. You made all the plays to not win this football game. There's so many plays. And Kansas City just hugging there, hugging there. Hug in there. And you dance with the devil, the devil bitch you, and you knew what was going to happen. How many times do you need to give Mahomes an opportunity and Andy Reid and Kelsey? Pacheco had an atrocious game. The run game was non-existent. Were the Cincinnati Bengals to his Joe Montana. Were, were the footnote of the multiple losses in what's going to be one of the most decorated careers of all time. And the one thing that I, I'll just tell Niner fans. Were the Houston Rockets to the Golden State Warriors in the last decade? Yeah, that too. Were I mean, that. That's thing, where we are. You know, like, everyone, Purdy in Montana, Purdy in Montana. No. Stop. 15 over there, Mahomes. Yeah. He's the Montana of he's this the Montana. Of generation. Let's, 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 let's. And that's not a knock on Purdy. No, it's that's not. That's Superman. Yeah, it's That's it's Michael not. Jordan. That's LeBron. That's that's the best player of this generation. All right. We're going to take everybody. Have a great game. I, I mean, by his I, I mean, Alex in Atlanta, Philip, Rocky, we're going to get through this. 888-957-9570. Read some comments on YouTube. Um, love it if you got the Cup Gas Business text lined up. Let me know. Uh, I, I I don't. <laughs> we got an hour down. I don't know how we're going to get through three hours. This is painful, folks. This is very, very painful. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it for you. That's what's coming up on the game. Brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts.
You know, I know Eagle fans are having fun right now. It's good to see that they exist. I didn't know they existed anymore. I really didn't. But it's fine. I can wear it. You guys want to talk? You can talk. I'm here for it. We talked our talk. We did. We talked our talk. We got to wear it. We ain't going nowhere. We're not gonna. We're not gonna cry. You know. No, we will cry about it. We actually probably did cry about this loss. This loss hurts. It hurts very, very bad. But we can wear it, and we'll see Philadelphia next year, and we'll kick your ass once again, and we'll send you back to your miserable city. Remember, you got to wake up in Philadelphia. I don't. I get to wake up in the Bay Area or Delaware, <laughs> New Jersey. <laughs> exactly. You know, I'm good over here. But it hurts. It does. Does hurt. No doubt about it. What part hurts the most? The, um, the missed opportunities for me. Like, you had chances to win this game on so many fronts. And, like, again, I brought up the pie chart of culpability. When you lose any of these games, but in this game, it's a little bit on the coach. There's a little bit on the yeah. offensive line. There's a little bit on your premium players. There's a little bit on clock management. There's a little bit on situational defense. I wouldn't say defense overall. Situational defense, special teams, you know, multiple gaffes on special teams. Like, it's never one thing. But the hard part to swallow from this one is pick any one of those hundred things. Well, my thing is you had a couple weeks to prepare for this. And your premium players came up short. The offense that was so explosive all season long just shot themselves in the foot over and over again. And I, we, we after we watched Usher at halftime, we put out a great performance in the arena. It was amazing to watch Usher. A male's first time I ever seen Usher live. It was freaking, I was having a ball. But I knew that second half would be torturous. And they did things to get in their own way. You don't convert. You don't turn their turnover into points. You know, you, you have a very odd play sequence to start the third quarter. You completely whiff on the third. You commit a turnover. You shot yourselves in the foot. You didn't finish drives. You know, even right before the PAT that got blocked. What I tell you, Chef? Oh I said, God. I go, boy, you better make this one. Because I, I could feel like I know. it was like, oh, you're a little too comfortable. And it gets blocked. Was it the first drive in the fourth or in overtime? I believe it was overtime. The first couple throws... One goes, like, it's low to Debo. And they almost intercepted. Low. Yeah, they got almost lucky. And then the Niners got a defensive hold on third yep. and long. They got extremely lucky yep. to be able to even put points up. Yep. Like, and then when, but again, when you're presented with those opportunities, you must maximize them, right? When you get the benefit of a flag, which, right. again, it, it was a hold at the top of the It was, it was. It was a hold. hold. He got hooked. It was third and long. He hooked him. It was third and long. It was and third he got and very long. And you got bailed out. Um, you got to punch those in. And if you give Mahomes enough opportunities, he was going to punch one in. I can't blame the defense today. I just can't. No, no. You know I what? I, you yeah, know what? I if, we're gonna, if there's a positive out there, and we'll get to the lines in just a second, Steve Wilkes took a lot of heat all season long for not running his defense. Again, this is just Shanahan defense. Crocky told us he's a real defense coordinator. And you know what? He is. Wilkes told us midway through the year, I'm, I'm still learning the scheme. Well, the scheme yesterday worked. The scheme had Patrick Mahomes befuddled. On three of their first four possessions, the Chiefs felt the Chiefs faced third and ten or longer. They were behind the sticks. That defensive line with Gregory and kudos to Chase Young. Now, I still wouldn't pay him a bunch of money. I don't know no, about I paying him a long-term deal. But you know what? He played as you know what off. He played hard. Bosa played hard. And look, we're not gonna we're not gonna complain about holding calls. We know Bill Vinovich's crew, they don't call holds. Our guys were held all night long. They were. Bonte. But they played their butts off. They did enough to win. This falls squarely on the offense and Kyle Shanahan. This falls on you guys. They, it's almost like they treated the Chiefs defense as if they were the 85 Bears. I just, they're, they're a good defense, but it's not like. There's not plays to be had against them. Well, here's what I would say is that, you know, one of the, the strengths of Brock Purdy and Shanahan, they love the timing, the West Coast timing, the timing, rhythmic throws and stuff. But when you're getting manhandled on the edges, it throws all the timing yep. off. And I thought that the rhythm of the offense looked completely out of sync yep. for long stretches of this game. And at times, you got to kind of just throw a ball up and make sure a wide receiver, right. like, let him make a play. Right. You, you just do. And I thought that... Ayuk made a couple of really nice high-pointed plays. 
That's not about it. Miscommunication with Ayuk and Purdy. Oh, Ayuk, well, Ayuk stopped Ayuk, on the Ayuk stopped he on his route. slowed down ever so slightly, and I thought that that was a great throw by Purdy. Miscommunication. The play was there. The play was and there. Here's the other thing, B. The pre-snap penalties from the offensive line, For, when, it, it was just inexcusable. Well, Big Trent with a hold? Inexcusable. Well, you had three false starts yesterday. One on uh, Aaron Banks, Trent Williams, and Brendan Ayuk was called for one. Yeah. Brendan Ayuk as a wide receiver. Wide receivers are a member of high school. David Keeve, my head coach at George Washington High School, and even coaches coming up. Wide receivers, you get called for a false start. That's terrible. Like, like it, you're looking at the ball at the line of scrimmage. You're the last person who should be moving early. All right, let's go to the lines. Alex in Atlanta, what's happening, <sighs> Alex? Uh, gentlemen, I'm heartbroken this morning. I, I, I think that's the best way to describe it. Um, and it's it's raining hard here in Atlanta today, which seems almost fitting. But, um, mm. I mean, to your point, guys, I, I can't blame the defense last night. The only touchdown they gave up in regulation was a 16-yard drive after the whole um, punt debacle with Ray Ray McLeod, who I never played football as a kid, but I know that in situations like that, you're taught to just fall on the ball. He tries mm -hmm. to pick it up and run with it and make something out of it instead of just falling on the ball. And it gave me... Kyle Williams flashbacks, like you said, Joe. Um, I, I thought Kyle Shanahan did this team no favors with his play calling throughout the game. You had two weeks to prepare knowing that Kansas City had the second highest blitz rate in the league this year. They had the second highest QB pressure rate in the, in the league this year. I thought the moment McCaffrey fumbled on that opening drive, Shanahan got antsy and went away from the run. Um, in the third quarter, you guys talked about it. They had 11 pass attempts, only three rush attempts in the third quarter. They couldn't keep the offense on the field. The defense was out there too long. They got gaffed. So by the time the fourth quarter did roll around, they looked tired. They looked winded. I thought that, you know, the green law injury, I don't think is going to get talked about enough at uh. least in the national media because Kelsey was under lockdown when green law was yep. playing. Kelsey did not get going until green law went out of that game. And then so you, you, you got hampered there. Uh, you guys talked about the penalties. The first down play calling to me was the thing that was most befuddling. It just yeah. coming out, throwing on first down a lot. At one point, the Niners' third down average was 9.7 yards. So, of course, you're going to be 3 of 12 on third mm -hmm. down if you put yourself in a situation like that. And then I think to overtime, on that drive in overtime, where on third and four, where, yeah, Purdy's getting blitzed and he misses Juwan Jennings, who is Colton McClivitz blocking? Yeah. He's just standing out there in no man's land. He lets Chris Jones run right by him. Purdy not only had Jennings open if he had another second, Ayuk was wide open in the end zone. It, wide, you wide block open. that play correctly, and you have a touchdown, and it's a completely different game. And all I got to say is, if, if not this year, when? I you know, have the we best don't. situation possible. You had home field throughout the playoffs. You didn't even have to leave the West Coast to go to the Super Bowl. I, I just... I worry regression is coming now next season because you're going to be without Greenlaw for an extended period of time to be of the Achilles injury. You don't know what you're going to do with Chase Young. You have to completely rebuild this offensive line. You've already invested a lot of money in the offense in terms of skill players. I mean, what else do you need to give Kyle Shanahan at this point to I, get I that guy to win you a Maybe Bowl? a deep threat. Maybe a deep threat to take the top off the defense. I was asking for that earlier in, this, in the show. That is a great call, Alex, in Atlanta. But Colt McKevitts. Chris Jones is the equivalent to an Aaron Donald. He's one of the best pass rushers, defensive linemen we've seen over the last 10 years. He's walking into the Hall of Fame now with three Super Bowl rings and a gold jacket, and he will be paid this offseason. As an unrestricted free agent, boy, it'd be great to steal him for Kansas City, would it? Um, Another team. Uh, uh, yeah, keep investing in these guys again. The Solomon Thomas trickle-down effect. You're still chasing for a defensive lineman. But how do you? Not recognize that Chris Jones is right there. You leave him unblocked on the most on the last down of the season. Your last offensive snap. You allow Chris Jones to come in scot free on Brock Purdy and disrupt the play. Unfreaking real. And then, not to mention, he talked about defense and situation. Drake Relaw injury. Oren Burks. I swear to God, I don't want to ever see him in a 49ers uniform ever again. How many times I saw him scrambling? Drake Fred Waters like, dude, get over there. He's going to the left. He's running to the other side. He's trying to blitz in the middle. He's I don't or Burks. That's what you were left with in this Super Bowl once Greenlaw and got Dominic hurt. Flanagan and Dominic Flanagan fouls. I don't want to see them back in the forty nine. I'm going to sound like an insane person. I was pounding the table for D winners and Jalen Graham to play more during the regular season. 
because I knew that that third yeah. linebacker spot was going to come back to haunt them. And they love, look, they love these special teams guys. And Odom made a couple of nice plays. Connolly actually made yep. a couple of really nice plays. Oren Burks in base defense. I'm sorry. He, 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 he was he, completely he, overwhelmed. He, oh, yeah. He was. He was. There was a moment he, in time where him and Gibson <laughs> on a crucial third yeah. down. Oh, yeah. They were scrambling it around. And Kelsey Kelsey's was wide, wide open. open. Wide open. Burks started off on the it, left edge. I don't even Right know. back to the right side. What are we doing? A half hearted blitz up the know. middle that got stuffed. And it was just like, I would have, you know what? On that play, I remember I told you I right after. Call the I, t I told you right away. Call a timeout to get your You're defense right. settled. You're right. You cannot mess around with Mahomes and Kelsey. Like this team, I, oh my God, I can't believe they Season lost this Season on game. the line, and you they had Juwan Jennings out there. Wow. With crucial play. And Juwan played his heart out. But like, you got Debo on the sidelines. You got Dre Greenlaw in a cast with a boot. Poor guy. And the, the worst part about the, the Dre Greenlaw injury is you lose a guy who's just an absolute heart. The to start team. to his Super Bowl was iconic. He was flying around and was amped. When he hit the turf like he was a Duke Blue Devil on the court and he slammed the guy's helmet, I almost thought he was going to get flagged for it, but Watch they let it. it go. I said, okay, Drake Greenlaw's ready to go. He's how, ready to knock dejected, somebody's head off. How dejected was I when, when he got hurt? We all were. Drake, I, I, I love Drake I, I, Greenlaw. I felt like I was ready to I love sink Drake Greenlaw. into the ground. I love Drake Greenlaw. We saw the cart come out for him. He was done. I love Drake Greenlaw. Before the game even started, Jake Brendel and, and Chase Young are both in the blue tent. Before the yeah, game before even the game started. started. Yeah, the blue tent was up. The game no, had, it wasn't Jake Brendel. It was Colton McKivitz. Colton McKivitz. The game hadn't even started. They were in warm-ups, and we were in the blue tent. Boy, you want to talk about an omen of things to come. But you know what? This Achilles for uh, Drake Greenlaw forgot that he missed week 18 due to it. They limited his practice. He had to tendonitis. He couldn't go. It was just a matter of time before it popped. I feel so and it bad popped. I feel terrible for him. He's on the boot. Fred Warner crying at halftime, knowing that his mate, his battery ram, his battery bait, at linebacker, the best duel in the NFL, <laughs> it's on Fred Warner. Because Oren Burks did not. What is Oren Burks doing all year? You know you're one play away. You're one play away. You know, Fred Warner made a hell of a play on Kelsey on the second to last play yep. uh, in the end zone. I thought Tig Brown, a rookie. Oh, my gosh. A rookie actually stepped up and played a tremendous game. Because given, Gibson, given how porous <laughs> everyone else in the back end of that secondary was, it, it was driving me but, nuts. By the way, another subtle adjustment. The Niners did not go to Ambry Thomas. They went to Logan Ryan. Uh, uh, okay. Logan Ryan. He was all right. Yeah, he was okay. all right. Logan Ryan. You know, I noticed it right away. I was like, oh, wow, they're going to Ryan in a nickel package. They didn't mess around with Ambry Thomas. They didn't give Kansas City any time to do that. So, anyway. The defense was, they, the they defense played, played well enough at, to win. They if played, I told Niner fans, well. you're going to hold Mahomes to under 20 in regulation, you know what you say? Well, the offense has to score 25. Yeah, they didn't. And and so, like, to me, this is on Shanahan and the so, offense. So, everybody's going to talk about the run game. The run game, the run game, the run game. But don't if you could pull it up. I know Shanahan was asked about the run game. And he has some answers about that. Um, BW20, Shanahan Spadoni, if you got it up, he was asked about getting away from the run game. Here's Shanahan's answer. I didn't get away from the run game. You, you go three and out, and you don't get drives. So we didn't get away from it. We just didn't stay on the field. Uh, asked Shanahan, asked how he was feeling at halftime being up 10-3. to three. Um, there was no feeling on um, the halftime. I mean, it's, we didn't feel like we had a lead. Big it was zero zero. There's we could have been up a lot more and not felt any different or down. It's there's a whole another half of football to play. All right, and then Shanahan finally asked about taking the ball first in overtime. This has been controversial, and I was thinking about it last night. I've gone back and forth with it, but in real time, I thought take the ball first, score touchdown. But I was under the impression that if you score, the game's over. I forgot the overtime rules. I had been a while since the Niners been in overtime, but here's Shanahan on why he took the ball first in overtime. This is something we talked about with, you know, that none of us have a ton of experience of it, but we went through all the analytics and talked with those guys, and we just thought it'd be better. We wanted the ball third. Um, if both teams matched and scored, we wanted to be the ones who had the chance to go win, and um, we got that field goal, so we knew we had to hold them to at least to a field goal, and if, if we did, then we thought it was in our hands so, after that. Hey, so if I hear about me, analytics, analy I swear to God. Analytics. He was thinking about getting the ball third. So, but first of all, you get the ball first. You got to score a touchdown before you get to the third drive, shit ahead. Like, there's no guarantee you're holding. That, that, that's the analytics. entire thought process. Is, is bad. Yeah. First off, what about analytics? What about that guy by the name of Patrick Holmes <laughs> over there? No, I'm dead serious. That is a good what one. are we doing? Metalytics. What are we doing? I like that. Analytics. I kind of like that. Metalytics. Analytics. That is a four. That's the greatest. 
Doc, okay, if I told you Michael Jordan shoots 42% on, you know, dribbles to his left, it's Michael Jordan! If I said Tom Brady in the Super Bowl, would you agree you throw the analytics right. out the door? When, when we're talking about the greatest of the greatest, do I even need to know Mariano Rivera and Derek Jeter in a World Series game? <laughs> the analytics go out the door. It's Patrick Mahomes. The fact that he was the counting. Super Bowl. He was counting on a third possession. Uh, this guy, counting on a third possession. Look, now, he's again, a smart guy. He's, he's a, a smart, really guy. smart guy. And look, you're not going to fire him. He's too smart for his own good. So, you're not going to fire the guy. No he's one's not going that. anywhere, nor should he be fired. He's done a hell of a job as his team. But again, in big games, what happened there? <laughs> what happened there? He's just throwing papers? <laughs> anyway, let's go back out to the lines. Let's go to Philip and San Jose. Philip, what's happening? Hey, how you doing, guys? Morning. Good. Uh, honestly, I. I think our defense did a great job, regardless. At the end of the day, they did their part. Uh, offensive line was a little shaky, but I felt like they basically said, hey, we're going to stack the box. We're going to double Kittle, and we're going to force you to beat us with IU and Debo. And they exposed us. Like, that was something I didn't see happening. We had a bunch of opportunities. And, again, they just said, okay, we'll beat us with Debo and IU. And I think that point blank was it. Regardless of the mistakes we made, it's a football game. They made mistakes. We made mistakes when it came down to it. My opinion is Ayuk and uh, Debo didn't show up. Yeah, Thanks, I mean, well, I mean, they did. They. You need offensive I, line. You need, yeah. you need quarterback. You need play yeah, calling. Yeah. You need a lot of things. They outplayed us. Defense. Kansas City Spags is such a good defense coordinator. They punked the Niners in the second half. I thought their second half was punked. excellent, too. They punked them. They did. Let's go to Rocky and Vallejo. Rocky, what's happening? What's up, guys? You guys are killing it today, man. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I've been watching the Niners since uh, the Dolphins Super Bowl back in the uh, 84 ca uh, football year, uh, 85 uh, calendar year. Anyway, makes me appreciate the premium players from yesteryear, Ronnie Lodge, Jerry Rice, Montana, because they, obviously they would – know how to close the deal. But going back to this game uh, that, you know, we, we all watch, you guys are perfectly on it. You know, the second half, uh, the, the first three drives of the second half were disasters, three and out, three and out, three and out. Obviously, I think Shanahan needs to hire uh, Gary Kubiak Sr., the old man. Bring him in because he needs a consultant to help him. If you look at Andy Reid, he gets a lot of guys helping him. He got Matt Nagy and, you know, a lot of other uh uh, yeah. Offensive guys that are helping helping Reed. Shanahan is trying to do it by himself, man. You can't yep. do it, man. You need more more brains, more power, you know. And that's his problem because uh, you know Spag is going to blitz on that third and four, yep. and like the other caller said, there's no outlet, you know. And um, and man, that was disappointing. But uh, also, we need a reliable, uh, you know, backup tight end, man. I mean, uh, Kittle yeah. got hurt on that yeah. fourth down. Well, here's yeah, the tight end. You know, what about yep. Juice? Yeah, well, without using him in the past game. Well, well, you know what, you know what, uh, Philip, you're on that. You're on that. We've been waiting for a deep threat slot receiver to take the top off the defense, and it's like a tight end, another pass catcher. You need threats. You need all the threats in the world to put pressure on the defense. Now you're not going to be able to pay everybody. I get that, but drafting a guy who can, you know, who who can make some plays outside of George Kittle. There was times George Kittle was just saying blocking on third down, and you're running three bad routes and nobody's open. And the, and the Chiefs are still getting to Brock Purdy. They're still putting pressure on him. I do I do want to ask you, Shasky, what did you think? I, I kind of know what you thought because I sat right next to you during the Super Bowl. But fourth and three from the Kansas City 15 with 12 minutes and 46 seconds left. Niners are down 13-10. And Shanahan kept the offense on the field. So the and I caught, oh, gosh, he's not going to tie the game. And George Kittle made a hell of a play to stretch the ball across the first down marker to get it. The Niners will score two plays later. Joe Jennings, a little 10-yard pass, touchdown 16-13. But what did you think about Shanahan going for it? I go, boy, he's not messing around. No, He's going full Dan Campbell. Here, here's where my issue was. Incongruent aggression. How are you going to be aggressive there? But you're not going to be aggressive at the end of this, at the end of the first half, right. calling timeouts to get the ball back. Like, where's that aggression? How are you going to be aggressive there at that point in the field, and then in overtime not be aggressive? Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. If you're going to be aggressive, 
be congruent, meaning have your thoughts make sense. That was ballsy, though. That was the gutsiest call of his coaching career, and it converted it. And I was like, wow. Wow, he actually went for it. And I was like, Shanahan was a different guy. He's going for but it. He started with the Super Bowl but, right there. But then why turtle up later? Yeah, why I, turtle I, up I, prior? I, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like, understand. No, it was a great in-the-moment aggressive call. But like to my point, is like, you tell me all year. We love Brock. We trust Brock. We're going to be aggressive. I'm an offensive mind. And then you have incongruent aggression at the end of the first half. Bonte, they had an opportunity to call timeout. Now, maybe the Chiefs are more aggressive. You force their hand. Maybe they throw a little more. You had three timeouts. Call, call a it. timeout before second down. Get the ball back. Get the ball back. Give yourself an opportunity to at least get a field goal attempt. Be aggressive. So, like, to me, it was like, oh, I'm glad you're aggressive. And it was great that you were aggressive there. But your your thoughts are not congruent. And that was my big takeaway. It's like, what? you're aggressive here, but you're not aggressive there? Does, it, does anybody think Kyle's ever going to get a deal with the Niners? Are we, are we, are we? I just think I he's mean, erratic four, in these games. Four, he's four, erratic. Four, four championship game appearances in the last five years. Two Super Bowl appearances. They had 10-point leads in both of them. Now, Miami was just horrendous. The clock management at the end of the first half of that game was just an all-time blunder. And in the end of the game, it was just the play sequence there with four straight passes from the 49-yard line with the minute 49 left and three timeouts. It's just an all-time disaster. That's not as definitely... One of his worst moments as a coach. She so had blow that game. You blow the game against the Rams 17 7 with some questionable play calling. And <sighs> hey, look, this game yesterday is not all on Kyle Shanahan. Players have to execute. Trent Williams has to be better. McCaffrey has to be better. Purdy has to be better. The offensive line has to be. This is all the offensive Shanahan. They got to wear this. But boy, I walked out of that stadium yesterday and I thought to myself, it's just not going to happen with Shanahan in this year. He's going to end up winning the Super Bowl with somebody else. Watch. Watch. It's just, I. If not now, then when? If not now, then when? Because Mahomes is not going anywhere. Kansas City will reload. Rasheed Rice will get better. Kelsey's not going anywhere. Pacheco will be better. Thudy will be back. They will draft very, very well. The NFC's coming. You're not even bringing that up. Like, oh, uh, not yet. I mean, like the, the entire conference is getting better and better and better. The Rams get cap relief. They have a lot of young talent. Seattle's got a new coach. They've got a lot of young talent. Green Bay's not going away. You know, who knows what Tampa ends up doing, but Detroit is definitely on the rise. I, I can't even look at the AFC because I'm just looking from within. Yeah. And then I look at our team. Are we getting better? Well, Arizona's going to get better. Quietly get it. Had to play it hard. They ran for over 200 yards on a 49ers Honestly, late this in the This was our moment. This was our window. It does feel like, like, just it's to done. me. Not that it's done. It just gets so much harder each and every time you go. So much harder. Let's go to uh, Rocky and Vallejo. Rocky, what's happening? Oh, he called uh, Mr. Pablo. Mr. Pablo in San Francisco in this city. Mr. Pablo. Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey, check this out. We're up by three. There's five minutes left in the game. We just make a nice a nice run with Debo. Shit, I don't know. His- All right, uh, got to be ready to go, man. Can't be cursing. Not today. We're trying. We if we're not cursing, you shouldn't be able to curse. Shouldn't. It, it took be, come every on, ounce of my no. being to not cry in the press box no, I area. I mean, it really did. It was. It was. It was difficult. It was really difficult, and I'm I'm man enough to admit it. That was, I mean, B, you and I have suffered some really uh, crummy losses, <laughs> some really crummy that, losses. That's at the top of the list. That's the top of the list. I mean, we didn't talk for what seven, eight minutes as we're walking. We just oh, what none. did I say? As soon as the guy, the McCall Hartman, I we thought it was McKinney scores. I said, "Let's go." I we, just started packing. I just started packing. It was like, "Let's go." I knew when they got a field goal. I I, I said, "It's not enough." And I don't even think I would have gone for it on fourth and five. Like, I'm not saying he should have gone, or whatever it was, fourth and four. It felt like five. I, I'm not even saying he should have gone for it. I, I just, I knew it was four down territory. To me, to start overtime, I'm looking at the other side. I'm like, that's an all-time quarterback. I need a touchdown. And you cannot have the final two possessions be field goal, field goal. It has to be. One of them had to be a touchdown. Yep. And they didn't get it. You, you kept saying it. You're flirting with the devil. You're flirting with the devil all game long. All game long. You left the game on a silver platter for Mahomes to take. They didn't even play their A game. Andy Reid and Kelsey are fighting on the sidelines. 
fighting on the sidelines. Now he's got three Super Bowls. Now they've got three Super Bowls. And they went back to back. And that's the part that hadn't even sunk oh, into me. They back went to back, back to back. First team in 19 years. And all of those wins were on the road. And guess what? Guess what? They're getting next Mike year, Evans. Next year, they may become the first team to ever three-peat. They're set up to three-peat. What did you say? Because Mahomes is going to restructure his deal. What did I say? About the next 10 years. Oh, we're gonna do, he's going to be around for the next decade. And we could have had that guy. We could have had that guy. And here's the irony. And we're not, today's not the conversation for it. The conversation's not going to take place until next season. But boy, Brock Purdy, I'm telling you right now, 49er fans, and for everybody out there who disagrees with this, if Brock Purdy doesn't have the year next season like he had this season, the 49ers will so, be quarterback shopping let, again. Let's talk about Brock Purdy first. Like, again. Let's have, a, let's have a real Brock Purdy. He was excellent in the regular season. Did that carry over into the playoffs? No. Okay. He was good, right, at times. I thought he had some bad halves against both Detroit and um, against Green Bay. Let's, let's, let's be real. And it's okay. What? I like Brock Purdy a lot. He's good. Because we've been scarred to even criticize him. No, I know. Because in today's society, you either got to give somebody all the flowers or, or say they suck in their wasp. He up. doesn't suck. Listen, he doesn't suck. He's a very good quarterback. Is he top five? I don't know. There's a lot. There's... I take Mahomes and Josh Allen over right now. And I've told you guys that yes. before. You have not wavered. But three quarters against Green Bay, he looked like Jimmy Garoppolo. In the first half against Detroit, he looked like Jimmy Garoppolo. Yesterday, he didn't look like Jimmy Garoppolo. But at times, it felt like, boy, I don't want to make a mistake. Boy, I don't want to make a mistake. Where Mahomes is like, I'm going out here swinging it. Well, let's, let's, like I'm looking at And Mahomes changes the, the whole conversation for everyone. But when you lose a playmaker, to me, the hallmark of an MVP yep. franchise quarterback is, I'm down a guy, but it don't matter. Yep. I'm going to still make a play. They lost Debo, and it was as if this... This entire offense couldn't couldn't function. And so to your point, like when you start to pay a guy, as we look down right. the line a little, if I gave you, even if at $25 million, I'm giving Purdy, even at, I'm losing one or two yes. playmakers at minimum. Yep. Now what's it look like? Yep. And so to me, it's like, he's good. He's good. But to win Super Bowls, you have to be great. You have to be and great. And with the full Avengers. He couldn't. Great. He couldn't be great. Could be great. And that's the weakest version of what the Chiefs will be over oh, the next couple getting, of years. Oh, they're getting. They're getting either Mike Evans or a top flight receiver. It's coming. Rasheed Rice is going to get better. Pacheco's going to get better. They'll draft a good running back. This is what Andy Reid and Brett Veach does. The GM of the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to reload. So yeah, the Chiefs are going to be there. And if you got to face them in the Super Bowl, well, God bless us all. God bless us all because we know how that's going to end. You can't beat Mahomes. Shit ends all four against Kansas City. Oh, and four. A.D. Reid owns him. But, but like, the, the Brock Purdy thing, he was excellent in the regular season. I defended him all year. He's so much better than Jimmy. I still thought in this game he was better than, than no, he most was. Jimmy's performances. But, I like, to bridge the gap, I just I, it's just too far. It's too far of a gap, B. It's just too – Mahomes made a couple of throws – Effortlessly flipping over. How about the throw to Gibson over the top to Gibson, where Gibson had no idea. Oh, what Hardman, the ball was. Hardman in the first half. Excuse me, yeah, to Hardman, McCall over Hardman. Gibson's head. Yeah, Gibson was lost, and we're looking dead at Gibson. Like, dude, okay. track the ball. He threw track that ball. That would have been ball, sixty yards in the air. Yeah, he threw it sixty yards in the air. Should have been picked. It would have been picked if he had a good free safety play. Now, ironically, the How next play where Pacheco works. fumbles. I know Pacheco fumbles. We got lucky. If you look, Gibson missed a tackle on that play. So Gibson's God. He played his last game with the 49ers. And look, he played hard. I get it. They picked him up off the street, but he's God. It's just, you can't play in these games. Sideline to sideline speed, just not there. He gets beat deep. Yeah, it's just not there. The season was on the line, and we're out here with Dominic Flanagan fouls. It's and hurts. John Juan Jennings, who played his heart out. But like Jawan Jennings, I got Willis. Braden Willis is on the field with the season on the line. It's just, it's tough to swallow. Um, let's go to Ray and Benicia. Ray, what's happening? You're on the roast. Good morning, Phyllis. Good morning. How you guys doing? Ah, a bit better. Yeah, I feel you. So I'm about 33 years old, and I've never seen a victory for a Super Bowl in a Super Bowl. But um, it's just uh, Shanahan. He, what was he doing? There was a play where it was, I think it was second and long, and Brock Purdy drops back, he does a little pump fake, and then he underhands it to Christian McCaffrey oh and gets stuff for another loss two yards. And it's like, Shanahan, what, I was begging him, I was begging him just to draw something up. 
draw something up, and that's especially in that second half. Draw something up, get this defense on their toes, but it just everything was just too predictable. Everything was just too predictable. I, that was the, I, that was the second know. and long. That was the second and long play with the shovel pass. Remember that, B? Oh my God! The and what did I say to you? Oh, what it looked we, like a disaster. What are we doing? It looked like a disaster. What? What? That? It looked and, like a disaster. And the the one thing I don't want to hear. Look, McCaffrey had a huge fumble, and that's a huge, huge part of the loss. What a pure player. Christian McCaffrey is an all time 49er. He played his heart out. The guy could barely. His leg got folded on a play on an option route. And I don't know how he he was upright at the end of that game. He gave everything he had on that field. He's one of my favorite that players fumble, of all time. With that fumble to set the tone. It was devastating. devastating they were because you were going plays. right down to play. You check with a great play. Play action pass in a flat. He's amped up. McCaffrey had a couple good runs there. And he fumbles. He fumbles. Your premium players. Look, I said all Friday. Premium players need to make gold jacket plays. I saw that from the Kansas City Chiefs sideline. I didn't see enough from the premium players at the 49er. Now, Bosa, I thought, had a hell of a game. I really do. Hargrave at times here and there. He cleaned but, up a couple you plays. Know, here and there, but I need more if I'm Armstead, paying you this money. Armstead, too, cleaned up a couple plays that other people created pressures, but didn't see a whole lot from 9-1. They, they didn't check. They didn't attack Charverius Ward much. No. Uh, but offensively, when you get eight catches, 84 yards between Kittle, Ayuk, and Debo, that's a problem. Well, 11 targets for Debo Samuel, 33 yards. And he was out for a lot of the game, well, you know, with that hamstring. 11 targets for Debo Samuel, 33 yards. There were a couple of throws, uh, one at his at his toes that I thought, it's a tough play, I don't know. I, just Brock on some of the intermediate throws wasn't as accurate. They right. they got their hands on some balls. Huge tip, you know, in that game. Like, there was just, they were a tick off rhythm-wise. Rhythm yep. And for a timing offense, like, that's the one negative I have. If you're going to be a timing offense and everyone's going to, like, collapse and they're going to be right pressed yep. up against you, you have to make a play every now and then. And I thought a lot of the the one-on-ones, we fell a little short. No, nah, they didn't win. 3-12 of on third down. That's Not good. big money Not- down. Most important down in the NFL, and you go 3-12 of as I yawn here. Pat in the district. Pat, what's happening? You're on the roast. Man, Bonte, Bonte. Couldn't wait for you to come in and get a haircut. I had to say something today, man. Let oh, me, what up, Pat? Oh, Pat, District Barbershop. What up, Pat? I saw your Instagram post last night. I I, I felt you. I saw Pat. Oh, he had God. an Instagram post. If you come to talk, if you talk trash to me, I'm blocking you. And I felt like that too. Go ahead, Pat. Cook. That's, that's exactly what happened, man. So let me just say this. I mean, we we always talked about Brock Purdy all year being an elite processor, elite processor. That's what I've heard all year. He's been an elite processor. That third, that third and four at OT right before the field goal to go up three, uh, that was that was a big issue. You had 32 walk down into the box to blitz, and you have Jake Brindle, Spencer Burford, and Colton McKibbin. That's three on three right there. You got it. You got it. You got it covered. They don't slide protection. They don't notice the blitz. Jake Brindle pulls to the left side, leaving 32 with Chris Chris Jones and the DN blitzing with just Colton McKibbin and Burford there to pick it up. If we can not- if we see that and notify the blitz and pick up the blitz right there, we hit Jawan Jennings in the flat. So that was my yep. biggest Brock Purdy moment of this is too big for you because you weren't able to just in this moment right here, third and four, gotta gotta have it. You gotta be able to notice that blitz. You gotta see the blitz right there. And Shanahan was terrible against the blitz on third down all mm-hmm. night long. And we gotta we gotta pick that up right there. And if I'm me, if it's me, all the way honest guys. I'm going for it on fourth and four. I'm not putting the ball back in, in, I, in Mahomes' hand right yeah. there to, to make it happen. I, I'm not doing it. I'm sorry. Well, and that's where I think that's where Good the call, whole Pat. sequencing of plays, they were. I felt like they were settling for a field yep. goal. That's yep. what it felt like. I'm like, guys, three's not getting it done. The element of the game to me, as we go to like Brock Purdy's legs in the Green Bay game, help get things going in Detroit, Mahomes' legs, nine for 66. Well, they read a couple of RPOs. Well, the, the, the very timely. Hilaire? He got some big first downs, Huge. lowering his shoulder. Mahomes is a bad dude. When he man. put the ball in his left hand, you know, every time I go, they're winning this they're, game. Dude, he he is so good. He ran right he through so Deion and Lenore's shoulder. He, for a first down. For a first down. I do want to get, I can't wait to get Baldy on to get his thoughts on that play, the third and four, but also the third and five. Again, this one's going to be overlooked. Two minute warning. You get basically a timeout. You have. A couple minutes to draw up a first down play 
and force the Chiefs to burn some timeouts if you get a first down. I didn't want and them you, to touch the ball right. again. But, but, but I hear you. If so, you. at least make them burn yes, some timeouts. Yes, yes, yes. You diagram a play for Jawad Jennings on third and five that goes nowhere, and you had to settle for a 53-yard field goal. And not utilizing your other playmakers as decoys. And Debo's on the sideline on that play, taking a knee with his helmet off. You Ray Ray McLeod was on the field. <laughs> he was in the huddle. I was like, Ray Ray's in the huddle. Somebody's out. Ray Ray's in the huddle, so you'll blow that. Let's take a couple more calls. Yeah, I, a couple I, I more just, calls before I'm we hurting. get to the injury report. Uh, Kevin and Sarah Rafael. Kevin, what's happening? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Um, first thing, I think the key to the game, in my opinion, was coming out of the second half, you intercept Mahomes, and you have the ball on the 44-yard line. Mm. You just need to get McCaffrey going five yards at that point. Jake Moody, other than the block kick, had a good clutch game, in my opinion. Um, so that was a big key of the game. You go up 13-3, to three, it's a different ball game. Second thing, I'm a sports doc, and watching that video of Dre Greenlaw pop his Achilles <laughs> immediately with that recoil, I knew. And I was just absolutely sick to my stomach. He was coming out firing. You get to know these players. You get to know them. You get to know their families. I'm just absolutely gutted yeah. by that. I and last too. thing, I'm driving down from Marin to Half Moon Bay to watch the game with my dad. Driving down Van Ness through the city. It had such an energy. It had such a vibe. I'm seeing homeless guys wearing Niners jerseys. Everyone is just vibing with each other. I'm like, I'm so ready to see this city just covered in red and gold confetti. Driving through Candlestick Point, having all these memories. This city deserves better, man. I'm just, here we go again with another off season, And I just, I... I don't even know what to say. I'm just absolutely yeah. crushed. Thanks for having me, guys. I, I, I Trust me. I'm with you. Great call, Kevin. I'm with you as we get to the injury report here on the Morning Roast. Ow! 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 It felt like it was going to be the day. It felt like the drop was going to get snapped. And then the third quarter started. <laughs> and the third quarter, fourth quarter, and overtime, Shaska, I'm just going to be real. It just felt like torture. It felt like sports torture. You ever seen uh, <laughs> Saving Private Ryan? Oh, yeah. When the guy's getting stabbed? Oh, yeah. Like, yep. That's what it felt like. Yep. Slowly knifing you right through the heart. Unbelievable. Drake Greenlaw, man. I feel so sick for him. Ugh. Left the game early in the second quarter. And it ended up being a torn Achilles injury. He walked out with crutches and a boot. Um, just, just brutal injury. Brutal injury. He may not be. Who knows how long it's going to take him to get back with the way he plays. Sideline to sideline. All the speed. Uh, we saw what happened to Navarro Bowman. He was never the same. Never, ever the same. And it happened by just jogging off the sideline, getting ready for a possession. Unbelievable. What a heartbreaking day for 49er fans. That was the injury report brought to you by Boxer and Gerzer, Northern California's premier workers' compensation law firm, helping injured workers get their lives back for over 40 years. What's coming up on the game? Brought to you by Fremont Bank, full service banking, no compromises, your phone calls. Everybody's going to get on uh, as we try to digest this loss in Super Bowl 58. The Niners lose 25 22. Boy, double digit lead. They lose their third, second Super Bowl in the last five years. It's been since 1994, man. Unbelievable. I'm so upset! In order for small businesses to thrive, they need to be smart, efficient, savvy, staying ahead of the market at every turn.
Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. It's time to wake up with a nice cup of morning roast. Featuring the Billmore's finest, Monte Hill. <laughs> the pride of the Excelsior, Joe Butcher Boy Shack. This was the Andy Reid special. We talked about he was saving all day. He's going to fake a motion to go across. And at that moment, he turns and goes back. Hartman, who they didn't have, right? And they go get Hartman and bring him back. And the game-winning drive of Mahomes' career. He's been waiting for his one Super Bowls, but he's never had it. In an oh, baby. Oh, baby. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Comcast Business Text Line and a big shout out to Pete's Coffee for getting us down here to Las Vegas for the big game. The Niners lose in overtime, 25 to 22. And it hurts. It stings as we say good morning to everybody out there getting off their graveyard shift. If you're at work, what is happening? Um, if you're in traffic, please drive safely. Um, if you took the day off after the Super Bowl, I don't blame you at all. I get it. 
I wanted to call Matt Nehinga, our program director, and say, I can't do it this morning. I laid Shasky last night in complete darkness before I went to bed for about 30 minutes, opened the laptop, said, all right, let me try to rewatch it for the show. I got through one possession. I said, nope, can't do it. Cannot do it. And the Legion Stadium is right outside of my hotel room. And I almost, I almost, I'm not going to lie to you guys, man. I was getting a little emotional in that bedroom. Thinking of the Niner fans saying, thinking of the Niner Knicks, thinking of Worldwide Half, thinking of, uh, <laughs> you know, all these young Niner fans that we have. Your family, my family, everybody had their Niner gear on. Watch parties galore in the city. And thought, man, finally, it's going to happen. The parade's going to be on Thursday. We've been waiting for this for so long. Snow angels, confetti, all of it. And just like that, your heart got ripped out again. Our hearts got ripped out again. And I don't know how we're going to get through this one. I honestly don't know what we're going to I'm not watching this game back for a very long time. I'm going to rely on all you guys in the plays, my play sheet, what Baldy's going to bring to the table tomorrow because I can't do it. That was gut-riching. And sitting in that stadium watching it in real time. Watching it being there, slowly happen. It was. It took years off my life, man. I was a wreck. I was not right. We were not right. So I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat it. You know, uh, we're trying to be pros. We're going to be pros and do it. But we are from this city. We're the fabric, which makes us different than most radio shows in this market. We wear it. We know what it's like to be a Niner fan. We know what it's like to live through the good times and the bad times. We know what the pain feels like. And we're expressing it to you today. It's painful. There's no other way to say it. You lose a Super Bowl. That really you should have won because you dominated for the most part, Shasky. You dominated. And now we're sitting here with big L's on our foreheads? So many would have should have plays. I mean, so many. So many. Richie James fumbled on how many of those punt returns? Oh, he was terrible. Did. He was terrible. Okay. Those. And now he has a Super Bowl rig. Richie James Jr. And, and Jerick McKinnon, too. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then you, you get an interception from Mahomes when he's been flawless for how many weeks in a row? I mean, you had opportunities in this game. You you just totally threw up on yourself. And the woulda, coulda, how about the fumble where it goes right into Watson's hands? Yep. How many times does that happen? Yep. It's just, you miss an extra kick. Extra point, yeah. Or, yeah, I call it extra kick, yeah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 you turn the ball over on the first possession of the game. On a McCaff McCaffrey of all guys, puts it on the floor. You have multiple pre-snap infractions. You lose Dre Greenlaw. You fumble again on a punt return. Or looter, it hits his ankle or his heel or whatever the hell, and then McLeod can't Somebody's got a real poison. Somebody yell poison. I, I just, Get away. You kick field goal after field goal after field goal when you know you need a touchdown. You know you do. Another two-minute clock situation before half. <laughs> Another opportunity for Travis Kelsey to get triple teamed and let someone else beat you, and he's the guy getting the ball down the stretch in that final drive. How, how does he get that open on a crosser? Because <laughs> they were in no man's land. Like, that's a tough field goal. Right. Buckham probably kicks right. it, but they're in no man's land. That was a huge play. And Tig Brown, God bless his soul for making <laughs> that, that tackle. The tackle of his life. The rookie, I thought he was scoring. Rookie was one of the best players on the field <laughs> for the Niners. Um, you know, Debo Samuel, who's been amazing for this team. Just in and out of the lineup. IU can't get much separation, and that's his calling card. Miscommunication on the double move. George Kittle, did he play? I mean, George Kittle, might as well put a 60s number on him because all he does is line up as a tackle. <laughs> I had to laugh because it's so true. I mean, it was driving me it's insane. so true. And then, like, Brock Purdy, like, he played good. But to, to like... You need to be great. Yeah, that's... You got to be great. In what did Steve Young say to everybody? You all saw the same video I saw. Yeah. You have to snatch it from someone's bloody yep. hands. Yep. And I think about Philadelphia because Philadelphia's in my mentions. But in particular, because like when I think of like Doug Peterson and that team winning that Super Bowl against Brady. They took it. They were so hyper-aggressive. And when they yep. did the Philly special, obviously that's the thing that sticks out. But they were hyper-aggressive the whole game. Yep. The whole game. And then their foot on the gas. And yes, the double pass was amazing from Jawan Jennings. But the incongruent aggression from Kyle Shanahan is the hallmark of all of these losses, all of these 10-point losses. I'm aggressive here, but not there. I'm aggressive in this moment, but not in this moment. 
And it's like all of these missed opportunities, I truly feel we made a deal with the devil. And for a lot of the older fans, you got an opportunity to experience five Super Bowls. And for all of us younger fans, and I didn't get to see it in my adult life, we're not going to get to see it. We're going to be the bridesmaid forever. Something's happened. We cursed. I don't know yeah. what it is. We yeah. talked like champions yep. all week. And I said to everybody, Jed, I get it. You want to come out? You want to stunt? Just be quiet until the job is completed. Because now we look so dumb because we're cashing checks. And I, I get it. It's an accomplishment to make it this far. But you've got to run through the ticker yeah, taker Jed, to win the race. But, Jed, that, him talking on a I Monday afternoon no had impact. no impact whatsoever but the, yesterday. But these are but, the karmatic but, things I, I, I think of. But, no, the Chiefs had all the bad karma this week. They had all the bad karma. Patrick Mahomes Sr., you know, the whole Jackson Mahomes situation. You had a lot going on on Kansas City sideline. But they have Superman. But, you know, exactly. They do have Superman. But they, they all that stuff, once you kick the ball off, all that stuff goes out of the window. And they have Professor it X. It goes out of the they window. Have, they have Andy But even Reed. Professor X, Steve Wilkes is in his bag yesterday. Steve Wilkes outcoached Andy Reid for most of that football game. Well... You know, most so, doesn't count. It doesn't you count, but finish. he did out coach him for most no, of that football I, I, game. I'm with you. So I got. I'm giving Steve Wilkes his credit. Steve Wilkes was you know, excellent. You know what I had? Always, you know what I, Steve Wilkes was excellent. You know, it hit me when I woke up this morning. I said, "Man, I think about this journey because, like, we're gonna. You know, the Warriors are going on, and Coach Kerr and a lot of coach staff are going over to Serbia for Decky's funeral, and the Warriors are gonna play the Utah Jazz later on today. And, you know, when you lose these playoff series, you think, Paul, you gotta." Sit all off season. We got to go through it. I think about what we were doing at the Hilton Hotel in late July for the opening of training camp. Felt like it was two weeks ago, right? But we go on this long, endurance journey where we're sitting here watching game after game, game after game. And you go through the playoffs and you get home field and you go through all the trades and getting Gregory and bringing in Chase Young and you're like, oh my God, you're averaging 29 points a game and you got two guys in the top four of the MVP voting. And I was just thinking, we have to somehow, some way, cleanse ourselves from this Super Bowl loss, which may never, ever happen. Go through the draft again. Go through all-season needs. Go through OTAs. Go through mini camp. Go through another training camp. Overreact about preseason. Go through the regular season again, knowing that the regular season doesn't mean anything for us anymore. If we don't win the whole damn thing, everything else is secondary. Everything else is relevant. And we have to go through this thing again, hoping just to get back to the big game. And I was thinking, I don't know if I had the energy for that. Well, I, I don't know how I'm going to pick myself up off the mat once again. That's why this feels like the NFC Championship game lost to the Seattle Seahawks. I don't mean to interrupt you, but B, like. No, I'm done. I you know, just, like, you know, I just, I'm did, just up here did rambling, Did that not man. feel like the end of the era coming out of that loss? I, the way I, they did with Bowman going down the way he did. Losing Dre Greenlaw the way they I, did, listen, it felt symbolic I, of a bigger. It wasn't just losing the Super Bowl. It to me, it felt like I'm not but, sure this course no, can get they'll, it done. They'll they'll be back, but now, know, but man. here's the deal, Shasky. It's so much harder. No, they'll be good. Not only is it hard, but you, for the most part, they were able to remain healthy. Purdy coming off a torn UCL didn't have really many setbacks. He had a concussion problem. That that, that was that. McCaffrey was healthy. He had a couple nicks, bru bru bruises. He's a gladiator. But he's a gladiator. But how many but can years you count does he on have? him? Yeah. Can you count on him to be healthy next season? Debo, he missed three games, relatively healthy. You going to get that next season? Well, in the biggest game, he got he got knocked around in this game. George Kittle is going to be able to stay healthy? George Kittle. You know, George Kittle, there, there's a conversation about Trent Kittle. Williams, is he going to be able to stay healthy for the entire season? So you got to go through this again. I just kept thinking about that. Like, gosh, we got to go through this all over again just to try to be back in this spot next year in February you know, in New Orleans. What I don't want to hear is, like, George Kittle should not be mentioned with Kelsey and Gronk in, in terms of, like, when, when the game was on the line and the season was on the line, who did Brady throw to? Hey, Gronkowski. And Gronk was an inline blocker. But yes. when, when it was money time... What do they do? They split him out and they threw him the ball and the whole stadium yep. knew it was going to him. Yep. Okay? Kelsey, what did we say? Where's 87? Where's 87? Where's 87? And the Niners are pointing and moving as right. the ball's being snapped. <laughs> they don't even know who's guarding 87. What's our guy doing? He's either on the sideline or he's blocking. One thing I don't ever want to hear again 
is about George Kittle and how great he is during the regular season. Because yeah. in this game, they needed him to make a play. And they went stretches where it felt like he wasn't even running routes. Dude, two catches, four yards. First team all pro tight end. But don't ever... Ever, ever, ever try to tell me he's the best tight end in the game. It's, as long as Travis Kelsey is wearing number 87 for the Kansas City Chiefs, it all starts with Travis Kelsey at the tight end spot. Everybody else is playing for second place. Well, this is. This and hey, you know what? <laughs> Sam Laporta may have already leapfrogged him. Well, this is. Because the way Detroit loses, uses Sam Laporta, boy, I would love to use Kittle like that. Good to great, right? We were talking about that from, yep. from Purdy to Mahomes. Yep. Like, there's a difference. Like, there's levels. Yep. And, and it's not knocking. He's really, really good. But there is a. There's an element of they like to talk and they like to front run, but when things are going down, where are you? Where are you? This is the biggest game of the year. Nothing's going right. Where was Kittle? Where was he? On the milk carton. Where was Ayuk? Uh, shellacked. Shackled in handcuffs. Because Legere Sneed and McDuffie and them were all over him. Not not running hard on the double move. Miscommunication with Brock Purdy, which could have been for a big touchdown. I, I just, I just, it just Two of the biggest plays sense. in this game on offense were from Ray Ray McLeod and yeah. Jawan Jennings, for Christ's sake. I know, I know. Jawan Jennings made a couple of big ja plays. Jawan, Ray Ray McLeod with a great catch on a crosser as he, Ayuk he went deep to open it up. He yeah. got blasted and held on to it. He got blasted. It. He held on to it, though. He did. Chuan Jennings, I just, that guy. I, I'm telling if, you. If there's anybody that eats for free in the Bay after that game, Chuan Jennings. He set such a physical tone on that touchdown drive to make it to nothing. He's the one why Legereus Sneed and McDuffie are all getting frustrated because he was run blocking his ass off, run blocking these DBs into the sideline. Juwan Jennings could play on my football team and be a part of my 53-man roster from here on out. I have no problem with Juwan Jennings. He's earned his keep. He's made big-time plays for this team. By yeah. the way, we've got a couple super chats real quick, Shasky. Yeah. Uh, Bun Knob. Spent five dollars. When you're playing to be a good team with a great player, you have to match their great play. Offensive defense. What do you guys need? Foot on your neck, killer instinct. Then we got another one from 300 IQ Gaming. Spending ten dollars. How can anyone sit here and tell me Shanahan is the guy? There was no excuses this year. Everyone was healthy. What more do we need? Shanahan is not that guy. We need a change, and he needs to go. I don't know. Well, I don't agree with your I last. It's it's. That. We don't need a change, and he doesn't need to go. But something about his game plans and something about his coaching needs some adjusting, Shasky. He has to adjust and evolve. He got schooled again by Spags and Andy Reid. Father Time, Napa, get on here, man. Father Time, what's up? Mm, what do you say? Monday morning hangover uh, ruined all the great food that we made yesterday. I watched the game with a couple old-timers, one of whom is probably not long for the world, super uh, Niners fan. So I feel bad for the old guys who haven't seen it in a long, long time. Let me hit you with some real, and I want your uh, uh, response to this, if you don't mind. Grades, Ayuk, B minus, C. I'm talking about the best players on the team. Samuel, C. Purdy, C. Trent Williams got his ass kicked. I, I saw him for the first time in forever. He got thrown on his backside. Yeah. This is allegedly the greatest tackle of all time. Now, maybe he's at the end, but that's your boy. That's the guy that can't happen. Bosa, maybe a B. Kittle, incomplete. Nope, he's a C. You know, Greenlaw, he was killing. He was an A-plus, and, man, what a difference it would have made. But, you know, he gets an incomplete. Fred Warner, a B. So your best players, tell me if I'm wrong. Those are the best players on your roster. Nobody played with an A. Nobody. And you can't win that way when you're facing, you know, now the uh, two-time champions. I just think that there's one thing to really point out that's patently obvious. If you go back and look at the history of Super Bowl winning coaches, they all have, not all, but most of them have one thing in common. Charisma. You tell me about Kyle's charisma. Bottom line is Kyle can't close. If you count the Detroit game, which, again, love the Niners, but let's all face it, got a little lucky in that one. That would have been another loss in the championship game. Yeah. You know what they say, guys? It Coffee is for closers. So are championships. They're for closers. Close the game. Well, does can I ask a question? Does Andy Reid have charisma? I, I mean, in a commercial does. he does, but like... When I see him on the sideline, I don't. I don't. He's see, stoic. Yeah, he's yeah. Just I don't chilling. see a charismatic guy. Right. I don't. Is think Belichick that charismatic yeah, while that, coaching. That doesn't matter. I don't. I don't agree with that. Yeah. What I will say is they're very uh, singular in how they call plays, and I think that when I look at uh, at Mahomes and Andy Reid, they never like lose their minds. Like like Kelsey's losing his mind on the sideline, and Andy Reid's just chilling. You know what I mean? Belichick, everyone's going crazy. Go on timeout. Go on timeout. He's chilling. I saw. 
Kyle Shanahan throw a Microsoft tablet in overtime. Yesterday. Yeah, he threw the t tablet, threw it on the sideline. He went crazy at the defense. Well, you should be going crazy at the office because they didn't bring it. They did not bring it. Let's go to uh, you know, and the Bosa thing. I thought Bosa played a B plus game, but to me, when you're placing an A plus quarterback. He he turns what would have been an A game into a B plus yep. because he evaded so many negative plays. Mahomes, his pocket awareness is the greatest pocket awareness of all time. His ability to escape, create time, move with his feet, using his arms, using his legs. You're watching the greatest quarterback of all time in real time, Niner fans. I just we talk about oh, Purdy reminds me of, of but you know what? Montana. No, play, that is Montana. They will play well enough to win that football no game. No doubt. To beat Mahomes. But, but, to beat Mahomes. But it's all said and done. What but, did he do? he, he, well, well, but you know what? You gave him opportunities to do that, which we said you could. No. That's what you can't do it because your offense didn't do anything. How many this games? This is solely on the offense of Kyle Shanahan. You're in, when you don't convert long drives into touchdowns and you settle for three and you don't. Trent Williams. I'm glad he brought up Trent Williams because I'm watching the body break down between the break. Trent Williams, we want to call him the greatest left tackle of football. I don't know about that. And did Anthony Munoz play left or right tackle? Because Anthony Munoz is one and one, right? Orlando it's Pace. Orlando John Pace. Austin. I don't know if he's better than Orlando Pace. Trent Williams got his ass kicked yesterday. He got destroyed. Kansas City's defensive front punked the Niners' offensive line. Punked them. All right. Punked them. Carl Loftus and the, what's he up 54? Uh, Trent Williams was awful was yesterday. Amazing. Trent Williams was bad in the biggest game of his career. Gets a holding and a false start on one possession, and he never quite recovered. And you're right. Never quite recovered from that. So the premium players that we talked about on Friday needed to play, needed to make cold jacket plays. Who played They a, didn't make them. Who played A plus? Or who played A? I don't know. I right, Jawan Jennings, Jennings. That's a good one, wow. Lovin. Jawan oh, Jennings. But if I would have told Niner fans, Jawan Jennings would be the only guy to play an A game. Maybe Kyle Juszczyk? Yeah, no, Kyle Kyle was excellent. I thought Kyle Juszczyk was excellent. I mean, but, but that's not going to get it done, Bontem. That's not going to get it done. Not going to get it done. Not enough. Not enough, not enough against that football team. Third quarter, you come out and just blow all the momentum you built. All the momentum. That's just, I, it's just unbelievable. This is sickening, man. This is really, really painful, folks. BPA, you're on the roast. BPA, what's happening? It is painful, dude. I, I can't sugarcoat it this morning, Lutman. I can't. What the hell you want me to say today? Everything is great. We had a great season. And anybody wants me to say, hey, you know what? We had a great season. We made it to the Super Bowl. We're relevant again. Blah, 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 blah. The hell with that. I'm tired of finishing in second. I'm tired of losing like this, man. And going to these damn football games. I got to stop going to games. And, and That's what I'm doing. I'm just going to start watching these things at home. The other guy that we have to talk this. about, I thought Rasheed Rice in the second half started cooking in the middle of the well, field. They, he's a rookie. He's only going to get better. I mean, they used him on those so slides over, over, over and over and over and over and over and over over top to bottom better than us. BPA was out <sighs> I'm trying to be uh, solution-oriented. <laughs> Uh, it's, you know, the, the self-loathing <laughs> does not scale, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, look, they, all the, the Kyle and John blind spots, right. That quite frankly, a lot of us could see like Colton McKibbitz, the entire right side of the offensive line, Jake Moody, the secondary, all the places where they shortchanged or took shortcuts, um, you know, it was exposed for all to see. And yet they still should have won the game. I don't want to hear about Mahomes. They should have won the game. They left 19. Oh, he's gone? Well, Mahomes had call back. He had basically 400 yards of offense by himself. Yeah. But you know what, though? That came, that came late. But, you know, for the most part. <laughs> but that's what I the tell, greats yeah, do. No, that's what the greats do. I mean, you, but that's what the greats do when you let them, when you leave them in the ball game. Yeah, that's the thing. This, to me, so when it all comes down to great teams, like the Warriors championship teams, the Giants championship teams, all these, all these teams. It's about what you do. Always felt like this season. It's not about the other team. It's about the Niners. You're the better roster. You got premium players. It's about what you do out there. How do you play? Well, I thought because if you play to your full capabilities and your full potential, you're going to win more times than not. What the Niners did yesterday: fumbling on a first possession, muffing a punt. Having an extra point block, being three and twelve on third down, not burning the timeout before second down on the Chiefs' last possession in the first half, to where you don't get the ball back for basically an hour in real time. You're on one little rinky dink play to Chris McCaffrey what with two that? timeouts, what and you don't even stretch the field. It's the Super Bowl. Can we throw a deep shot? What are we doing here? Can we throw a deep shot? Something. Give me something. It's about what you do. 
And what the Niners did was shot themselves in the foot over and over again. And by at some point, it's like, oh, Mahomes is like, oh, man, I'm still in this game. Oh, boys, all we need is one play. One play, and we're going to bring this home. They knew when they got that ball in overtime after the Niners settled for three, after Colt McKivitz whiffed on the block to Chris Jones. Chris Jones, folks, if there's one guy not to block, it definitely ain't Chris Jones. I used to run in the back of the end zone wide open. And you knew when Mahomes got that ball back, damn, we're about to lose the Super Bowl like this. We knew it. Kansas City was so calm and collected on the game when he touched down drive. The clock is running. They didn't panic whatsoever. They got in the huddle. They called their play. Boom, Hartman in a flat. Game over. We're walking out the stadium saying, again, ripped our hearts out. This is on the Niners and that offense in Shanahan. That's it. It's about what they did and what they didn't do. And they didn't show up in the biggest game of the season. Biggest game of the season. And again, this is karma for not playing a full quarter, full game against Detroit, not playing a full game against Green Bay. Came back to bite you in the butt. This is sickening, man. Shanahan again. The worst part about it is, (laughs) I'm telling you, we've become the Cincinnati Bengals to his resume of Joe Montana. Like, that's what we are. We've lost now twice to this guy. We've got a Utah Jazz feel to ourselves. Jim Kelly to the Dallas Cowboys or Dallas Cowboys to the Buffalo Bills. We are this era's Buffalo Bills. It sucks. (laughs) <laughs> and the part that, that really pisses me off is that we do do a lot of talking. You know, our team does front run at times. And we do it as a fan base, no but doubt, you know what? No we doubt. back it up. But when you don't show up with the game on the line. Joke's on us. Well, it's hard to swallow. And it's hard to defend Shannon yep. this morning. <laughs> it's hard to defend a lot of guys. My guy Debo, 11 targets, three catches. 11 targets, three catches. You can't high point the ball. I don't know why we're throwing it with a guy's draped all over it. <laughs> And Purdy missed him in the end zone on the play where he was wide open. They did end up scoring later. Yeah, but he did miss him. Purdy He missed him. I mean, Purdy missed him. Purdy it, it, was off a little yesterday. It's okay to say it. Yeah, no, he was off. They were. He was he under was the rest. And he's going to be our quarterback next year. But let me tell you, Purdy better put up MVP numbers next year if he wants to get a contract for the Niners. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Right now, you know how this rolls, Niner fans. You know how this works. All right, what's coming up in the game? Brought to you by the Farmer's Dog. Your phone calls, 888- 957-9570. It's your show today as we react to this devastating loss to Super Bowl 58. Chiefs beat the Niners 25-22 in overtime. It's unacceptable! From better poops to more energy.
Last couple of years here, everyone wanted it so bad. So I think we're still trying to sort of gather, you know, our, our thoughts and, and everything right now. But everyone in that locker room loves each other. I tell you that. Now back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. I was Brock Purdy after starting at his first ever Super Bowl. The second year quarterback had a special season, but he was tw- twenty three and thirty eight last night, two hundred fifty five yards and a touchdown pass. Didn't throw a pick. Um, I thought he was very very poised considering who was on the other sideline and considering who he was going against. Look, Purdy, I, I, he is who he is. He's the last pick of the NFL draft. But I thought Purdy was okay. He was good enough to but win that, at times. Uh, that, you know, see, you, you he was can't. good enough to win at times. But your playmaker's got to make plays. Your offensive line's got to be a lot better. They do. But I, I hear you, Shasky. There's a difference between elite, great, and good. And last night he was good, not great or elite. And you need to be at least great. You may not need to be elite, but you need to be great. Well, teams win and lose, right? We all, everyone, everyone agrees. But like, this team has elite players everywhere, and and guys weren't playing up to their potential. That's where the quarterback is the differentiator. I mean, that it's just it is. That's modern sports. Guys aren't having good games. Can the quarterback bail us out a little here and there? Yeah, and happen. I thought the offensive line was porous yesterday at best, but. 
Mahomes was under duress a lot. Bosa was in his grill a lot. And, and he was rolling players. out, making plays. It, it's a player or two here and there. <sighs> Look, man, Purdy had an all-time regular season. Right. But he didn't have an all-time postseason. He nope. just didn't. Defenses were better. He looked a little overwhelmed at times in the postseason. I thought yesterday, you know, he wasn't as, as accurate as he's accustomed to He didn't have a be. great postseason. No, and I, the, the other thing is this. The West Coast timing offense that they have, it's very rhythmic, timing-based. Credit Spags. He knew all of the windows they were trying to throw to. They were chipping and blocking and pressing and... You know, slamming guys off the line of scrimmage, disrupting the timing. And when you throw with timing and anticipation and you get a rush and guys are getting chipped off their routes, it threw everything off. How many yeah. plays were you like, damn, it just looked off? Yeah, it, Something looked off. Offense is too rigid at times. It's too rigid at times, this offense. Yeah, but that's why it's, I look it, at Mahomes you know, and I'm like, even uh, if the play isn't there from Andy, he breaks it down, scrambling, holding the ball. And like sometimes his ability to just throw it away right. is a big play. He negates the eight yard loss by throwing it away. Nope. The play to Jennings, I can't. I, it was a broken play. Purdy yep. scrambles to keep it alive. Yep. That's where Purdy's got to learn. Throw it at his ankles. Throw it at his ankles. Don't you can't lose eight yards in that situation. Can't lose eight yards in that situation. I mean that it's ruins also, the whole drive. Just, just a vertical passing game was just non-existent. And the 49ers Stretching got to rethink the- this vertical passing game. It's been a problem over the last few years. They better get away with it with a great running game and going east west and all the drags and slant routes and working the middle of the field. But I need some verticality in this offense. Desperately. Desperately. Well, they love the deep crosser off play action. And that was there. They they hit Ray Ray on that. They yeah. hit Ayuk, I believe, on one of those. But but, but they can start you blitzing. Drop? They went five wide yeah. how many times? They start blitzing. They, start, they went five wide a lot. In this because game. they were Shock trying to Indian. spread out Kansas right. City. But here's the thing. They couldn't do anything in that well, formation. They don't respect your speed outside. Yes. You don't have a lot of speed outside. You got okay speed, athleticism, but you don't have birders. Who separates? Yeah, nobody. Nobody. I mean, Ayuk runs great routes. Debo, once he gets the ball in his hands, is a very good player. But you need somebody who can take the top off the defense desperately. The vertical pass game needs to be revamped this offseason. Daryl to Gugu Johnson. I don't know if that's Daryl Johnson, but Johnson. I, I doubt it's I doubt it's Guru Gaga because he Gugu. he wouldn't spend five dollars. He, he wouldn't spend five dollars to get this chatted. But there's I'm always. Out. There's always talk about Reed not being able to get it done until he left Philly and went to KC. Maybe these Niners are just like Kyle's Eagles. Maybe so. Maybe so. Uh, MB, MB, DB, DBF, whatever. Spent $10. Best rodeo ever. Congrats, congratulations on a great year and the number one seed, all of Philadelphia. Well, MB, DB, DBF, you still have to wake up in Philadelphia. Which is miserable. Oh, and your team yeah. ain't much. <laughs> you know what? We, got, I mean, we, we dropped 42 on your ass, and we can do this all offseason. Your team was in shambles. Remember, Philadelphia, I want you to remember this. Your Hall of Fame right tackle, Lane Johnson, just told the world last week the 49ers broke us. They dismantled well, us. When you lose remember the, that. When you lose the way the Niners did, yeah, all the fan bases well, are going to well, come but, out of the woodworks. You know what? Yeah, and that's, 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 that's what happened. Fine. That's fine. They that's part talk. of being a sports But I'm going to talk man. that talk to I'm not going anywhere. Dubai sent me a tweet yesterday. I was like, man, you wouldn't want to stay off the timeline. No, I'm in these streets, dog. I'm built for this. Come at me, dog. I'm like Je- I'm like uh, my boy uh, uh, Jon Snow in Game of Thrones, taking out the sword with all of Ramsey's boys coming at me. I'm solo dolo out here. I'll fight everybody out there. Well, if Dubois wants to claim Philly so much, give me his Barry a Sports Hall of Fame vote, and then we'll call it even. <laughs> there you go. Uh, let's go to... <laughs> that is an inside joke. Uh, very inside. Uh, let's go to Schlep Rock. Schlep Rock, what's happening, man? You're on the rust. What's going on, T? You, you, you guys are on fire today. It's going to be a wound-licking day for about 60 days out here in the Bay Area. But yeah. um, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The 49ers had a gift, a gift horse, and they didn't even open the package. Mm. Here's the thing. You got the second-best player... In football, he'd be the number one player in football if it wasn't for a guy that was a quarterback wearing number fifteen. He had a fumble in the first, the, what was it, the first drive? Do you know how that man felt? That man was beside himself. Do you know what a man who is beside himself plays like when he knows he let his football his teammates down? He's gonna play his ass off yeah. the rest of the day. You ride and die with McCaffrey. He's a horse. You ride him till he lathers. He would have gave you everything he had, and you probably win that game because guess what? He's a four-headed horse. 
he's going to beat the Chiefs because he's moving the chains, he's wearing down the clock, he's wearing your defense down, and in the fourth quarter, that defense is demoralized. That's when they should have t- took control of that game, even in overtime. They lost that game in overtime. Actually, they lost. The game was over to me. I'm sitting in my armchair. The game was over at halftime. The Chiefs played horrible that first half, yet they mm-hmm. rocked into halftime only down by seven. Who am I going to put my money on? Andy Reid yep. and that defensive coordinator who are going to make adjustment, who's going to come out there on fire. Plus, they got the ball. All right. Here's the thing, you know, Ryder Die McCaffrey until he lathers because he's the guy who brought you there. All right. Yep. It's gonna be a lot of wound licking and stuff going on. Hey, 49er fans, don't buy milk because it's probably sour, and when you're crying, it's probably gonna get spilled. You guys are hot. Have a good one. Love you, Schlep Rock. Love you, Schlep Rock. Great call there. Great call. You know, go ahead, Sam. I, 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 I'm get just to the looking hotline. at like I had charted all the plays. You and I yeah. were going through them. And you know, I know Shanahan's going to get a lot of heat. Believe me, I, I do. They get the Ray Ray, you know, punt muff, whatever, whoever you want to blame it on. Looter, Ray Ray, yeah. all of them. Oh they score a touchdown. And then I'm looking at it. Pass tipped. CMC run. They call a timeout. Jennings with a great catch yep. on a greatly designed yep. play by Shanahan. Yep. Uh, Debo with a little shoulder play. Juice run. Then it gets the fourth quarter. Then to Ayuk. Ayuk's open. High and wide by Purdy. High yep. and wide. Play action. Perfect play call. Purdy. Off balance, bad throw. Just a bad throw. Toss left. Toss left. The point that I'm getting at, he had a couple of nice throws. Nothing outside of structure except for the one scramble play to Juice late yeah. in that game. The final three or four drives, Mahomes had many impromptu plays. But he, but you know what, though? Purdy couldn't improvise because the Chiefs were blitzing and they were getting home. I can't. They I were can't, getting home. I can't argue. They were crushing the pocket. The offensive line did not hold up. So Mahomes... He had a little bit of time, and the Niners was only sitting at four. They didn't blitz much in this game. They blitzed once. Uh, I know they blitzed late, and Rasheed Rice uh, caught the crosser. Yes, he got yes. a big first down. They got burned by the blitz on that play. But for the most part, the Niners did not blitz. Kid City is back, said, you know what? Let's heat But you up have Purdy. to make them punish for that. You, you have you to have do. hot that's routes. Shannon, that's on Shanahan's offense. Uh, it's also that's on the a, quarterback to have some bit, autonomy at the line. A little bit, but you're talking about scrambling around, making plays with your legs. You got no time to do that well. because the Chiefs, I thought, with their pass rush, did a very good job of containing Purdy and not letting him break the pocket and get that outside leverage where, you know what, outside containment, Kansas City, I thought, did a very good job with that. Very good job with that. I so mean, I'm giving Kansas City credit with their defense. Of course they're going to get credit. Uh, they, they, they did that. They they dictated what the Niners did. They punished them in the run game. They punked our offensive line. They didn't, dude. They, their defensive lineman was just stonewalling dudes. Banks, Trent Williams. I that's the worst game I've ever seen Trent Williams play. Big, big Trent got pummeled, and it wasn't even Chris Jones over there. So I, you know. This is on the offensive Shanahan and the creativity, man. I want to go to the hotline because this guy, I love this kid. I really do. And at the games, he expresses how he feels. One of the best moments I ever had was outside of Jerry's world and running to this guy, chest bumping with him because I know what it means to him to try to see the Niners win. He wants to see a Super Bowl. His grandfather sat next to your grandfather, Shasky, at Candlestick Park. We know his mom. We know his brother. We know his dad. This guy lives and dies Niners football. And I can't imagine or fathom how he feels right now after that loss last night. It's Niner Nick. Niner Nick, what's happening? What's up, Nick? Oh, Bonte, that was one hell of an intro. Joe, morning. Um, oh, man, the passion is pain. I'm, I'm going through it this morning, man. That hurts. It hurts. It feels like... And it felt like everything was aligned all season long. You get to the postseason, you're healthy. The biggest injury was Talanoa Hufunga. All your stars, mm. though, for the most part, are in a good position. You have the one seed. You get fall behind against the Packers and Lions, but you make it to the Super Bowl. It's in Vegas. Tons of Niner fans. Everything felt aligned. And then your all pros, future Hall of Famers, Trent Williams, Christian McCaffrey, they're the ones to let you down in the first half. The defense played really, really well. And the offense just didn't come through when they needed to in the first half. But you know what? You have the lead at halftime. It's 10-3. to The Chiefs get the ball. And what do the Chiefs do? They throw an interception. They throw the interception. And then you throw three pass plays. You punt. You get the ball back. And you throw three pass plays again. And, um, man, it just feels like this was the Niners' opportunity. It was right there. 
Everything is aligned for you. It's right there. You get the in overtime. You get the holding call. You get a gift on third and ten. And how about all the stuff coming out right now? The 49ers weren't on the same page with overtime. Some of the players didn't know the new overtime rules. Don't even know if Kyle Shanahan knew the new overtime rules. It just feels Nick, like Nick. Can I stop really... you right there? Nick, I'm yeah. gonna stop you. I'll let you finish. They put the graphic up on the big screen for everyone to see yeah. and announced it to the crowd. Because we were there in the stadium. These are the overtime rules. Each team will have a possession and can match the other team's score. And if both teams score the equal amount of points, then it's sudden death from then on. Like, they put it up on the big screen. I, I just, I don't know how they didn't know that. Uh, I don't know either. But just the fact that there wasn't, it never felt like, and hearing now, it doesn't feel like there was a plan in overtime. It's just like, no. okay, let's get the ball. We settle for three. Uh, but it just, it's really heartbreaking. It's disappointing. And then you, you go, you guys got to think about now we have to go through another regular season. How is anybody supposed to enjoy it? Like what regular season football means nothing to me now. It's no. almost like the Warriors wake me up when we're in the postseason. I know mm -hmm. we're going to get back. There's a good chance we're going to get back. But now you have to worry about can we get another 17 games out of Christian McCaffrey? Can we get 17 games out of Trent Williams? That's asking a lot. Debo Samuel. These are guys that have injury history that somehow miraculously were all able to stay healthy all year long. You just never know if you're going to get that again. Again, you have the Super Bowl. It felt like it, that Dre Greenlaw injury. Oh, man, mm. what a bad omen that was. Um, but, yeah, you know. What did you think of Purdy? Feels like, what's that? What did you think of Purdy? I think Purdy played a good ball game. You know, yeah, he's going I'm up against a too. quarterback that – Quarterback uh, Patrick Mahomes is already on the Mount Rushmore of NFL quarterbacks. So he's going to be the best quarterback of all time when it's all said and done. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind. He is just such a gamer. You never count him out. If the uh, Chiefs were playing anybody else in the Super Bowl, my money would have been on Patrick Mahomes. But, you know, you're, the Niners are the one going up against them. But I thought Purdy played okay. He got off to a really, really hard start in the first half. The first quarter looked really, really good. And I think that's because Kyle Shanahan got him into a rhythm. He was rolling out that first play, of the, uh, first pass play to Kyle Juszczyk. Get your boy in a rhythm. He was yeah. throwing off balls to McCaffrey. And then as soon as we got that Jair Brown interception, it's snap the ball and drop Purdy back. And Kyle Shanahan yeah. has done that time and time again. I don't mind the pass plays, but roll him out. Roll him out. Find that rhythm instead of just dropping him straight back. It was just really, really frustrating to watch. Because if you capitalize off that interception, and again, you, you didn't capitalize off the interception. You punted to the Chiefs. It was a great punt. You downed him deep inside their own territory. And then you get the ball back and do the same thing all over again with the three pass plays. And I've seen that too often from Kyle Shanahan. We've seen it in Super Bowl 54. He just does not learn. And I don't think he deserves all of the blame, but it's his offense that did not yep. get the job done. You held Patrick Mahomes to 19 points through four quarters. Yep. And that's got to be enough to get the job done. Great call, Niner Nick. Good to hear from you. Congrats on being a new father. <clears throat> Think, you know, over the last month and a half or whatnot, maybe even less than that, but Niner Nick here on the morning roast. Let's get to uh, Vincent I, I, and Louisiana. Before you go to the next call, I just don't think good is good enough. Like, okay, you played okay. Well, to me, if you want to win a Super Bowl, I don't care who your quarterback is. Nick Foles, you know, Dan Marino, Joe Montana, Jimmy Garoppolo, Brock Purdy. You have to play great, to, especially to beat that guy. Well, you can't play great when your offensive line is getting caved in. Hey, I hear you. Plays. I hear empty, you. That's a part of it. Empty formations. The offensive line did not hold up. Mahomes lost the Super Bowl because right. his offensive line exactly. played terrible. So his offensive line failed him. Big Trent Williams. Big Trent. Texas. Right. You know? Hall of Famer. They Some say he's the best left tackle of all time. Didn't play like it yesterday. Banks had his worst game. The right side of the offensive line don't even get me started. We knew Colton McKivitz would be an issue. And it finally reared its ugly freaking Head in the Super Bowl. I, I just so I don't so no, I the hear you be, line, but like when we talk about line, these franchise quarterbacks and these Debo, well, MVPs. he's not the franchise. So out of the, let, let's stop mean? right here. What do you mean? Brock Purdy after the season is going to be eligible for contract extension. If you don't believe, if he doesn't have another MVP season, you think the Niners are going to just go ahead and pay him? What if he goes out there next season and he regresses? Well, that's obvious. That's obvious. I mean, so like, let's chill on the franchise quarterback. Let's chill. Kansas City has a franchise well, quarterback. I mean, he's the best ever. Are we sure Brock's going to be around for a while? I don't know. Like, I'm not hating on but Brock. But he, he had a great regular season, and I didn't see that translate to the postseason. No, it didn't. That's what I'm saying. 
That's what I'm saying. We don't know if he's a franchise quarterback. We don't know. We don't know. Just like with Jimmy. We don't know. I, didn't, I, I thought he played like a B-minus game. And for them to win, they, he needed to be B-plus, A-minus. you know what, though? The offensive line needed to be in No, a. I agree. But you've got to overcome that better. at times, too. Like, Josh to Allen's sitting at home because his other teams didn't make plays, and we crushed Josh Allen. Yeah, but when and he carried them. But you know what? When your wide receiver's not getting separation, what are you going to do? Well, I, what are you going to do? And Mahomes was running around. Yeah, he had but, but 66 receiver, yards running. But their but they're, they're receivers no doubt. were getting separation. No doubt. No doubt. You know? No doubt. So I, I do want to. I may have. But I, now we can meet in the middle. See. Like I think Shanahan wasn't the greatest. I think all the playmakers, you know, had. You cannot have Ayuk, Kittle, and Debo go for eight for eighty four. Yeah, no, it's you tough. can't. But I also look at the quarterback, and I'm like, like this is on all of them. There's a big pie chart. But if I'm looking at like Purdy, you guys all want to, and and I, me too. Like he's so much better than Jimmy. There were plays out there that he missed. He made some plays. He missed some plays. He needed to be a little better. So did Kyle. But, so did the O line. Think about the so most the important weapons. play. I just feel and like we're I, not I, talking about no, the quarterback. No, no, enough. no. We're, we will. We trust me. We gonna talk about the quarterback. We gonna talk about the quarterback. Three and twelve on third down. You have to talk about the quarterback. But give the other team no credit. Doubt. No give doubt. Give Spags credit. He heated up Purdy at a rate that he'd never seen before. 44% of the time in the second half. Now, Pat, my barber, called in from the district barbershop, and Pat did make a good point about being an elite processor and processing things. What happened on third and four with McKivitz not even blocking Chris Jones is completely unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. I don't know who that's on. I don't know if it's on McKivitz. I don't know if it's on Purdy. I don't know what the hell it's on because I'm not in the huddle, and I don't know the play call. But I look at the entire offense. It's Shanahan. This is all on them. This is all on money down starting 12. Purdy didn't miss throws. There's no I, doubt about that's it. That's all I'm Purdy saying. missed throws. I, 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 I hope it doesn't sound like I'm blaming him. No, 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 I'm no, not no, blaming no, him. No, no, I'm just no. saying that, like, he didn't make throws. I, I feel like we're getting a lot of calls. That he had moments, but, like, to beat that not guy, enough. not enough. To, you know, enough. you want to be one of the all time greats, you got to punch one into the end but zone. Also, if you want to beat that guy, Mahomes, the offensive player of the year, Chris McCaffrey, can't fumble on the first no, possession. No, beat. Right. Inarguable. You want to beat Mahomes? Inarguable. Debo Samuel can't leave a game with 11 targets and only three catches. No doubt. You hey. want to beat Mahomes? George Kittle can't have two catches for four yards. I saw more WWE promos for George Kittle yeah. this week than well, impact plays. Well, you know, Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, you want to beat Mahomes? You can't go 3-12 on no third doubt. down. No you doubt. want to beat Mahomes? Extra points can't get blocked. You want to beat Mahomes? Looter, McLeod, can't muff pucks. But you also have to find a way to exploit that team with 10 in the box, 11 in the... Like I agree. All, I their agree. entire... When you go back and... I know the All-22 is going to go crazy over the internet over the next couple of days. Bonte, the whole game, you and I were like, they have to find a way to stretch loosen the field. Up, loosen up the field. Downfield shots. And they Downfield just couldn't, shots. They couldn't exploit it. Outside the numbers. Throw it down the field. Vertical passing game like, has been lacking for the 49ers for many, many years. I know. I They've been like able to mask that. Run. They were able to mask that for a long time. <laughs> And then the Super Bowl 54, and then this Super Bowl 58, it reared its ugly head. You need some verticality with your passing game. Ken Rodriguez spent $10 on the free agency. Who do you want to see? I'm not talking free agency. We got all you're off just, season. You just wasted $10. We're not talking free agency today. We're reacting to the Super Bowl. Vincent and LA. I don't even know if happening? they have any money. <laughs> Vincent and LA. I don't even care about the cap right now. Care about how the hell we're going to get up off the bat after suffering another devastating loss in the Super Bowl. And we're out green law for a year. <laughs> I mean, it's it's that that that's like the little like insult to injury. It's somebody saying, "Get rid of Moody fast." Jake Moody made two fifty yard field goals yesterday. Shut up! And he what kicked are you every single right. You know, kick, kick into the end zone, the end zone Moody, which I thought was a big. Jake element. Moody's not the guy to blame. Uh, Vince in L.A. Vince, what's happening? Hey guys, can you guys hear me? Yeah, we got you. Okay, I, I'm I'm just driving up to work right now. I've been waiting to get my uh, take in here. You know. I'm, I'm down here in L.A., and Kyle just seems to remind me of uh, Dave Roberts. You know, when it comes down to championships, playoffs, their mindsets just go away from sticking to the plan. You know, if you look across the field last night, there was a guy just like that years ago with the Eagles, and that was Andy Reid. He can never punch in the ticket. And I feel like Kyle is the same way. And we will not see a championship until he leaves and learns the lessons with the Niners. And I know we're not going to let him go. But I feel deep in my heart that Kyle will not learn until he leaves. And I don't know 
when this will be well, our time. I, I hear you. You know, and, and like, look, just allow me to, to explain this whole thing because it's going to, you're going to probably, your head's going to want to explode. The reason why I kind of lost my mind, on, not lost it, but like, I was just like, Jed, just stop. When I heard Jed talking last week, there was a sense of accomplishment. And I get it. Getting to the Super Bowl is an accomplishment. But I just asked him a question. I know, about but Bonte, but Bonte, just, just what do you hear want me out. To do? I know, just hear me out. Like, There's is- this overall sense of like getting there to the Super Bowl is a sense of, and I get that. It is an accomplishment, the journey. But we can reflect on the journey in the offseason or when we're removed from the situation. Run through the line. Well, you have to finish the race. What do you want? He, he goes there to talk to the press. They ask him a question about Brooke Purdy. He gave us a story about it. I What's wrong with that? I, I, That's not I the reason why they And, and when, I see the, when I see the coach and, and, and everybody there was, and I get it, like there is an accomplishment of getting that far. But when you've knocked on the door as often as this team has, this team, this version of this team, forget the hardball years. I'm not this core. Like, we got to run through the line. You can't yeah, but, slow but, up at the, at the end Lacob of the marathon. Does this, Joe Lacob does this all the time. Joe Lacob held a press conference at the podium before game one of the NBA Finals against the Boston Celtics. Nobody said anything. And I get he already had championships in the pocket. But Lacob talks all the time, and I have no problem with Lacob talking. I had no problem with Jared talking. They asked him a question about Brock. He gave a little story. I thought it was a fun story. Gave shed some light on, oh, wow, Kyle really believed in Brock Purdy early on. Now, whether or not you agree with what was said is another thing. There could be some fibbing going on there. But Jay York doesn't talk much. He's the owner of his team. These guys are getting paid premium money. He's there. He's You know what? I'd heard from Jet. I wanted, hell, two years ago when the Niners were losing and they were 3-5, and five, what did you tell me and everybody else said, we need to hear from Jed York about this situation. We need to hear from Jed, 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 Jed. And I was like, nah, why? Jed hasn't talked for a while, so now we got a problem with him talking? That's the no, last thing on my mind right now. it's more the sense of, like, there's always, with this team, there was a no. sense of we've achieved something great, and it's like, yeah, you guys are really, really good. But to get into the great pantheon, you got to finish the job. No doubt. You got to nope. finish the job. Nobody and we said keep they were choking great. at the end. Nobody said he didn't say they were great. They said, wow, he really believed in his quarterback. And I see why Kyle believed in his quarterback. Purdy was poised yesterday. Purdy, I think, played with a lot of boxing. Was he great? No. But for his first Super Bowl against Mahomes, I see it a lot worse in that situation. Well, you might so not I, don't back, even, I know, but so, you might not get so back there. I, I, and just, you may not be there, but I don't care about Chad. Chad talking on a Monday had no bearings I on the Super Bowl yesterday. I mean, more organizationally. Yeah, I mean, more organizationally. I mean, what, what are you going to do? It's a Super Bowl week. It's media day. They're going to ask you questions. They're going to request Jet York at some point. He got it out the way and said it, Clara. We move on. Hey, like, Lacob talks all the time. And I love Joe Lacob. Love Joe Lacob. But he talks all the time. But in the, in, the, in in their case, they had already hung multiple banners. And there's this, there's just, I'm telling you, when you and have. There's people who say, well, you got Steph Curry. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, we don't. <laughs> yeah, they, you they know what I'm saying? Think about how Reinsdorf is getting killed in Chicago. He's got six championships. Whenever he speaks, Bulls fans are saying, why don't you just shut the hell up, Jerry Reinsdorf? Well, that's because you know? of a lot of other you know, nuanced so, uh, things. I'm just saying I get a sense of, like, they, they and, I, and I understand they've been wildly successful, but there's this one thing that they need to do. It's called, like, finish the race. Yes, no doubt. They all know that. We all know that. And it's got a Deshaun Jackson at the goal line celebrating before oh, he's man. actually gone you through guys, the end zone. That's all. That's just the feeling I get. Yeah, and it drives me nuts. Yeah, no, that, you guys just don't like Jed York. I get it. You guys don't like Jed. It's fine. No, I no, care. I don't mean just him. I'm I just mean, saying, like, just, organizationally, what they if, all like to talk. You have to talk during the Super I know. Bowl. You have obligations with the media. What else are you going to say? You got to talk. This had nothing to do on the Super Bowl loss. Nothing. <laughs> Karma, an idiot, that football got to hell with the football gods. Oh you, just... you muffed punch, you fumbled on the first drive, you went 3-12 and 12 on third down, you, did, you didn't finish your job, you completely dominated the first half, and you were up 10-3 going into halftime, didn't touch the ball for an hour in real time. And then you call eight pass plays in your first nine, and I get their stack in the box, but damn it, that's on the players and the coach offensively. I'm looking at the offense here. I don't want to hear a guy. I don't want to hear a guy or girl this whole all season, talk about Steve Wilkes and that Super Bowl performance. Because you know what? Steve Wilkes is the best coach on the 49ers sideline yesterday. That defense was flying around and humming and held Mahomes at 19 points. 19 points. Nobody, not nobody, was thinking about Jay York during that football game. So I don't want to hear it now. I don't. Sorry. I'm ready. We're all frustrated. Delhi boy. Let's hear from Delhi boy. I need some positivity.
Oh, there's going to be no positivity for me today. <laughs> I'm so pissed off right now on what I just witnessed last night. This game can be summed up in rare errors and missed opportunities by this team. Now, McCaffrey had a rare fumble, and it seemed like Kyle just kind of lost confidence in him throughout the whole game. This is the guy who got you to where you are right now. You can say what you want about Purdy and the defense, but no, Christian McCaffrey was our MVP this year, and for some reason, we just decided not to give him the ball that much. And then Mahomes has the rare interception, and we're right there on the 50, and for some reason, we don't capitalize and put points on the board right there. Missed opportunity. I don't know what happened when the play calling or Kyle just got a little too cute getting into his bag, but it just seemed to me that the team wasn't really all on the same page. Now, and about overtime, why wasn't there any talk about giving Mahomes the ball first? If you knew that we were going to be able to get a chance to match their score, why not give him the ball and let us have the Because your D was on the field forever. <laughs> that's, that's what I was thinking. So what was that? The defense was on the field for so long, they were exhausted. Like, Bosa came out on the final draft. That's what I thought. Pat, I'm telling you, the way I looked at it was this. You need to score a touchdown in overtime because that guy over there is going to score a touchdown, whether he gets it first or second. Yeah, I I agree. I agree. Something happened there. We we had to be a little bit more aggressive in that run. But rare opportunities and rare, rare mistakes. I mean, Trent Williams was a huge holding call that I don't think I've seen that all year. And all of a sudden... He just kind of disappeared this game. He played like crap. Yeah. He played like crap. I mean, this is this this loss, I'm gonna say, it feels like one of the worst Bay Area losses i I can remember. This gives me two thousand two Giants Angels vibes of just sitting back and thinking, What just happened? Yep. We should have won that game. We should have won that game in the first half. Yep. It's a hundred percent. For some correct. reason yep. I I don't know what happened, but we're gonna look about we're gonna look back at this game and think, What did we what what went wrong? And I'm gonna yeah. say this right now, okay? Can Niner fans stop with this quest for six thing? This whole slogan for quest for six, I'm telling you, it's bad for us. What We only want six? No, I want seven. I want eight. I want a lot. I want the next one. Stop with this. The dynasty is over. This is a new dynasty. I want a new championship. I don't want six. I want more. Stop with this quest for six. I think, I think it's doing us a disservice. And, okay, now we're going to look back in the future. We need to a, a, uh, invest heavily in O-line. Huh. Okay. If That's this, not what they Purdy, do. If Purdy is going, if Purdy is going to be our QB for the next how many years? Who knows? Well, let's protect the little guy. He needs protection. And Trent Williams, as great as he is, who knows what's going to happen next year? He's thirty six. He's thirty five. Thirty six. Yeah, he's I mean, old. He said he's coming back, football. but he was awful. Yeah. I mean, you know, I don't think he was. Good. Deli boy. Last thing. Mahomes is the best ever. I mean, he's 28 years old with three championships, and he didn't even have a great game, and, and you just knew he was inevitable in that yeah. game. He was Thanos. Joe, so, so he's, so he's, I mean, you're, you're talking about Mahomes. We all knew, Avante said it earlier, when we only put three up in overtime and with Mahomes coming down, I felt, I felt it right there. I was like, this is over. They're going to win somehow, yeah. some way. And the way, the way it ended like that, I had to turn off the TV immediately. I had to go outside, go for a breather. I was fuming, fuming, just thinking, <laughs> What just happened? <laughs> Did we really lose this way? Nope. Did I, we I'm, really lose? I mean, man. this is it's. I'm I'm so pissed off right now, and I don't think it's just one play. I don't think there was one play or one decision or anything like that. This is accumulation of just errors, missed yep. opportunities, yep. rare mistakes. This is this is this was not nine or ball. This was you know, not nine or ball. Great call, no, great call, thing. Daily Boys. One of your best calls. Love ever. you, buddy. It's one of your best calls ever, and I felt every bit of that, Shasky. You're listening to 95.7 Game KGMG FM in HG1 San Francisco. Shout out to YouTube and Twitch. Brought to you by First NorCal Credit Union. Shout out to all the haters as well. We love you as well. Uh, that walk home, Shasky. I want you to explain it because we walked out that stadium. I mean, I may have thrown a pack of halls <laughs> on the ground. I stopped. I started. We ran into Katie Box. I had no idea that was Katie Box. She came up and hugged me. Was like, "Keep your head up, man. I know you're hurting." I was like, "I played a sixty minute game." I, I couldn't even talk to anyone. I just kept walking. I was dead silent. We were very silent. It was uh, it was really, really, really sad. You know what uplifted me for a second? Coach, but I felt this pain. Coach in Los Altos Hills. He came over. So coach who calls up to the station all the time. Coach in Los Altos with his two sons and just a great yep. family. And I was so sad. And, and this yep. fan was like talking to us during our video and going back and forth. Throw that to the side. Coach came over and gave me a big hug. And he said the same thing that I felt. It's one of the worst losses I've ever endured in yeah. sports ever. They had that game 10 different ways. <laughs> and I think we all feel the same way. It's like 
really like Shanahan a lot. Almost, I, lo- I love the guy. Yeah. But I do question, like, are we ever going to win one with him? And I'm not saying that you got to get rid of him. I'm not like I'm already seeing fire Shanahan, hire Belichick. Yeah, Nobody's that's, saying that's that. Silly. But there is a feeling. It's like, is he ever going to get over the hump? I don't know. It's like Dusty Baker. This was the Shanahan Super Bowl. I mean, the, Pat was, saying O2 was is so right. No, well, the the list I had up, and I didn't tweet it, Shasky. But game it was, six. It was Game Six O2, Father's Day 2016, Game Seven, Go to State Warriors, Cleveland Cavaliers, and the Tuck World Game. With the Raiders. And that wasn't even in the, the championship round. Yeah, it was a divisional round. But you knew that's – it felt like the winner of that game was going to go to Pittsburgh and yes. win anyway. Uh, but there, there's some other devastating losses, no, I, w- I would also uh, add 19, Seattle. 19, let's go ahead. Seattle, NFC Championship game. Because well, of what it signified. 162, 1993. Yes. You win 103 games. You don't Solomon Torres. Solomon, Solomon Torres starting over Dave Rigetti yep. in the final game and of the year. And beat 12-1 at Dodger Stadium. I mean, there's some devastating losses. I mean, you blew a, like, a 12-game lead I mean, in the division listen, over a two-month span. I'm not going to lie to you, Shasky. We sat next to each other. That was free. And I told you, I said, I am freaking out right now. I am freaking out. I am not well. I, I felt it. How because, many times did I elbow you? Yeah, I know. It, well, he you know has what? him. He has him. He has him. Well, here's the deal. At some point, you start to feel like the Cubs, who had won a World Series for so long. You start to feel like the Red Sox. You start to feel like these teams that just can't get over the hump. And I swear to God, when that when that third quarter started, and they went three and out on three straight possessions, I said, "Boy, they're not going to do this. They're going to find a way to get heartbroken once again. Or we're going to have I, and like at that point." I never envisioned us watching Purdy and Shanahan on the podium lifting a Lombardi. Monte, that was just not going to happen. I was just, how are they going to lose at this point? What happened before halftime? Which it was the reversal of you and me from the last Super Bowl, where I said to myself, he needs to call a timeout so that we can get the yeah, ball right back. For a second, second, so. So go to that quarter. sequence. Well, well, it always, was like a minute well, 10. My, and I turn to you and I go, he needs to call a well, timeout. Well, no. Kansas City is going to score. Well, here's the deal. And this is where my thought process is at the end of the half. Yeah. Use your timeouts. Try to get gonna another get possession. Ball. Yeah, because I was thinking about it like this. And I told Lovin, I said, okay, the halftime show is going to be about 30 minutes. Yes. The Chiefs receive the second, second half kickoff. Yes. There's a possibility your offense doesn't touch the ball for an hour in real time. An hour I know. in real time. You had to somehow, some way, get the ball back here. So and what I happens ke- here? And I kept thinking to myself, just in my mind, you've dominated the first half, right. and you don't have enough of a lead to showcase it. Yep. And if I'm Kansas City, and you said this to Whitley, you have to feel great about feel yourself great. being down only seven. 10-3. They felt great about and it. And that's so- why I was like, so my thought process was this. You tell me you trust the quarterback. You love him. We're going to be aggressive. I've learned from my mistakes. It's 10 nothing. Kansas City's marching. Burn some time. Force them to be yeah, aggressive so, so you can go for a drive. Here's the situation. First and 10 at the Niners' 14-yard line. Mahomes has the ball. First and 10, 109 left. Kansas City burns a timeout. Short pass to Rasheed Rice for three yards. Right then and there, I'm calling a timeout. Yeah, I was literally pointing it out. Throwing even, up like, the I, Max I, right I, I thought it was just obvious, and I'm watching Shanahan the whole time. I started watching yeah, Shanahan. What, what, I didn't even he's look. walking around. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. He looks at the clock. He's thinking about it. And at that point, it's like, dude, 15 seconds just burned off it, the clock. It, what late. the heck are you doing? It's too late. His clock management drives me insane. I can't sleep over it. Get the clock management coach that Sean McVay has. I, I, Hire that guy from L.A. Hire the God. 11-year-old who won the Madden right. tournament because they know the clock. So then, third and five, you sack Mahomes. There's 23 seconds left. And it's like, oh, let's burn our first time out and, of the half. Which Kansas City would have burnt their timeout, which would have been their third, right? So then you have 23 seconds and all three of your timeouts. Now you could be aggressive. Well, and if but, you do turn it over when you get the ball back, well, then Kansas then, City has no timeouts to march with. But even then, I see Kansas City getting a field goal range with 13 seconds. seconds left yes. and one timeout. So you get the ball, there's 20 seconds left. 25 yard and line, you got two timeouts. You run a little off tackle play to McCaffrey to go into the half, not knowing that, oh, wait, we're not going to touch the ball with, for another 45 minutes. With no Kittle on the field. <laughs> with, you run to yeah. Charlie Warner's side uh, with so, no Kittle on the field. So the, the clock the whole, I, and so I knew right then and there, I go, oh, they lost all the momentum. All the momentum was gone, just like that. Right there. Just and then like you that. carried that right over into the third just quarter like where you drop back and pass way too I many mean, times. I mean, it was just unbelievable. Let's go to Clark the Shark before the break. Clark the Shark, what's happening? <laughs> Bonte Belafonte and Cup of Joe. Hey, how are you guys doing? God bless you guys. Thank you. 
Thank you. Over right. to I mean, hey. as best as we can. Uh, Good to see my auntie after hey, I got so get a home cook meal. Uh, ah, there you go. There you go. You know, I'll tell you that that game was probably one of the more most exciting but still gut-wrenching, anxiety-ridden games I've ever seen. It's got to be the number one Super Bowl as far as that goes. And, boy, you knew you, you know you're alive through that game, I'll tell you. Sure. Um, but anyway, I know it, it didn't end well, and that's really sad. Uh, they came, you can't come any closer than that to winning the championship. But, um, I just wanted to say a couple of things is that, um, you know, I think the main thing was the offensive line. Uh, you know, Brock Purdy, the offensive line had a, tw- I think they were 22nd in the league in, uh, pass blocking win rate. And pretty, he had guys in his face pretty much most of the night. He had a few clean pockets. But look what Mahomes in the first half, look what, uh, look what he did. Hardly nothing. Why? Because the defensive line was rested and was in his face. And I just think that people, uh, I think Purdy's a franchise quarterback, but they got to get, they got to rebuild that offensive line, and they and they got to do it quick. But they got forty million in cap, uh, you know, under the cap, so they can do it. I hear Lane Johnson for uh, Philadelphia is a free agent. But so you draft offensive linemen, and they need more defensive linemen. Yeah. Kevin Givens, well, come on, he didn't do anything. How many more resources are they going to spend on the defensive line? Yeah, the defensive line. Defensive line it's just, I mean, how, Armstead thinking, make it 20. Hargrave make it 20. Bosa make it 120. Here's one. Chase, Gregory, do we, don't, do we don't have enough? One that we're going to chew on, and I don't know if today's the day, but I'm thinking more and more about the overtime. And I'm looking at this where Kyle Yusek said, I assumed... You just want the ball because you score a touchdown to win on the playoff rules. <laughs> now you look at Drew Tranquil of the Kansas City Chiefs on the playoff OT rules. He goes, we had an OT rules presentation and strategy meeting every week of the playoffs and twice in our Super Bowl prep. You got Just be- in case. So one team, know what was going on in overtime? The other team is like, ah, oh, well, we're just kind of going to wing it. We don't expect to go to overtime. Not buttoned up. You're not buttoned up the biggest game of the season. That falls squarely on the head coach of the 49ers, Kyle Shanahan. So Kyle Shanahan. That's yeah. unacceptable. It's, now that I've heard just, that. I, I just, I, it makes me sicker to my stomach. It's so coming up on the game. Brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking. No compromises. We're going to finish the show. Wow. Last segment. Thank the heavens for that. I need a break. Uh, 888-957-9570. We're going to continue to digest Super Bowl 58. We'll see. Well, we're wrong, in your opinion, 49er fans. Like, just We're going to try to be your Dr. Melfi today. That's what we're going to try to do here on the Morning Rose on 95.70 game. This is Larry Fleck, owner of The Floor Store. Our President's Day sale is on now, and it's big. Up to 50% off store-wide, 0% finance.
Now, back to the morning roast with Bonte and Shasky. All right. Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to laugh it off a little bit, man. This is rough. Uh, get you some 957 game gear now at breakingt.com slash 957. Uh, we got 49ers cool, cool 49ers apparel, as well as awesome gear repping the shows here at 957 the game. Go to breakingt.com slash 957. Don't be ready to a fan who listens to us from the roast. He's from Denver, Colorado. We're walking around pregame. And we could get to the pregame shenanigans maybe tomorrow. Today's not the day. We're not in a good mood. But, we were on uh, stage like rock stars. Well, you know, I told Shasky, we, we get off stage. before we go on stage, I say, Shasky, let's go be legendary. Well, that's going to age well, that video. But I know, also uh, got hurt in pregame, but that's for tomorrow. Yeah, I mean, that's for tomorrow. I hey, lost. I'm out. This fan from Denver was like, he had all the Super Bowl 58 gear. It's like, oh, man, I got my Super Bowl glasses. Oh. And I told him, I go, <laughs> I don't buy Super Bowl gear unless my team wins. I totally I don't buy you. World Series gear unless my totally team wins. Agree. I don't buy Finals gear unless my team wins. So we walk by after the game at Legion Stadium. There's a big tent with Super Bowl 58 gear. I said, "What? Won't be buying that." They went back to back, <laughs> and they went to Baltimore, and they went to Buffalo. And guess what? There were underdogs in all three games. The Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes were made underdogs in all three games. All three. I just so, uh, and everybody know. everybody deserves some criticism in this one, you know, from the top on down. I mean, it's just coach, premium players making premium money, offensive line, quarterback, um, specific defensive situational stops, injuries, special teams. You know, a guy who we haven't even talked. Chris Conley had a hell of a game. In special teams. He did. And it means nothing. It it means nothing. He had one great catch, too. He had a hell of a game. Chris Connolly had a hell of a game. He did have a good game. I mean, no one won. We're never going to remember it. We're never going to remember it. Chris Connolly had a hell of a game. We're never, pardon me, we're never going to bring up the ladybug catch by Brandon Ayuk in ABC title game. How about? Think about that. Think about all the plays and all the memories this season. It's it's all off the window. It does not matter. How about the Justin Watson throw? From Patrick Mahomes late in the game. Oh my God, on the sideline between the window, in the window. It was an absolute, absolute perfect <laughs> layered laser. I mean, Mahomes, man. Mahomes is. And you know what's funny? He almost hit Kelsey, too, on that second to last play. Yeah. And you know what? <laughs> he could have been a diner, but they didn't really want to. It's going to haunt us him. forever, huh? Oh, it will. This is worse than the Aaron Rodgers. This is a lot worse than the Aaron Rodgers. A lot worse. I mean, this is this is as bad as it gets for a Forty Nine er fan, and I don't. Again, I'm just thinking about the process and trying to get through it and over it. McCaffrey had a quote. I don't know if it's on our side. I don't think it's on our sound sheet. But McCaffrey talked about, "Yeah, it's gonna hurt, and we're gonna go through the process of it not hurting." But he goes, "It's as irritated and ticked off I've ever seen Chris McCaffrey, yeah. and I've been to pressers when he was at Stafford. I got a picture on my Instagram profile of me standing behind him at Stafford. I've seen him talk a lot." That was as ticked off as I've ever seen Chris McCaffrey. He is hurting right now. And he put his body on. I thought he was going to score a touchdown in overtime. He caught that in the flat. I did too. I was like, can you make a move the to the middle? The stutter step. That was, actually was a really nice play it by was. Brock on that one. It was. To just get rid of the ball. But that was all McCaffrey. McCaffrey, stutter step, boom, to the outside. He McCaffrey's an all-time nine. And now, and as we watch Patrick Willis, get his, he's going to get his gold jacket in August. And he's the first of that core. Maybe Joe Staley gets in one day. Maybe Frank uh, Gore gets in one day. Maybe. But yeah. you are immortalized forever if you win that game yesterday. And now we're going to have a bunch of guys. I mean, where do we go with George Kittle? Where do you go with Debo? Like, you're going to have to make a decision on Brendan Ayuk whether or not you want to pay him. Well, he's the best rock runner on his football team. Debo Samuel getting 11 targets and only catching three passes for 33 yards is bugging the heck out of me right now. Why? I just, you had that many targets, and we saw him in the, the first half. Runs. We saw him in the first half, standing next to Kyle, begging for the football. Three catches on 11 targets. He should never have more targets in the pass game than Brendan Ayuk. It needs to be even. Well, eight here, eight there. But you know it, what I mean? But it, it, to me, it's more how you give him these passes. Right. He was lined up as a wide receiver more times than not. And you're asking him to run a full route tree. That's not his strength, right? Like, 
did did at one point I didn't see it. I charted all the plays. CMC and Debo, did they line up in the backfield together? I don't remember. I don't remember. It's one of the most lethal so. combination personnel groupings that they have in the sport, and I don't think we saw it once. So when you line Debo up against linebackers and safeties, he's going to win. When you line him up against an elite corner and Sneed and McDuffie, they were all over him. They were all over him. All over him. They had him strapped up. Strapped up. All right, let's go to the lines, man. This show's about the people. We talk with you. It's my assignment. I'm to say not at you. Um, Steiny and Goo coming up. I'm sure they're going to talk about it. Maybe a different tone. Maybe a different tone than us. I'm, hey, lost, I'm out. Dude, I'm we're out. a little bit depressed this morning, which I'm sure a lot of people expected. And you know what? It's what makes us us, man. Well, we people want to come for their pound we of flesh. We, wanna, we wear our emotions yeah. on our sleeves. And you know what? It is what it is. We're ticked off. Being at that game, that was slow torture in the second half. It was slow torture for every single 49er fan. Uh, let's go to Ryan in the city. Ryan, what's, what's happening? Up, Ryan? You're on the roast. Oh, man, frustrating, frustrating, frustrating. Uh, I'm just, I'm more mad because I'm 27. I I haven't seen the win in my lifetime, so it just gets to me really, really bad. And my wife, who doesn't even watch football, doesn't know about football, she noticed that she was rooting for the Niners, and it sucks. But I think Brock Purdy played good yesterday. I don't think he was the problem. Um, he did what we asked he didn't do any Jimmy, you know, fumbles, no Jimmy interceptions. He he played a pretty good game. Uh, his line could have done better. Honestly, I think, <laughs> I, I don't know, I may be wrong on this. I think maybe we just need an offensive coordinator. I think it's time to, like, you know, pull the <laughs> pull a, a little bit of the power from Shanahan so he can, you know, kind of head coach it. Like, you know, he was calling a timeout for the defense. Uh, in that game, and I, I just think maybe that's what he needs is an offensive coordinator with a different mindset and, you know, sometimes take over in these situations. I don't know. Well, what do said, you guys said, yeah, like, let me, no, I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any way, but it's almost laughable because part of what gives him all of his value is his play calling and his yep. offensive yep. creativity. Like, that's yep. why you're paying him. Yep. He's not a CEO head coach. He's no. not John Harbaugh. He's not Mike Tomlin. Uh, he's a guy that if he doesn't have the laminated play sheet, you're losing what he does best. You know what, man? But you know what? I, they're never going to do it. But I, Ryan and SF, that thought process has crossed my mind before. But what if you just took some of the responsibility off of him? What if you did? I don't know. I I, I don't know, man. Let's go to Chris and Vallejo. Chris, that, what's that, happening? But that's what makes him him. You know what I mean? No, I hear you. No, I. I that means 100%. that means you want to move off. Yeah, the guy. no, yeah, I, just one hundred percent. I agree with that. You know, but but you know, and Chris it, and Vallejo. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm sorry. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sitting here. My kids are at school. My wife is at work. I had the day off today, and I'm just walking around, thinking, what could I have told my son at the end of the game? And <laughs> he doesn't know the play. We can go down the list of all the things that have happened uh, throughout the years. Uh, different Super Bowls, but I just I can't even tell him w like what play caused the loss. All I could say is like he's uh, my son's like, are we cursed? Did somebody do something like what? Like, and I'm like thinking, oh man, that's an awesome question. You know, the Cubs, the Red Sox, they all have this this curse, right? That they they shook off at one point. I'm like, the only thing I could say, son, is maybe I don't know. You're you're too young to know, but maybe the riverboat, riverboat cruise. <laughs> Is the thing I could call it, you know, like we, we've gone to three Super Bowls and we lose them in dumb ways with the lead. You know, all these things, the lights out in New Orleans, the lead last time, the lead this time. I, I don't get it. You know, is it is it the York's curse? I need someone to blame. Maybe you can help me out. You need someone to blame? Well, I don't I don't really want to play the blame game. I just want to assess the situation and how they lost the football game. And what went wrong? And there's a lot of things that went wrong offensively. Well, offensively, well, we heard a lot of like, "Oh, the Niners are the better team. They're the better team." No, I don't. I didn't see that yesterday. And the Chiefs, the Chiefs have the better quarterback, but they're the better team. The, the team didn't play complimentary football, and I thought that the premier players making premier money on offense just either had duds or no shows. 
and that's not going to get it done. And like again, like we, we can skirt around it all we want. Purdy was good. Purdy was good. Yeah, but that's not good enough. Like when the rest of the playmakers are are letting you down, you need your quarterback to overcome. Well, what could he have done? No, better? I know. What could like, he have but done be, better? But beat no. They're, they had a quarterback spy on him at times. They kept them in the pocket at times. They blitzed the heck out of them. The receivers weren't getting was separation. Was he his most accurate? They were taking no, not at all. He wasn't. He wasn't. But the offense. So it's everybody. Tree, like it's, it's everybody. It's, I'm not. I'm not. You know, but when I, I'm I blaming. I'm not saying he's the I reason. I'm Brock saying he's Purdy, a part of it. I think Brock Purdy. Yeah, he missed a few throws. He did. He did. But what I'm thinking, if you guys want to play the blame game, if you want to play the blame game, he's like 15th on my list. Oh no! I, I like would, Brock I would Purdy's agree. like 15th on my no, list. No, but I'm saying like, like he's not even close to being at the top. We're crushing Shanahan, and it's like, and I and because I because this it. is mostly on Shanahan. This team's not buttoned up. But I also look right? at playmakers. But, yeah, but you know what though? No, I players agree. Players have that. to make Pretty plays. Good players have to make gold jacket plays so in a game on like all that. Of them. It's on all of them. Trent Williams. All right, Trent Williams. Come Was on, that his man. worst game in a Niner uniform? I mean, good lord! I mean, you know, Banks having the big false start and did not look great. Pass protection on the most important I mean, play. You've got you'll allow Chris Jones to come in scot free on third and four in overtime, and you got ah, you could have back it into a wide open to score a touchdown. The score a touchdown. I mean, they missed Ayuk on the double move. I mean, I thought well, Purdy Ayuk slowed up. I, I, Purdy I gotta hit watch him. it back though. I gotta watch no, it back. No, he did. He slowed up ever so slightly, but like. That was a good play by Purdy, and Ayuk and him weren't on the same page. You the know, rhythm was off. It, it was all bad. Pre-snap penalties, holdings, left and right. This defense, I got to say, man, for as much time we spent on defense here, boy, they're going to have to score 30 because this defense ain't going to show up. This defense yesterday led by Fred Warner and Nick Bosa and Chase Young and Randy Gregory. I thought they played as well as they could and yesterday. Jair Brown. For the most part, Jair Brown, Tick Brown, the rookie yeah. out of Pitt State, made play after play after play. The Albert Lenore and Charverius Ward, I never had to worry about them. No. I never had to worry about them. They they stuffed the run. Now Mahomes did get the RPOs off a little bit there. Defense got a little gas there in the second half. But for the most part, the defense did what it was supposed to do in regulation. The offense let us down. I know. The offense said I wanted to score 30 points a game this season that I thought could be the most explosive offense since 94 or 89, did not show up. And you know what? They didn't show up for four quarters all postseason. All postseason, they were inconsistent. Now, defense had a lot to do with it as well, and the offense had to bail them out. I would say I don't think they put together a a good half (laughs) offensively. They had a good quarter, a great quarter. No, second half against Detroit. Okay. They, they it was scored, like a six minute period, really. Well, they scored 27 points. Yeah, that's true. You know, they scored 27 points. So, I, I mean. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't feel like they put together a comprehensive, complete no, half no. on offense. I, just my eyes. I I'll give you. you the Detroit one, though. That's. Right. I mean, you scored, the scored 27 there. The you got to. You got to give them some love. I'll there. meet in the middle. Darshan, Orange County. Darshan, what's happening? You're on a roast. Hey, guys. Yeah. So, um, whew, man, tough loss, but. A little silver lining. I mean, when you look at it, you know, Purdy did lead three separate, like, go-ahead game-winning drives in the fourth quarter in overtime. You know, that's, I mean, what more can you ask for from a from basically a second-year, you know, former Mr. Irrelevant? But just yeah, to but you settle for two field goals. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, exactly. Two and we goals. can't, so, like, if we're, if we're going to call him the franchise quarterback, we can't be like, well, grading on the curve, like, like we've it's it's one of the other Niner fans. Either either we're just going to accept whatever he does is great. It's amazing because of where we drafted him, or he's our quarterback. Like we can't grade on a scale. Like you're the starting quarterback. No, I, I agree. I mean, but I'm just saying he's going to continue to get better. I mean, offensive line has to be a priority this offseason. And then as far as like as far as Shanahan goes, I mean, he's going to get critiqued the most because it just seems like. In critical games at critical times, it, it just it just seems like he loses the chess match more often than not. And I, I don't know what it is. And I know another previous caller mentioned something about an offensive coordinator or maybe some kind yeah. of like assistant coach or somebody that can balance them out. And I don't know, but it just seems like this just happens every time. I mean, he'll get into a rhythm and then there'll be some critical moment where we're behind or something and he overthinks. And I don't know if it just Somebody on the coaching staff, like, they just don't want to check them or what. But it, it just seems like this happens more often than not. So, you know, 
he is going to get critiqued, it, on, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. And, like, you know, something that I was thinking about, no one's saying Ky fire Kyle Shanahan today. No no one's saying that. But, like, we always talk about, he reminds oh, me a lot of Andy <laughs> Reid in Philly. He reminds me a lot of Andy Reid in Philly. Uh, is Nahegan in the in the background somewhere? Like, what exactly happened in Philadelphia? Like, refresh my memory. They had one bad season after knocking on the door a lot, or they had multiple down seasons. What what ended up doing? Well, it was just there a long time. At some point, it gets stale, right? He was there for 13, 14 it was, years. It was that many? Yeah. It okay. was at, at some point, it just gets stale, and you need to change the pace. Like, you just need something different. We're not at that point with Kyle No, Shanahan we're not, yet. but I'm just like, but what, that's I what happened know with what Eddie did Reed. it in. It, it just got stale. It got very, very stale. And that last year, uh, we're with the dream team, I want to say. What they go six and Andy Reid and Mike Vick and Jeremy Macklin and Vince Young as a backup quarterback. It just it was time for a change. It was time for a change. What did, in, what did Marv straight, Levy? Huh? What did in Marv Levy? Well, they were done. The yeah. dynasty was over. Yeah. And he ran he went through the late nineties. I think he left what, ninety seven, ninety eight, maybe it could be wrong there, but they had gone to the four Super Bowls, lost them. Then you start losing that the core playoffs. phase. Then you start losing in yeah. the wild card. It's like, all right, it's time to. You gotta go. Yeah, you gotta go. I, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not asking for Shanahan's. You know, uh, dismissal. I'm not saying that he needs to be fired. I'm, I'm just curious. Like now, I'm, I'm like racking my brain. Right. Like how many of these devastating losses? Because it is a pattern. It's now. There's, it's 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 hard to defend the guy. I well, love the dude. I think he's brilliant. I do think he gets in his own way at times. Right. Like when he had the double pass play, we were all going, "Oh my god, are you kidding me?" A double pass play with Jawan Jennings. They're going to pull this off, and they did pull it off. They scored a touchdown to go up ten nothing. Shanahan going for it on fourth and three. I thought it was the gutsiest call of his coaching career. And if they win that game, he looks like a pro. We're talking about that fourth and three play to George Kittle for the rest of our lives. Shanahan down 13-10 so at the 16, whatever yard line it was, and they went for it. And we're all in the stadium like, what is he doing? What is he doing? What is he doing? And they snap it, and Kittle barely gets the first down, but it didn't go up 16-13. And you're thinking to yourself, damn, Shanahan, he's grown up. He's gotten more aggressive. Well, you know what? Maybe, I, I don't know, man. I, I When you have all the blunders that you have, listen, you didn't play a clean football game. That's the biggest problem to me. That's what I blame this game on. You needed to play a clean football game. You needed to put together your best effort. You fumble on the first drive. You go three and out three straight times in the third quarter. You muff and punt in the third quarter. You get an extra point blocked. False starts. Guys getting hurt. False starts. Holding calls. You're behind the sticks. That's thing you know. You're facing second and 18s, third and 12s, third and 13s. You can't get those. You can't convert that. You're kidding. Are you kidding me against a defense like that? You were not buttoned up in the biggest game of the season, and that's on Shanahan, it and that's on everybody who plays offensive football for the 49ers. I, I, I do want to watch it back at some point. I'm not prepared just yet. Yeah, it felt like as happened. the game kept going on, Kansas City kept out hitting us, and we were walking off with injuries left and right. It just felt that way. Now, I don't know if that's really exactly how it went down, but it felt like Kansas City maintained the level of physicality, and the Niners were slowly tapering off, and we looked like the tired team. Listen, man. And we looked like the team that came out of the wild card as opposed to having the week off. It, it was, did it not? No, it did. It did. And and the fact is, you bring up Kansas City hitting hard. When they scored to go up 10 0 in Shasky, Kansas City was on the ropes. They were dazed and confused at that point. And the fact that the Niners. Walked into halftime, only up one score. I said, damn, this is problematic because Kansas City's going to receive the second act. Now, they threw a pick on that drive, no doubt about it, but you don't convert it for points. You get the ball at the 44-yard line, and you go three and out. And you actually lose five yards because Aaron Banks go, but has a false start. So the fact that Kansas City went into the locker room only down seven after that first half, I said, oh, boy. Oh, boy, we got to live through this again. That's where you lose games right there, where you don't put away a team, or at least build a sustainable lead. If you could go up 13-3 or 16-3, hell, 17-3, going into half, we feel a lot better. He, Travis Kelsey by himself, 9 for 93. Have more yards and catches than Devo, Ayuk, and Kittle. Travis Kelsey together. by himself. And that was all in the second half. I just and then I'm looking at Mahomes like I, I it's hard to not see nine attempts rushing scrambling for 66 yards and that yep. doesn't even tell half the story. Yep. The 22 yard run was incredible. Yep. Sorry. Yep. Uh, let's go to Juan in Richmond. Juan, what's happening? You're on the bus. Nine for 93. Oh, good morning, guys. I uh, not even gonna ask how you guys are doing. Just 
this is this sucks. It's painful. I mean, I've oh, uh, um, you know, I wanted to see a Super Bowl win with my boys, and it's just like you know, I, I'm, as the game is going on, I'm getting that feeling. I'm like, come on, guys. I mean, this game, you know, Bill Walsh. This game is a game of adjustment, and I did not see the necessary adjustments that needed to be made during the game. Okay. You have uh, Ayuk and uh, Debo being, you know, covered by two great corners. Okay, that opens up the middle. So, you know, we still have Kittle and McCaffrey to unlock. So you got to, you, you know, open up the middle of the field. The, the field of, you have too many weapons to fall in love with the same old game plan that you're running. Andy Reid made the adjustments. That's why they won. Shanahan did not make the adjustments. That's why we lost. I'm like, you know, it, you push, you push, you push. Okay, that's not working. Let's go for something else. Okay, uh, Andy Reid adjusted at halftime. What did we do? We just ran up the same old thing, and and we just we just looked tired. We looked like we were uninspired. It was mm-hmm. uninspired football. I was like, come on, guys, get in the game. You guys, this is the championship game. You're playing like a deer in the headlights. You're playing. Uh, not to not to lose. You're not playing to win. You're not playing championship football. You're playing like it's, uh, oh, my God, we're here. No kidding. Get in the game and win it. Win it. Grab it. It's 10-6, to 6, third quarter, 3.59 to go. They go Pacheco, tackled by Dominic Flanagan Fowles. Mahomes with a crazy pump fake, the little, like, crafty throw that he had to Kelsey. And then Bosa gets a pressure, and Mahomes rolls out and throws it away. Yeah. You're going to get the ball back. It's 10-6, and you muffed the punt. You muffed the punt. You muffed it. And you know what? I just There's so many moments they, in this game. They were actually lucky that he could call for running into the kicker. <laughs> One of the referees was looking at the head, Rev Bill Vinovich, whether or not to throw the flag. So you got away with that. And then three seconds later, Kansas City's got a first down at their own six at the Niners. And you knew they were going to score right away. First play. Yeah, uh, and they did. Wide open. <laughs> Wide open. Wide open. Wide open. Uh, How come we can't get any of them wide open ones I, 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 in these big games? I don't know, man. I don't know. The first drive, everything was working. And then it just it felt McCaffrey like we couldn't fumbled. get back to it. McCaffrey fumbled. Well, it almost feels like, like as well, like when Pacheco fumbled, Reed went right back to him. Yep. When McCaffrey fumbled, they just went away from him. For a second, for a possession. I know they went back to him. But I, again, I'm, look, 22 mm-hmm. touches, 23 touches in regulation yeah. is not enough. No, it's not. For Christian McCaffrey. It's, it's not. just not. It really is. In a one score game, the majority of the game. It really isn't. Let's go to Chicago. Tom in Chicago. Tom, what's happening? You're on the list. Yo, what's up, guys? What's up, Tom? Are, are you in a kitchen? Bang, bang. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing this in my bed. <laughs> Bang bang, 49 again. Still the ring this century. 40, 49ers. Oh. Oh, so we we trolling, huh? That's that's what we're doing. Call oh, it a troll. Who cares? Too. You know, I, I I can get a lot of tweets from Eagles fans and Raider fans. And ah, nice okay. But you know, we're, they're gonna have their day. But that's fine. We'll see you guys next year. We're gonna wear it. We we talked that talk last year when you lost the Super Bowl. Go ahead, give it back to us. But we had got to the NFC title game. You guys, your season was done five weeks ago. By Baker Mayfield. By Baker Mayfield. Your season, literally, Eagles fans, your season was over five weeks ago, and you lost to Baker Mayfield. Yeah. And you've fired coordinators. You still got Sirianni, and you're you're miserable. So I'm glad we were able to give you some life. I am. I'm here for this, though. You can tag me every single day. I'm not going anywhere. I'm not scared of you guys. I'm going to sit here and sit over, soak over the Super Bowl loss. But I'm here. You can bring it all day long you want to. I'm not going anywhere. We know what it is. We know what it is. I walked out that stadium last night saying, that may be the best shot we ever get. You didn't have to leave the Pacific time zone since you traveled to Washington, all right, on New Year's Day. You didn't have to go anywhere. This is on the Niners. They lost this more than I see Kansas City taking this over. And I know there's going to be people who disagree and say, man, but Holmes enough took this. Well, you left it on the platter for them in the first quarter, in the second quarter. The first quarter, I think Kansas City ran maybe 11 plays, maybe 13. 
the Niners were dominant. The total yards after the first quarter was something like 126 to 23. I, I can't get over the conversation we had with the guy as we're walking out. He was like, that guy's Michael Jordan. Because that's what I kept oh, saying. Yeah. yeah, the brother. He's yeah, Michael yeah, yeah. Jordan. He's Michael Jordan. I mean, I, that's what it felt like. You're going up against Michael Jordan. And if you give Michael Jordan enough opportunities to win a game, he's going to win the game. And his retort, which I hadn't even considered, he was like, which makes us the Utah Jazz. It was so hard to swallow that. I'll take it a step further. Where the Houston Rockets should have gone to the Warriors? Yeah, but Houston never got this far. They got to the conference finals. As far as you could get in terms of both facing suck. the Warriors. Yeah, they both suck. Both I, sucks I, I hear to what be. you're saying. Both, both, I hear what you're saying. Both zones to be in. Like, it's loser zone, you know? Hey, it's just... Hey, listen. Uh, <sighs> listen. Uh, Warriors have won six or seven. And I guess pitchers and catchers report. <laughs> no, well, no. City Ball already. They, we reported on Saturday. Uh, we were working uh, on bunt coverages. We've got two pony teams. We've oh got a Mustang team. We're ready to go. Oh, my gosh. Nana, Pittsburgh. Nana, Pittsburgh. What's happening? I'm guessing this is another troll call. Go ahead. Bring them up, Nana. No. No, no, no. I'm not a troll. I've been a Niners fan since I was two years old. Oh, ah, good. No, good. um. Uh, first of all, I wanted to say uh, oh, Pittsburgh, I California. The my bad. My bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, thinking Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh California. Yeah, 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 yeah. My bad. Yeah. I forgot no, no, all about no. you guys. No, no, oh, you're I'm good. Sorry, you're man. a rattled like Colt McKinnon. Shout out to the nine two five in Pittsburgh, <laughs> man. The real Pittsburgh. My bad. Ponte no, McKinnon. No, you're good. Man. You just blew the assignment. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, it's all good. Now, before I start, uh, I had called in for the NFC Championship, but I threw in a cuss word and I got. Uh, kicked off, so I want to apologize for that. It's all no, good. It's all but, good. Um, Everybody curses on the show. It's all good. I'm out. But um, no, it's just it's <laughs> it's the same old thing right now. And like, I'm not saying fire Shannon just like you guys, but it's 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 the same old thing. Uh, I was watching the game last night, and I just did not feel confident. And then in the third quarter, you get the interception. And you don't even try to run the ball. I'm like, come on, Kyle, please. And in overtime. Um, I was in that third and four play. I wish they would have just ran the ball or at least, you know, and then when they kicked that field goal, I was like, that's not going to be enough. I knew it. But in, I was trying to be like, no, 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 they'll get a stop. But in the back of my head, my heart was saying, no, they'll get a stop. But my head was saying, that's not going to be enough to beat Mahomes. And it wasn't. I, I started tearing up and it was just, it's another, another year of, a long season and hoping they could get back. And it's just, I, I'm just tired of it. I'm tired I'm of it. It's just, we're, we're all tired of it. We're all tired of it. All right. We got about seven minutes left before the injury report. We'll get, I mean, not the injury report, fast five, excuse me, fast five. Um, I'm a little disheveled, man. I, I just, it, this one bothers me. I, I, I've been thinking about this through that call. And when it talks about when we talk about false starts and pre-snap penalties and illegal procedures and illegal man's downfield and all that stuff, this is going to buck me for a very long time. This little these quotes we heard it from Eric Armstead, we heard it from a couple other players. Kyle Uzcheck just said, "I assume you just want the ball in overtime because you score a touchdown to win." Even though they placed the overtime rules on the scoreboard for everybody to and, see. And when Mahomes and Warner were at midfield, right, the official. Went through it yep. and said it. Yep. Yep. And so then they get Drew Tranquil, Tranquil, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. They said they had an overtime rules presentation and strategy meeting every week of the playoffs and twice in our Super Bowl prep. So then when I'm thinking last night, saying, well, should have, should Kyle have taken the ball in overtime? Should he have deferred? In real time, being at the game and watching that defense barely hold on at the end of regulation, I thought they needed a break. They did need a break. The ball, I agree with that. Go score. But, and, and, but, but, but I was thinking I'm, they needed a touchdown, right. the Niners. Yeah, I was like, you I knew get they six. needed a touchdown. You got to get six. Yes. Right. It was four down territory to me. Well, if you don't score, if you don't get the first I know, down, then it's a field you know, goal. But I'm just I mean, saying, like, the way I would have approached that entire drive is aggression. We need six. That's Mahomes. And, like, his whole thing about analytics, I want to see the analytics he's talking about where we want to possess it third. What's that based off? Yeah. What What is that based off? Yeah. What analytics? What games? College games? Yeah, I don't know. What, what is that on? I don't know, man. The I, analytics? Yeah, we yeah. want it third? We want what? it third. It was just – it was – that's that's that that's sounds like look. cap to me. That's a bad look by Kyle Shedahead, not knowing all the rules and saying that oh we wanted the ball third in overtime. 
Wait, there's no guarantee you get the ball. Like, I don't even know how that goes into the process. Bonte. Thought process. We were good. We wanted to get the ball third. When we what? talk, we talk like, and I know David Lombardi, who covers his team in the Athletic, wants to compare everything the Niners do currently to the 1981 season. <laughs> and it drives me nuts. Do you know what they did in the 1981 season leading up to that? That catch? They ran that play yep. to end practice every, every play. single every day. day. Yep. They yep. ran that play. Now, they never got to Dwight Clark uh, nine times out of ten right. on the sprint right option. And that was improv. Right. In there. But they had ran it so much. Preparation is the key in football. And you're preparing for these odd yep. situations. You see this in basketball. There was like a Statue of Liberty yep. play. Hey, you know, we, this is what we're going to do mm -hmm. when we need to get two, when we need to get three, whatever. Andy Reid has prepared for all of these situations, and they looked like it. They look like it. And they it's do. hard for me to swallow. You can have all the most creative plays in the world, but does it apply to situational football? And I look at what the hallmark of Belichick and Brady winning all those games. Situationally, they were typically the smartest team on the field, and yeah. they let the other team make the mistakes. Yeah. Not calling timeouts, calling timeouts, utilizing uh, you know, field position and clock management to excellence. When I look at Shanahan and these late-game situations – Game management, situational awareness, clock management, specific play calling, not being prepared, not lining up and yeah. knowing where Travis Kelsey is. Yeah, no, that's Oren Burks. But that's Oren that's Burks a being a backup. That's of this team yeah, right no now. Doubt. Steve Wilkes was, a bit, was the best coach on the 49ers sideline yesterday. It's not even close. Not even close. Uh, who do we have on the lines left? I want to get both of them. Spinoni, what we got left? Tim and Danville, then who else do we have? All right, I'm going to get to Tim and Danville, then Big Smooth. Uh, Tim, what's happening? You're on the roast. <laughs> hey, guys. Good morning. Uh, so, I, you know, I was at the game yesterday. Uh, I'd like to point out a couple things, though, fellas. If you look at the numbers between the two teams, I'm telling you, they're pretty close. They're pretty close. But here, here's the thing. I think we also have to acknowledge that, you know, Mahomes is Mahomes. He's be I mean, he's a better quarterback than Brock today. I have a couple other points. One is, you know, like the other caller said, the last um, series in the uh, in overtime with the Niners, I was telling my wife, hey, keep running, keep running. They're getting tired. Keep running. And then what does Kyle do? They, they get a stop. Uh, Kansas City gets a stop, I think, uh, I don't know, he got like no yards. Then Kyle has a throw. And that was incomplete. And then I think they uh, kicked the field goal, right? I don't know why he gave up on that, number one, right? Number two, Guys, there's two things that the Niners knew what would kill them in this game. Two, and it's Mahomes and it's Kelsey. And then what happened? Both those guys just lit them up at the end, right? So I don't know, fellas. Look, I was a great game. I'm happy I was there. Uh, I don't know, guys. Anyway, that's all I had to say. Thanks. Thank you for the call. And let's end with Big Smooth in Oakland. Big Smooth, what is happening? Keep your head up. Hey, keep your head up. I just want to say this. This is one play that I focused on. I think it was the game. It was it was uh, third down. No, it was second down. You give the ball to McCaffrey. He runs up the middle, gets about six yards. It was third and four. You fake a sweep left to Debo and go back up the middle, and they stuffed it. You should have given Debo that ball in space and on the outside. You know that he's hard to take down. Going up the gut twice was – that was a kiss of death. And then you have to go kick the field goal. Uh, and then another point is this, man. Patrick Mahomes, when the play breaks down, Thank he's you. able to look up and say, oh, here, oh, here, oh, here. Uh, Brock is not there. He can't do that. You saw you saw that run. It was it was just so much space that he was able to acknowledge, well, wait a minute, I'm just going to. I'm just going to slowly jog up the mm -hmm. middle. It was just so much space. It was a logical thing. He's able to think like that on the fly, man. And what, and listen, I texted my nephews. I said, you're giving this guy the ball back with this much time? Thank I you. Text, Good luck. Because this guy is a man, he is who he is, but you had him bottled up. That's going to hurt. The, that's gonna. That's what's going to hurt. You had it. You had the game. But that fumble, it turned the tide, and Andy Reid, he started going to 87. And I think Greenlaw had him bottled up, too. Greenlaw, Greenlaw was making it miserable. Kelsey it assaulting his coach on the sideline because Greenlaw mm -hmm. had him frustrated. I just yeah. think you let you left too much time, man, on the clock. I totally all agree. Happened, did, Look, all I kept thinking was, you 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 cannot give Mahomes the ball in the same way Bonds used to get intentionally walked. In the same way you triple team Steph Curry late in the game, you cannot 
give the ball to Mahomes. And then simultaneously, if you do, you better bracket every single time Travis Kelsey and beg someone else to beat you. The Super Bowl to me is on the offense. They bottled up Mahomes for most of the first half. The Kansas City Chiefs score three in the first half. That Niners offense should have been up. I know. At least know. two touchdowns. At least. And when you come out in the third quarter and you go three and out on three straight possessions to start the second half of the Super Bowl, you're flirting with disaster. You're flirting with the devil. And the devil is Patrick Mahomes in that red number 15 jersey. And you know what? He got you because you left it on the platter for him over and over and over. You had so many chances to hit the Chiefs with a knockout punch. You made a deal with the devil. Just and, go with the devil. And you know what? I will. That's the third straight Super Bowl the Niners have lost. Second in five years. And the drought continues, folks. The drought continues. 94-95, the last time this town celebrated a 49ers Super Bowl championship. And, boy, it doesn't get more harsh than that last night. You lose it overtime. Overtime of the Super Bowl. Fast five. Wow. Just swing I'm so upset. I'll say it. That's... That's that's the worst loss in 49er history. In terms of heartbreak, devastation, the stakes, the pie chart of culpability being off the charts. <laughs> I mean, all your premium playmakers who we all love so much all had a hand, in, in, in whether it was a moment or throughout the game, of underperforming. Trent, Debo, Ayuk not getting enough looks, Kittle being on a milk carton, you know, Purdy missing a couple plays. I, the, the play calling, CMC putting it on the floor. Special teams. I mean, that's that's a hard one to swallow. While you simultaneously allow this guy on the other side to become greater than Joe Montana and you become a footnote like you're the Cincinnati Bengals on his resume, this is really hard to swallow. You know, uh, last Friday, my final thought is, Last Fridays, we took a lot of calls. And by the way, the Juice Call got a lot of traction on the internet. My slogan on that Friday, last Friday, was premium players need to make gold jacket plays, meaning they need to have Hall of Fame type days. Well, you know what? The premium players did make gold jacket plays. They just happened to be on the other sideline, the sideline of the Kansas City Chiefs. Now the Niners have to go through another offseason of devastation, try to pick themselves back up for blowing another double-digit lead in the Super Bowl. I think what's going to be really frustrating for Niners fans going forward is watching this performance that Mahomes had get elevated in the same way that LeBron's performance in the 2016 Finals will be elevated at the end of his career. Like we talked about, you know, LeBron's greatest moments. That Finals victory will always be up there, and it's going to sting for Warriors fans. When we talk about Mahomes' career someday down the line, this Super Bowl is always going to be the one that pops up as one of his great performances, and it's just the, the, the sting is just going to keep going longer and longer and longer. Spadona, you got anything? Uh, Usher, guys. Usher was a tremendous performer yesterday, am I right? No? Thank you, Lucas. Other than that, uh, Kansas City still has never lost at Legion Stadium, so there you go. And they smoke cigars and pop champagne. And they, and they the plan, planted a flag. Yeah, it's tough. Wow, well, and they yeah. planted a flag. Yeah. We hate it. All right, guys. That was Fast Five. Brought to you by Xfinity, the next generation 10G network, only from Xfinity. Hey, thankfully, there's a Warriors game tonight. I'm going to watch that at the casino, and hopefully the Warriors can win their Yay! seventh game in eight tries and win their fifth in a row. Hey, they could go over 500. But we'll still mourn this loss, and we'll wear it for a very, very long time. The future starts now. With Matthew Steinmetz and Daryl the Guru Johnson. Have a good day, everybody. And I was worried. See ya. Hey, it's Willard and Dibs for Safeway. And Safeway is the perfect one-stop shop for all the value.
me text line uh, he's truly one of a kind that is wild oh my god oh. and he's doing a great job okay. i need you to man up and say what you really want to say Simon, you're doing a great job and together they are stymie and guru yeah on 95 7 the game all right matt Steinman, now the guru johnson with you what's going on bay area and beyond 49ers they get beat 25-22 to the mm. Chiefs in the Super Bowl in overtime. And look, if you listen to 95-7 the game, you know, you know the hosts inside and out. And here's 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 the way I'm looking at this game. Talk to Goo, us, man. Is I think I think I'm hurting for the Niner fans. Well, Donnie, go and, ahead. Man. And you can do that once or twice, but I'm not gonna let you <laughs> overdo it because I I think I think after a while you trying to mollify him too much might have a negative impact but nevertheless not that it matters but I thought it was a great game I really do I thought it was a I thought it was a really good Super Bowl I 
I'm not a huge high-scoring guy. I thought there was a lot of good defense. 25-22, overtime, I'll take it. I think just in general, Goo, and I'll throw it to you, is I I just don't feel like the Niners were good enough to win the Super Bowl. And and I don't think they, they didn't play their best football in the playoffs. And they didn't play their best football yesterday, certainly. And nobody... Nobody really came through when they absolutely had to have somebody come through. And I think at the end of the day, that's that's what got them beat. They just weren't good enough, top to bottom, Shanahan to the 53rd man, mm. the offensive line, the defensive line, just every every player and coach on the roster. Stani, I appreciate that. And I appreciate what you just said, too, you know, to sum it all up. This was not the Niner team in the playoffs that we were accustomed to. But, partner, I'm being real, and I'm putting it all on the line. I thought they were good enough yesterday to win that game. They bludgeoned the Chiefs in the first half, and they they didn't close the casket. And I don't know why they didn't close the casket, but I know some things that might have contributed to them not closing the casket. Let's put it right on the table early, Stiney. Number 71. Trent Williams had his worst game to me as a San Francisco 49er. I'm not blaming him, but there is no doubt that was his worst game in the red and gold. But the game was there in the first half for the Niner offense. And Steve Wilkes, if you're listening, Fred Warner, the whole defense, collect the whole defense. Kudos to you guys, because I called you out in Vegas, and so did a lot of other people. And Stani, from the opening play, the Niner defense set the tone and had Patty Mahomes. Look, he was shook. I put it on the, on the vine. I've never seen Mahomes like this. He shook. And for whatever reason, Kyle and the offense could not add. They couldn't hit the plus button. So we're at halftime. It's 10-3. to 3. Trey Greenlaw, I have never seen anything like that. Kudos to you, man. That was heartbreaking. And I'm like, okay, now the Chiefs, I think you text the thread. If you're Kansas City, you're in a good spot after not playing and basically getting dominated to be only down a touchdown. And then I'm like, you know what? Patty Mahomes, I told Evan, that guy gets the ball at half. It's going to be 10-10 probably. He throws a pick. And yet... The Niner offense couldn't capitalize. Stiney, I'm starting to think, I'm being real with your buddy and I'm going to pass it back. I overestimated this Niner offense as a whole. I thought they had playmakers. And we saw a secondary and a defense that was not scared of the Niners going over the top. And I'm still, you had seven against Green Bay in the first half at home, a seven seed. You had seven points against Detroit at home, which you should have took care of. And not to be able to close the door on the nine uh, on Kansas City yesterday, Stani, they played good enough to win, pal. And uh, that's I why I feel bad for Niner fans, man. See, I, I believe it or not, I look down their roster and I say Brock Purdy. He was okay yesterday. Not bad. Right. Not bad doesn't win you a Super Bowl, Goo. Not from the quarterback position. Not bad doesn't win you a Super Bowl. You know what? McCaffrey. Everybody's saying, well, they got to run McKay. He touched the ball 30 times. Well, eight of them came in overtime, so he only had it 22 times and 16 on the ground in regulation. So he got to 30, and I don't know if you saw him at the end of the game. He could barely walk. No doubt. Okay, so he had 22 carries and eight receptions. So he got the ball plenty. And by the way, maybe he didn't run the ball 28 times because he was getting less than four yards a carry. All right. So, but so to me, how was McCaffrey? He was fine. But you know what? He fumbled. So dock him a grade uh, for that. Uh, that was big. So as good as McCaffrey was, he could have been better. How was Debo Samuel? He was, o- the, yeah. he was okay. Yeah. How was Kittle? He wasn't okay. Invisible. He was below okay. How was Ayuk? He was okay. He was How open was Trent too. Williams? Oh, he was less than okay. Well, guess what? You're going up against Patrick Mahomes. They weren't good enough. They weren't good enough. Yesterday, I don't think to beat that kind of team in a game that that means that much. I well, none let me of ask them. You this. Ta- like that's okay. what I mean. 
Well, this Kansas is a game City wasn't good blame. enough early on, Stani, so you got But they it. hung in the game, and that's what they know, that's what they do. But why did My they point hang is, in the is game? I come out of this game, and I don't blame any. I don't say, well, it's because of Purdy. It's good. It was comprehensive. Nobody from Shanahan to me to the 53rd man was grades out at an A plus yesterday or an A. They didn't, nobody played an A game. Right, but yet you Sorry. were in position to right. take it. Right, but they didn't because they're playing Patrick Mahomes. You can't, you can't play a B, B, B minus game in the Super Bowl and expect to win it. Maybe you can if you get a break or two, but like that's the thing. As painful as this loss may be, the, every player on the 49ers has to be looking themselves in the mirror and say, we didn't play well enough. Even the coach, too, Stein. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I said coach down. Oh, okay, gotcha. 888-957-9570 is the number. You want to jump into the conversation, Steine and Guru with you on 95-7 the game. I, I, like, I don't – I really am having trouble signaling – uh, or singling out I'm with a 49er who, boy, he really I'm cost us. I am now, with Everybody kind of cost you at one point uh, or another yesterday. The tragedy, I'm going Macbeth. The tragedy of the game was Kyle Shanahan early in the fourth quarter letting it all hang out on a fourth and three. He bypasses the field goal. And I'm thinking, dude, if you don't get it, and they get the ball, and Patty Mahomes goes down, and you're, you'll are you never live this down. And it worked out. They got a touchdown. To me, those are those are decisions that win you a Super Bowl. And, Stani, I was like, oh, my God, the courage that that took. And to have the Niners take the lead in that fashion, and Kyle on that stage just say the F with pressure, I'm trusting them, and, and have it pay off. And that not be the talk of the game or or one of the moments, you know, Niner fans will remember forever. That's tragedy to me. No, that's not tragedy. It's sports. Macbeth. It's sports. Okay. It's it's not. It's not tragedy. You know, the other th- like here's the other thing. They weren't buttoned up enough. Oh man. They committed too many penalties. <sighs> They yeah. did. Early on. Okay. You're right. Well, I yeah. got you. Hey. Well, they could have done more early, but they didn't. Why didn't they? Because they weren't buttoned up enough. I just don't think they were good enough. They did not play their best football in the postseason. We can all agree on that, right? Yeah, no doubt. So, you, so the, like the Chiefs were playing the most well-rounded football by the end of the year. Like their def- The other thing is the Chiefs' defense might be better than the Niners' defense. Well, Might with be. no green law, things change, you know. But, I mean, Stani, they got that interception after half, and I know you talk about McCaffrey. He was gassed. I get it. But for the Niners to go nine straight plays and call eight pass plays, that's yeah. not your you, – again, just, you feed the beast with just McCaffrey. Okay. So, and well, you took yeah, only 20. three minutes off the clock in those three drives, which you went three and out. Exactly. Like, like, so you get an interception, you go three and out, you get a hold, you go four and out or five and yeah. out, you get another hold, you go four and out or five and out. It's like, yeah, pl- it's not just one opportunity you blew. Like, I get people are saying, because they got the ball to 44 after the interception. Oh. Yeah. They didn't get it. Well, you know what? They committed a penalty on that next ne- next uh, uh, next drive. I want to say IU did something <sighs> and they made it a first and 15 or a second and 15. Like all those little things to me add up. Let's go to Steve. Steve's in Pleasanton. Let's talk about the uh, the Super Bowl. What's going on, Steve? So, so I just think that the NFL, they're doing themselves a disservice by waiting two weeks to have the Super Bowl after the championship game. The teams are a little rusty, and they start off slow. The game got better as it got later. But I think they should just have it one week I after actually... the championship. Yeah, I actually don't have a problem with that, but I don't think they'll ever do it now. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. It's about hype, too, Steve. Yeah. Uh, let's go to let's go to Keith in Georgia. Keith's in Georgia. 888-957-9570 if you want to jump into the conversation uh, on the Super Bowl. What's going on, Keith? How are you, my hey, man? Hey, man. Hey, like, thank you guys for letting us have a place to mourn this morning. Sure. No doubt, man. Uh, that was a tough one. I've been a 49er fan since 1988. Uh, that's the toughest loss that I, I, I can remember. 
Uh, I mean, all of them hit different, but that one, I felt like we were the better team. I felt like we were the better team the last three Super Bowls, to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, mm. But, you know, if you want to go down to one play, uh, that fumble on that on that special team, yeah. I thought that was the whole game. <sighs> um, we can go through Kyle and everything else, but I thought we would have been able to control it. Offensively, I knew it was going to be tough to get 22 points. You got to think about it. this team held Josh Allen to 20 and Lamar Jackson to 10 points. Um, I knew it was going to be tough sledding because this Kansas City defense is for real. So we can nitpick. And um, another thing, our our two best players hurt us in the first quarter, Trent Williams and McCaffrey. And those are guys we lean on. We pay a lot of money. Uh, we can't have them fumbling and, and causing holding calls and stalling out our drives, you know? Yeah. Right. Good stuff, Keith. Thanks for the call. Hang that in was there, weird, Stani, seeing that ball come out because they were moving, man. I was like, you're kidding me. <laughs> on this, you know, I hear you on this stage. Well, he'd never played in a Super Bowl before, McCaffrey. No doubt. So no maybe doubt. that had something to do with it. I know people are like, oh, my God, how can you say that? It's McCaffrey. Everybody plays in their, you know, I mean, the first Super Bowl we were talking about, how does it affect anybody? How does it affect Purdy? How does it affect uh, Moody? Moody was fine. Man, kicked up. Yeah, no doubt. Had a record for about hot five minutes in the Super Bowl. Then he got to your boy took it away from him on the other side. But uh, let's be honest. I don't, I'm, again, I'm not coming Mm -hmm. in here saying somebody should be fired. And I guess I'm, I'm a rare breed today. I thought Brock Purdy was good enough. Like third and four from the nine yard line, and you do not block the best player on the Kansas City Chiefs, I mean, that ain't Purdy's fault. And maybe he should have saw it coming or the the breakdown, but there was no outlet, nothing in the flat to assume Spagnola is going to send the house. We can just kill him with something in the flat quick. Like, that ain't Purdy's fault, but it just was sitting there. And that interception by Mahomes, Stani, I was like, you know what? You know me. Oh, that's like, you score here, seven, now you really got him where you want him. And they just, for whatever reason, couldn't they couldn't move the ball. Three three and outs in the third quarter. Three minutes off the clock collectively. Like, that ain't – I don't know why the Niner offense in the playoffs was not what we're accustomed to. If we're being honest, man, seven points in two home games against Detroit better. and Green Bay. I mean, one reason is you're playing better teams. You just are. <laughs> I know this is dumb, but you're playing playoff teams. You're playing three straight playoff teams. So, I mean, the funny thing is, is I think most 49er fans, hey, we're going to hold, we're going to play, look, let's just, we're, we're playing an overtime game and the Chiefs are going to get 25. Everybody would take that. There's nobody that's not taking that. We're going to play five quarters. We're going we're gonna to play an overtime game against the Kansas City Chiefs. And we're telling you right now, the 49ers defensively mm. or whatever, the Chiefs are going to get 25 points. No 49er fan would say, I'm not taking that. Okay, so if you're not taking it, this game falls on the offense. The offense deserves most yeah. of the, the I'm defense. I'm not mad at the that. The defense deserves most of the credit for keeping the Niners in the game. And slightly ahead, the offense gets most of the credit for them losing the game. Well said. I don't, is, da- is, is anybody going to disagree with that? And what's strange and symbolic about that statement is it was the flip side the other way around the last two weeks. It was the offense bailing out the defense. And then on the biggest stage, it kind of was a role reversal. That D was flying around, Stiney. Both sides. I know he got hit on the fourth and one where where Mahomes kept it, but I just I was like, there's gonna be a parade, you know? Well, that's you always do that. No, the Boston out, you know. Contingency plans in case something was going to pop where we'd be at. He got that email on Friday. Well, I I understand, partner, but at no, see that's the that's the thing. I mean, do you feel you the Chiefs I, won this or the yes. Niners lost it? Yeah. I feel I like, feel the, like the Niners lost it. Okay, well then you can yeah. you can rip them for being gutless for the next no I, no 10, the, eight the years. fourth and three call that Kyle that was not that was okay. that was that was things championship coaches are made. I thought that was his moment. Yeah, well, and a, I know it was early. Need more still. than a moment to win a Super Bowl. I mean, and, and what about the first half thing again, where he seems confused or baffled? You know they're probably going to score. When are you going to get ultra aggressive and keep time on the clock? The ball. And you got you, your weapons. Not, you think there's some kind of offensive juggernaut? And that, when were they an yeah. offensive juggernaut in the postseason? 
Well, the regular season, the remember the hashtag was 30 Purdy. Well, that's great. That's that, that's great in November. I mean, come on. That's November. The Kansas City Chiefs scored 30 points three times in 21 games, and they're the Super Bowl champions. Man. Let's go to Sonny in Seattle. What's going yeah. on, Sonny? How you doing? Talk to us. What's going on, guys? How you guys doing? Doing what well. What are you guys doing for the, for the Niners fan base? Thank you. Um, I wanted to talk about like uh, the, a pie chart of Blaine real quick. All right. I, 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 uh, I think Shanahan, uh, I think he had to take about 80 to 9% of, of the blame here. Mm. And I know a lot of people are talking about his overtime decision to take the ball first. I actually agree with him. Um, I think you should take the ball first. That's what the analytics say. I know people will gripe about the analytics. Um, but when the, analy- when the analytics are right, Nobody says anything, but when the analysts are wrong, everyone's going to say say something in twenty twenty hindsight. Um, because it, because everyone's comparing the overtime rules to college, but the difference is once each team gets possession, it's sudden death, and the next team to get a field goal will win. I think the mistake Kyle Shanahan made was not going for a touchdown against Patrick Mahomes in the overtime. Um, fourth and, and fourth and say, f- fourth and four from the nine, you're going to go for it with seven twenty five left. I think, I think so because you're giving the ball back to Patrick Mahomes to either get a field goal or to or to tie the game up. Um, I I rather get a touchdown. They they possibly get a touchdown and then then we kick a field goal and win. But All right. that's my take. Also, I also want to mention how Shan, I think Shanahan takes the most blame because you're coming out the first half here. You go through you go three and out three times and eight of the nine plays yeah. are pass plays. Yeah, I got you, buddy. Well, the weaponry. Thanks, Sonny. Well, the weapon all that weaponry you want to use, you want to get, you want to get, you want to get all your receivers a hundred yards. But Sonny, we're talking about the best player being omitted for nine, for eight of nine play. That's too long. Maybe he needed a break. Well, he wasn't off the field eight play, eight carries. Well, I'm just, you know, I just, I look at it and say, at the end of the day, McCaffrey got thirty touches. That's that's a lot. I mean. Could, could he have gotten 35? Okay, maybe he could have gotten 35, but and did they may have gone away from it for a couple seasons? Yes, but like I don't know. That that that's something we can talk about, but I don't think it cost you the game. The the other thing like as to me, okay, so it's like the way I looked at the four so it's fourth and four with seven and a half minutes to go at the nine. And you want to go for it. Oh, well, hell, not me. I mean. He did right. Here, here's the other thing. I mean, I think what we're God. finding out is when it gets right down to it, this defense that everybody thinks is a big bad boy defense and with all these big names, they're not as good as we think. Because I, if I'm Kyle Shanahan there, it's fourth and four at the nine. You're damn right I'm taking three there. You know why? Because at the point you take three, you say to your defense, can we get one stop? One st- Hey, Nick Bosa. Hey, all you superstars, Armstead. And Greenlaw, he probably wasn't in on that series because no. he's been hurt. No. And, and, uh, and Fred Warner. And all these guys that are, that are so great on defense. This defense, the thumpers. and so- Can we get one stop? One stop. And we win the Super Bowl. Not even like, and you know what? We'll give you the we'll give you the gray area of allowing a field goal, and you still have a chance to win. They, like they couldn't do it. But it, I, I, they, I, I, defense can't couldn't do it. But they did. Whenever it mattered, the game though, it always mattered. Yeah. I hear you, but I think that's front running, Steiny. When you say Please. the time you give it One up, time. but what about if the defense said, "Hey, mf'er." We stopped them all. Though. It ain't our fault when you guys gifted them six points on special teams because that's what you did. They didn't score on us. My point is, Steiny, the D could say, and they should. We stopped them, Steiny. Not when it mattered. They never st- – not when it mattered. <sighs> not when it mattered. Can our D – can the Chiefs get the – can you do – Go ahead. Can you do it? We got a – let me know if uh, if we got a super chat. Oh, we you, do. You Sabo. Uh, okay, this is from 499 okay. from Sabo. Nobody in the Niners offense had their A game. Exactly. And in OT, it comes down to Purdy versus Mahomes. What different results were you expecting, Goo? I, I, I was expecting Kyle to go in his bag. I was expecting them to get a touchdown. Andy Reid's on the other side. And, and he's – and they, apparently they, had, they have they a – they were holding down. They a, apparently they have a pretty good defensive yeah. coach, too. The, the Chiefs. All, all I'm saying is, 
Kyle Shanahan gets it to 16-16. We're in overtime. We use seven minutes to drive, Lucky and we get a chip shot field goal. I'm with you. Seven and a half minutes to go. At that point, they're going to get the ball at the 25 yard line. I'm sorry, but I'm 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 saying we got one job, and that's can we keep Mahomes yeah. out of the end zone? Can we can can <sighs> anything but a 75 yard drive? And they gave up a 75 yard drive. Right. So I'm just saying. I- this, this, all pro. How many all pros on this but defense did we you. talk about? I'm not making excuses. They didn't get it. Like, yeah. they don't come up, like, a lot of time. I mean, they, they just didn't come up with a play. Right, before you get to the calls. They couldn't stop them in the biggest possession of the game. Stiney, I hear you, but I feel like, and I'm not making excuses. I swear I'm not. But I feel like, and you're hitting the D, I, I have no... I give them just badges of honor. I do too. Do you do you take into account they lost arguably one of their best players when Greenlaw no, left? Doesn't matter. See, I, but it, it doesn't. Does, no, it, no, it doesn't. Doesn't matter. They lost the game, and this. But this is what I mean. I just said the defense had. They all had chances. The defense had multiple chances over the course of the game. The offense had multiple chances over the course of the game. Players had chances to make play. Like that's what I mean. Nick Bosa can look in the mirror today and say, we get one stop and we win the Super Bowl. Like, so ev- there's no one guy who's responsible for this. Everybody could have done something yeah. different and they might have won the ball game. I mean, was this the, def- I, was the defense terrific? Defense was pretty damn good. No doubt. But they had a chance to win the game at the buzzer, and they didn't, and it's a make-or-miss league. No doubt. Plain and simple. I like that. They but could the, okay. not stop the Chiefs yeah. when the Chiefs had to have Chiefs had to have a touchdown, and the defense could not stop the Chiefs from getting a touchdown. Yeah. They, they, like, I got what, something What more you. do you want? Uh, offense to score when if we you stop told to Nick where Bosa, when we give up something, we still got enough points. If you told Nick Bosa today, hey, we're going to give you another crack at it, he'd say, I'll take that in a heartbeat. 888-957-9570 is the number. A reminder that you can catch all four hours of Stein and Goo on the free Odyssey app. Plus, watch us on YouTube and Twitch, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. That segment brought to you by Robert Half. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having...
I'm ready to go. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Ain't, taking a, ain't, uh, ain't talking about this game in absolutes. Steiny saying the defense uh, is the problem is laughable. They were on the field. They got to listen to what I had to say. Because what I also said was, if you told me before the game that the Chiefs are going to score 25 points in five quarters, I would say, we'll take it. I'm a 49er fan. You absolutely are taking it. You're going to be in an overtime game, and the Chiefs are going to end up with 25 points after playing 75 minutes of football. If you're a Niner fan, you're taking it. So the defense played well enough for the 49ers to win the game. It's also true that the 49ers had a shot to get a stop on two possessions late in the game, and they would have won the game. It's like Steph Curry when he goes... He's 13 for 21. He's having a hell of a game, and he's got a shot to win the game. It might be a tough shot, whatever, and he doesn't hit the shot. 
Doesn't mean he didn't play well for four quarters. No, he kept us in it for four quarters, but he had a shot. And the 49ers defense had a couple shots. They played well. Just not quite shutting the door. And you could say that about every player and every group, the special teams. Yeah. Guess what? For two games, that ball on the punt hit a guy in the foot on the other team. Oh, damn. It hit your guy's foot yesterday. Wow. We got Super Chat of 1999. Oh, my. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, this is for ahead. you. From T. Oh. Stani, stop it. It should have never gotten to that point of OT if this offense had that killer in- instinct from the start. I agree. Uh, beating Mahomes defensively only, uh, yeah, beating Mahomes defensively only without offense help is rare. They don't call him the GOAT in this generation just to talk. Well, the bottom line is the 49ers lost the Super Bowl yesterday and they lost the NFC Championship game a year ago essentially because their offensive line got manhandled. And that, whoa. Like, why can't we talk about no, that? No, I was, it's on my list. You are right. Like, they were this, bad yesterday. This is what I mean. Like, every, nobody... There's no finger pointing to me. No, well, just weren't good enough yesterday. Yeah, we're. Let me ask 49er fans in your heart of hearts, watching this team in the last four mo- four weeks, three playoff games, were we? And I'll say that just this way: Were we really a Super Bowl team? Do we look like a Super Bowl winning team in the postseason? I would just say no. We just didn't play well. I enough. agree with you. With that's that. all I'm yeah, saying. No doubt. But I will say this: I hate that they went up ten. Stanley, I wish it would have been 13 or 14. Because now, again, you know, I just keep running this you. in the ground. Well, it's not me. It's out there. Well, Another 10. It was 10-0. It was in the first. Yeah, I understand. the first but half it, of an NFL game. I texted game. Evan, like, couldn't it have been 14? the first half of an NFL game. Why did it game have to be 10? When each team had 14 possessions each after. Yeah, I just, I, I hear you, yeah. and I, I know what you're breaking down about the one stop. But, Stani, when you look at this whole game, it was teetering and trying to get away from Kansas City to where the Niners, had they been on their A game offensively, this thing could have been put out of reach to where you can afford to have a blunder on on special teams. And that's what didn't happen. Why won't you give the Chiefs defense credit for, this this is kind of what I mean. So all year long, the weaponry, the weaponry, why can't we say, you know what, the Chiefs shut it down? Like the Chiefs, what, the Niners should have been up more. What, why? The Chiefs shut down the 49ers offense. They So did the Packers for half. Oh, oh. So did the Lions for half. And I thought those were just anomalies. And and, so and why? now now I'm looking around to your point. I'm thinking just do they need some? I'm heard the guys Another in the morning, Butch and Bonte. Somebody to stretch the deep. No, what they need. Let me tell you what they need pre-draft. O-linemen. Stiney, because mm-hmm. Purdy, like, if we're going to blame Purdy for being under duress because Chris Jones comes unblocked at the nine-yard line on the big third, and you pick up that first down, Stiney, you probably win the game with a kick. Like, that's what was on the line. And not to have him blocked is negligence. So I don't, I don't know who to blame that on. But the O-line was not ready yesterday. And Trent Williams, he was on the ground more than Roberto Duran. Let's go to consultant in Walnut Creek. Apparently, the consultant needs a consultant. What's up, consultant? (laughs) What's up, guys? Hey, man. Look, man. Look, at the end of the day, I think there's games that you're going to be sad. And then there's games that you should be mad. And if we had lost the Green Bay game, and if we had lost the Detroit game, those are games I would have been mad because we did not show up. We gave them a ton of opportunities, and those just didn't look like Niner games, you know, in the, in the way that we've been playing all season. Last night's game, today, last night, I'm just sad. Wow. And I'm sad because, you, you know, at the end of the day, you can say, in a game like this, this was too heavyweight. By far the best team in the NFC over the last five years, consistency-wise and talent-wise, against the best team in the AFC over the last six years. And it was two heavyweights battling it out for 74 minutes in a 60-minute game, and we lost. And you can nitpick in a game like football or in any sport. You can nitpick. In games like this, you can nitpick so many different things. Exactly, You're going to go insane if you nitpick. There were four major errors in this game like happened in every game, and each team made two. 
one fumble each, the the muff punt, even though it wasn't a muff, whatever you call it, when it bounced sure. off someone's ankle, and Mahomes interception. And I would say, if you really look at this game, the Chiefs had the best remaining statistical defense in the league. They have what I would consider to be one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, if not the greatest. We'll see what happens, but one of the greatest. And they could not take down our team in 73 minutes of football. Our team, with no Debo Samuels, with his, with his injury, Kittle, who was obviously injured, they've been talking about his toe injury the whole time. I'm not making excuses, I'm just saying. We lose Greenlaw to a freak Achilles tear mm, mm. on a celebration, and they couldn't take us down for 73 minutes. So why am I sad? I'm sad because our team played so hard. They gave it everything. I got no one to blame. I don't think there were huge strategic errors. You can get a little 51 49 on any call. At the end of the day, they beat us in the 74th minute because yesterday they were better. Six out of 10 times that the Chiefs play the Niners, the Chiefs are going to win because they got Mahomes and they had the best defense left in the league. We would have won four of them, and yesterday was one of the six. Hey, you are. And that's it, why it hurts. Hey, let me ask you this before you that's go, and I, I appreciate your honesty. Yeah, man. But real quick, what about the sequence in the third quarter where you ran nine plays? Eight of them were pass uh-huh. plays. If somebody just sit next to you and says, where was McCaffrey, how do you answer that? Yeah. Uh, this, Goo, this is how to answer this question, man. Look, at the end of the day, <clears throat> this is what I was saying. There was only four mistakes made. When you go back in a game like this that took 74 minutes to win, where you had two amazing teams battling it out, and you question what I would consider to be 51%, 49% gotcha. game play gotcha. calls, it is what it is. I mean, you could pick every single then play on every game that you don't score a touchdown on. So in this particular case, McCaffrey had 160 yards, right? 80 catching. 80. He, yep. he was a huge part of the game plan. At the end of the day, you got to you got to spread it out a little bit. They're 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 st- they're stacking eight nine in the box, yeah. and you got to keep these drives going. I mean, so it's a fifty one forty nine. Sure, it didn't work. So yeah, we can go the other way. But in, in real-time game time, you don't play games in hindsight. You play games at the moment. And I don't think there was game, there were calls made that were like, oh, my gosh, that was so obviously you should have done that. Like I am uh, with you. Like beast mode running the ball on one yard line in the Super Bowl, yeah. that's an obvious call. There were no obvious mistakes in this game. There were 51, 49% plays that go either way. We lost. It sucks. You know, I'll just leave on one thing, guys. We are four minutes away from talking about the Niners instead of losing three Super Bowls to winning three. That makes it hurt worse, I have to imagine. Appreciate the call. Yeah. Hey, another super chat real quick, Stoney. Mm-hmm. Bill M, $10. Yeah. T is right. This game should have never gone to OT. The D was fine, but certainly got tired, and that's right. Our O-line is a big issue, and to that, Stoney, I'm going to throw this at you. If George Kittle's non being a part of the passing game is because he needs to stay in and block, then Houston, Houston being San Francisco, we got a problem and we need to bolster the O-line. If that means 85, we can't use him because we're so we, – we can't do this or that because he has to help us. I've been preaching that for a long time, Stoney. They got to mm-hmm. they got to bolster up this O-line. Well, I mean, honestly, and you're going to – I mean, if he were – if he were – such a great pass catching threat, they would make sure to have him be a pass catching threat like more. Mm. He he's he's a great blocker. That that has that game has to hurt. I know they all do Super Bowl Stoney, but damn man. I'm see I the thing I'm focused on, the the, the game never should have gone into overtime. Why not? Why? What did I? What, well, what Kansas City should have won it. I don't know what reason. Why, why shouldn't it have gone in overtime? I what think, does that mean? I think during the sixty minutes of game play, okay. the Niners for forty nine minutes of that game they didn't cash in. I, exactly. Okay, that's part of football. But they were at the the, the, the window. The they were at the window I and stand, lost the chip. I stand. No, no, they weren't at the window and lost the chip. No, they weren't. The game was a coin flip. They didn't make the play. They, they dominated play. the first half and should have been. They up did. More. That's not the game Stoney, I saw. They bludgeoned the Chiefs on bludgeoned. both sides of the ball <laughs> yeah. in the first well, half. Let me tell you what's not and bludgeoning. They, it should have been 10 more nothing. than 10-3. Well, okay. It was 10-3 at half. Well, it well, why been wasn't it? I don't have those answers. I do. The Chiefs, the Chiefs' defense is good. It's really good. And the 49ers' offense maybe isn't as good as everybody thought. But the 49ers' offense, was, yeah. they weren't good in the postseason. But they moved the ball, Stoney. Okay. It wasn't like the Chiefs. Well, and I'm great. not How saying many the Chiefs' defense was you? bad. I'm saying the right. Niners moved the ball, yeah. and then when it was money time, they right. they couldn't do nothing. Right. And so in the first quarter and second quarter, when they're getting nothing, 
any sensible sports fan says, well, they're in trouble because they're not scoring right now. Like, that's part of football. You don't push it through, and you're only up 10-3, and you think you should be up 20-6. to Guess what? You're not. Yeah. You know why? Because you didn't score. Like, you got to score. They, like, I'm they sorry. They did that, yeah. You, you, like, I get, and it's it's word choice, but you can't dominate a half and be up 10-3. Mm. Sorry. I mean, of course you can. The other team commits three. Fine. Okay, Congratulations. No, I hear what you're saying. The 49ers man. bludgeoned in I the first half. I hear what you're saying. And, and you're right. They, right. They were up 10-3. So 10 Kansas three. City probably felt good about being down seven as bad right, as exactly. they played. It's like we talk about the Warriors. Well, Warriors are playing unbelievable. They're playing great lately. Okay, they're 5-5 five and five over the last 10. Right. I mean, but they, by three. the way, the yeah. Warriors are yeah. playing bad. <laughs> no, I, I, I used the Warriors as an example. Boy. The Warriors Come are on. playing bad. They are hooping. Yeah. <laughs> Curry. Like, in a, in a way, like this, this to me of... Uh, the last three Super Bowls, this, and I get why people would say it's the most painful, and oh, the the same reason that it's it wouldn't be painful for me, I get why it is, and it's because to me this was the one, this this was a better shot than the yeah. other two, believe it or not. I feel like yeah. that. Do you guys feel like that? I, I totally. Do. By the same token. Like, that's why it hurts, because this was, I do think they had a better shot yesterday than in their previous two, uh, with, one with Jim Harbaugh and one with Shanahan. And they had a million opportunities, they just didn't. Like, they didn't. This is a game that in the office, like, this is a game where the Lions fans, that man, they are gonna going to be pissed this, off all offseason once they really start thinking about it. Wow. And then, but at least, but the Lions are going to say, man, we had 17 opportunities to win that game. So did the Niners yesterday. And you know what? Just hearing you say that makes me wonder if the Niners, just to get to this game, used up all their magic. And you look at that. Was that the flukest turnover? No. To where you say, no, no, they they won a game two weeks ago when a ball bounced off a dude's face mask. No, I got That's football. And that's why I'm saying the Roosters coming home, to the the chickens coming home to roost is all. Well, if it's bad luck, bring back the same team. You know what? If if it's just bad luck, or and I want to hear, I want to hear somebody tell me because I've been going at it since last night, Donnie. What Brock Purdy could have did differently? The O line was getting handled. What could he have done? Oh, you're gonna do two touchdowns, Goo. My point is, he wasn't the reason you lost. I think it was play calling. I'll wait for Willard on our on the changeover because again, I got something for the situation. Nobody made play a play. Call. Not one guy on that team made a play when they needed it. Not one. Not one. Just who made the biggest play for the Niners yesterday? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, McCaffrey had the best game, I guess. But, like, that's what I mean. Like, like Debo was – they threw it to him. I got it right here. Like, where was I, I – hey, I, I just got questions. Debo uh, – excuse me, I you three for – three catches for 49 yards – uh, Debo Samuel Stani three for thirty three, okay. and George Kittle two for four. And right. I'm up here banging the drum about this might be the most lethal offense in the game. Okay, I need to revisit that. I'm it's in the file now. Like, but the O line is that that's the one thing I take from this. If Brock Purdy is going to ever be that guy, he needs time. I'm not. <sighs> I just feel bad for the Niners. This is three Super Bowls in a row they've lost. And it's one thing to lose 38-10, Steiny, But, damn, when it's right there and it's flirting with you and you're thinking about the parade and, you you know. <sighs> I'm out. 5 one Steiny. I yeah, hate you guys, Steiny, I call BS. 49ers did dominate the first half, but yeah. the offense held us back. With penalties and fumble for okay, fine. But they didn't because I'm, I'm riding with yeah. you. That's How great. can you dominate yeah. up 10-3? Yeah. How right, can okay. you dominate if you're up 10-3? Right. You dominated 5-1-0. I'm going to give like, you that. Who cares? It's just like, man, the Warriors had great shots. Oh, my God. They had so many wide-open threes. They didn't make any, but they dominated well, the first man. half. Like, okay, I'll give it to you. You dominated the first half. But okay, you, then man. you didn't cash in like you, you should have. You just don't like the narrative that it, it, this uh, this is – it's my life. You just don't like – the Niners let this one get away more than the Chiefs won it. I think the Chiefs won this game. I think the 49ers got beat. The 49ers got, mm-hmm. like, I don't, again, I don't, to me, when I look at that, there's nobody to blame. 
I mean, and if you want to blame somebody, I would bl- honestly, I'd blame Kyle. I'd blame Purdy. I'd certainly blame Kittle. Oh my God, Trent Williams. That was he his gets worst bl- game. Is he a gets niner. blame. Debo Samuel blame. I mean, just does. We can go from there. Wow. Like, they, and where do you go from all here had, now? If and I'm looking at the odds for next year, the Niners are favored to win the Super Bowl. But Niner fans don't want to hear that right now again. And this guy's going nowhere. So now, what if Brock? What if they would have pulled this off? I, you're going to laugh. They didn't. Bro, they didn't. Uh, Patrick they didn't. Mahomes might have a rival. They didn't. Now, right, this they dude's always going to be in your way, hey, allegedly. Okay, make a move. Like, then. But I don't know what that is. Make I just know something. the old line needs bolstering. Okay. Uh, you make might need another. Uh, and, and what about Greenlaw? He ain't going to be ready at the start. And then, okay. like, I know nobody wants to hear that, but that's why I say Macbeth, the tragedy. I know a sports tragedy, oh Stanley. I appreciate you on that one. But oh you know God. what I mean? The heartbreak. Is when's Kyle gonna get it? Oh, see, that's don't go overboard with that because for this is where listen, the Bay Area fans are smart enough to know. You know, I'm I try to be really objective. I'm not a fan. They know where you're coming from. The last thing 49ers want to sense or smell, their fans, yeah, is either you or me being patronizing to them. Oh no, we won't no. do that. Oh no, so you that's, heard Baldy well, say it right, to us in Vegas. Right, right. When's he gonna kick in the right, door? Right, but so. I just I'm gonna I'm gonna protect your relationship with Bay Area 49er fans and not allow you that to thing overly is so patronize. I, I don't need you because I don't do that. It's not well, my arsenal. Well, well, I do it at home. Coming up but, at 11:30, yeah. uh, Guru with a five minute soliloquy <laughs> on how uh, how nah, bad he feels man. for 49er fans because he knows. But if you how were a Niner fan, wouldn't you feel is? bad? Though? Wouldn't you? Would, would, seriously, Stoney, this one hurts. Okay. They all hurt, but and and this I one a, hurts. Yeah, and I have a friend, Derek Petrack whose Lions lost two weeks ago, and that hurt every bit as much. It doesn't hurt more because the Niners get to the Super Bowl. No, I think the Super Sorry. Bowl hurts more than the NFC Championship. Well, I'm telling you right now that Derek Petrack, that loss to the 49ers, he, he won't was as over. devastating to him as right. that loss was to any 49er fan yesterday. That's all. Let's go to yeah. uh, let's go to Peon in San Francisco. <laughs> What's up, Peon? Oh, How boy. you doing? Hey, uh, good. Good uh, morning, guys. Hey, hey. So listen, I, I'm, I'm not a I'm not a Niners fan or a Chiefs fan, but I was able to watch objectively. Mm-hmm. And to me, yeah, the Chiefs defense did what they were supposed to. I think the Niners defense played well too. But to me, it came down to that fourth quarter. There was a play where you gave it to McCaffrey. He ran right up the gut and got he got six yards. Now it's third and four. That was a critical time because you needed a couple of first downs. You could have literally ran the clock out. So what happens is... Uh, hey, Peon, pee on, pee on real we, quick. Peon, real quick. Do you know, was yeah. that in the fourth quarter or overtime? Off, do you know off the top No, end? no, no. Fourth quarter. Not, not, not even overtime. So listen, they they fake a sweep left to Depot, who looks like he had a lot of space. Yeah. Uh, and he had definitely had enough to get four yards, but instead they fake that sweep left, go back up the middle. The dude just told you that they've stacked the box. you got to mix... Pepper the plays a little yeah. bit. They were I mean, waiting on man. Hey, yeah. hey, okay, so are you talking about first and 10 at the Kansas City 40 no. with 327? McCaffrey no. gets no. five. Third third down. And four. It was third and four. From nine the and nine. Four. Third yeah. and four. From the nine-yard line, yeah, Stoney, they four. get a first. They're going to run it out, kick a field goal, and win the yeah, Super they get Bowl. first, and then they get another first. The game's over. They got too but cute. Instead of, of, instead of yeah, they fake the sweep left to Debo, yep. and they go right back up the gut. With McCaffrey, they stuffed him. Now you got to kick a field yep. goal. No doubt, man. That was I brutal. That, that sense of urgency, the sense of well, urgency came was in. on that last two minutes. That yep. was the sense of urgency. I think that was the game. Everything else, we can we can second guess. Should have did this. Should have, would have, could have fumbled. They both played well, man. The game went to overtime. But it comes down to that sequence of plays for me. And I think that the Niners could have literally ran the clock out. When they gave the ball back, with a three point lead, I text my nephews. I said, You're giving him, you're giving Mahomes that much time? And I said, Good luck. I can show you the text. You cannot give a guy like that. Pre- you can't give that guy one minute. A minute and 57, yeah. 45 seconds. Because that guy, and let me say this real quick Purdy, is somebody going to address the ball getting batted a lot? Is anybody going to address that? Well, I say it one more time. The, the uh, ball yeah. getting batted. The ball gets yeah. batted a lot on Purdy, more uh, than a normal quarterback. Nobody even brought that up. Uh, uh, he uh, throws yeah. back. A lot of good points. Appreciate it, He was getting that sequence confused. 
the third the the third and fourth from the nine is when Jones came in okay. and, and uh the pass went to a wide open Juwan Jennings, but it was incomplete. But he is right about uh that third down, but that wasn't Okay, that so help help me, help me here, Goo. So overtime. Uh McCaffrey that was it. Six what? yard run right guard to the Kansas Go, City this nine. Is this is it. That makes it second and four okay. at the Kansas City nine with eight minutes and eleven seconds. Right. Then okay. what happens? Then McCa- then McCaffrey goes for no game. Okay. So no it's third game. Down. Then it's third, and that's where Jones makes the pressure. No, okay. Now it's fourth and four at the nine, and they, they take, take the, the field goal with yeah. seven twenty five left. Okay. Yeah. And I guess I hold Kyle to a standard Steiny of situational genius to where you got to know again, maybe that he, t- and some people are saying that Evan and I were talking like, is that on Purdy to know where Jones is at and what to do and what to call or what to change with that pressure? Like Mahomes mm-hmm. might've saw that coming and like, like a yellow stop signal light. So I don't know, but I just know they needed a play and, and you got enough weaponry so Apparently I don't, don't understand why you had to settle for three. You know what? I think what we also find is, look, Debo Samuel is more ordinary if he's not a hundred percent. Maybe he's not a hundred percent. He didn't look. They were he didn't look like flies, okay. And man. you know what? Maybe the bottom line is, even though we joke a little bit about it, the kid ain't a great pass catching tight end. I can't unless, say that when sorry, they don't unless, throw it to him. Well, maybe it's he's a not byproduct open. It's of a, the O okay. line, though, Stani, and you I know, don't Goo, like it. You know, Goo, you just can't get a guy twelve catches if you want to get a guy twelve catches. It doesn't seem like unless you're Kelsey. You know what, Stani is so it's bigger than numbers. That guy has a catch radius. He's big. Okay, will he's you tell physical. me? So I, here's the thing: I can't him in more. That's all. Okay, and then when McCaffrey doesn't get as many touches. Like it's in such an easy game to play of looking at a stat sheet and saying, "Well, you got to go to Kittle more." Okay, well, who does it come away from? Uh, well, let's take six away from McCaffrey. Well, then we're going to get here into the point where it's like, "Well, now you got to play McCaffrey more." Like, yeah. but I two just receptions think, for four yards. What if, he's, I don't what know if where he to come was from. covered? I what if he I believe couldn't he was get in open. blocking more than he was covered? Why? To the because the Chiefs, I got to because he's not credit. a good enough pass catcher, maybe. 888-957-9570 is the number. I don't know. You tell me why this was the most dynamic offense in the regular season and, oh, the weaponry and, oh, all, look at all the pro bowlers and why they didn't look like that team in the postseason. Most certainly didn't look like it yesterday. That segment brought to you by Safeway. Safeway is your Valentine's Day hookup with great deals. Find a dozen roses starting at $24.99.
in the air for a long time. McCaffrey's able to put it down, and he's going in for the touchdown! Jawan Jennings with Yay. a touchdown pass! Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. That's Jim Nance, courtesy of NBC Sports, CBS Sports, Fox Sports, ABC, ESPN. Why don't you that's say the one that's right? I get all. The, it's one of my major shortcomings, along with a lot of other things. Oh, look! Can't there's remember, a list. I don't know who these guys work for. You are phenomenal in Vegas. Hold though. up! You texted us yesterday and asked if it was on CBS or Paramount. That's right. And let me tell you, I watched it on Paramount. Now oh. I know. Now, yeah, now I know why. 
Uh, I got to I got to figure out my TV situation. Jim Nance has <laughs> been on CBS for like forty years, Donnie. Come on, oh, dynamite! So big, like, I thought you were a Masters guy. Sounds like he's had an illustrious career. Decent. He hates wrong. Speaking of announcers and stuff, like there's never been an announcer in my entire lifetime that's ever ruined a sporting event for me. And if they have, just turn it down a little bit. Oh, I thought you. Somebody well, just everybody. Oh, Romo category. stinks, and Nance stinks, and Joe Buck stinks, and well, but actually, no, think, just Romo. I, what? What? Like, what's the problem? Just tell me. I, you know, it's funny. It's not, you said you're curmudgeon. Okay, I think Romo's great. You he tell used me to why he stinks. Everything, you tell me why he stinks. He's, he's, he makes more mistakes than us combined. It's like, all right, Tony, give us something else. You're good. You played the position, but now it's just like he's a one trick pony, and he hasn't grown, man. Yeah, I just don't think he has very much. Oh, okay. And then when Mahomes got the game-winning touchdown, okay. I, I can remember him in the background, Evan Philly Spadoni, special? saying like it was almost the first time Mahomes had done something like that. In the pl- it's his first time, Jim. What? What are you talking like about? They, they won the first. I, like, right. Just edit that out, Tony. You, you needed to just let it ride. Let well, it how breathe. Many, how many times has Mahomes... I, well, he's come back in the Super Bowl, we know, against the Niners in 2019. But so I this wasn't their but, first but, rodeo but that, with that. Well, hold on. I think he but, just was so excited. But no, he, this is... he <sighs> Goo? Yeah. That was E9 to me. No, they're going to... But this is going to be remembered <laughs> like Montana to Rice. It's going to be remembered like Montana to... Because ta- those were all at the very yeah, end of the yeah, game. Gotcha. Like, as great as like Mahomes... I'm Didn't watch the 49ers tonight. have a shot after? I think that's what he meant. It was oh. like, that was a game. Well, no, that was it. Winning it was a walk slash off. End, yeah, yeah, it was a walk-off. So that probably was yeah. one of but a But kind of anyway, the, bottom, the, 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 the origin of this convo yeah. is, is Romo is not that great. But let me tell you something. Yeah. I was talking to the great the Italian stallion Spadoni in the booth. Right. And Stani, Brock Purdy, oh, 22, sure. 23 of 38, 255. I thought showed poise in the pocket, was under duress, one touchdown, didn't throw any picks, no fumbles. Right. Never once did I think he was too the stage was too big for him. Okay. But Spadoni did say something to this point. Right. He was a top five candidate for MVP. Right. We saw up until Christmas. Okay. He was the guy. And I guess my point is talking to you just an hour into the show, I guess I'm telling everybody that'll listen. I, that was good enough, but if you're telling me the Niners or any team that's going to knock off the Chiefs needed Mahomes, then you know what, Stanley? I'm starting to scratch my head. Like, okay. well, then that wasn't Mahomes. Purdy wasn't okay, Mahomes. How many, okay, how many can qu- he can he be that guy? Okay, how many quarterbacks yesterday could have quarterbacked the 49ers to a win? Why don't you look at it that way? Oh, I how think many? he's one of them. Who? A uh, Purdy. Okay, I think some of the play calling let him down. Debo on the sideline every, you know, every other play. Uh, that De- didn't help. That's Debo. Well, that's not Kyle Sa- Shanahan. That, I get that. That's got to be a coach who's like, can he play this down or not? Yeah. But it's just, what is Brock Purdy? Like, I'm not, he's like, that sex. was good enough to me. They He did, he was, he's, he's like fun. at the bottom of my list on why they lost. Yeah, they've won games where he's played like this, but this was a Super Bowl. But the slogan of the day to me before Nobody you get was to good the calls enough. is you saying this team, and it and it hits me. It just resonates. It does, Donnie. They didn't play their best they ball didn't. in the playoffs, and yet they, they had didn't. a lead in the Super Bowl and could have won it. Well, they don't. They right? ten nothing, ten yeah, three. I, like, let me guess. Are you going to put this under the blown lead category? Oh my gosh! Yeah, yes, I, I don't. I don't put this. I don't put this in that. This was a back and forth game to me. I don't look at, oh, they lost a 10-point lead. Well, you let them hang around, so you gave them life, and then the punt was just, you know what I mean? Let's the, go to the muff punt. Yeah, I'm just telling you, I didn't. I, I looked at that as a back-and-forth game, not as a game where the 49ers blew a lead. Mike in Berlin game. Hey, Mike. Hey, can you hear me okay, guys? Loud and clear, my man. Terrific show. Um, lots, lots of uh, blame to go around, but give the other guys credit. There's one little point I want to add into this thing. Okay. The complexity of these defensive schemes, guys. We had grandmasters of chess in those defensive coordinators and in the OCs. And then we had one quarterback that was the grandmaster on the field. 
right? And Brock is an apprentice. He's young, but he's learning. And you could see we should have checked out of those runs that are right up the gut. We never got yards up the gut, right? A Brady, a Peyton Manning, and a Mahomes, they know when to check out. And they probably have been given that latitude by their head coach. Brock is going to grow into all of that. He can do it. We're going to get better. So just a little sign of hope there, guys. Oh, absolutely. And, and like, that's the way I look at it. That's absolutely the way I look at it. How'd Purdy play? To me, he was okay. He kind of played like he's always been playing. Mm. Has he had better games? Of course he's had better games. He's had worse games, too. That Like, that's a Purdy at 23, 38, 255. He threw no interceptions in five quarters. He's in his second year. Second year in the Super Bowl. He played five quarters, and he did not throw an interception. It's like, it's perfectly reasonable to think he's going to get better. And then maybe next year they're in a position where he makes a couple plays that are the difference in the game. But to me, Pur- th- like this is Purdy to me was like everybody else. He was okay. He was okay. Yeah. But okay doesn't yeah, win you a I, Super man, Bowl. Yeah. You have to be somebody who, what 49er can walk off that field. I'm being serious. And say, I tell you what, I played better. But I exceeded expectations. Fred today. Warner. I thought Fred Warner really? was all over the place. Okay. Fred and Warner. He was down there. Jennings? Trying. Juwan Jennings? Who else? But that's Maybe a, Moody. That's a problem. But, J- Jennings played his but ass don't you off. Need, My point is, right. it should be Debo, should be Jennings. Well, he didn't. Or Ayuk or Kittle. Right. Yeah. So their big boys didn't come to play. Yeah. Like, that's the thing. Why didn't we win the Super Bowl? Well, maybe because the best eight players on our roster, Jake Moody none of them yeah. exceeded expectations. Yeah. And I guess the question is why, Stiney? Because the other team gets paid? Because the other team is good? Because over the course of the playoffs, there was just a little bit of slippage wow. that we didn't acknowledge? Many reasons. You weren't the best team yesterday. Uh, Dave and El Cerrito, but you had... Plenty of chances. Plenty of chances. David El Cerrito. Hey, guys. Hey. Um, this team was not the second best team in the NFL. They were two and four against the AFC. And they lost badly to those other AFC teams. Mm. I called you after, I called you after the Cleveland game, and I said that Brock Purdy is good enough to be on a team that wins the Super Bowl but that Brock Purdy is not good enough to win you a Super Bowl. At the end of the game, Jawan Jennings ran an out pattern in the end zone. Tony Romo, who is overbearing, made the comment that he was open and that he was open in the end zone for the play to be made. And Brock Purdy couldn't make that play. And for all the other guys that can't run in Super Bowl history, Roethlisberger can't run. Eli Manning can't run. All these guys find a way to move somewhere in that pocket to make the play when the guy is open in the end zone. And while Brock Purdy was good enough, he really wasn't good enough to win the Super Bowl. Good enough to be on a Super Bowl team, but not good enough to win you a Super Bowl. They ain't his fault, but they were 2-4 and four against the AFC. And, and that's kind of the reality. That's interesting. Well, but here's the other thing. Maybe Brock Purdy will be good enough in a year. But Maybe he'll be good enough in two about years. Stiney, Chris, that's kind of unfair. God, Jesus would have been able to make that throw. And maybe I'm maybe I'm wrong. I'm not Jaworski, but the, for to pick out that play, and he was open, but he was open because dude was barreling down on uh, Brock Purdy, Stiney. And so is that Purdy's fault on the breakdown? Would Big Ben or Eli would Montana who have all been, would Montana have made that to, play in a I'm, Super Bowl? I'm being serious. Could Montana have made that play? Would he have thrown that ball more into the flat? and more on a line where it was catchable. Well, if there's anybody to do it, I wouldn't, what t- about I Brady? wouldn't tell you. Josh, I would say yes to both those okay. guys. I mean, well, then you're asking him to make a play like that in his second year. And on that same play, Ayuk was open in the end zone. Uh, well, hey, why, uh, the, the caller want to add one more thing? I thought he said two things. I'll give him another crack at it if he wants. I, I was just going to say yeah. that, that he, he, he moves very well. He runs very well. He makes plays off schedule, but he doesn't maneuver that well while staying in the pocket and resetting the pocket Mm, all the time. mm. And that's what that play needed. Aaron Rodgers finds a way to maneuver in that pocket. Drew Brees finds a way to maneuver in that pocket. And by the time he needs, because he knows how long the play takes, and the guy was open. 
Look, they were two and four against AFC, and they got beat badly by those other AFC teams. That's minus the Jaguars. Appreciate the they call. They came off came off a bye week. Yeah. Thanks for the call. Hey, anybody know what the 49ers record was against the AFC? Two and four. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. okay. Like, I mean, I will say I this. Pre- I appreciate as it. we have been describing this play that Purdy didn't make. We've used four quarterbacks to say what about we've used Brady, Breeze, Montana, and Aaron Rodgers. Those four, I already heard, they kind of figure out a way to make the, okay. Well, those are four of the greatest quarterbacks ever. And B, Purdy's twenty three or twenty four. Maybe he can make that play when he's twenty seven or twenty eight. Let's Might not go. have the same team though when you're twenty seven or twenty eight. Yeah, well, that that blunder. Then then to me, like that's the one thing. Like, to me, I don't blame any – I do not blame the 49ers. When I look at the 49ers, I say, well, maybe, you know, maybe they were – their quarterback this year wasn't just quite good enough. Maybe next year he's better, but they don't have quite as good of a team around him. So they they either do it or don't do it. But, I mean, I, I really thought of – like, of all the players on the field, to me, Purdy looked the most – like he's looked in the regular season. Now, Kittle didn't. Ayuk didn't. I would even say Debo didn't. I guess the question Debo is, when look you're that super stiny, who upped their game? Well, that's my point. Did anybody on the 49ers up their game? I Jake Moody, I mean, he was... I mean, you can't be mad at him. Let's go to Bob in San Francisco. Hey, Bob, how you doing? Hey, I love the show. How's the hip there, Sonny? It's doing great. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it, man. It feels great. That's good. That's good. I want to give a shout-out to the Niners for getting this far and having a great season. And, you know, it hurts. Yeah, it hurts a little bit. But like I said four years ago, the older I get, the less it hurts. (laughs) I'm the exact opposite. Yeah, I'm the opposite. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, so so, uh, I just think that uh, when it came down to – I don't think that was a – a Super Bowl uh, play calling masterpiece on Shanahan's part. I just okay. don't get it. Okay, I mean, we talk about after halftime the three straight possessions with only one or two runs. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. That I mean, so he's doing the same thing over again, not just in the Super Bowls, but also in some championship games. So with his hubris, I feel he's not learning, and he has to really evaluate what he's doing. So that it doesn't happen again. But there's so many pluses, including the fact that Purdy is young and he's going to be. See, uh, would Randy, Andy Reid have won the Super Bowls without Mahomes? Mahomes fell into his lap. Not fell, but they right. drafted him. We got Purdy now. So it give us a little bit of time. That's all I'm saying. And then also I wanted to make the point that maybe Mr. Shanahan is not a wartime concierge. He can't pull the switch. You know, he gets too – he's not a great head coach. He's okay. a great play caller. But he gets too consumed with the play card instead of looking at on-the-field things. When we could have scored I – mean, I, I, I could have, but I wish we had tried to score down there when – he goes to a third-down pass. A third-down pass where they don't even block the guy coming in. Wow. And so it's like, okay, why not stretch the play out? They were already gassed. It had it – had, uh, I had nightmares like uh, uh, 2012 there, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when we could have we could have used uh, Frank Gore to just bust the inside, but no, we went to the pass four straight times, right? I want to bring up that old history stuff, but I'm just saying, you know, okay. he needs to reevaluate. That's what I think. All right. He needs to sit down this off season and look at his play calling and say, okay, I'm doing the same things. It's not working. Let me change it up. He needs a little mm-hmm. more balance. Appreciate the call. Boy. I got a nugget for you, too. He's, he's universally acknowledged as the best play caller in football. But there's a couple he's going to have. There's a couple that everybody wants him to do a little something different. You know it was all-time good, record good versus luck, Andy good luck Reed with that. in Kansas City? Probably is like many others against Andy Reid. Probably good. not very good. 0-4. Yeah. Two of them in the Super Bowl. Yeah. What's Andy Reid? Right. By the way, now all head coaches that have faced the same head coach and lost the first oh, time in the Super yes, Bowl that was a thing. have lost again. That was a thing. Mm. Uh, Willard Texas, uh, he's listening. Shout out Willard. He said Jawan Jennings upped his game. Right, I he's responded the only one. like that. No shade at Jawan, but on that stage, him being the guy doing that, that's 
That's not ideal. How about that? And I like Jennings. That's supposed to be McCaffrey or Debo or Brock Purdy or Ayuk or Kittle. If it's Jawan, that's a win for Kansas City, I believe, because that means you've held the others in check. So I'll look at it. No kid. Right. Their big boys weren't good enough. And and that's kind of like that's the you know, that's the part that I always come back to. It's like they you know, this was we talked about this offense as oh, it's the most this offense, remember we were saying this offense is better right. than the Montana Rice up, offense. Yeah. Steve, remember yeah. we were talking about that? I got that? my hand up. Okay. I, 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 I felt that. If, if that's what you believe, well, then today you have every right to be pissed because you think the Niners should have scored 47 points yesterday. I would say that I, I never thought it was – it's a damn good offense. But to me, like they – it didn't look like – it didn't look like the 49er offense from the heyday to me yesterday. Uh, Omar's in the city. He wants to talk about why the Niners lost. Hey, uh, Omar, how you doing? What's going on? What's going on, man? Hey. Shout out to all the Niner fans who are over-criticizing uh, Brock Purdy. I love right. it. You guys don't want to blame your coach, man. And you know what? Coach, Mr. Play Call, Mr. Uh, uh, 0-3 in the Super Bowl from, you know, from below. From He's coming, 0-2. Behind, man, you know what? He's 0-2. He didn't do it. He's he didn't team. do it, man. And you yeah. know what? What? Brock Purdy, he pulled out all the stops. He tried what he could, you know, with what he got, man. Conley came up clutch, right? You huh? came up clutch. Caught you know what ball. I mean? <laughs> it was a it big ball. It don't matter. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Okay, where was it? Ayuk was 3 for 49. Jennings 4 for 42 and 1 with the trick play. Dude, McCaffrey fumbled from the get-go. Dude, that was critical. And and over everything. You, everybody was praying on that last drive when Mahomes had the ball. You saw Purdy's face was like, please, defense, come through. Help me out, right? Shanahan was like, oh, man, you gave him too much time. Omar, they weren't good enough. Purdy, like I said, this and, and this is, I guess, what I'm asking 49er fans. Does this make it worse? To me, I'm asking, does it make it worse or does it make it like, at least this one's clear cut. Why'd the 49ers lose? Because none of their best players played great yesterday. Mm. In fact, very few of them can look in the mirror and say, I was pretty good. Purdy looks in the mirror and says, I was kind of average. Debo Samuels got to look in the mirror and say, I was kind of average. George Kittle has to look in the mirror for whatever reason and say, I was kind of average. Yes, Kyle Shanahan has to look in the mirror and say, you know what? I could have been better. Steve, uh, Wilkes. Why can't Wilkes look in oh, the mirror he... and say, boy, I was pretty good, but I had two shots to shut the door and win this game, but I didn't get it done. Trent Williams. He wasn't like... I don't know. I'm asking, does that make it easier or harder if you're a 49er fan? Like, at least I would have some solace in saying, God dang it, we didn't deserve it yesterday. Oh, wow, see, I think I'm on this. Uh, yeah, everything you, so no I just, lies on So what you acknowledge you that nobody played great for the Niners, but yet you still think they deserve the to win. The defense played great. Okay. And I understand what you're, how but you boil it they down. They didn't play great, you, though, because you got the money two time. Two biggest moments they couldn't hold. Okay. Well, I'm going to tell you this. They're in my in my world, Stani, in a 60-minute Super Bowl game, there are no big moments. The first minute in the first quarter is just as important as the last second in the fourth. And had the Niners offense put some points in the piggy bank, the defense could the team could afford a muff punt or something fluke to happen. And the question I have now going forward is what you laid on me early is why in the playoffs did this offense only muster up seven points at home in a half against Detroit and Green Bay, and then in the biggest game not be able to add. That is concerning to me more than than the loss too, which is which hurts. But I, I yes, Donnie, I just the, I just have a problem saying the defense didn't close it out. They didn't. Now, you are they right with the not. opportunity. Guru, they make a play. They had two opportunities. I, they I needed one that, but. stop. 
again, I'm not saying they played badly. Yeah. But what more, if if I said to Nick Bosa, hey, guess what? You got another crack at it. Here's the situation. They're going to have the ball at their own 25. You're going to be up three with seven minutes. Can you get a stop? I guarantee you every single player on that defense would say, and if we give up a field goal, it's not the end of the world. You say, it's not the end of the world. It's still a tie game. Yeah. You have to take that. And you know what else you have to do? You have to come through, and they didn't. That's, and it, I'm not saying the de- it's the defense's fault. No, but it's another reason why every single guy and every single unit had an opportunity mm. to impact that game, but across the board, nobody did it. Special teams didn't do it. Yeah, they gave them seven. And there's a B-side, before you go to call, yeah. there's a B-side to what you just said. Because had Brock Purdy and the offense got a touchdown, you could have that same conversation with Kittle and say, now, you you know, they need a touchdown, which you would think would be more difficult than just being able to default and get a field goal. But my biggest thing, and, you know, I'm going to watch it again tonight, Stani, is when are, if the Niners can't get – if they like this was a perfect season and opportunity to, to yeah. get it done, I do wonder when will it happen. Maybe next year. Uh, Daryl, maybe the year after. Could be the year after that. Maybe 2027. 888 Hit me again, Spadoni. Okay. Oh, okay. We can take these calls on the other yeah. side. Is Brock Purdy going to be da- the quarterback in 27? Because that's what's at stake know. next year. I not know at, nobody wants to talk about that today. Probably not at this rate. I just had no problem with his performance yesterday. He wasn't overwhelmed. Did he make every throw, Stiney? No, but damn, watching that game in real time, he was not the problem. Now, collectively, they just could not get it in the end zone. 888-957-9570 is the number. Niners get beaten overtime yesterday, 25-22. We're talking about it all day on 95-7, the game. Uh, By the way, that segment was brought to you by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromise, also by Xfinity, the Xfinity 10G network made for streaming live sports. 888-957-9570 is the number. We're taking your thoughts on yesterday's game between the Niners and the Kansas City Chiefs. Niners lose a tough one in Vegas. We'll talk about it on the other side. 49ers in a shambles. When people have a craving to explore new and traditional Asian...
to tie it with a field goal instead go for it that's the call from Shanahan gonna have to throw it outside fourth down it's Kittle and I think he's short no he got it you think so reach it out he got it okay now back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 the game thought you said Romo's never right and he didn't get it no he did get no, it no he didn't get it that was Kittle's fourth down oh no I thought that was Kelsey it was Kittle Well. Oh. Why would we play the kills? You know game? why? Get in the game, Goo. You know why? Still... You know what Kittle did? What? Well, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, did you? What did you think of Usher? I didn't watch it. What? As soon as halftime started, I went upstairs. I rested my eyes for about 39 minutes. Walked downstairs, <laughs> and halftime was still going on. You are weird. No interest. You... you missed Alicia Keys and a great performance. Usher's. She's, yeah. she's Oakland's Alicia Keys, I believe. If I'm not mistaken, isn't she? Oh, no, I'm think thinking of... from San Diego. Yeah, no, who am I thinking of? I think of? she's from New York. She has a whole song no. about the country. I spy she's no, thinking that's, about. That, she didn't write that. It was, the, it was uh, Jay-Z, I think. Featuring Alicia Keys. Yeah, that right. was exactly. a great song. Oh, we got $5 chat. Okay. Uh, crypto Dreams. Yeah. Thanks for the chat or not. Oh, boy. Yeah. We got to read it, huh? She's from New York. Yeah. That was like... Oh, who am I please. thinking of? I'm thinking of... Uh, You're thinking of her? Keisha Cole. Her. The, yeah, she played the guitar last No, I'm thinking of... Keisha Cole. Yes. Yeah. That's what I'm All right. Of. Thanks for the Cheddar Niner fans. It's from Crypto Dreams. Hold on, Stoney. Mm. Uh, uh, thanks for the Cheddar Niner fans. Vegas made a billion dollars of that. How can the head coach not know the OT rules? Uh, Raiders, see you in 2026. Let's just talk about that real quick. Mm-hmm. Fair or foul that the player, Niner Armstead and Ustech said they didn't know the rules, and if you didn't, does that have any bearing on the game, or do you oh, go pu- no. do you go public and say, "Yeah, I think the, I think mom and dad never taught me about the birds and bees." I think it's a fair discussion to wonder, or at least ask the question, "Why?" You're starting in overtime. You know both teams are going to get the ball. Wow! No matter what, as Eric Musselman would say, irregardless. So why, when you won the tip or the the, the coin toss, rather? I don't know why you wouldn't just defer like you always do. He said he wanted the third possession. Kyle, you might not get to the third possession, buddy. I mean, I get I mean, he's he's yeah. right. I mean, if you score, then they score. Well, you get the first crack at winning it. He's right. But to me, I feel like if you defer there like you always do, in a way, you're taking, I get it, if they score, you score, we're going to a third possession. But by giving them the ball first, in a way, you're saying, hey, Patrick, at least to start, you, you're you not going to get the last crack at it. But, like, and I get it. Oh, yeah. well, what if he scores a touchdown? And then the Niners score. T- I get all that. All I'm saying is, if you, de- if you defer there, and maybe you hold Kansas City to a field goal on that drive, well, guess what? Then you have the opportunity to not allow Mahomes to come back on the field. Yeah, I'm not. To me, yeah. it's you take the ball. Now you're guaranteeing he's gonna get the ball either tie down three or down seven. But he's gonna be able to use the fourth down. 
exactly. to their advantage, knowing what the, what you just exactly. did. I don't know why. So, I, like I'm with you. I'm, so I, I want my fourth down to where I know how aggressive. You know, I want that fourth down to be like insurance almost to where okay, now we know when you get it first. It's like oh boy, we got to be cautious. Yeah, but if you yeah, I mean, I game know. shouldn't have been in OT. I'll die on that hill. I mean, I don't game shouldn't have. Well, why not? I guess, why, City, why shouldn't it? Have? Kansas City should have won it. In, I thought they were going to. Didn't you think they were going to score a touchdown uh, in regulation? No, I was. I, when I, I like watch it, was when like, I watch a game live, I usually don't know what's going to happen. That's why I watch. I don't I know. Said, did you feel? Stein? Well, like when Kansas City has a ball, like they might score, they might score a field goal, they might like. That's why I watch because I don't know what's going to happen. By the way, you know, you guys. You keep saying that I'm blaming the defense and I'm going to get a little I'm going to get a little snooty and defensive. I'm not blaming the defense. How can you? They ha- they had chances to win the game and they didn't come through. Also, just from a numbers perspective, yeah. that defense that I get it, I'm not blaming. They gave up 22 points in the final 3 quarters. Okay, so do the math on that. Yeah. That's on the, the last three quarters of that game, they were giving up an average of 30 points. And that co- no so, problem. Again, Those let me facts. just say it one more time. The, the 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 defense that I'm not blaming, I'm also saying had a chance to win that game. Right. They didn't come through. No doubt. Just like a guy had a 22 foot guy has a 22 footer down two to tie the game. He misses it. Guess what? It's great he had 32 points for the game, but he had an opportunity that he didn't come through on. And they Two got things you, can be uh, equally true. Yeah, and I'll add one yeah. more to that to make it three things. The same defense picked off Mahomes in the first possession of the second half, and the offense did diddly squat, kept us on, kept us on the field. Yep. You, you had three three-and-out possessions, including that interception that the defense got you, Stiney, so we could yep. add to our lead so we could win this damn game. So I get what you're saying because those that's truth, but also had the offense did their part, yep. it wouldn't have been that close. Yep. It's always a team effort. Like, I'm not being – that's why when I came in today, I'm like, there's nobody to blame individually as far as I'm concerned. I'm not saying well, you, you want to disagree with me, disagree with me. The offense, not good enough. It's just weird, The man. defense had a chance to come through and win them a Super Bowl. They didn't. The special they, – they didn't – that was not a Super Bowl winning performance yesterday. By any group, special teams, offense, or defense, or any individual player with a notable exception or two, their best players did not play well enough. It was, you know, it's like unfortunately, it's look like looking at the box score of a game seven, the Warriors lost, and you look and you see Curry was eight for twenty three, and and. Clay Thompson was 7 for 18, and Draymond was, you know, 3 for 9. Like, they needed somebody to play better. Maybe a uh, couple guys. I don't want to bring up – I'm yeah. from the Bay. I can't. That's just I, the way I look at no, it. No, I ain't mad at you, but the 2016 Kyrie Irving shot over Curry to win the game the, in the finals. I think of the Niners in 2019, the same Super Bowl matchup against the Chiefs. But this one hurts more because I watched that game just like you did. And again, for whatever reason, there was a sequence in the third quarter where Kyle got pass happy. They didn't execute the offense. And at that juncture, you let Frankenstein hang around, which was Mahomes and Andy mm-hmm. Reid, and they made you pay for it. But you like are right. Doing did the defense all... have closed him out? Yes. Did they? No. But, man, this hurts. Uh, let's go to... It hurts 49 or stakes on both sides of the ball on both sides of the team. But my, my biggest issue was that extra point, man. That's mm. the difference in the game. If the punter didn't Moody didn't blow that kick and he was Mr. Consistent all year long, man, it just shows you, man, when you're under pressure and anything can happen because that kick was so low, it, they, they just stuck their hand out and blocked it. I thought that was the most, yeah. Important point of the whole game, man, and nobody's talking about that. So I want to hear what you guys think. I think that was the co- the cause of the loss. That would have been one. That would have 
no overtime, man. Yeah, it's see, been done. Thanks, Tom. I appreciate it. See, I, I didn't. I look at it like this. Oh man, that was ahead. one thing that happened that had it gone another way, maybe it changes the outcome. And that's why when I look at this game, Goo, and I look at the 49 I look at it from the 49ers perspective because we're in the Bay Area and I've watched them play 20 games. Mm-hmm. Like I just feel like they all. Everybody left a little too much on the table, whether it was Moody, whether it was Purdy, whether it was Trent Williams. They just didn't play. Could they have won? Yes, they could have won. And they've won that game in the past. They might have won a game. They might have won two games like that in the postseason. But this was Kansas City. Like, they they. They didn't get robbed. They didn't get hosed. They, they left it on like, the table. They can look in the mirror and say, we they, we weren't you. good enough. Yeah. We had a chance. I'm going to say this about Jake Moody because the amount of Niner fans and, and rhetoric that I'm hearing on X everywhere, the television, Steiny, like explain to me how that was his fault. One more and, time. Uh, Jake Moody, the yeah. extra point, which we know was big, right. but this dude made three for three for field goals, had a record for five minutes on, in, for length of field goals in the Super Bowl. Jake Moody brought his A game. You know we know our partner here, Mark Willard. He te- I can't wait for him to – he texted us saying it was Moody's fault and the deliberate – like I'm shocked coming from that coming from Willard, but the amount of other people that are blaming Jake on a blocked extra point, I'm here to hear people tell me how that was his fault. Was and even if, if you yeah, okay, what if I just tell but you? What about the three other field goals that, that were humongous are, that he drilled? Again, we're talking about everybody making an extra play, and he didn't make it. Like I'm sure they've already figured out that the trajectory on most. Extra, like that ball was below the normal trajectory wow, of a of an extra point. I'm I wow. so he blew it. He I, kicked it too low. Not on that fifty five yarder that was a record. I, you know what but, I mean? It's like I don't know what you he mean. He made all his field goal right. kicks. The extra point was okay. humongous. Right. It was blocked. He didn't okay. miss it. Well, so but it I can make the argument low. that maybe the the guys didn't block. But I think it was I think it was pretty objectively a little low. Well, but I'll my point is like, okay, night. so then what happens? You look in the box score, and Moody's got three field goals, an extra point, and he got an extra you point. You still block. had a lead, like you said, for the D to close it out. But, yeah, and that keeps getting back to, yeah, you know what? If Moody kicks that higher, it goes through. Now it's 17-13. Maybe some dynamic changes. People might be like, what do you mean, Steiny? Maybe. No, it's a four-point. That's fine. Well, the Chiefs know they got to get a touchdown. Let's go to, uh, oh, by the way, can I give a shout-out to Boxer and Gerson? Uh, they sponsor all our guests uh, on the Boxer and Gerson uh, phone line Thursday and Friday in Vegas. So they got their money's worth for sure. Uh, just a special thank you to Boxer and Gerson for the 95-7 The Game guest line. I got, they got to work, they gotta work out yeah, in they're Vegas awesome. on yeah, uh, no Thursday doubt. and Fridays. Thank you, Boxer and Gerson. Triple uh, A on uh, the YouTube chat. Uh, First NorCal Credit Union YouTube chats. Danny, I need security. Stop it, Goo Moody choked. Wow. Oh, I don't, I, you I don't, don't feel that. Now, if that was for the game. You, you use that word. I don't, don't put me in a – you use it. You think he choked? He choked. I don't think he, he choked. He kicked an extra point low. Was it with no time left? How much time was no, that? No, they had okay, more. Well, yeah. so you want to say he choked? It, uh, that's Just like saying McCaffrey choked. His fumble was in the first well, quarter. But, it did. But yeah, they what? were on their but way. But that's where I will take the other side. But you're 10-3 to three at Sorry. half. That's why I will take the other side, neck. though. Come on. It's like, what's wrong with saying maybe the lights were too big for McCaffrey on the first drive? <gasps> oh, my God. Not Christian McCaffrey, the greatest running back in the football that. this oh, year. Yeah. Well, it was also his first Super Bowl. He fumbled. When was his last fumble? What Week what? I, I bet he hadn't remember. fumbled in like seven weeks. No, he fumbled kind of late in the year. I remember he fumbled against Dallas okay. at the goal line. So, okay, it was two. You know, he's fumbled twice in the last twelve weeks. Oh, go ahead, not to but say no, he choked. I don't. I don't. Did do he that. choke? No, I don't. Okay, do did that. the texter think that he choked? If the texter thinks Moody choked on an extra point, who's to say McCaffrey didn't mm. choke on a fun? Yeah, choking for my, me. My is, point is, is it's dumb. It's money time. That, that to me is dumb. Uh, let's go to Daryl and San Ramon. What's up, Daryl? How you doing? Hey, pretty good, pretty good. Good to see you guys at Fieldworks, uh, Guru and Steiny, when you were in San Ramon. All right, good times. Thank you. Hey, um, I I, uh, 
wanted to save this conversation, but you guys have already mentioned Jennings. Yeah. Uh, if any Niner can hold his head up high and have an A, yeah. no, he had an A plus game. It's him. Mm-hmm. It's him. Uh, you know, just uh, only the second player in Super Bowl history to catch and throw a touchdown in the same game. And what about his? Before yeah. you finish, sorry not to cut you off. What about his playoff game? He saved him against Green Bay and saved him against Detroit. So he had a hell of a playoff run. If we're being honest. Oh yeah, I mean you could point to the the postseason that uh, he went up uh, on the second floor to get that uh, catch against the uh, Lions. Nice. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, that one play you were talking about, uh, where Brock Purdy missed Jawan Jennings with Chris Jones all up in his face. If he if he throws it anywhere near Jennings and Jennings somehow comes down with the ball, I will bet you he's up there for MVP of the Super Bowl. Yeah, he, he would have been. He would have been considered. Yeah. He would have been considered. Yeah, but, no, J- Jennings was good. It was like again, but and you 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 nailed this one. You nailed this one. It's like we're talking about the Warriors. I go ahead. Losing, I know where you're losing going. a game in the NBA Finals. But you know what? Moody played well. No, no. Mo- Moses Moody played well. He was eight for eleven from the field, and he scored nineteen. That was Juwan Jennings. You know, like their seventh man. He yeah. played well, but you know, how how the big three do? Well, not quite as good. And I think about memorable moments in the Super Bowl uh, when Brady got beat by Eli Manning, and he threw that pretty pass in the corner that fade to Plexico Burris. How that's just a staple of my my mental rolodex in regard to Super Bowls. Uh, Terry Bradshaw to Lynn Swan, um, Joe Montana to Rice against the Bengals. My point is, Donnie, it was set up to where if they had completed that play, maybe we remember it like that. But the play we remember is the walk off when Mahomes hit our guy on the play that uh, Romo said they've been saving it. <laughs> they've been saving it, Jim. I'm like Romo. The re- they Andy almost got blown out. Yeah, the Andy Reid special. 888-957-9570 <sighs> is the number. Steiny Guru with you on 95.7 The Game. And, you know, I'm just wondering if you're a 49er fan, kind of how you view this one. Uh, how much does it hurt, man? Does it hurt more than the 18, the 19 Super Bowl, Steiny? Well, I'm not the person to ask. I, I think this one, again, like it's hard for me to view it out as a 49er huge fan. Because I'm not. Yeah. But the way I do view it as, I would say if I'm a Niner fan, I'm like, man, we had so many opportunities. No, to we, we And that's one where, you know, it's like, if you're a Niner fan, you're probably saying, we should have won that game. And I'd come on the radio and say, you could have. But so my, my point is, is that the, the frustration I would have as a Niner fan in a way would be, but we just can't pinpoint the area that really cost us the game. Yeah. We, to me, we just weren't good enough overall. And, you know, we, we, you know, the play, we had a couple plays that helped us in the postseason and then one kind of hurt us yesterday with a punt. But I guess I could see a frustration in not knowing what specifically got you beat yesterday. And I'll say this I'll answer it like a Niner fan because I'm a fan, Stiney. So I put my, myself in their shoes. The one five years ago, that didn't hurt like this one because that was the first time. It was the second time for Niner fans as a whole, but under Kyle, this was the second one to where you're like, damn it, and you just expressed it. We let one get away again. This is the second time. 888-957-9570 is the number. Let's go to Alex and Hayward. Hey, Alex, how you doing, man? What's going on? Hey, guys, how you doing? Doing well. Taking my call. No problem. Hey, um, still on, on record of saying this is a uh, problematic issue with Shanahan. <laughs> you got to give this this uh, this loss to the coach. Uh, I agree with a few of the callers who called before about that. He's been in this position so many times, and although he's a good coach, he has he's shown a lack of ability to make adjustments when he needs to make the adjustments. Uh, disagree with that the Forty ers weren't good enough. I mean, you don't get to have a score this close by not being good enough. So you got to look at some other factors. You just look across the way there and look at Andy Reid. He went in halftime and he made some adjustments. What specifically? What 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 specifically well, was an adjustment Reid made? 
I, I would say you, you mean Andy or Shanahan? Andy. Andy, yeah, Andy Reid. Andy made he made the adjustment of covering, uh, especially covering the receivers so they couldn't get open, right, on the second half. He shut down the middle for the run. That, that, that pretty much stifled uh, McCaffrey. But on the other hand, Shanahan had all the field that he could work with, with all those weaponry you were talking about, right? And he didn't use any of them. So if somebody's getting shut down, you got to make some adjustments. You can't go three and out. And they did that how many times in that game? You can't give Mahomes that, that kind of time. Or you can't give Andy Reid that kind of a of a, a gift going three and out. Not not with the Kansas City Chiefs. So, And I'm not a 49er fan. Again, I'm just looking at the game, and that's what I'm looking at. It's, it's coaching at that point. Yeah. Appreciate the call. Well, Stani, I'm not saying he's wrong, but let's be honest and put the right on the table brought to you by ATCO. The second half 49er defense was one without Greenlaw. So that's what he took advantage of, and I get it and I understand it, but to me that's the biggest difference, and I think that's getting lost. I get it, no excuses. Okay. You know, guys get hurt, but they were suffocating um, – Mahomes and company, and and your boy was invisible. Well, Ma, uh, number eighty seven, who we'll get to bumping a sixty five year old man, Kelsey. I yeah. felt like that was Norm on the sideline. I wanted to punch him for hitting bumping Andy Reid like that. I've never seen anything like that. And if I was on the team, he would have got his ass whooped. That's what would have happened if I was a part of the kid. You don't know, do the elderly like that. I couldn't believe that happened, and I wanted them to lose, and they won, and now that'll be just, oh, I'm just horrible. That's just my coach. We're cool. That was weak. I've never seen anything like it. I'm done with Kelsey Steiny, and they won. That's what pissed me off, and he got loose. Like, here's the thing. I mean, you, if, you're, if you're really so, where do we go from here? What do we, or why, why did we lose the game? Okay, so... And, I, and I'm not saying I necessarily subscribe to this, but everybody was like, oh, we can't kick... Okay, what? why did the 49ers lose in the NFC Championship game last year? Because their quarterback got hurt. Okay, and you just said it. Why the Niners' defense... Uh, why wasn't it as good at, after halftime? Oh, they, they maybe lost their best defensive player. Okay, well, those are, both, like, those are both fair things. If you acknowledge those, well, then come back next year. Come back next year with the same team. Well, you pretty much you lost are, your best defensive player. He ain't, that's fair. Yeah, he ain't, he ain't going to be ready for a while. But okay. I get you. That, that, that's I ain't all, making excuses for that's all fans. I'm saying. Yeah. And and here's the other thing. So let me get this straight with a with a with a portion of 49er fans. So you get to say now, after two Super Bowls in five years, uh, that Kyle Shanahan's been in. You get to say now that we've got he's problematic. Can't win the big one. Okay, well, to me, you can't say, well, I, I'm, I don't think he can win the big one, but we can't fire him. Why not? If he can't win the big one, why wouldn't you just fire him right now? Mm. Like, I'm sorry, you don't really get to have it both ways mm. by saying, well, uh, you know, I'm not saying you should fire Kyle Shanahan, but every single time he ever loses a game again, we get to bring up that he's never won a Super Bowl. Okay, fire him. Well, they get rid of him. 888-957-9570 is the number. Uh, jump into the conversation. That segment, uh, among others, was brought to you by Safeway. A quick reminder, quick reminder uh, that you can catch all four hours of Steiny and Guru on the free Odyssey app. Plus, you can watch us on YouTube and Twitch, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. 888-957-9570 is the number. Once again, that segment was brought to you by Safeway. Safeway is your Valentine's Day hookup with great deals. Find a dozen roses starting at $24.99. New York State.
buddy. No, all you. All Andy you. Reed special. <laughs> it's his first time, Jim. Go ahead, Sonny. 888 957 is the number. Niners, they lose 25-22 overtime. You hear the guys in the about. morning? They were morning. No. Yeah. I felt I talked to both of them last night. 49 no, like I did. Forty nine of Frankie like, too. Like th- this is I'm, right, the, I'm, right. I'm there for right, my right. guys, this man. Is the, this is let me tell you something. Fan recognized okay. fan. Then let me tell you something. And now that, oh, that, that is the fourth time you brought it up. <gasps> and so now I my, you don't have to do this. It sounds disingenuous. Even though you know why? Because we all know you're a great guy. We all now, know, you I appreciate quit that. patting right. yourself on the back. Oh, I can only imagine how it feels for shit. That's patronizing. That's going to make them, they don't want that. They don't need you to feel sorry for them. I, oh, You're I, crossing yeah. a line yeah. well, there not, that that is not only, not only in a way, sticking it to them. You know but I then do you're feel making bad, yourself, That's great, Goo. Just today, keep it to you're yourself. You're saying you're not a part of it. I'm not. No, no, you're saying I'm making myself a part of it. Right. Well, you're making you're, you want to make sure. They called me. All you you want to make sure. You want to make sure. This is where we differ. That 49er See, fans. I don't, there's no money that, in that. No, there. but there's likability, <laughs> which you need. <laughs> oh, my Q rating goes up? Please. No, not necessarily Q rating. I'm a fan. Just, I'm from the Yay, man. You're, you're, Born in Oakland. Yeah. Oak Knoll Hospital. I was ready for the parade. And this right. is three Super Bowls in a row that they've lost. I could only imagine. Imagine what? The heartbreak well, to watch that game sit there yeah. for the Snyder to take it, no. well, they and didn't. they pissed it off. No, they didn't piss it off. I believe they Michael did. Michael Jordan took it. <laughs> see, see, he was, but he was, he was Booby Gibson in the first half. He wasn't Jordan. He was Booby he deserve, Gibson. He didn't deserve it. And he comes out of half and throws a pick. It's I texted mine his, automatically. You got. I said night night, but don't he did too. Right, night I know night. you did. You texted Evan seven goes, things. There's a lot of games. You texted right. seven things that turned out to be wrong over the course of the game. When you said now this that game's hurts. over, right. now that game's over, uh, now he's done, and I just keep seeing this game after game, week after week, year after year, and I'm thinking, when does he keep his mouth shut? <laughs> and let a game play out. <laughs> oh, boy. I eight, got eight, eight, company, nine, five, but Spadoni is faster than me. Well, Spadoni's just as First bad as you. I just don't have to do First a show quarter, with him. First quarter, night, night. Where are we with the, <laughs> yeah. are we with the uh, Lakers? Are they championship team or they stink? I, I think just, he's feeling good. They stink. Okay. Oh, oh he's the, they made a trade. Um, I'm out. Ah, they got Spencer doing yeah, it. Right, hey, I'm just saying. Let's go to uh, Jose in Oakland. Hit What's up, Spadoni? Jose? Hi right, guys, how are you? Talk to okay, us. Listen, uh, I'm going to give you four quick points to I tell like you it. why this is all on Kyle Shanahan. Okay? Oh, okay. This goes back to the NFC Championship game when Brock Purdy got hurt because he had poor, poor protection. Okay. Yeah. They did nothing to fix that but to promote McKinney, who, if I'm not mistaken, had even been released before that. Okay. He came back to bite him on the butt. Yesterday, because Purdy kept running for his life all day long, he kept getting pressure, no protection at all. Second, by doing that, okay, you pretty much took out Kiro out of the offensive game because he had to stay on the defense trying to help, wow. you know, blocking Chris Jones. That's point number two. Point number three, he abandoned the run just like he always does on critical games, okay? Even even the, even the, the, the guys from the TV kept saying, okay, why are you abandoning the run? You have to stay with what brought you here, okay? And last but not least, they had the Chiefs pin at fourth and one. And granted, he called a timeout because he didn't like the protection they had. Even I had the foresight to, to think, I hope they place at least one or two spies on Patrick Mahomes because I can, I can already see it. He is going to run for that one yard. That's all they had to do. One stinking yard. They could place... Three guys spying on Patrick Mahomes, and I bet you they could have started. So hopefully this offseason, Kyle, John, put, uh, you know what, draft five or six offensive linemen if you have to. If you Hopefully you get at least one of them. Makibitz is not the answer. And like you said, all right. it all goes back to Kyle. Yeah. He's the head man. It's all on him. Well, let me, let me, let me. 
Well, they, yeah. I just hate the way. See, this is why to me words are important. They didn't abandon abandon the run. They ran thirty one times. Nine, they may have gone playoffs. away from it. <gasps> A series or two. And had they no ran success. 31 okay. times. They also didn't run the ball super effectively. McCaffrey, 22 carries, 80 yards. Right. Maybe one of the reasons they didn't run 39 times was because they weren't gashing. But you to heard say of a home run they hitter. abandon the run is a joke. Yeah. It's you, a joke. To you, no, it's they ran you went three and out three percent. times in the third quarter and, so and, and tricked off an interception. They ran. And you they ran half the time. They okay. ran more than most teams. Well, you tell so me the plays it. that Stop you it. did when you abandoned the run. The right. plays that you decided okay. to run were okay. ineffective. Will you give us that? Okay. So That's, what? What's your point? They did not abandon the run. And the run symbolizes going away from your best and most consistent player. They ran the ball 45% right. of the time. And eight That's of those not runs a, were in, It's in, not abandoning uh, the run. Time, well, but it doesn't I, yeah. matter. It's still a percentage well, you of did, plays. Well, you went three and out three times. Plays. And you didn't add to your league. Okay. You yeah. didn't add to your point No, total. you didn't. I don't think it's... A joke. They to did say, not abandon. Yep, the, the, run. Most, the most inopportune time okay. after you sure. throw eight of nine plays. Abandoning the run is when you throw 49 times and run 18. Right. They didn't do that. They also didn't gash. Maybe one of the reasons they didn't run more than 31 times because they weren't getting four yards a carry. But when you Why got not? a home run Because their offensive the line run. wasn't good when enough. You got a home run they hitter tried. Like McCaffrey, they tried the to run. run, but they couldn't. But that doesn't they mean you stop. No, they didn't. And they didn't stop because they had 31 carries. Well, it worked in overtime. That's a lot of ca- you It know worked in overtime, carries, though, He got right. eight. Thir- hey, I'm saying, th- right, because he needed a second win because he was dying out there, McCaffrey. I don't think he could have survived 30, t- 30 carries. He had thir- Christian McCaffrey touched the ball 30 times. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's, boy, they didn't put the ball into their playmaker hands. Vinny in the city. What's up, Vinny? How you doing? I mean, we're talking Hi, about the man. difference between 30 carries and like thir- 30 touches and 34. Now, if you're going to say that game hinged on, they didn't run the ball once or twice or three times during a three uh, series, okay, that's fine. But I don't think they abandoned no, the run. No, but they ran it. They they ran it up the middle. They ran it up the middle. He's so predictable. He does it all the time. He's so predictable. If I can call it from from my couch, I, how how is how is how is Kansas City not calling it up the middle, up the middle, up the middle? I mean, it, it's it's it's. I, I got I got to stop. Look, this, this your show is the only thing that's helping me process this because it's not only for myself but for my children, my 26 year old daughter and my 21 year old son, who were are raised uh, born and raised Niner fans, and for them not to be able to witness what I've been able to witness, it, it it's painful. It's painful. I was I was with a whole bunch of. 20 somethings yesterday and it's painful to watch them have to watch it. It, mm. it really is. And, and, and for me personally, uh, you're talking about Brock Purdy. When Brock Purdy came in in preseason, I called up my son. I said, there it is. We got him. Here we go. And he's like, ah, oh, dad, dad, you need to settle down. Soon as Brock started, same thing, ah, uh, dad, dad, you need to settle down. And I bet, I bet him a Niner, a Brock Purdy Niner jersey if he takes us to the Super Bowl. One game away last year from doing it, dude. What quarterback? What quarterback has a torn, a torn arm and and does Tommy John surgery and is in the Super Bowl the next the next year? Tell me. I don't know. Now we Tell me. we feel your pain, caller. Appreciate the call. Wow, we sounded young to have a twenty-six to twenty-one year old, but yeah, that was pain right there, Stiney. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seven zero is the number. And if you know what, let's get this a little bit straight on those three drives because I didn't realize this. So, of those three drives where they theoretically didn't run the ball, oh, yeah. on the first drive. They threw an incomplete pass, and then does anybody remember what happened? Holden. 
Yeah, like it was a procedure against Aaron Banks. So now they're second and 15. Well, that tells me right there why they didn't run. They're already behind. They were behind the sticks on that first drive, the first drive of the second half. Then the next series, they didn't, they didn't run the ball. The third series, they actually did run the ball. The first play, they ran to McCaffrey. It was no game. So they did run it one time during those three, the, during those three series we're talking about. And then one time they committed a penalty to start off a drive at two for fifth, second and 15. So, like, I mean, you, to me, that wasn't the difference in the game. That's just me. Yeah. We got another super chat, two dollars. We got to read me. them all. Right. Bang, bang, no Super Bowl ring, R A N G. Crypto dreams. <laughs> Let's go to. Uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go to Sam in Concord. Sammy. Sam's got an interesting, uh, interesting uh, take here. Hi, Guru. Steinman, it's good to have you back. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, but before I say what I want to say, I just want to everybody to make sure you don't misconstrue me because I'm as disappointed and sad as everyone else because I only follow one team with reckless abandon, and that's my Niners. But I feel a little bit of a silver lining to this whole thing. Oh, is it too early for that? No, Not go all. ahead. Okay, because to me, I feel like we're ahead of schedule a little bit. We're playing with house money to a certain extent. Because if you look at the Trey Lance debacle and losing all those first round picks, I mean, just imagine if we hadn't made that mistake and had those first round picks. I mean, what what impact players could we have had on this roster in this Super Bowl? Like, I'm just happy. My favorite team made it to the Super Bowl. You know, I feel like we're two years maybe ahead of schedule. And then look ahead too, right? We're getting our first round pick this spring. We're we're gonna reload. We're about ready to pop off. So everyone, hang hang your head high, man. Our team was in the Super Bowl. Exactly. <laughs> Anybody want to bet on the Niners not to get back to the Super Bowl? I'll take the Niners. Well, Trey Greenlaw on line one. You don't even know his future. But well, like another year older could. for Trent Williams. You don't know what's going on there. And and Brock Purdy. I mean, I just can't believe people thought he could have played better. And then you're gonna on on the flip side, can he get it done? Can he he showed yesterday he could be a Super Bowl winning quarterback to me. He didn't mess it up. Now they he didn't get any blocking either. Well if if but but the like, fair, which the one fair, is the fair, Well, the fair question is, had Mahomes played like Purdy, meaning just like that, the Chiefs wouldn't have won the Super Bowl. You see what I'm saying? Like, people are saying, no, Purdy didn't mess it up, but to win a Super Bowl, you got to win a Super Bowl. You can't just not mess it up. They're not that good. The 49, like, that's maybe the that's maybe the thing that, that we thought, was that their offense is so good, their defense is so good, that that's Purdy me. just has to be... Mediocre. Well, guess what? Maybe he's got to be better than mediocre. And I'm not. I'm no, not here. To, I'm not that. here to judge who he. You know what he. What he was. I what just, was your takeaway from his personal play yesterday? He looked exactly like I. To me, he looked similar to the way he played in the regular season. To me, he did exactly what you would think he might do in his first Super Bowl ever. Yeah. To me, he didn't throw one interception in five quarters of football, which is. Pretty impressive for a second-year quarterback. And that would have been on Debo, the one where Debo dove. And, yes, yeah. yes, yeah, how he played. And he wasn't the reason they lost the game. Isaac Frederick on the YouTube chat. Steiny Guru, what are you talking about? Purdy almost threw a pick. Is that what we're doing? That was Debo's fault. That ball was right there. It should have been caught. So if it would have popped up and the chief defender luckily dropped it, that wouldn't have been a bad read by Patrick. I mean, by Purdy. I'm just thing. telling you, Purdy was Purdy. Was Purdy. All right. And you hope if Brock Purdy stays in the NFL, and continues to quarterback. See, this is what I have Steiny, that's called a game manager. Okay, maybe that's what he is. But he's only two years into his career. Maybe they go to the Super Bowl next year, and he plays better, and he makes a play or two or three more, and they win it. He's in his second year. Maybe he goes back five years from now, and he's better. And now he does play. Maybe he does make a couple plays that elevate you to a Super Bowl winning team. Brock Purdy played like he played for the last two years. Essentially, he was pretty good. He didn't make any. He didn't make a huge mistake. The 49ers win this game a lot when they don't play a great team. 
But I just get back to whether we're talking about Purdy, and you know what? I got to throw McCaffrey in there too. Whether we're talking about Purdy, McCaffrey, Kittle, Williams, Ayuk, Debo Samuel, they didn't play at a Super Bowl winning level yesterday. They they played pretty well. And under a different scenario, they may have won that game. But nobody of their big boys can go in and look in the mirror and say, I was great today. Ah, we just could No. Nobody to a man other than maybe Jennings and whatever. But none of their big boys. I mean, like McCaffrey to me was their best big boy player. Okay, how was he, Steiny? It was like a pretty good regular season game. Although we fumbled, which he hadn't done since week seven. So even if you're saying, I'll tell you what, Stein, McCaffrey was really good. Yes, he was. But he fumbled. And he hadn't, he'd lost two fumbles all year. So even if you think McCaffrey was an A minus, unfortunately, that fumble makes him a B minus. You got the line of the, of the show. And what scares me about what you're talking about is, Steiny, we could go the whole playoffs and say who was who was it. They weren't themselves the whole playoffs. If that ball doesn't bounce off a helmet and IU catch, catches that pass, what are we talking about? So maybe there were signs, you know, early that I was blinded to. And I'm not going to apologize for being a prisoner of the moment. I do it better than anybody else. But, Steiny, I don't think these guys collectively, the offense – this whole, against Green Bay, Detroit, and yesterday, we're on their A game. And my question is, why? Why did you only have seven against the Packers at home? Why did you only have seven against Detroit? And then why couldn't you add when you had ample opportunities on if, the biggest stage okay, yesterday? What if, okay, what if I'm just to answer you seriously? Because they played three playoff teams in a row. Then Playoff teams are good. Then, Every time the 49ers played an uh, AFC team that was good, they didn't play well. Then they got to the playoffs. They played games against teams that are playing. Like, then I overestimated their talent then, if, if, if you're correct. And I'm not saying you are. I, I think it's more, there's more stuff going on. And I overrated. Oh, this is incredible, man. I just maybe collectively overrated this weaponry. They dared the Chiefs defensively for the Niners to, to go over the top and Purdy's phenomenal in the middle of the field, but you told me all year long, and I'm like, oh, no, this is how they choose to do it. They have no Randy Moss. They have no Jerry well, Rice. Now they need one of those. I'm, I'm starting so to got, think, partner. Okay, so they got nine all pros on offense, but now they need Randy Moss. Okay, what else is there then, Steiny? Just get better. Come back and get better. Your quarterback's going to get better. You would like to think. You'd like to think McCaffrey's in his prime. You'd like to think Ayuk has another level. Are you going to add an element of, to stretch the defense or put stress on him to even think you're going to go deep? There was not one oh, deep God. pass attempt yesterday. I'm just saying Mahomes did it and caught but, it. Well, he shouldn't have caught it, but well, then, it was complete. This Niner oh, team, that ain't their thing. Okay, well, and I'm just wondering. Oh, I thought, But you everybody did. cried yeah, and whined no, no. when people said maybe Purdy doesn't have the strongest no, arm. It, it, or, so what is it, okay. Goo? I'm is telling it you what it is. strongest arm or is it nobody who can get downfield? No, it was a message that Goo or gurus out there, we got enough on offense to not need that. And I thought that was good enough. Now, all of a sudden, I'm seeing, okay, you don't so, stretch the so, defense. But, but, you know, you know so Baltimore year, wasn't afraid of you going up top. So Christmas. all year, we've been talking about Ayuk, top five receiver. Kittle, top three tight end. McCaffrey, best running back in football. Purdy, I tell you what, t he's playing like top five quarterback. Kittle, top three tight well, then why, why did they only score 25 points in the postseason every game? Well, maybe it's a fair thought. You tell me what you think, Stoney. It's the way that you're using them, maybe. Maybe you should have them. So Kyle should – Kyle's not? Like, this is what I mean. I mean, like, where are we with Kyle? Stoney, guru, Kyle's choked on his offensive calls. Okay. <laughs> we have a $50 chat from Mark Thaler. My uncle was on the team – was roommates with Brent at SCU. I was born in 89. I was alive for two, but I only remember three. We lost this game. Devastation aside, I hope what happened yesterday hardens this team to the core. Us young guns need a ring. I'll tell you what I need. 
I need a $40,000 a year raise. I just picked that number out, but that'd be ah. nice. You think? You know who else needs a Super Bowl? Chief. 31 other teams other than the Kansas City Chiefs. But let me just read something to you, partner. 2019, Kyle Shanahan's team lost in the Super Bowl okay. to Kansas City and Andy mm-hmm. Reid. 2020, uh, 2021, they come back and blow a 10-point lead to the Rams in the NFC Championship game uh, <laughs> that led the Rams to go on and win the Super Bowl against the Bengals. 2022, Kyle Shanahan team went to Philly. We saw what happened. They lost the NFC Championship game. That one wasn't even close. Mm-hmm. And then partner to yeah, add partner. Well, you're 2023 go back to... yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, up 10. Yeah. Up 10 not... five, and you know what I think's a joke? <laughs> Just go ahead. You know what? And you can, hey, yeah. people write it, people talk about it. Okay, so Kyle Shanahan in four years has been to two Super Bowl. He's been to four for the last five years. He's, for the last five years, he's been to four championship games and two Super Bowls in four years. God, you want to talk about how he's never going to win the big one? No, I just, I never, God, you want to talk? No, go yes, ahead. I, I just, Keep talking, monkey. Yeah, four years. It's a gorilla year. now, bud. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, it's a gorilla that's now. Your, the that's monkey that's, that's got, your the, thinking. The monkey that went to two for four years is a good is donkey Kong. Yeah. Acknowledge, yeah, that okay, monkey okay, is oh, yeah, a big gorilla now. after four uh, years. Uh, that's a lot I'm of just perspective. Wonder what he's going to get? That's fire him then. Fire him like Andy Reid. You want me? No, you want both. You want to say he's got a gorilla on his back and he can't win the big one, but. You want him to keep coaching so you can say that, and then when he does win the big one, oh, well, well I guess I'm I was just, wrong. Andy Reid on line Four one. Four years. You thought all that First he, of all, he had a whole lot of winning, too, there in Philly and went to championship yeah. games, Donnie. Okay. So I'm just, right. so, hey, I'm rooting so for So go out. ahead and fire him. Were, they, were the Eagles right by firing him? Did the Eagles make the right decision? They got by a fi- Super Bowl after you. he left. That's great. I'll so, let you. So you was tell the right me. decision? He, they got a Super Bowl after he left. So it was the right decision. I don't. I guess so. Okay, then fire Kyle. They he, come out and nah, say fire Shanahan. The Kansas City it's Super Bowl don't mean gently squat to Eagles yeah, fans. Then fire him. No, use you're, you're, that, use no, that stand knowledge. Stand on what you want no, to stand you, on. You're afraid. And you said you wanted afraid both, of what? You wanted both ways. Oh, no, I don't. I got it my way. Frank Sinatra. It's okay. You're living a world where this is not bad. By the way, how many years oh, was Andy Reid? We Reed? went to the championship, boys. Yeah. Get the participation yeah, trophy. You're it. so good, little yeah. Johnny. They People want to win. People they, are bleeding then, out here then make because this decision. man can't get it done. Make the tough decision. And we then don't then have not? an answer as to why the offense I went AWOL. This. I got Offense with AWOL. I'm going to do this. Offense with AWOL, but you're okay with it. Okay, Matt. I'm not going to say he should be fired. Goop. Notice I'm winking because I'm smiling. Okay, mouth and fire him. You can't have it both ways. If you think enough to say he can't win the big one, then say I got data. Okay. I got data, but this then don't mean nothing bye bye. to you. Say bye yeah. bye then. Because you're not mentally say invested. Bye-bye. <laughs> say bye bye. Say bye bye. I'm not. And I said say that before. Bye bye, Shanny. Bye bye, Shanny. Because you're afraid. What do you got? You know. Better than Shanny. That's my point. Yeah. Nobody. No, that's my point. Okay. But at some point, you got to knock the door down. We yeah. heard the great Baldy. Four years. <laughs> four years is such a short period of time. Oh, it's a joke. Oh, oh, he's been coaching only four years? Well, last so four not, years. No! How last long has years. he been at his job? Four years. He's been there the last four yeah, years. See how you're, you're say, cheating. No, you're I'm cheating. not cheating. How I, long has I also, Kyle been at his job? Seven years. Thank you. Five. five Thank five, you. Right. That's seven, three and from I, ten. I actually happen to believe that. The fact that he's got a track record of going to the playoffs five times in seven years and the fact that he has won eight playoff games, I actually look at that and say, that's his me, yellow jacket. Put him in the t- hall. Put him in well, the hall, Stanny says. If he's going to knock on the door, that means he's going to have more opportunities. Yeah, okay. Just like Andy Affair. 888-957-9570 is the number. Guru wants five more years of being able to rip Shanahan. With a, I'm just kidding. Uh, uh, hold on one sec. 888 957 9570 is the number. Coming up on the other side, the Xfinity call of the game. Get in zone, AutoZone. Welcome to AutoZone. What are you working on today?
some advice for Kyle Shanahan. I can get that monkey off his back. <laughs> So-called monkey off his back. After four years, he's, he's snake bit and he's got a gorilla. He can't win the big one. He's gutless he get. Here's how, here's how he gets that gorilla off his back. Just go 7-10 and ten the next two seasons. Just don't, don't be successful. Don't be successful. Just don't make the playoffs. And you know what? That monkey will vanish. It'll vanish. Ask any other coach in the NFL. 
the 49ers go seven and ten, he won't be he won't be there won't be a gorilla on his back because he won't have the unrealistic expectations of winning the Super Bowl every year. A little exaggerated humor. They're not humor, but a little perspective. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, which I wouldn't say humor. No, but it's uh one of those you know, things I bring to the table. <laughs> hey, uh, by the way, it uh it's Time to take a call. Let's go to a day. Let's go to David in Jersey. What's up, David? How you doing? Hey, how you doing today? Dynamite. Hey. All right, awesome, awesome. So here's my thing. Look, we went to the Super Bowl. Thirty other teams didn't go. Next year, we getting our all our All Star players back. This is Brock Purdy's first full full season. Why are we upset? It's okay. We lost the Super Bowl. Not the end of the world, you know. Thanks, Dave. I get your oh, look. Listen to listen to uh, Jersey participation. Go get on him, Goo. Go get I, on I him. Can. Say, oh, the, hey, you want a participation? He's trophy. talking to the Niner faithful. I'm, yeah. I'm sure they don't want to hear that. But that's an absolutely positively uh, legitimate point of view to have. Do you think they've would? I'm not even going to ask this question. I don't think I they're it a snake lot. bit. No, I, I don't think say that. anything. I don't that, think anything like you that. You said this earlier. Correct me if I'm wrong. A couple of days ago, Snotty, this this might have been their best chance to win one. With Maybe. the field, with the, what the field was presenting, and this Kansas City not being the best version of themselves. Maybe. Yeah, I like I like. Here's the way I look at it: the last three Super Bowls. By the way, let's do yeah. let's let's okay. do it now. Uh, let's do it now. It's time for the call of the game, sponsored by Xfinity. The Xfinity 10G network is made for streaming live sports, which means it's the network you can rely on in the biggest moments. The Xfinity 10G network, the best way to stream your Golden State Warriors. 3.3 3 to go. Warriors down 112-110. Pajemski bounce pass over to Curry. Steps and fires a three. It's up and good! He hit it! Point seven to go! Curry! Just wheeled to the right. About a 28-footer. Nothing but net. 113 to 112 Warriors. The Suns call their final timeout with point seven. Wow. That's Tim Roy on the call on 95-7. The game. Curry three-pointer at the buzzer beats the Phoenix Suns. Warriors now 500. They play Utah tonight, 6 o'clock start, 5 o'clock Warriors live with our main man, Evan Giddings. And once again, that is the Xfinity 10G Network call of the game. What a shot. 95-7, the game. Everybody was in Super Bowl mode Saturday night, but I wasn't. I fought off like 8 to – that was incredible. Big shot. Big shot. After Durant blocked uh, about, Kaminga at the real. Let's talk about the defense on that last. How do you, Why did he? How do you allow God, that? Just, wow, man. How do you allow Steph Curry That's to get in amazing. front? Oh, gosh. But, but look what happens make when the you shot. call the timeout. Got to make the shot. Steve Curry. Why was Curry dribbling with three? Like, buddy, you wouldn't have got to have court. They got Kerr called the timeout. 888-957-9570 is the number. Here's the way I look at the 49ers' last three Super Bowls. Uh, you weren't nearly as good as the Ravens. The Ravens got up twenty. What was it? Twenty eight three. Yeah, but the lights they, went out. They, they, exactly. So you got it. It's just like any NBA game in a million years. One team's better than the other. They get up twenty eight three. The other team makes their obligatory run. They w- use all their energy, and the Ravens won the game. The Ravens were better. It's just better Niners team had that the ball year. To I don't win care. The game. Right. They didn't run right, out of gas. That's how you feel. They ran out of gas. Right, you can't win it. You can't say you should have won a game that you were down 25 points. But in. if you're eight yard yeah, line, you they, should be able to score. They had to expend too much ball. energy no. to get back uh, in the game. They didn't deserve that. it. No, yeah. Well, so wait. They you they should have won a Super Bowl that they what was the, what was their biggest deficit? Like a uh, twenty two nothing. Okay, so they it were down was, three it was a lot. scores. Yeah. yeah. Three and they scores. came back. Okay, so did they piss that game away? Uh, no. Okay. Well, yeah, they squandered it. Started. No, they didn't. They lost the game uh, by getting down they, early. They didn't not get in the end zone because they were tired. They got in the end zone because they didn't give Frank Gore the ball. They lost the game because they had too much work to do uh, by getting down three scores. Guess it what? Doesn't work you're gonna that make or, time, you're gonna man. no. It works that way most yeah. of the time. The desperate team gets back into the game, and they have to expend too much energy. Well, the Chiefs just okay. showed us yesterday. Okay. 
The Chiefs did it. The they Chiefs had ran no problem. ten points my, in the first quarter. My point is, it quarter. was difficult for them, and they they came back. They were down, and they scored. I'm talking There's about a it big ain't just physical. I'm talking about the mental anguish of of being down. And they There's a big down difference between be down twenty eight. What was it? Twenty eight three. I'm not going to argue that. You're right. There is a big difference in that. But come on. They were right, the Niners were right there to win that game. Which game? The Super Bowl against the Ravens. Yeah, Gore they, takes off, and then you don't give them the ball again. But see that, and all yeah. I'm saying is, like when we look at the 49ers, like you look at it as, like it feels like in your mind, no team that has ever lost the Super Bowl has just lost the. They blew it. They 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 had an opportunity that was blown, and I'm just saying the first Super Bowl when the Niners got down three scores to the to the Ravens. I get that they came back and they made it close, but like they didn't blow that Super Bowl. They like got beat by a team that was better. That like that's like I don't think they've blown a Super Bowl yet. Oh they, man. You know, the the last one they had a the be, to me the best shot to win at, but they were the 49ers how, how of the 3 Super Bowls of the 12 quarters that they've been in in the Super Bowl. How many of those quarters would you say They've like they they won like they won the quarters. I felt like yesterday they won three of the four. Yeah, and the same thing in the Kansas City, the first Super Bowl with Kansas City. But what I'm saying is, I would say the first two quarters in the first Super Bowl were won by the Ravens. They scored like they they got up. Like if you don't score, you squander like. You can't only be up one score and say you owned the. You have right, to be up well, seven. You have yeah. to be up fourteen Stani, three. I, I, I see what you're saying, but watching that game, you you will, you'll meet me at the point of the Niners had ample opportunity early to add and make and have that game greater than a seven point lead at halftime. I think they had ample opportunities over five quarters. I swear to God. No, I, I get like you. I don't look at. That game being lo lost any particular I, – I, like, that's what I think was comprehensive about that loss was to a man – any one of you MFs could have made a play and you would have won the game, but nobody made a play. And I get – I'm not mad at that, but I guess, Donnie, I, I feel that way, but I'm allowing the first quarter stuff to count too to be put on that list. Not just money, quote-unquote money time. I'm talking about everything. I mean, that interception at or after half that Mahomes threw was just a gift from the, like, and there's no green law, so there's tears. We're hearing there was tears and emotion in the Niners' locker room, and I'm thinking this could go one or two ways. They could they could fold or mentally fold because green law's not there, and you make Mahomes, you continue to have him under duress, and you get that interception, and to get the ball at the 40 and not be able to even get a field goal, Stiney, like, I know that wasn't money time, but that was the start of, okay, y'all keep effing around with this game that you guys have earned because the defense is stopping this great offense or this version of it. That just ended up coming back to bite them in the, in the keister. Let's go to Lamont in Oakland. What's going on, Lamont? How you doing? Yes, yes, guys. How you guys doing? Hey, hey. doing well. Uh, um, I just want to make a point here. I know this is the San Francisco 49ers local station, so of course we're going to see it from the perspective of the 49ers, but let me just spit a few facts for a second. The Chiefs' defense was great all season. The whole year, the Chiefs', the Chiefs defense has been great. Hmm. It was the second-best defense all season long. This is how they played all season. I was fortunate enough to watch them on the NFL ticket. I watched almost every one of their games. The Chiefs actually want their defense on the field. So, Guru, when you were saying, like, oh, they kept blowing opportunities, the Chiefs weren't looking at it like, oh, these are scoring opportunities. The defense likes being on the field. They like making plays. So they were not just going to give up just to pass through a pick. Like, it was not going to be that easy. If you look at their defense, it's been a strength. They've yeah, only they, given up No doubt about it, but they were 25th against the run. They were 25th against the run, and I'm going to let you finish. Let me get to that. What about, hold on, what about when Chris Jones had to call the whole team over and they needed a huddle? They needed a reality check. That let me know, and you should back me up on this, that the Niners were in their dome. Let me get let me let me get to that. This, right. They said the same thing about the Baltimore Ravens. Why did they stop running? Why did they stop running? You know why? Because they put the stack in the box and the and the Chiefs corners are elite. Okay, Sneed and McDuffie are elite. They could not get open. 
That was and when they, I'll and give the you box, that. There was nothing else that they could do. Mm. The, the, and and again, the, the one of the scores they got was on a Tech Mobile flea flick. Right, he threw the he threw the mm. to Jennings, <laughs> and he threw it. Then he threw it to uh. You're right, uh, McCaffrey. Right. Yeah. So so the reality is that Chiefs defense is elite, man. And everybody's so used to the Chiefs offense being the reason mm-hmm. why they're winning. But all season long, the defense has been dominant. Look what they did to Baltimore. And everybody said, oh, why did Baltimore stop running? They stopped running because they, they stacked the Thank box. You. And then when you look at f- further down in the game, you say, well, you know, they, they could have kept running. Right? As people say, they could have kept running the football. But the reality is when you stack the box, and, and even if you get a few yards here and there, it's way – it's more difficult to try to run the ball all the way down the field. It's hard to get 10 yards every three plays running the football. So, eventually, they had to put the ball in Purdy's hands. But the problem is the Chiefs' coverage was elite. The only time they caught passes was when uh, Jennings might have got through on the zone. But when it was man-to-man, they could not – did you see McDuffie? Did you see the uh, plays he made on Debo? Did you see the plays he made? I did. The ball? Did you see Snead? I did. That, that, that defense has carried that team all – Season. And like and, and what was said earlier was about, you know, the strategy and Steve Spagnola. But the reality is, when you look at that Chiefs team, yes, it's not the best team that they've had, but it's the best defense they've had in almost 30 years. That, it's well, one of the – since Dan Thomas and Neil Smith, that defense is locked down. And so when people keep looking at it like the Niners had an opportunity to put the game away, the Chiefs are like, no, we got our best unit on the field right now. We got our best unit on the field you. right now. And the, when we dare the 49ers to move the football and they just keep that hanging around, Hanging around, and then they, when they, and and every game when the Chiefs score twenty four points, they don't lose. I've watched it all season long. They, the defense keeps them in every single game, and this is what they do. So when we look at what the Niners weren't able to do, like Stiney said, the Chiefs' defense was the, was the best unit on the field. Thanks for call. Appreciate it. Yeah, I didn't disagree with a lot that he said. Chiefs' defense is better than the Niners' defense. Let's the numbers might back you up. I think the numbers definitely back me up. I just didn't. I was late to the party on the Chiefs' D. Um, again, their secondary coverage on the Niners receivers. Every time the Niners tried to throw something down the field, a couple end zone shots, it was just pitcher perfect defense, Donnie. Head turned, one hand up, I'm deflecting the ball. So the caller made some great points. But again, I saw Chris Jones, when we see it a lot, rally his troops because I felt like the Niners were doing – the Niners were averaging nine yards per play, Stoney, for a majority of the first half. So to yeah. sit there and come out with only ten points – continue point, that? No, no. Okay. But I, I guess to the caller's point, you would think you would, had, you would have had more to show for it than ten points at half. You know, one of the you know you say run it more, run it more, run it more. Well, they ran it 31 times and averaged all of 3.5 yards per carry. Maybe that's why they didn't. Maybe you run it 40 times when you're averaging 4.5. But yards you, we got to give the. Uh, I, yeah. I got to be careful. But in when uh, overtime happened on that first drive, McCaffrey was a horse, Donnie. Yeah. Like, I, I know you're going to think I'm trolling no, here, no, no. but does anybody ever think that maybe he was a horse in overtime because he he needed a break at some point in the middle of that game? By the way, that's the other thing I saw, and I'm not saying it was it's any yeah. – I mean this for the Chiefs too, but Dre Greenlaw, like, it's a brutal game. He couldn't last. He, he didn't last. It was a fluke. Of course it was. But look, Debo Samuel, like, he couldn't – he couldn't last. He broke down a, a little bit. Uh, who were we just talking about? Why can't I think of it? McCaffrey. Uh, no, no, no. The, yeah, McCaffrey oh, no. was dying at the end of that. Not that he's not we great. We saw Kittle come out run to the locker room. Like, the game took a toll on these guys uh-huh. to where fourth quarter and overtime was – and I'm not saying, of course, the Chiefs are under the same kind of duress. I'm just saying – Man, they took it as far as they could take it. Yeah. I mean, and and they were healthy most of the season, but I, I when you were out, Stani, for your hip surgery, Evan and I did the show for a week. Everybody knows that. And the one takeaway I got from Evan, and he wasn't even trying to hammer this this point home to me, Stani, was this Niner defense was different when they're up. And I was late to the party because I was handing out trophies, being thinking I never once compared them to the Ravens defense with Ray Lewis. But Stani, the, if you, if you break it down and look, you know, look at it and 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 focus in on it, you can see that what Evan was saying about that that trait about their defense was real. And then the second part that I'm coming into I'm coming to grips with is 
I love this offense, and I told you how great I thought it was. But it's apparent to me now, again, stellar, the Ravens, the Chiefs, and whoever called about the AFC North or whatnot, Stani, there's got to be a new dynamic that Kyle uses to, to, to stress out defenses and not have defenses feel like, you know what, we could keep everything in front of us. Those jet sweeps are cute, but no. Debo's, a, you know what I'm saying? He's yeah, going to be I in front of saying. us. Nobody's and running behind us, and I'm wondering, and have they been figured out right. to a degree? Well, I, I'd have to say, that, so what are you saying? They need, you think they need another playmaker? I, I do. Okay. Well, I think or, that's a joke. You know what? Philosophy. I, I think there's okay. a philosophy. I'm pushing the ball downfield. Okay. Now, some that, can that, call us I and would, say, I would agree we with don't the have second that thing. personnel. That's fine. Personnel. I, that's what I'm they saying. Need it, like, they need another playmaker. Okay. Or, 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 okay. or Kyle to open it up more. Open so, it up more. Yeah. And After that, we that, just said he trust. didn't run it enough. No, no, when I say open it up, I'm talking about throwing that thing or down the field. Threw it 39 times yeah. yesterday, and, and including a flea flicker. But a magi- well, or whatever your the hell boy you got credit it. for that. But, uh, it's still a pass. No, no doubt. Jennings got that touchdown. But Let's go to Roy in San Leandro. Which I thought was going to be intercepted. Hey, Roy, what's going on, man? Roy. Hey, how's it going? All right. Oh, well. Listen, both, <laughs> both, both of you... Uh, I just don't know what to say. You, you guys have made so much, so many good points, and so did that. So did that last caller. Yeah. But what I want what what I wanted to point point out uh, going forward, uh, you know, the 49ers could need, I, and I mentioned this to both of you before, that the 49ers could use another uh, wide receiver. They could need. They need another wide receiver. And they need to relook uh, on the off, like Guru said, on the offensive line because I have doubts about the guy named Feliciano. I mean, he's good, but only in situations. And uh, you know, they also could use like a, you know, I know you guys disagree with me, but you know about the running back situation, I still say they need somebody because we know how good McCaffrey is. I'm just saying. Like when he's on the sidelines resting, they need somebody else to come in and pick the slack up. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I hear you. Appreciate the call, Roy. Hope you have a good one. I just don't. And it doesn't mean we. Like there's nothing to discuss. There's a ton to discuss. I just don't think there's anybody to blame. Right. And I, I just I, don't. I, I, I think they got beat. They got beat again. Yeah. I think that team was better. They were better. Bottom line is the Chiefs' defense was better than the Niners' defense. And then Mahomes was enough for Kansas City's offense because to you didn't hold kill their them, own. Though. You know what I mean? Because the Chiefs' defense is better than we thought. Mm. And, and I, that's I why that's, I'm blaming the, you know, I know can we agree to disagree, but Stani, I just, I, I understand why you and the other caller, who did, he made some, some stellar points, but I don't think it's just good enough the fact that the Niners squandered these the, the opportunities to add to the lead because the Chiefs' defense was good enough. The Chiefs were 25th against the run. You can run on them, and the Niners were doing so early and averaging nine yards a play. But I mean, the Niners the numbers were tell me that they, the numbers tell me that the Chiefs held the Niners to 3.5 yards a carry. When it That's was the all numbers. Said, I yeah. got you. Yeah. Well, well but what, there was you a were, juncture of so that we, game well, early to where they were averaging nine yards a play. The Niners. Well, that must include passes. Yeah, no doubt. Okay. Well, I'm just telling you, they did not gash. They ran yeah. for a hundred and thirty. In, in like, here's the other thing I've got to put out there. They played five quarters of football, not four. Yeah. Five quarters of football. The Niners rushed for. 110 yards in 31 10. That's not very good. Kansas City. Sorry, yeah. that's not very good. I, under, like, I, I look at that and I say, well, that's a lot of rushes, 31. So clearly they didn't not run. They ran 31 times. They didn't get enough out of their running game. I, like, I don't look at it and say they should have run 40 times. I look at it as, damn, they ran 31 times. They only had 110 total yards on the ground. Yeah. Kansas City did a damn good job and, against and, the run. And they did a better job after halftime, Stoney. Exactly. That's when, and Zicky, he's tough on me, Stoney, on us. On the YouTube chat says, Stoney is right on this. The Chiefs D stopped the 49ers rushing attack. But I'll add, 
I feel like after halftime, Stiney. But after halftime, that's when the nine yards per play, that start coming down, down, down. And it was like, damn, I just feel like collectively, I don't know the reason you had an opportunity, the Niners offense, to put points up early. And and they couldn't do it. And and we saw whatever, whoever you want to call Patrick Mahomes, but Stani right now, they're in the middle of a dynasty, and he is the the modern day GOAT currently in the league. And that's what scares me for Niner fans. If it's all about winning the Super Bowl, this guy's gonna always be in your way. And now I'm sure they're going to add to their team to where if you look at it, as crazy as it sounds, if you want to say this is the worst iteration of the Chiefs during the Mahomes era and Andy Reid, you telling me they won a Super Bowl? That's kind of scary. Let's go out to uh, Dave. Dave's in Canada. What's up, oh, Dave? Canada. How you doing, man? Hey, Paulus. Hey, hey. I'm a guy who's used to playing three-down football. That's what I grew up with. All right. But I've been watching NFL since the 50s. All right. Now, it seems to me you can't win football games dropping balls, bouncing them off your players, losing possessions, getting stupid dumbass penalties all the time, holding guys on the line. You can't. You can't. And if you if you're doing something stupid ass like that at halftime, do like the other teams. Like Andy went in and he adjusted and he figured them out in the second half. Kyle should have changed his tactics, like he get he did against my beloved uh, Detroit Lions. Appreciate the phone call. Here's the other, like here's the other thing. It's like. <laughs> You weren't good enough. You, you, I don't like, know how I can. I'm not arguing. Like, I don't want to be yeah. like. No, I'm like, not arguing. He, that. You and didn't I get win it. the game. Here's why. On the one hand, I yeah. get if you're a 49 fan, it's the most crushing loss of all time. On the other hand, to me, it's the most understandable. Look, you had too many penalties. Okay, you weren't buttoned up. Your your offensive line put you in too many second and 14s. Weren't buttoned up. All right, your best running back he fumbled on a drive when you may you may be going in. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had a you had a monumental blunder on a punt that changed the game. You had a missed extra point. What what'd you expect? You made too many of those All kind calls, of I mistakes, which happened in our magnified. Too many time penalties. Yeah, they weren't loss. buttoned up enough. McCaffrey fumbled, which he hadn't done all season, but one or two other times. You had a you had a major game changing blunder that, on a punt. Yeah, was, Guess what? Yeah. You got two game-changing plays in the postseason. This one you didn't get. Mm-hmm. You had a missed extra point. It's like you weren't like you weren't good enough yesterday. Could you be good enough today? Maybe. Could you be good enough next year? Maybe. But not yesterday. Mm-hmm. I think all 49er fans can acknowledge. Could you have won that game? Yeah, yeah maybe. Right. Did you deserve to win? No. I don't think 49er fans believe they deserve to win that game. 888-957-9570 is the number. Reminder that you can catch all four hours of Steiny and Guru on the free Odyssey app. Plus, watch us on YouTube and Twitch, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. That segment was brought to you by Robert Half. Robert Half Research indicates 9 out of 10 hiring managers are having difficulty hiring. Robert Half is here to help.
And now set up in the red zone. Trying to take the lead. Mahomes goes for it right away. Wide open. Touchdown. Valdez Gatling. The Chiefs have the first lead in the Super Bowl. I'm so upset. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Uh, Steiny and Guru with you on 95.7 The Game. Willard and Dibs coming up at uh, 2 o'clock. Yeah. Why you smile? Robert Redford. It's just... It's you. Well, we were just talking You're about music. our Vegas trip during the break. Yeah. yeah. Evan and I. Sure. Dude, if we could put a movie out... It would be, first of all... If, you better be careful. Yeah, I would tell you, Evan, it, what happens if Vegas stays in Vegas? My first man? of all, here's the shame of it. It would be PG. <laughs> this last I, trip would have been P-freaking-G. I don't think so, buddy. I think oh, we got three yeah, different so. movies, yeah, and they're no all going to be rated three differently. Different, yeah, you, three different no, writers, huh? No, there was no, I'm no, Tarantino, no, no, no. and who are you? Well, I, oh, I'm talking about mine. <laughs> oh, okay. Mine had no, oh, uh, Evan, no explicit drug Evan. use. <laughs> mine had no explicit sexuality. Yeah. Mine had no Maybe F-bombs. I was with the wrong person. Mine man. had yeah. none of that. That was the Vegas dining. You must live out there. Mine had one guy saying, gosh darn it. <laughs> right. Hey, I got a question for yeah, you about this me. game. I'm being so real right now. And I want to get my caddy when this show is over and, and, and say, you know what? Did he have a point, talking about you being he? So we all agree after the comeback led by Patrick Mahomes yesterday, he is the GOAT right now. He may catch Brady, but we don't care about that. We know he's stellar. And for me to tell you, I was almost lightweight impressed with Purdy. I didn't think he blew it for his first time on this stage. I thought a lot around him didn't step up, including the play calling. Okay, I'll leave that there. Steiny. Am I wrong, or are you going to tell me you think Brock has enough to have that Mahomes moment, or where are you at on Brock Purdy? Because, again, I'm asking you this question not blaming Brock, but if you're the Niners and you got stuck on 10 and you couldn't add and we don't know who to blame, I guess at the end of the day, if you got a quarterback of that caliber, and I'm not even talking about Mahomes, just of that caliber, that dude – is a difference maker. So I guess I'm all in all with all that. Your quarterback, whoever he is, is Brock Purdy that dude. Do you have, do you feel more confident in him no. being that guy after yesterday's no. game or less or the same? Because I'm real quick before you answer, if it's the same, then I think that it that could be revisited by the organization. You said on Friday you don't see any scenario in which You'd watch Brock Purdy play and say, well, I don't think he's going to be the quarterback moving forward. Why would you think that after that performance? No, and that, and again, I love you for bringing that up. I'm not think saying he's that. Better? No, I think some people are accusing me and my, my the, buddies on the text the that I'm grading with the curve. On who? Did you, on Brock Purdy. Okay. I thought he was okay yesterday, and right. they're telling me yeah. I'm sounding on the radio like okay is good enough. Mm. Almost like the Niners mm. need more from well, that in position. Sec- well, he's in his second year. He didn't mess it up. Okay. So do you think he's getting better? Is he improving? Now that's yeah. interesting. Is he, impro- is he improving or not? Well, if you don't think he's improving, then he's not the quarterback. I happen to think he's quarterback 25 games. He's in his second year. I think he's probably getting better. We run it back with him next year. Right. Like, these. Like I just can't say, well, is he now or is he not? He's the same he was three days ago. Brock Pro- He's going to enter his third year. What do you like? What do you do? You feel like you must make a decision on Brock Purdy right now? Oh no! Okay, well then, what's, there was the, a juncture, then what's the argument? Or uh, what's there, the what's the debate? Can this guy be the difference maker? No. When the other guys well, around him have a what, pedestrian, I'm so talking do you want about him to be makers. Mahomes? Exactly. Yeah, no, he can't be Mahomes. That's what I was. Can going. he be? Okay, well he can't. Nobody else can either. Nobody else can be Mahomes. Like. Nobody can be Mahomes. The question is if Brock Purdy makes two different plays yesterday, maybe he sees it. Yeah, right. Well, then he's a Super Bowl winning quarterback. And he would be the one that would have beat Patrick. Okay. Like that was all wasted too. Wasted? Oh. That's not the way. Yeah, that's and, that, and that is kind of at the crux of it. 
wasted? You let a great team hang wasted? around after you had them floundering. First and, of all, and you paid the price. First of all, for you it. said something the, that I yeah. vehemently disagree with. Like when you were like, per, uh, Patrick Mahomes led him to a comeback win. Chiefs were winning 13-10 right. in the fourth quarter. <laughs> the Chiefs were winning yeah. in the fourth quarter. So how the 49ers yeah. kind of like blow another lead? Well, when they scored first quarter. Up. No, okay. no, when they were up in the fourth oh, quarter, Stani, the Niners were up. The Niners had a lead in the fourth Sometimes on those two opportunities. I, I do, you know I know that. Well, so let's not manufacture – is Purdy the guy, or is he? Purdy's probably going to start, I would think, next year, game one. Yeah, and and I told you on Friday, you're right. That was not going to change. I'm just telling you, is this guy a star? Because if you're telling me moving forward, if my wide receivers or my weaponry doesn't show, I always want the default to be my quarterback can be enough, even if they're not having their A game. And Mahomes funny. has it's shown funny. us that. It's funny. All year long, he's good enough. And then the last game of the year, he's the same player he was all year. But now we're like, I don't know now. Why? No, he's, yeah. he's been like, I'm not, I can make a case Purdy's been the most consistent player on the team. No virtually. doubt about Start it. Start to Stani, finish. I'm okay. not, this is not reacting to yesterday's but game. It's about I, watching the other guy on the other side. Sure, but I don't understand what the debate is. You, We just watched Patrick Mahomes, maybe the greatest quarterback in the history of the NFL. Can Purdy beat? No. Why would you think he could? It, it's like asking, well, can Trey Young well, be Steph okay. Curry? No, no. Well, it's nuanced. Are okay. there two or three levels? Well, Even I'm if asking you. don't you. get to Mahomes, he's played well, Purdy. Two. Okay. I well, I'm trying to. I'm trying yeah. to. You ask need you. to see more. No. Well, we're going to see more from Purdy. No. What I'm saying. More games. He's quarterback two years. Do I think he's getting better? Yeah, I think he's probably getting better. How much better? I don't like. There's no decision. There's no. There's no decision with Purdy. He's going to be the starting quarterback next year. I, I get you. So, like, I don't – like, can he do it? That I don't know. You ready to say he can't? Then no, get rid of him. No, like, I'm not. This is what I mean. I'm like, saying they need – He's yeah. under contract for one more year yeah. for no money. He had a really solid year. The team got further than they got Super under – Super Bowl. Like, Super Bowl. I, I don't under like, – I'll tell you what I'm feeling because I'm not doing a good job of expressing it. At the end of the day, and they showed Jimmy Garoppolo. I watched all that crap yesterday, the pregame show, Steiny, and he didn't badmouth the Niners. He talked about had he not got hurt, you know, I might still be here. And it was kind of funny just hearing him talk. But when the game was over, the finality of it all, the Brock Purdy era is still the Jimmy Garoppolo era with more weapons in the, from the standpoint of they still didn't get it done. And that's no shade at Brock. It's just Jimmy's out of here. We got a new quarterback that the Niner fans were all excited about that I said should, played well in my estimation yesterday, Stani, but they still didn't get over the hump collectively. Okay. So that's, you know, we're now, still now, at the, Now finish the, with the point. Like, you need to do it. Okay. Well, so I don't try, know if this kid is a quarterback. They're yeah, going to try, try next year that. now. Right. And I was asking, had but has this is your, what I mean. If has you that taken he, a hit in the Steiny computer of maybe that he ain't good enough to beat Mahomes? He's twenty three. I don't care about his oh, age. Well, see, I, just I know do. He's a quarterback, I do. Yeah, it's like about getting the ball in the end okay. zone. Well, yeah, this ain't about that's getting what, old enough well, you to don't get, get your to do drivers both. like you don't get to do it's both. Football. You don't get to do yeah. both. Like you don't get to say, well, Purdy's only in his second year, so I'm going to hold it against him that he's not in his prime. Well, that's not his well, fault. Well, you're driving a car that you're. It's bigger than just him, Stoney. This is a grown man business. You're driving a car, whether you agree with it or not, to where your quarter, your your coach is trying to get a championship. I guess what I'm saying is like, what are you, what are you saying about Purdy right now? I want to know what yesterday meant to you. Did he lose nothing. points? It meant nothing. I don't. I, it's he's your this, life. He's, I can't tell you that. I just said he's been the most. He was. Con, he's been consistent all season long. Brock Purdy, the way he played yesterday, you know what? It was feels like bad. that was about the way he's played all season. So now I say, okay, he's in his second year. He only started his career halfway through last year. Mm -hmm. Do I think the 40, do I think he can get better? Yeah, I think it's reasonable to think Brock Purdy can get better. Okay, so then there's no discussion. Can he win it all? Yes. All right. He almost wanted. Could he make one more play? Or if, somebody if, else make a play? Thank you. 
Thank you. Okay, but it's this is what pisses me off. Yeah. It sounds to me like you watched that game, or some people watched that game and saw something in somebody, whether it was Shanahan or Purdy, where you say they'll never win it. No. Really? No. I didn't I, see that. And I, I told you, and I've been consistent this whole show, ain't nothing to be afraid of. I told you he was the last of my problems, Brock Purdy. I thought he was okay on a big-ass stage and didn't get, you know, blinded by the lights. And like we talked about it, collectively he was let down by his playmakers and his O-line. So I'm just – I'm a, like Mahomes is going nowhere. So when Niner fans talk about are we going to get one, you could say, well, you're going to get back, but – do you need more from the quarterback position right. if you get in a situation does, to does where Buffalo my need guy, more? You know, Steiny's. I'm, I'm carrying Steiny and Evan today. They're not having their best game. When you have a Mahomes, he can be you want that an- difference maker. You want answers that are not there. Mm. I mean, does Josh Allen have to pick up his play to beat Mahomes? How about Lamar Jackson? Mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson certainly has to pick his, uh, pick up his play to beat. I would himself. say, yeah. Okay. Do you think he can? Like if I, you're I looking, don't. With if Lamar you're look, Jackson, okay. I don't. But so Joe Burrow, who's already done it. Me, yeah. I know this is going to sound yeah. crazy, but if if I told you right now, so you think Lamar Jackson's ever going to be able to get you over the hump against Mahomes? And your answer is, I don't think so, Steiny. Yeah. Why, why would you keep him? Like, why would you just get rid of him then? That's if you it, really, yeah. no. truly, that's like, if and that's kind of what I mean about Shanahan. And I've been that if way you, with Lamar if, for If you want to be out there, if you want to be a 49er fan, a and I'm, I'm not really even sure if it's 49er fans who are doing it. It's another group of, I don't know about haters, yeah. but people that are rooting for. If you really are out there saying, hey, Steiny, he'll, hey, Kyle Shanahan ain't never winning it. Ain't never winning it. Well, then fire him. Right. I don't believe that. Well, thank you. But, but that's what I mean. You say you don't believe it, but we're going to bring it up at every turn for the rest of his life until he does it. Even if he were to do it next year, which means he'd win a Super Bowl within eight years of him being as a head coach, which would actually be kind of on the fairly quick side. But we're going to start, we're going to start at Kyle Shanahan. Like, we just watched Andy Reid. We watched his whole career and say, hey, and people said, he'll never win the big one. And then he wins the big, are we really going to do it in year seven with Kyle Shanahan. I guess we are. And I'm just here to tell you, I hate that. Yeah. That's all. But Doesn't I, mean you can't I do it. it. I think it's a joke, though. That's yeah. all. That's but, th- but that's what we do in sports talk. Well, but I don't Andy have to Reed do Comp it. Is wrong. I don't have you to do it. You are Keller on that. What are you talking you about? Keep, you, I feel like you got a, you got a, uh, what's the thing you blow, uh, when you're the principal had on the playground, he's talking to all the kids. What is it, Evan? Uh, anyway, the loud, my, the loudspeaker thing like, you keep selling Philly fans like the Andy Reid's Super Bowls in Kansas City makes his you've stint never understood in Philly this. successful. No, you've never understood where I'm coming from on this. It's not about the fans. I'm saying if you're Jed York or if you're a 49er fan and you really think Shanahan can't get it done, then fire him. And I dare you to Ask him not to win a title for the next team he coaches. Like, like if you're a disgruntled fan about Kyle Shanahan, fuck, then tell, like, go ahead, then, then we fire him. But I'll tell you right now, I'll take him as the head coach right. of his next team. And I guess, where was this energy, Stani, when Baldy said, because it, it's, it's not fire him. I'm, I'm not that dumb. Where was this energy when we're sitting across from Baldy and he looks at us and says, all of us, yeah. you know, I do wonder Same. at some point Kyle's got to get over the hump yeah. in big games. Right, and so does LaFleur. He's been there five years. But not as again, many times again, in big this games is what I, like Kyle. This is what I'm talking about. This is where, on some level, we penalize Kyle Shanahan for advancing further than other coaches in the postseason. And I don't do that. I Like, to me, Kyle Shanahan has been to the postseason five of seven years. He's been to the Super Bowl twice. He's been to the NFC and NFC Championship game four games. Okay, well, Mike Vrabel has been to the playoffs five of six years. Has he gone as far as Kyle? Not quite. But why is Kyle's monkey greater than Vrabel's when the reality of the situation is they both go to the playoffs all the time? So does Matt LaFleur. So 
You can say Kyle's got a big monkey on his back and gorilla, and I'm here to tell you, so does Vrabel. And you know who else has one right now? Zach Taylor. You know why? Because he's got a better winning percentage now in the postseason than, than Kyle Shanahan. Zach Taylor's 5-2 and two in the postseason. That's a better winning percentage than Kyle Shanahan. When's he going to win the big one? How many Super Bowls has he been in? One. Okay. Yeah, How many one. Has How many has Kyle been in? Uh, two, two, and he's three. lost. And you want to make yeah. a no. monster Shiny, generalization no. about two yeah, games. No. I'm not doing yeah. that. I, you're, you just, you're the guy that thinks second place is first place. No, I don't. You don't even know I it. appreciate second place. I'm looking at you place. telling you, and it don't matter because it's your life. It. I look at you as you're the guy that thinks second place is first place. Keep saying and, it, and, and, and you're wrong. Like, and those you, guys can't hold a candle to Kyle. Do you ever Rabel, think about what you said about Andy Reid? He all got I'm fired saying. in Philly, and all I'm telling you is be careful what you wish for with the second place is okay because <laughs> and Andy's fat ass okay. got ran out of Philly. Oh. Okay. He got ran out of Philly, okay. and you're up here telling right. us, oh, it's, and if you it's, run Kyle Shanahan out of Philly, because yeah, he keeps right winning, getting to the game. That's right. But look around. Well, Steiny, first of all, he's Kyle been the big was game favored twice. to win the Super Bowl in preseason. The Niners were supposed to do this. They didn't get it done. No, they weren't okay, supposed to they do had this. the best, one of the best I mean, offenses. Vrabel, when the season all those guys started, you mentioned didn't have at their disposal. When the season, what the Niners had. When Are you the sitting there telling me the Niners weren't favored to win the Super Bowl? When the season started. Johnson had a ticket. That's great. He made a good bet. No, they were favored to win the Super Bowl. Kyle's That's team. right. When we started the season, everybody agreed. The Philadelphia Eagles, the Dallas Cowboys, and the San Francisco 49ers are the class of the right. NFC. Over the course of the season, the 49ers proved themselves to be the class of the NFC. Like, it doesn't mean the Eagles and Cowboys weren't there. And then the Lions didn't end up there. The 49ers are the best team in the NFC. Yeah, not in NFC. Nobody's, not, in nobody's football. saying they weren't. In football. Well, that's your... No, that's Vegas. Better, that, that's not football. So, that just because Vegas... So, okay, they were just going to... They were better than the Baltimore Ravens. The, I, the, yeah. the 49ers were just better than the Baltimore Ravens because Vegas said so. I don't know why so. saying when is Kyle going to win the big one, you're crypted. Because you say it all the time, yeah. and then guys win know. the big one. When Baldy said it Friday. You had no problem with him saying it. I would say the same thing to Baldy. Well, you didn't. Friday, we were right there. Guru, there were nine guys talking. Nine guys are talking. My point is, Kyle, you're right. The heart of our disagreement is I look at Kyle Shanahan and say he's 44 years old. He's been to two, two, just two Super Bowls. And we're going to say he can't win the big one. How many NFC That's Championship two games? How many two, NFC Championship? Four. So, I okay. don't think this is no time. Right, right. I think we still are operating yeah. under an unbelievably yeah. small sample size. Yeah. I believe Kyle Shanahan will coach in the NFL for more than 25 yeah. years. So, therefore, I believe he's not even a quarter of the way through his career. So I'm not panicking after seven years, right. two of which we all acknowledge were jokes. Right. But, but you're not emotionally invested. That's not no. a bad thing. But I'm that, also 60 years old. I'm also 60 years yeah. old, and I don't think four years is a short right. period of time. And it's not four, seven. But for your for you to dress it up, go ahead and say four. This dude has been in the more bigger games right. in the last five years than okay. any other coach. Right. And it's and so okay why, why for isn't a fan that a positive? Say, why isn't that a positive? It, 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 why isn't that a positive? You would be selling everybody short. He's the best coach in football other than Andy yeah, Reid and who a, won it. There's, who, yeah. Who's won he the last four it. years? That's Andy Reid and who? He like last five it. years. Uh, McVay. McVay Andy, okay. One. He's the third best coach in football, Kyle Shanahan. Oh, that works in your world. Okay. No, it doesn't work. Like 30 years it doesn't work. And he's lost two. Right, okay. Yeah. And he was up to when he's 49, when he's 49, we get to just erase – Six years of talking about a guy who we know what we're saying. I would love to work for you, man. And that's the way yeah, you take I it. I would love to work for you. Hey, Guru, you didn't hit your quota. You know what? We're going to give you that bonus anyway. Well, then fire you him. You're gutless. Yeah. You're not firing I don't him. I want to fire you, him. No, you want to just you're rip him. to a moron. Only a no, moron would not want to fire him. I no. know how to do both. Two okay, things can right. be true at once. You get to, you get I hold to him to him. a standard. It's right. called a standard. You get to tiny. keep him. No. And then when are you going to win the him. big one? That's right. all. Well, and if you get beat 38 to 3, that's one thing. But when you're pissing off games in the Super Bowl, yeah, he pissed off the game. Yesterday, they pissed off another Super Bowl. 
but it's okay mm-hmm. because they got there to that's you, you, and you that's mean. the difference between you and, and that's the way you look at no things. No arm, no face. Kyle Shanahan pissed away right. a Super Bowl. I'm the only one you in the feel world so that strongly. Yeah. You feel so strongly yeah. that he's pissed away Call two the Super Bowls. City of San Francisco. But you're too it's scared. Matt Steinmetz. You're too Let's scared. still have the parade. No, that's a, who you are. Let's still have the parade. Let's keep because him. I look at sports like because yeah. you're not invested. Let's and keep him. Can do have no confidence Let's in him parade. and be able to rip him yeah. for the next three years. Let's have the parade. Let's go to Don in San Francisco. What's up, Don? Hey. Hello. Hey. Hello. Mm. Uh, how you doing, Guru? Hey, hey, hey. Get him off. He's done. He said, how you doing, Guru? Oh, I thought he said girls. Oh, no, Guru. Yeah, call yes. back. <laughs> uh, TC and Sack. What's what up, TC? What's going on here? Shut TC. up, Fitz. <laughs> TC. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm here. Hey, hey, Guru. Stanny, what's going on? Hey. What's up, baby? Hey, look, check it out, man. Hey, Goo, I'm with you, Goo. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, look. Hey, I'm with you, Sonny. Let's check it out. <laughs> we talking about the blame game. Let's check it out. With this dude, Kyle, man, we talking about run the ball. You got to run the ball. You keep getting your own way, Goo. Sonny, you remember, I call these airways talking about this dude all the time, man, getting too cute and getting in his way. Kyle Shanahan lost that Super Bowl. You can't get on here and say Kyle did not lose that Super okay. Bowl. And when somebody said something about him, Steiny, you can't bring back, oh, uh, he's been here the last six or seven. Well, we haven't won it. Okay, what do you want to, like, I mean, what do you want to do go? then? Like, tell me what you, you want, want to do. Steiny, you want, what do you want to do? I've been said get rid of that. Fair. I've been said get rid well, of that, Kyle. That, I've been said it. Listen, I said it. Alec, okay, fine. You said it, and good for you. You have the guts to say, what I'm seeing in Kyle Shanahan leads me to believe he'll never win it, and so I want to move off him. To me, I respect Absolutely. that. I respect that way more than Kyle. He might be a choker. He can't get the. I don't know if he'll ever win the big one, but 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 let's bring him back. And if he doesn't, then we all get to. I like. You, that's what the what what's different was saying. You just are wondering when he's going to win the big one. Does not mean he has to be fired. But TC no, says no, he'll I'm, never no, win the big but one. But you said you respect that but more my, than my viewpoint. No, which no, no. Is, which it, is, I do that opinion. But like, what is all because, I'm asking is when are you going to get it done? Does not mean you need to get fired. Right, and I'm telling you, I think it's too early yeah. for any of that. All right. It is, and oh, that's what the media does. Like I, I like honestly, yeah, that's what. You, the, the yeah. plural you, did. I do not think Kyle Shanahan has been here a long period of time. Right. And you know what? If you really want to say the 7-5 thing, it's fine. Okay. So McVay the first, got a Super Bowl one crack at it. He he's got a, there Okay, one. so I'm saying he's the third best coach in the NFL. You want to fire him? Like, what do you want to do? I don't get I it. I want him to win the championship. Okay. Well, That's, not everybody it, can, and well, he's trying. Not everybody gets as many chances as we're watching young Kyle get. But Stein, you're not giving him any and, credit for being a great coach I called and year in and year out being there. I called him brilliant. Stop okay. that. Well, see, the boy wonder. Is he brilliant? You kidding me because I is called he, him the boy the wonder. Is he brilliant or he is he a choke both. artist? No, it ain't. No, he see, can't. You, I disagree I, with no, that. I it's disagree like you're playing a that. video game and I'm the. I'm not going to be the. I'm the, just I got like, it. it just. No, man, it gets you're double old. talking. No, you get old. You're double talking. No, you. I told you the man is brilliant. It's yeah, just. But I you want to rip him. You want to rip him for the next three years. No, I want to win it. I'm asking when's he going to win the big one? And he's playing in more big ones. When's LaFleur going to win? Why do you keep going? Going to LaFour. He hasn't made, been to the big ones like Kyle. Well, he's been to the playoffs for the last that, five those years. Aren't the, we're talking and, two Super Bowls and right. multiple NFC championship right. games that you've been you up make 10 a big, points. Yeah. Uh, by the way, did they blow a lead yesterday? The yeah, 49ers? In my book. Exactly. It was up yeah. 10. Yeah, the 49ers blew a lead last night uh, and they were up 13. Uh, uh, that segment was brought to you by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. Like that car riding right your tail. Or if you're tailgating right now, all those cars doubling as kitchens and living rooms are on Auto Trader too. Are you working out in this?
Oh, I'm going to watch it. Believe me. I, I really I, I really love the... Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Steiny and Guru with you on 95.7 The Game. Dibs yes, yes. and Willard will be with us in uh, 10 minutes. 10 minutes. We're talking about the Super Bowl. I'm out. Damn. Let's go to a call. Let's go to Lonnie and Hayward. Lonnie. What's going on, Lonnie? How you doing? Hey, fellas. How y'all doing? Dynamite. All right, man. Uh, there's a couple of things that, that switched the game in, in, in the Super Bowl. That fumble off of somebody's leg <sighs> and Ray Ray didn't try to pick it up instead of just falling on it. Um, how about Dre Greenlaw getting hurt? That killed us because Dale Kelsey got open in the middle. And Guru, I kind of agree with you with the Kyle Shanahan thing, but I really don't because do anybody remember the days before Kyle Shanahan? We were losing. We were losers. No, I got Plain you. Ain't no loser. But I'm not advocating for and, him to be fired, though. So I'm just – my whole thing was I do wonder when he's going to get it done because he could He's going to get it done. Okay. He's going right. to get That's the big how, one. Do we you. remember Andy Reid? I do. Do we remember he, Andy Reid? Yeah, he so got his somewhere Bowl else, though. He got his but, somewhere else. You don't want well, that to happen. Maybe Kyle might get his right. somewhere else. So that, he might not be with the Niners. That, that's oh. exactly what I mean. But who who's quick, in on quick, that, compl- though? Quick, Niner compl- fans driving around are like, that's a nightmare, Steiny. What is? Him getting it somewhere else. That would like that don't make well, anybody feel good. Well, then keep your mouth shut and let him coach. Or he and could, don't fire he, him. No, or he could win a big game. Well, if again... By the way, like, just do, do. Can everybody do a favor and look at how many how many coaches won a Super Bowl and how long it took them to win a Super Bowl? You'd be surprised. It's hard to do it in your first five or six years, but when you get there, I, I, to me, none of that. They're zero two in the Super Bowl, right? But you know what you that is there, to me? Yeah, huh. yeah. McVay won his first crack. Talk to me when you're. Crack that's great, yeah, yeah. and that's why Shanahan is the third best coach. Again, like, is, are we going to spend all the rest? Of, let's criticize Shanahan because he's not McVay. No, I'm not. No, all I'm saying when it comes to Kyle is so does the McVay, brilliance is on display. It's why you've been on this stage what's, multiple times. What's McVay's? What's McVay's playoff record? I don't know. I just know okay. he has a Super Bowl and he beat Kyle to get it done. Okay, okay. and I'm just telling so you, it's not impossible. I'm just telling you, Kyle yeah. Shanahan's. Eight and four in right. the postseason. Yeah, but when his you keep, name comes up, you, nobody's focused on that. Right. It's about I'm telling you right win now, the ultimate game. You, you, I'll tell you what. You go, you're eight and four in the postseason. You play seven years as a coach. You make the postseason five of those times. In those five years, you play 12 playoff games. I like his chances. Okay. I like his. So chances. you're assuming he's going to get back. We don't yes. know if that was his last Super Bowl. Well, I think he's got he's a great team. I think he's got a great. Okay. I, I look at it feel. this way. I look playoffs. Yeah. And I think they'll okay. make the playoffs uh, next year. I, I hear you. But Do I'm you? Talk, no, I'm talking championships. Well, according to you, about. yeah, that's all right. he has left on the checklist. Right. And that's that's my point, Goo. According to you, if the 49ers make the playoffs next year and go 13 and four, they get beat in the in the first round. They just have. It, it would have been like the Packers upsetting them this uh, year. Yes. That's better. Then going to the Super Bowl no, and losing. it gets worse. I would just be like, maybe it's just not meant in the cards for him to get this team, right. this current franchise, so that's, that's, to the top. And that's why I'm talking about, and I'm halfway joking, yeah. is you know what? You want to get the monkey off your back? Don't go to the playoffs for two years. Mm. Then come back and go to the playoffs, and nobody will say, well, can he win the big one? Well, of course nobody's saying that because yeah. he hasn't made the playoffs yeah. the last two years. My, and, and the difference in me and you, Steiny, is it, it's, it's about when – it's obviously bringing – a non-winning team up to standards and watching them grow like we saw with the Warriors before they ran off theirs. But the ultimate cap it off is to win the championship. Some coaches never sniff or get close. But some, when you get there multiple times, I Twice. think it's fair that you, it, it, two NFC championship games he lost. Uh, you could have right, been there four times. The Super Bowl. Okay, but he could have been there four times. Right. Had you won that game. He's 8-4 okay. in the postseason. But season. my point is you just wonder. You think they just grow on trees. You no, do. You, you think Super Bowls grow on trees. And I'm here to tell you he's still one of the youngest coaches in the NFL. And, like, it's just unfair that we're even talking about Kyle Shanahan as a choker or as a guy, Steiny, who may not be able to get it done. The only disagreement you and I have is I think whatever you want to say, two times in four years, seven years total as a head coach, it's like we are so far from there, and if we keep doing it, we're gonna look like we're gonna look stupid. So, and I don't want to look stupid. Uh, so, 
you don't see a trend happening with I, his coaching I, style I to where he's the winning. Fair he's question. Up in this I don't. Big game. Well, Fair question. I would say he what you they, need to go see somebody to prescribe you some new glasses. The 49ers were down 13-10 they, in which, the fourth why quarter. Why do you go there and just forget that they were up 10 nothing? Because 10 nothing in the first quarter of a football game is well, nothing, Goo. How about that? Yeah. How about 10 points is not a big lead right. or deficit I, I in the first quarter. Right. But it was you'll give me, it was a fact they were up 10 nothing. And at halftime, it's also a everybody fact that watched they, that they game, led in the fourth they should quarter. have been up more, right? They led in the fourth okay. quarter. Yeah. No, but that was a different – the fourth quarter, the game, to be honest with you, the fourth quarter, that the way that game was trending, had the Niners handled their business, the fourth I, quarter wouldn't okay. even matter. The four, the, all I know is the Niners were down 13-10 okay. right. in the fourth quarter, and they came back and took two – Different leads yeah. in that game, right. so I don't think they blew any lead. And they were also yesterday. up ten to three and got an interception and had the ball at the forty yard line right. and could have just put a lot of distance right. between but, them and the Chiefs. Not right, but game, it only kept it a one score. Have, right, yeah. And I believe the coach had one something to game. do with that. Oh, three, absolutely, three and out, he three, did. Three and out, absolutely. But you have no problem with the eight pass. Plays. No, I just don't think he snake bit because he lost yeah. two yeah. Super Bowls. Well, well, well that's Scotty, all. I don't think he's snake bit in your world. Well, no, some people are. No. Yes, absolutely. Well, explain. Well, give me an example. Of who could be snake bit? Well, I would love you, to hear. Well, that. first of my point is, you're right. I don't think. But if you were to say right. Steiny, like I'm not going to sit here and say Marv Levy wasn't snake bit. Right. Although, do I think he was? Not really. They lost four Super Bowls. He should have won one. Guy missed the 38 yarder. Does that make Marv Levy a choker? No. Does it make Jim Kelly? A less of a champion? Well, I guess it does because a kicker missed a 40 yard field goal. Jim Kelly never gets to be a champion. I'm of the belief I don't think Jim Kelly's less of a champion than actually there are some guys who have Super Bowl rings. I just don't. Like, I view Jim Kelly as a champion. Every bit as much as Trent Dilfer, quite frankly. 888-957-9570 is the number. Steinian Guru with you. And we've got on the other side Willard and Dibbs. And by the way, don't forget, a reminder, you can catch all four hours of Steiny and Guru on the free Odyssey app. Plus, watch us on YouTube and Twitch, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. That segment was sponsored by Lucky California. This Valentine's Day, Lucky invites you to celebrate the one person you can't live without. Right now, it doesn't...
Hit me again, Spadoni. It's his first time, Jim. Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. Matt Simon, Theral, the Guru Johnson are now joined by Dan Dibley and yes. Mark Willard. It is the crossover. What's up, gentlemen? How are you doing? <sighs> oh, Steiny. Oh, Steiny. Wow. Not Ouch. doing great. Wow. Yeah. Both of them. Ouch. Man. Yeah. It, uh, Ouch. I mean, wow. I mean, where to begin? <laughs> where to end? I know where we will begin, and you'll begin by going over the game, but where do you end? This probably doesn't end for a very, very, very long time because this one to me leaves wow. a a bigger mark, a bigger bruise than the last loss to Kansas City. That one you look at and you go, okay, third and 15, he was held. Deep throw to Emmanuel Sanders, should have connected. G- it, it, Jimmy Garoppolo, come on. I mean, he's not going to win you the game. But yesterday, well, we, didn't, we didn't think that then, though. No, you but, didn't come in here the next morning and correct. everyone was like, "But this right? one to me lasts a lot longer in terms of the woulda, uh, the coulda, and the shoulda." I don't know. I, I, I I'm not disagreeing with you, but at the no, same you time, you can do it. No, I, I'm, Four not, hours. I'm actually trying totally. to remember exactly what the emotions of that Monday morning were. I'm trying to remember, um, and it did feel different than this, but I don't know why. Because you're you you know it's a similar type of expectation I think going into the game that ten point lead was in the fourth quarter rather than well, the first quarter um, we didn't think then about Jimmy Garoppolo what we think now we didn't have something to compare him to um, I, I'm gonna agree with you I guess only on this front we felt all year that this was a a better team than that one was. That team, remember, was not even... I had a preseason video that they were going to go 10-6, and six and everyone called me an absurd homer. Mm, homie. Which, you know, that happens every week anyway. <laughs> but, 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 uh, but that team was not even supposed to be good. And then, and then they went to the Super Bowl. This team, we saw them coming from August on. And um, and so maybe that's why it hurts more. Let oh go ahead. But yeah, I but I don't I don't consider either one of them more of a quote unquote choke job. And we handed it to them. And the shoulda 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 shoulda. I was just telling the guys in the other room uh, that's what they're doing in Kansas City today. If the Niners win that game, like we never look at it through that lens. And that's what I always try to do. The Chiefs fumbled the ball four times. They threw an interception we didn't. Um, they had what I would argue was set up to be an epic penalty on third and 13 in overtime, a defensive hold that gift wraps a first down for the 49ers. Oh, and, man. And, no then, and then they go on to score points. So We didn't even bring that up. So they, yeah. they, they stunk a bunch, too. In, in in many respects, right. there were a lot of gaffes on both sides, and a lot of and a lot of great plays on both sides. Yeah. It was a heavyweight bout, and uh, I feel today like Kyle Shanahan's Niners starting to feel a little bit like Patrick Ewing and Charles that, Barkley. That's interesting because yes. uh, I, 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 I think they're yeah. great, and they're just going up against okay. Jordan. And I'll say this: I really thought the Niners not adding. Helen Keller, Ray Charles, all the greats could see that the Niners' defense came to play. And that was the biggest, my biggest question mark coming into this game. But being dominant, I, they bludgeoned. I, I told Sonny this. He didn't agree. I thought they were just the physicality before Greenlaw got hurt. I was like, you know what? Wilkes, kudos. You, you're, I mean, your unit, you guys are balling. And the fact, Willard, that it just kept sitting there, uh, the sequence in the third quarter where eight or nine plays were passes and McCaffrey was was not called upon and I know there was holding and it was third long. <laughs> yeah. But damn it, Willard, that game just reeked to me. Y'all keep playing. These are football guys to the Niners. Y'all keep effing around. These guys are going to get up out their coffin and they're going to win the game and take it away but from you. Not, so it not, was a great game. But, Mark, if you're a Niner goal. fan, you got to feel like you let one go no, or get away. Of course you're going to feel that way because that's the way a fan feels on Monday morning, and that's my point. It's exactly what Chiefs fans would feel today. 
if they had lost because they gaffed a bunch of stuff. But too. they never were up ten. They, they were never t- up like the Niners quarter, were. Willard first quarter. So you got to start somewhere. It was ten to three at half. Yeah, and they then should you get an and, interception and, and, and they, do nothing. And they should have been up by more. And who is number one person to blame for why they were not up more in the oh, first I, half? You want McCaffrey, Christian Thank McCaffrey, you. Christian no, McCaffrey. No, we, we, okay, Christian okay. McCaffrey. So because so, he coughed it up. They, uh, I mean, You're welcome. They weren't it's only joke today. They That's weren't. Done. They weren't effing around. They weren't effing around. That whole third quarter thing about McCaffrey not touching the ball. I ask everyone before you can have whatever pin you want, but go read the play by play first. Just go read the play by play. And if you're so enamored with Andy Reid today, ask yourself what Andy Reid would have done. First down, incomplete pass. Then false start, second and 15. Would you run the ball? It's second and 15. Would you? But it was still and what were three, they, and, three and, and, what, outs, and what were they going to do when wasn't, they false started? It was started? not three, three. No, it outs. wasn't. And, it was what, and what were they going to do on the false start? It's they a run, run it. It's a yeah. run play. Yeah. It's a run play. It's why he false started. Because he was trying to pull, and he went too early. And so that was going to be a run play. And now it's second and 15. You don't run it. Then you get the ball again. First down. Blitz gets to Purdy. He throws it out to hot route Jawan Jennings. Loses eight yards. Second and 18. You want him to run? I'm going to run the ball? A second and 18? Throw something in the they flat did. to McCaffrey, they Willard. Did. You write Dude. that text yesterday. is almost like Steiny saying I'm happy with my team. No. Damn it, they tricked that game no, off. They the didn't. O-line didn't show up. No. The da- And then I'm you want to blame it. Moody, I'm the not kicker. I'm getting the shouting match. Like, you ain't got to get in the shouting match, Willard. But sometimes you got to call a spade a spade, no, damn it. I don't. The, they calling. did not show up. The coaching <laughs> didn't show up. Right. The special teams didn't show up. The defense showed up. Okay. Yeah, you don't have to yell, but you can't just throw so out did, so rose did, petals so did the and Chiefs say defense they didn't show up mess too? up. They Goo. didn't give the game Goo. away. Take a breath. Did the Chiefs defense show up? Yes. They did. Because the Niner offense went the Niner MIA. Off, I thought it the Niner went offense, MIA, Mark. I thought the Niner offense gaffed the whole thing no, away. No, it did because it didn't add. Did the it was Chiefs supposed offense, to be the strength of did, your team. Did the Chiefs offense gaff it away in the first half when they couldn't get a first down? Be- yes, because the Niners defense was... <laughs> Doing their thing. <laughs> and the Chiefs defense then was doing their thing. Yeah. These are great teams, and they mess your plan up because they're great. The same way the Niners messed Mahomes up for an hour so and a what half. You, so what's your big takeaway I, about well, the my game? My takeaway is that two great teams battled in a heavyweight fight and body blow, body blow, body so blow. So nothing to see here with the Niners. Not did nothing, nothing to wrong. see here, but well, you don't. He said it to you all day. You don't. There's not a rule that you have to show up the next day and blame someone. Nobody. At, there's the, not a rule, Goo. Did you listen to the show? Nobody the whole blamed it. I didn't know who. Give me a who, who did I blame? You've been blaming. Hold up, hold on. I Stop watched who did your I blame? Instagram video last night but, and you're but, torching Kyle Shanahan. You did it, Goo. You torching did it. is calling for his head, I Mark. Mean, no, you're not calling Come for his head now. because you learned because you already tried you that You called once. me out Thursday when I was listening, and I texted you, and I said situational play calling is the one improvement that Kyle Shanahan uh, could be enhanced. What does that mean, Yesterday's Goo? game. What does that mean? Going away from 23, however you get him he the ball. He didn't go How, away from Where him. was he? Eight and nine touches. plays, his number was not called. Yeah, 30 touches. And then in overtime, let's ride him like a mule. Oh, guess what? We score. Come on, man. 30 touches. It's okay to criticize Kyle. You're, you're allowed. Nobody's saying it's not. But you should have, a like, a, a, an actual point. All I hear is anger. The point was his second Super Bowl lost after having a 10-point yeah. ten lead. That he ain't lost. good enough in he your lost. world. No, no one's talking. He's 0-2, Mark, Why? in the Super Bowl. I, I, yes, he's 0-2. Those are facts. That's right. That's right. He's exactly where Andy But Reed you're going to paint a different picture. No. Hey, hey, I get it. What? I, that's what I don't, we did. I don't, what if I tell I you, I agree, I agree with oh, everything, everything you said. I'm done with yeah. you. We didn't do four hours well, of, oh, yeah, everything's great. Well, he got you to the Super Bowl. No, go ahead, Stan. I, I vehemently disagree <laughs> with your one statement yeah. where you say the 49ers tricked off the game. That's how I believe. I, okay, yeah. and I just see it as they got beat. Uh, yep. And, where was and they George weren't, Kittle? And they weren't quite good enough. And what do you mean, where was I don't George believe Kittle? the 49ers I'm asking, I'm asking you, where was George Kittle? Did you know that he game? was the intended receiver no, on the no, Jawan Jennings I didn't, I didn't, trick, trick play? Did you know that? Play, Did you know I'm that? I'm asking. Did you know that? You 
have to he keep was him covered. in the block, he, you need to revamp your O line, Mark. Uh, and that's something fair. I overrated. Fair. Yeah. I overrated this weapon redibs this ability to stretch the field, which they're not doing against top tier defense. Couldn't stretch the field because your pass rush, uh, the Chiefs' pass rush was too strong. And also give them credit for what they did against Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel, who had ten targets and three catches. They took away your your deep throws. Every chance you got, even when they were open, and we just were in there with uh, the boss, Matt Nehegan, and we all had a long look, look, look at the play where, you know, Purdy is pressured on third down, and you had Ayuk all alone in the end zone, and Jennings was open in the no right time. flat. He had no time. So it was a blown block. It, it was but a blown block. The offensive, offensive, offensive line. Yeah. The People offensive line. Brock for that. The off- I didn't. They, they, that's wrong. Yeah. There's an offensive line blown assignment, <laughs> and the offensive line is actually what I would address first and foremost this yeah, offseason. No Obviously, you need now a new linebacker, too, which is heartbreaking mm. and disgusting and very, very difficult to swallow. But that, that like, the, the offensive line, pass blocking, now that you have a quarterback who can throw the ball downfield, the pass blocking needs to be better. Mm. And, and, and I agree with and that. A thir- and a 39-31 to 31 split of passes to runs in a football game against Patrick Mahomes in the NFL in the playoffs is completely acceptable to me. 30 touches for McCaffrey is completely acceptable to me. So um, it's not a choke job. It's not a gaff. It's not a it's not a tricked off. It's not any of that. There, there were certain spots, offensive line being one of them and special teams being another. Because, by the way, don't let this one go away. They drafted a kicker in the third round, and yes, he was mostly good this year, but it bit him. An extra point, you kick the bottom of the ball. When you hit it into the line like that on an extra point, that's on the kicker because you can elevate the ball right over a human being so that they can't reach it. But he hit the middle of the ball, and that is on Jake Moody, and we will never know what the Chiefs would have done down four. Twice. He did make three field goals and had a record Yes, he did. Yes, he did. But if it was 17-13 to rather than 16-13 to with five minutes to go, we have no idea what – what the Chiefs would have done on fourth down, and we have no idea if it would have been effective. And it may have cost them the game. And obviously, the looter, the, the looter play, that is his fault. That is his fault. He cannot be there. The call went out, and he has got to vacate the area. That's another special teams mistake. But what about the time ticking off the clock from Kyle, and he doesn't call a timeout? Then he's, oh, I'm which, going to call which, a timeout right part? before halftime. You could have saved yourself Absolutely. 40 seconds yep. to try to be aggressive and go down and score and again, I'm not saying that's why they lost the game, Mark, but that's the little stuff that yeah. can be big stuff yeah, they all in a had, game like yeah, that. Yeah, they all could have done a little more. There were so many guys. Trent Williams could have been a little bit better. Had a bad mm-hmm. game. Brooke, Brock Purdy could have been better. Just a little bit better. Oh. IU could have been a little bit. Like, I'm yeah. I know I'm not being no. condescending at all. It, no, like but, it wasn't quite a Super Bowl winning performance. But I agree, the I agree with you. You know what was I was thinking about when you guys were saying that? Who would you? How would you answer that question if you were talking about the Chiefs? Who was amazing? Just who just was amazing? One guy yesterday. made a was able to make. Some I mean, plays. Mahomes was himself. I wouldn't have I, like it wasn't. Does Spagnola count? What if I? I well, see, him? I, I, Mark, I think. I mean, he's his a great timing coach. of the blitzes were he's incredible. A, they, he's a great coach, but Steve Wilkes didn't have a bad day. Either. No, no, they were. I, you know I mean, the mean? difference in that who game. Was, who was great? To me, it's Mahomes was just a little better than Purdy. Yeah, Mahomes, yeah. And Mahomes is better than Purdy. Right, he's and better he than just, everybody. Right, but he had like, eight chances to be better, Steiny, because the Niners couldn't add. What do you mean? They had enough time. That they stopped Mahomes in that third quarter interception was so symbolic to me because there was no green law. And I'm thinking maybe they go in, they see their brother, they yeah. can't play. You get an interception. My point to Steiny is, yeah, Mahomes ended up being great because you gave him so many chances by not taking advantage of the opportunities your defense gave you. Why don't you give the Chiefs defense? Why don't you say the right. Chiefs defense was better than the Niners? But I why, don't feel like but why it, don't was. You, it was I yesterday. Guess, but why don't you look at it the other uh, way, too? Give it to him. I mean, the, the Chiefs had opportunities that they blew. They fumbled the ball at the 10-yard line. That they did. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I just, it's just, for me, this is, it's, it's a practice of, like, like you used the phrase, Dibs, that nobody, like, it. boy, you do this on social media, they come to your house and, <laughs> and, and, and take your pants off. Treat you like a Waymo vehicle. Well, Red at the Chiefs. Yeah. Mm. They made plays in big <laughs> moments. Chris Jones did it again. 
It's the I, same damn guy that ruined the game four years ago. Spagnolo oh, yeah. was uh, was he's, better than Shanahan. He's a great coach. Oh, he was better than Shanahan. Man, he's they, a great coach. Yeah, he was a great coach, and they had a great scheme, but, and they did not get distracted by all that eye candy and all those motions. They brought a lot of pressure. The Niners couldn't block it. But what about Brendel? If he doesn't miss the assignment, I what just happens? You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Here's where I'll go. I always use this one. This is something that I learned from the great Don Nelson. He we all always a right made a distinction <laughs> between losing and getting beat. And he would always make that distinction. And when somebody said, did you lose tonight? He would sometimes say yes, and other times he would say, no, we got beat tonight. When you look at it through that scheme, and I look at the 49ers yesterday, you may disagree, that's fine. I think they got beat yesterday. I agree with you. I don't think yeah. they lost the game. That other t- it didn't, doesn't mean they didn't have opportunities, but that, that other team got them. They beat them. Well, they gave Kansas the City a lot it. of chances yes. to beat them. That's yeah. And that's where I that's where I take some issues. That's fine. And we can talk about yeah. overtime, and we will for the next four hours as to how you want to approach it because we all think, oh, you want the ball. You want the ball first. But now that we look at it from the rearview mirror, you probably don't want the ball first. You want to – and forget the third possession because we didn't – Did you know the rules, didn't, Gibbs, real quick? I knew the rules. The new rules. But I didn't I think did about it in terms of the third the, possession. Me right. neither. Which I'm, never – I to mentioned me, it to last me, night on Twitter spaces uh, that, you know, as the clock is running down, it's okay. It's just the end of right, the first quarter right. of overtime. The game is not a 15-minute overtime. We're going to go ahead and change it. <laughs> like, what are you it's guys hard doing? To not think of it. It is, like un- it is unsettling. It's, it's, very, unsettling. it's unsettling where you're like, it's overtime <laughs> like, of the Super Bowl, and everybody's just even like, like, yeah, like they were like, like, it's not over, Tony. Right. We're everybody, go to yeah, everybody yeah, they were like, yeah, they can score here. They can wait for the second quarter. And I'm like, what's crazy? To me, the third possession thing is is a complete hammer in this conversation, um, especially if the concept is Mahomes, well, you have to assume Mahomes is going to get a touchdown. Well, if that's the case, you, my God, uh, you have to take the ball first because if, you're, if your concept is we defer because we want to know what we need. Do we need a touchdown? Do we need yeah. a field goal? Whatever. Well, but you're in theory, you're saying Mahomes definitely going to get a touchdown. Now, you brought up something interesting, Dibs, which is if the Chiefs get the ball, go get a touchdown. You go down and get a touchdown, go for two. Yeah. Because Dan Campbell, my win answer, the damn game. which I think is too it's too much. I think people would lose <laughs> their minds if, if the Super Bowl came down sure. to that. But but because the Jake Moody got, PAT is automatic. Right, right? but yeah, exactly. That <laughs> that third that third possession to me, if you're still tied and you give Pat the ball and you're like, all you need is a field goal, it's sudden death. Like you can't do that. I, I think you gotta take the ball. Well, you have to I, take the ball. Yeah. I get my buddy Harry. You got to take the ball. He says Harry. He, he said you got to defer there. Why? I well, he, I can just tell you, you the thinking. You know how criticized he would get if all well, you when, But hold on. You get hold to, on. you get, to you get sudden the death. But you get to, the ball. Well, it's not sudden death. No, but if you get to so if you match each other on that first possession. Right. Then you're giving Pat the ball sudden death and all he needs is three. But True. if you take but, the ball yeah. first and you turtle up, which is kind of what your approach is because you're Kyle Shanahan and you don't want to go for it in that spot because you don't have to, you take the three. Well, here comes Pat Mahomes and he's licking his chops because he knows that I got three covered. My kicker's going to make it from 60. Well, I'm going for seven. Let's not call it automatic. They had scored one touchdown in that point to mm. the, in the whole game, and it was when they gave him the ball in the red zone. One time. So they right. had not driven the length of the field the whole day. They just drove all over you, though, I know. for the field goal. I know. And they, I think that but they would have scored a touchdown if they needed it, it in that in that fourth quarter. That's a fair point. But at the same, let's not act like it just autom- – like Pat, just whoop, just 80 yards touchdown, no yeah. doubt. It was starting to go and that way. Down, the I game was, I think, I, I, I hear think you. the game was trending toward Kansas City's offense. You're not wrong. Greenlaw not, out. They figured something out. I think Diamino yeah. Lenore was hurt at that point. Your, your Niner defense was a who's who – at that juncture, they were they were worn out. They were worn out and they were injured. Okay. I feel like, okay, if you truly knew the rule, which was we both get the ball for sure, no matter what. At that point, you're saying, okay, so we're playing a quarter of football. Let's defer like we always defer, because 
that's what we do, and we have time here. Like the one thing I did think was, and I get it, if the if you if they score, you score. It's back to Mahomes. But the and you only need but, three. But the true. But the way I look at it is by deferring, you can almost say we're going to take the last shot away from Mahomes. Well, how? Well, I know it's crazy, but. They score a touchdown, you got to get a touchdown, and maybe people's heads do fall off because you go for two because you're saying, I, we're not giving the ball back right. to Mahomes. I can hear or, that. Like, or, to me, though, they, it's they, one or the other. If you're going to defer, defer, you're committing to that. Maybe. I'm going for maybe. two if we score a touchdown. I, I mean, I didn't think about that, honestly, until just but now. There's but there's no way in hell I'm handing the ball to Patrick Mahomes, and all he's got to do is cross mm. midfield. Sudden death to win the game. Exactly. I'm not, like... So, so I'm, but, but, but I'm a fan of take the ball. But here's the other I thing. Like, I don't per- think that's the percentage. So they play. ended up taking the ball, the 49. Yeah, exactly. And they score a field goal. Like, I don't have a problem. And I get it's Mahomes, but I don't have a problem with saying, can we get one stop? Right. What yeah. do you mean by a stop? Just not a 75 yard touchdown oh. drive. I'll bet on my defense. What? They I mean, I mean, 30 seconds later, it was fourth down. I know. I know it was only a half yard, but like. Right. And he picked up, what, 17 on that play? He picked up eight. I mean, it felt like a lot more. I know. You're You're thinking of the later run. I I thought he was going to run that thing in. Yeah. I thought he was going to go all the way. I think where your defense was in terms of the fatigue and the injury factor, I would have much rather, and I know it's hard to put them right back out. Yeah, because they just had 10. They had a 10 play drive, they were on the field, but you got like five minute cooling off period. I would rather give my quarterback a chance to go out and match Mahomes as opposed to what happened. You get the field goal, and then you're feeling like, well, geez. So you'd go for two. I would go for two. No, absolutely. Man. Let's I go. Mean, can you imagine? And no, you know what? I, yeah, I, was, I mean, people would just I be on their couch. Man. As we're all you know going what? to bury Kyle Sh- Shanahan, gonna, yeah. let's give him a couple I'm not props. I'm burying for him. Fourth down. Yeah. I'm not saying you. Oh, he should have won the Super Bowl because of that call. Fourth, fourth down. Three. Kittle picks it up, and also the trick play <sighs> oh, for the touchdown. Come on, Kyle man. took some chances there. No, I mean, that, well, let could me, you imagine? I wonder what his, had he not got that fourth and three. I wonder what the odds are if okay, Kansas City scores a touchdown. Now the 49ers in overtime. We're in overtime. Uh, score a touchdown. What are the odds at that point of the 49ers winning the game with a two point conversion? Oh, man, oh, man. Versus. Patrick McCombs is going to have the ball at the 25 yard line, any score, and you lose. Like it might, those odds might be ah. pretty close. Well, the two point conversion is 55% in terms of converting it, and Mahomes getting, what, 40 yards? Dude, you can almost make 25? 99.8%. But you, so yeah, that right. tells me feels like. you right. can almost make and a Butker. case that the analytics say they should go for two. Rather than let Mahomes well, I would operate rather, with a tough game. See, I would rather I would do what they did. Take the ball. No, Take what about the ball. The, what about the hypothetical? The ball, it, no, I'm talking about the hypothetical. I know. You kick at seven. Yeah, what if the yeah. Chiefs get the ball first, go down, score a touchdown, and they go for two? Yeah. Now well, then you got to go for three. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> my time running out, Willard. I, I got to get no, your thoughts. I keep you telling you guys, stay as long as you want. My dad is 82. I love you, Norm. Unfortunately, he didn't win. He had the Niners. One, one, two. Uh, Andy Reid is 65. Forget the usher. I wanted to get that, but mm. I'm going here. I don't think. The 50-plus years on this earth, I've ever seen anything more sickening than Kelsey knocking, almost knocking Andy Reid over. I felt like Norm was Andy Reid. Dibs yeah. was looking at me like, Google well, soft. But that was I – mean, I wanted them to lose more. I – that just bothered, and he got away with it. Wow. It's because he's a player's coach. And Goo, I, I don't know how much Damn. coaching you've done. Yeah, but I've had Eddie House. Yeah, uh, yeah I had a, a high school a high, high school player dress me down repeatedly in my early days of coaching high school boys volleyball. But he didn't hit you. He didn't bump into he probably you. Probably wanted to. And you know what, Andy? <sighs> what's he going to do to Andy? He's not going to come at Andy. He was expressing himself vehemently. Wow. And Andy, okay. me. do you feel like he meant to bump him? Like, no, that's but I, I look at it. It was rage. I'm, I'm it was a rage almost like I don't give a damn gonna, if I bump you. Well, he's, I'm going to say. He's oh, incredibly were, emotional. To me, there were two things that happened there that I found <laughs> interesting. One is, okay, he did it. We didn't see any replay. Like, 
One and done. That's interesting. D-O-N-E, done. Travis Kelsey does that. Done. No replays. <laughs> it's making its way. Could we have said time. that if it were another well. player? Maybe without that kind of reputation. I think we would have so seen it more. See, huh? You guys were. I think I we would have seen just, it more. Yeah. Like, I was oh, like, I oh think. I mean, I'll throw well, it out. If it well, were no, Antonio I, Brown. They, well, sure. If it okay. was Antonio Brown. Well, and and uh, AJ Brown. Well, yeah. AJ Brown tweeted about it. Did you see what he said? I didn't know. No. Oh, he said he got kicked out of the league. Exactly. That. Like <laughs> I that. I believe there's something. I, I, to absolute double standard. Ab- oh, of course. Man. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he got going. Well, he needs after. Travis Kelsey. Uh, What's he going to do? Well, no, yeah. no the Eagles yeah. don't need AJ Brown. Well, Mike Singletary sent uh, Vernon Davis to the locker room at halftime. Do it. Exactly <laughs> that whole thing. Yeah. So, you know, no, every no, coach no, handles no. it differently. Yeah, but but you're not wrong. You're not wrong. The- All right, Jets, man. <laughs> Willer, we did have a play to catch on Friday. <laughs> I got to go. Did you guys, you guys, like give me the I guys, why would you ever take me seriously? No, no, Come it's on. him. It wasn't me. Well, a lot of listeners took you seriously, <laughs> too. <laughs> Steiny, what's going on with you? and this? Steiny, why does Willer sweat? Oh, I don't boy. know. It's, well, you no, you do. You, hey, you, you get very good. excited to leave. <laughs> you guys, can, you, can you just own it? Own it. Look at you. Your entire body momentum language is Why? Do you know we had a 10-minute talk with Tim Jordan? Before the show about equipment, we all had to help him with equipment. What about right now? Why are you doing it again right now? Where you gotta go? But you're really do hate being with Dibs alone, don't you? (laughs) You gotta stop. Ninety-five-seven. Oh boy! I love you. Hey, where'd you watch the game? I was solo at my home. Nice in the cave. No, it wasn't nice. It wasn't nice. I would have rather been out and about on ninety-five-seven. The game. It's his first time, Jim. They're longtime friends. Let me tell you something real quick about Dibs that I'm sure not everybody knows. <laughs> and first time partners. Hang in there, big guy. There'll be bright days ahead. Now these two homegrown Bay Area boys finally come together to take over sports talk. Get the hell off of my doorstep. Major League Baseball, you steam. It's Willard and Dibs. <laughs> On 95.7, the game. <laughs> I'm glad we can all still laugh, but okay, but that's the end of that. No more laughing. Dude, it was, that, that hurt. That, no, that, that hurt. Dude. And, and, and so let me let me just say this. This, this, is, this is what we'll start with. And uh, it's nothing but y'all today, okay? 888-957-9570. Go ahead and give us a call. Um, we want to hear from everybody. And uh, what's, the, what's the poll, Lucas? What'd you just, if you have... To blame one thing for the 49ers losing the Super Bowl, what would you point to? Kyle Shanahan, Brock Purdy, Debo Kittle, Ayuk. That's a big person. It's a combo platter. Uh, or, or Pat Mahomes just being too good. Um, I know you can only do four things. I, like, I, I'm sorry if, if some people will just call this bad luck, but, and I don't, it's not like, oh, put the blame on some bench rookie. I, for me, if there was one play I'd like to be done over, it's the punt off of Looter's foot. That I mean, that changed the game. Yeah, for that sure. Totally. I mean, the, the Chiefs never went on a touchdown drive right. until overtime. That's pretty fluky, though. And yeah. I know that so he's what not you, supposed they, to be there, but... You're 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 playing full speed you shrug your and you're running back there and you're you're trying to block for your guy and the ball happens to find you and it hits you in the foot and that's just the way that goes. Totally. And I think that you know the poll maybe should include Christian McCaffrey because that to me was the biggest play negative play of the game the miss PAT the block PAT the McCaffrey fumble agreed the looter muff that ultimately goes to Kansas City all that and more. It, it piles up, and you can go to Trent Williams with penalties on back-to-back plays and Banks with a false start. You were sloppy. You had too many penalties. You were sloppy with the ball on the punt and on the McCaffrey fumble. You did not play well enough to beat a team that is quarterbacked by maybe the greatest player of all time. Mm. So that's what happens. There you go. You need to be buttoned up, and we can talk about Kyle Shanahan and not using his timeouts at the end of the half and – needing to defer in overtime. Those are all things that are up for debate. Bottom line, you gave the best player in the game a chance to beat you twice, and he did. But I, I don't like the word 
You gave. Like, you gave it to him. Well, but you, you would, gave him the chance to beat you but twice. You, but you don't. It's and not, you did. It's not like that's always in your control. Right. That makes it sound like somebody got wrapping paper out and we got bows. And here you go, Patrick. It's a Valentine. No, they try to score a damn touchdown, and Jake Brendo went the wrong way. Right. I, I, I want to invite everybody to the internet. <laughs> Look at you. Okay. Go find it. You can do it a number of ways. We would suggest Baldy's Breakdowns. We love Brian Baldinger, and he did a great video on this. Go watch that play in overtime, third and four. The one where Chris Jones comes flying at Purdy, and he overthrows Juwan Jennings, who's open in the flat. I'm not exaggerating one bit. There was one person in the end zone. One. One man. One man. Yep. And his name was Brandon Ayuk. He had <laughs> the whole, the end, whole zone. end zone. Yeah, he did. He could have gone, let's touch down left, touch down middle, touch down right. This is my end zone. I'm here by myself. But Brock couldn't get it to him because one of the best pass rushers in the game had a free run. There's two guys who had a free run. There's two guys had a free run. Right. But Jones is the one that got in his face. He's a very large human being. He is much bigger than Brock, and throwing the ball over him accurately is a hell of a tall task. But Brendel slid the wrong way, dot, 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 we think. that's. I mean, when you look at the play, that's what it looks like to all of us. It's pretty clear. It's pretty clear, I agree. I don't want to act like I know what his assignment is. It looks right. like, but it's a blown assignment, and if he doesn't blow the assignment, the 49ers are up 26 to 19 when you hand Patrick the ball, and that's different. Well, 25-19 with the I'm PAT Until Jake with the PAT on the way. We can't. Fair? Yeah, fair. Not automatic, but that point is well taken. And, you know, if you watch the playback, and you and I just watched it seven times with the boss, and the left guard is sliding to the right, and the right guard is sliding to the left. So what you have is a triple team in the A-gap on one Kansas City rusher. Three blockers, one rusher, where you have two pass rushers to the right, of Brendel going free into the quarterback. If you would have slid right, you probably still have pressure, but he only needed one more second. He needed one more. I mean, Brandon, his man Jennings fell was down. open. Well, he Jennings wasn't even was looking open. at Ayuk. I, he was, Jennings was Jennings open. Jennings was open. Either one of them is a touchdown. Right, but he's looking at Jennings because the play was going to Jennings. But Double I, move, I, Jennings is open, yeah. and he couldn't get it there. Ayuk could have caught his eye, though. Like that, he that, could I, I mean, he literally is standing underneath the goalpost by right. him. But he didn't have to look for Ayuk because nope. Jennings was open enough to where that's where he was going to go at about the two-yard line, and he walks in for the touchdown. Um, we're going to take a lot of calls today. Uh, anybody who was with us for the special live stream episodes last week, we do have an hour of that today as well. Okay, Warriors Live with Evan Giddings is going to be at 5 o'clock. We'll spend our 5 o'clock hour on the Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube. So we invite you to stay with us all day in, in, in that hour. Uh, it'll be commercial free. It's going to be profane. It'll be. It'll be. I can like, actually, I was thinking about doing the whole hour. You know, everyone goes, "Can you cuss?" How about nothing but? I'm going to do the whole hour without any non cuss words. You won't. I might. I'd like to see it. Be if there's going to be a day, today would be that day. <laughs> That's right. Because I and I refrained from that texting day. you. It's... And our our show thread was absolutely dead quiet. We did some pre gamers. We did. We did some pre, and I actually really appreciated that. You kind of really fired us up it. a little bit. Well, and I, I sent you a picture I of tried. what I was dealing with. I tried. I tried. And then and then I had to, you know, I go into the WhatsApp. WhatsApp is the high school friends. And I didn't go in till this morning, and there was like 191 messages. Oh, I'm not kidding. Um, but oh, even even S. this morning, one of my buddies, Mike, if you're listening, what's up? He sends out a note to everyone. He goes, okay, mental health check. How's everybody doing? And I just went, fine. It's fine. F. Uh, but I actually wrote out the word. Um, so, yeah, this, I mean, this hurts like hell. It hurts like hell, but I, I, I get to a point where I'm like, it just... It doesn't feel like one of those games to me where I can point at one thing and go, you right, you right. screwed up, you lost this game, and now you can't win the big one. It really does feel, and this sucks, by the way. I'm not painting a picture right now that tells you that this is okay, but this stinks, what I'm about to say. 
Kyle Shanahan's 49ers, who have now been to the Final Four four times, they have been to the final mountain twice, and they have led in the second half both times. This group is great in the same way that Patrick Ewing was great and Charles Barkley was great and Reggie Miller was great. Hall of Fame level greatness. And they never won because one man well, was in the damn way. And he's Hakeem Olajuwon. <laughs> That's who beat the Knicks. That's fair. The only time they made it to the finals. That's fair. But you know what that I'm getting That was OJ at. Chase. Yeah, usually they couldn't even get to the finals. Correct. Because one man. Right. And, and Barkley this, made it once. So and this is even bigger than that. This guy is that good. He's that good. I mean, what are we saying when we go, well, you can't, you're not, like, you're literally not allowed to give him the ball in overtime. Right. It's an automatic touchdown. Well, what the hell is that? Well, here's an idea. That's insane greatness. Give him the ball after you score a touchdown. Or give him the ball first. I mean. And see if you can then match his touchdown. Because this way that you went about it, that was not the right way. Yeah, you and I disagree on that. I I just, I don't even see how the hell you could, if you think. It's out of the box thinking is what it is. (laughs) Way out of the box. Right. If you if you think Pat's that great, then why would you give him the ball in the sudden death situation, where he only needs a field goal? Because that's essentially what you're signing up for. Theoretically. Theoretically. But what you're doing is you're getting clarity. And please, you know. Thank God for granting me this moment, this moment clarity. of clarity. I love when you bring that out because he does what he does, and then you at least know what you need to do. When you take the ball first, yeah, but if you're, but you're all telling me it's an automatic touchdown. So I'm already, not saying it's an automatic touchdown. Why not? Well, if it's I'm not saying, an automatic touchdown, then what they did was great. No, because if it is a touchdown, then you know what you need to do, and if it's a field goal, you know what you but, need to do and what you can also possibly do. But if it is a touchdown, you know what you need to do, and even if you do it, you're going to hand him the ball back, and he's going to be not you. if you go for two. Great, I'll give you that. I think it's crazy. It's too much, but I'll accept it. If you tell me we're deferring because we're going for two, if we go get for the, the two, touchdown. okay. I mean, what I, else I are you gonna do? It. You're gonna you're gonna take the ball first, and you're gonna bippity bop on down there, and you're, you're gonna blow an assignment, and you're gonna settle for three. All right, give him the Lombardi now. Let's just save time and just give him the I damn mean, Lombardi. It did, did did it feel knife that, through hot butter? But yes, did, it felt that fate complete to you. Yes, they kicked the field goal, and you said when game he over. converted the fourth and one. When he runs the little zone read I keep mean, and he runs for nine you had at to that think, point. You had to think there's a possibility that Bosa breaks through and gets a negative sure. play. And, and, it felt and, bad, though. It, yeah, at that I moment, agree. It always he, feels bad when he's got the ball. Right. So let him go first, and then you know what you need to do. I, to me, that— I don't know. Yeah. I hear you. It, that that feels—that uh, just feels like a goose chase to me. It, it, like, I, you got to have the ball— when it gets to sudden death. you got to have the ball first if it gets to sudden but death. But it didn't get to sudden death. I know. And that's where, I know, but you know, it's not, again, we're talking, how close was it to the Niners scoring a touchdown on that drive? Pretty close. If Brendel just slides to the right. Right. Slide to the right. Yep. Uh, Would have right. cool if he did. And then it's a touchdown. You'd probably get a touchdown. Yeah. And then he... He scores a touchdown, yeah. and then you get to sudden and death. You get to sudden death. Unless they go for two. And then Moody gets to line up for a game. Well, if you're Andy, you probably go for two at that point. Maybe. I doubt it. That doesn't feel like See, that's just. Andy. Uh, Campbell would. Well, yeah, because he's a moron. He's, losing he's an his animal. out there losing his mind. All right. You're all lined up. Let's, Let's do go. this. Let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. We're here for it. Um. It's Willard and Dibs. It's 888-957-9570. Let's talk. This Valentine's Day, celebrate the...
Humphreys touched it on three of the first four plays. All for good yardage. They go back to him again. Ball is on the ground. The ball is out. Karloftis is there for Kansas City. The first signal is a chief recovery. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. Sat there with my face in my hands for a solid seven minutes after that fumble. That long? Opening drive of the game. But, yeah. But it, it, you just, again, like Mahomes' fear is a real thing. And it's never too early to start feeling like you you can't do that. They were going to score there. They came out and looked great. They were going downhill. Brock was on point. Six, 18, 11, 11. They were gashing. Pass yeah. and run. They were yeah. going to score at minimum a field goal. But, like, quite frankly, they, they were going to score. We know what the Niner offense does when it looks like that. They were going to score. Kyle in the script. They were going to score. Clinic. And, 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 my face in my hands, like five hours later, you're like, I, I was right. I was right, right to have my face in my hands because, yeah, that it's not the only thing, but that's absolutely one of the things where you're like, yeah, they didn't get away with that. No, they sure they didn't. They did not get away and, with you that. You know, you were going to get three. You were already in the range. And I think you're right about getting seven because you were just chewing that thing oh, up. They were killing You were marching. Me. And uh, I'm afraid that my 18-month-old daughter learned her first swear word on that play. Because I screamed What it. was it? It was the F word, Mark. Oh. Oh. It was F followed by own. Fondue. Yes, fondue. Uh, she did learn how to say Subo. Subo. Early. I like Subo. that. Subo. 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 Okay. And she loved Usher at halftime. But other than that, uh, yeah, she and Daddy were both crying by the end of the game. Dude. For different reasons. Did you turn on the radio, by the way, after the game? Uh, no, but I did do a Twitter Twitter Spaces, spaces. Good. with uh, Goo and the Boss, um, which was kind of like being go, on the radio. Did it go okay? It went great. Okay, good. Yeah. I was, you know, alone on my street, shouting into my phone, and my neighbor came out, and he's like, dude, you okay? <laughs> you all right? I'm like, I'm not okay. <laughs> do you see that S? You're like, this is normal. Dude, totally. Well, let me, let me, take, just, let me take 15 seconds before we go to the phones to ask Mark Randy who was one of the people on the radio after the game. I heard him in the pregame. You sounded hey, great, Grandy, hey, you Mar and Sterling. Yeah, you guys did. Um, but I do have a question. Mark, Mark. Yeah, what's up? Is Sterling okay? He did not sound okay. It was it was rough. He did it not sound. Like, like of the two, you sounded upset, but you sounded more okay. Sterling did not sound like he was going to make it home safe. He made it home safe. Okay. He's good. He took it a little harder than I did, and I and, and I get How it. How late were you guys on? Till like ten? We were no, we were on till like twelve fifteen. Yeah, he Whoa. was like, "We're gonna be here all night." I okay. didn't hear that part. He's like, "We're not leaving. We're not leaving. <laughs> we're not leaving till we win the Super Bowl." Oh man, um, you know. Well, that's no, the thing. When you're I, yeah. doing post game every game, you know this is your last game to do a post game right. of, and you don't want to end. Leave it all out on the field, yeah. and they yeah. did, and they did. Yeah, it, like let me shout it out because you and I was the last thing we said Friday. It was the last thing I tweeted as well. Um, for those of you who have like not turned 40 yet, I I'm sorry. I, this is harder for you. Yeah. It's hard for yeah. all of us. But this is harder for you, and I get it. Sterling and Grandy it and sucks. the locusts. This is so... Mm, it's so disappointing. I get it. I really do. I really do. Um, going you know, up, going up against Mahomes, it, it, it just going to be a problem for everybody for a while. It's just going to be a problem. You know what I was thinking about, guys? I know we're taking it really hard, and you laid out Kyle Shanahan's 49ers in the case. How do you think Kyle Shanahan's dealing with this? I mean, we can blame him, but... Did you read, did you read Silver's article? I did not. So he was with Shanahan's mom waiting for Kyle to come out. And and Mike. he Mike Shanahan. Um, and Kyle's kids and wife. He sat there and spoke to them and then stood with them as Kyle came out. And it, he, like, I don't know how exactly to describe it. You should all read the article in the Chronicle, but like, imagine, um, imagine seeing your kid 
uh, walk up to you after, I don't know. You like lost his your job. Girlfriend just broke up with him. Yeah. Or like the dog died. Like that was what it, the description yeah. sounded like. And for, and I forget her name, but Mrs. Shanahan. Mandy. Mandy. Like one thing when it's your husband and she's been there before, um, but a completely different thing when it's your son. And uh, yeah, this is brutal. There's no, there's no escaping this. Yeah. I, I'm glad that Kyle spoke up and said, I've been here twice. Stop hanging coordinator losses on Kyle Shanahan. Right. I'm sure that was disappointing, but the reason I take that one away, it's like if he had won, he wouldn't have gotten the glory of being the head coach on a Super Bowl winning team. Right. So don't hang it around him that they lost that one. It, it's twice. He's been here twice as a head coach. They've both been epically disappointing. They've both been against uh, Patrick Michael Jordan Mahomes. And he's been a part of both overtime Super Bowl losses. There have been two Correct. overtime Super Bowls, and he's been on the losing end of both. And you heard Kyle, and we'll go to the phones in just a moment. You heard Kyle uh, in the press conference immediately thereafter talking about, you know, this group of guys, and if he's going to lose it, he would he would lose it with this yeah. group. And he almost started crying. And it was uh, a lot of them did. Juice, yeah. Juice cried right there for on sure. the stand for sure. Bosa spoke about that. Is like we want to go somewhere quiet because there are changes every year to a roster. This is our last chance. That's it to 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 be together as a group. I mean, like I I, I hope that doesn't get all lost in this. I loved this team. It's a great team, great God season. Dang, I loved this team. This was so fun this year. Yep. And man, for it to end. With some of these plays and images in our mind, and chiefly among them, freaking Dre losing his Achilles simply trying to enter the field. I, I, I just, I can't. I mean, that, that that is so freaking devastating. And you see Fred right away put his hands on his helmet, like, oh my God, no. Like, what just happened? I, I just, the man is just trying to run on the field. It wasn't in the most violent sport in our country. This guy gets hurt trying to just run on the field. And, what? And, and these are the kinds of things that we will feel and never know. But gosh, you do you do wonder how that game would have gone if he if he'd been in it. Did I don't he, think Travis Kelsey has nine catches. <sighs> That's for sure. God, darn it. Well, I like um, I like your positive attitude as always, but. Can we let people come on here and start ripping Yeah, 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 people? yeah, yeah. No, well, well no, not go. just that, but also vent. Like, I mean, come on. Let's, let's let, move to Portland. It's Rip City. Let, <laughs> let's go. Roxy and Lafayette, you're first. Hey, Roxy, you're on Weathering Dibs. What's up? Yes, I'm so happy. I've been trying to call since, like, 8 a.m. this morning. Right. and like You're <laughs> in. You're, you're not just in, but you're, like, in. The, you're like the Jung Hoo Lee of our show. You're leading off. Okay, I'm going to lead off, and I have two things for you guys. Let's, One is I want to vent, and the reason why I've been in the morning so much is because this is therapy for me, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I want to give everyone a phone hug or a virtual hug because it hurts so deep. It's, it's very, very true. And like you were saying, Mark, or somebody else was saying, the play. Oh no, you were saying, Mark, on the article, the players, the coaches. Mm. I want to just thank them, gratitude from the bottom of my heart, because this past year has been really hard for me, just in terms of you know what it is. And sports just brings me so much joy. And the Niners have like uh, uplifted me and also like almost broken my heart. And yeah, yesterday I cried and I'm like over 50, but I <laughs> cried. But I'm also the lucky one of the bunch that I seen. I grew up uh, in the Montana Rice, all that. So yeah. I, I seen that. You've so been, you've been I there before. Give but... gratitude. Yes, but I want to give gratitude to the players, to the organization, to you guys for, for everything. Okay. So that's in terms of the flowers for all of us, right? We got there. We got to the Super Bowl. Come on. We're going to do it again. Uh, Roxy. Now, the, yeah. The, love that. Go ahead. I know you got something else too. Yes. The second part, this is the venting. And I would like 
to find out and know a little bit more. I know the 49ers at the beginning were very upset about the practice and whatever happened there. And then they started talking about the alarms a little bit, that they were hearing them or whatever. So I would like to know if those shenanigans happen every Super Bowl, um, regardless what team you're on, um, you know, because that's also like, I think it happened to MJ, like he got a pizza, but right. then he had the run. The flu game. Had, yeah, so the I flu game. Know, yeah. Yeah, so I want to know if that happens. You know, in every Super Bowl, if they're players or if you guys know that, that you know, because, yeah, you know, getting the alarm, you don't get enough rest. Messing up with the field. I mean, you know, it's not excuses, but I just want to know for me if that happens because I was also in, into sports. You um, know, it has happened in other Super Bowls. Do people complain about it or this is just it happens all the time? Roxy, uh, is a great call. Great, great listening to you. And we have a ton of gratitude for you, uh, okay, for, for being with us throughout the season. We hope that continues. Thank, thank you so much. Um, just speaking with regard to the field, like, yeah, the whole, like, pulling of fire alarms and there's just so much more attention on Super Bowls, and so you hear about every little thing that maybe wouldn't be a big deal if it was just October weekend and you're in Green Bay or something like that. But as far as the field is concerned, no, I don't think that's a, a normal Super Bowl thing. Don't forget, this is the first time this city has ever hosted this game, and so this is the first time that UNLV has ever been on NFL practice facility, and it did not go well. And we'll wait till the middle of the week when we talk to Doc Pandia. He was tweeting about it last night. I, I have no idea, and, and, and we'll never have a definitive answer, but you practice on that all week, and then you have, you have Greenlaw, you have Debo, uh, you had Feliciano for a while. I know Kittles was an upper body thing, but, like, I'm not a doctor. I can't answer if those two things are attached. Right. I mean, I hope not. It's impossible to know. You'll never know, but I'd, right. lo I'd love to hear his opinion on it. Yeah, and he'll offer his opinion, no doubt. But he, even though he is medically trained and a doctor, it's it's mostly guesswork totally. because you don't really know what the, the effects of practicing on that surface mean for going out and then playing on a different surface. I do know this. Last year in the Super Bowl, there was a lot of controversy about that field and how slippery the logo was. You remember how many players were yes. slipping and falling on the painted logo. So just know this as you watch these games, the NFL doesn't give a crap about you, your practice facility, your health, fairness, any of it. All they care about is the money. So they might have the Super Bowl in a place where one team has to practice on the moon and they won't even care. <laughs> right. Right. And that's just the way that I goes. Mean, I mean, like, I'll tell you what they do care about yesterday. Uh, Taylor, did you see that conversation? What did you make of that? Did you hear Roger Goodell and Taylor Swift face-to-face? -face? No, I didn't see that. Oh, for about five minutes. I know it, the over hit early in that, in well, that second right, half. Well, right, cutaway shots. No, no, no. Roger and Taylor sat there in the suite face-to-face, -face, and it looked serious. They weren't like, oh, it wasn't pleasantries. No. They were chatting about something. Like something real. Yeah. You know what I mean? He probably was saying, we want you for the Super Bowl halftime show next year. Next and year. she said, Roger, I don't need it. <laughs> Have you seen my uh, my downloads and my Spotify flow? I'm the second biggest artist in the world. I wonder who got more Spotify run yesterday between Taylor and Usher. Yeah, interesting. I wonder, I wonder who got more. But uh, I don't wonder that much. <laughs> I was not going to Google yeah, it. I, so. don't, I don't actually care. I do care what... Uh, JT in San Jose has got to say, hey, JT, what's going on? Hey, guys, how's it going? You know. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> I know. I'm still trying to find my feelings. I think I lost them yesterday. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's unfortunate, too. It's like, you know, just looking across the board, I mean, the guys did definitely look out of place. The sink, They weren't in sync. Uh, pass blocking, I mean, we should have been running the ball a little bit more, too, as well. I mean, Mitchell was doing a great job. The second half, we come out, we want to put Brock, you want Brock Purdy to be comfortable. And when we establish the run, that opens up the play action. Because to me, what I was seeing, the secondary was blakening. I mean, you couldn't do nothing in the secondary. So that opens up your, the middle of the field. Your tight end's literally playing right guard the whole entire game when you should be taking advantage of those linebackers. Those linebackers do not cover very well. And that's where our, where our focus should have been at. Bubble screens? What happened to the bubble screens that we do so well? We weren't we're doing any of those things. 
Um, and then defensively wise, I mean, the second half, come on. You, I mean, you, you're down, down there. They're already driving down the field in overtime. You got to th- call a timeout and get your guys back together. Go, hey, you know what? They're running on us right now. Let's get our heads together. Let's put a stand, you know, a stop right here. I mean, uh, it, it was a very troubling game to watch, unfortunately. Well, J- yeah, JT, it's, it's all, thank you so much. It's all kinds of frustrating. I get it. There's nothing anybody's going to say today to take us off of our, our complaint list. There, there's nothing anybody's going to say. But, hey, gather the guys and tell them we need a stop. They knew that they needed a stop. They couldn't get it. Nope. The, the other team's really good. Where's the bubble screens? Steve Spagnuolo's really good. They're trying to stop them, too. The one thing that I do push back on a little bit is this idea, and I do hear this. I feel like it goes back and forth. Kyle Shanahan, you're a turtle. You're too conservative. Oh, by the way, don't ever throw the ball. Run it. You can't have it both ways. Stop saying Kyle Shanahan's too conservative, and then in the next breath, scream at him that he should only be running the ball. That third quarter, you've got to think about what developed. Don't just look at the plays and go, they ran nine plays, and Christian McCaffrey only ran the ball one time. It's a disingenuous opinion. Okay? They came out, they threw the ball one time, and then there was a false start, which was going to be a run play. But now it's second and 15. You're so in, into Andy Reid today. Why don't you ask Andy Reid what he would have done on second 15? And the second drive was <laughs> second and 18. Second and 18. So spoiler alert, right. you ain't running the ball on those downs. Yep. You're trying to chunk off 10 yards so that you can make a makeable third down, and it didn't work. And by the way, Christian McCaffrey, outside of that opening quarter, was not gashing the Chiefs. 3.6 yards per carry for the game. Third third possession in the third quarter, first down, they did hand it to McCaffrey. Ran into a wall. Yeah, no gain. Ran into a wall. So you, you, I'm not saying you can't feel like he should have run the ball on both of those first downs. It's a fair opinion. But don't act like it just should have been McCaffrey's show and that he was rocking at seven or eight yards per carry at any point in the second half. He wasn't. It's just not the way the game was going, man. And I'm comfortable with the Niners throwing the ball. I don't know if y'all noticed, they were a good quarterback this year. Yeah, not as comfortable as I am giving it to Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, but, and you but, can look but, at the final numbers and say 22 carries all you want. but eight, 30 touches. Right, and he probably should have had 40 because well. you weren't doing much else. Otherwise, George Kittle was almost a non-factor in the game plan. True. And Brandon Ayuk wasn't being used that much. Kelsey had more catches than Debo and Ayuk and Kittle combined. And that is a glaring, a glaring mismatch in terms of what you were doing offensively. So they took give him the away. ball to McCaffrey. They yeah, then, then give the ball to your best player. They, they and did. the idea of him turtling up is not just about the run pass mix. It's about the end of the first half, not using your timeouts to try to get the ball back. I mean, this man, especially when you're not going to get the this, ball to start the third quarter. This man went for it on fourth and three in did the great, fourth quarter. Great. This man, like this he, man, did not use his timeouts at the end of the second quarter I and mean, let Kansas City do the exact thing that he wants to do, which is have it at the end of the half and then get it to start the third quarter. Which did not work. And he they, did nothing. They did not to score. stop it. No, but they, they had the ball. Score, but they and didn't Kyle score. didn't get a chance to get the ball back. Yeah, so I mean, that to me is what I'm talking about when I'm saying he turtles up yeah, because I, he he did not use his timeouts. He goes to the halftime to the locker room with timeouts in tow. What good are those? They're not good for anything. Because you're because those 30 seconds that you're going to get is not normally what you want. That's situationally it's not. It's a chance to get three points it, maybe, instead of zero. It's also a chance to turn the ball over in your own zone. Well, and that, again, is, is I mean, him him being too conservative, I mean, and that's where that's where I'm critical of him. Uh, yeah, you, you can be critical of him all you want. That's not a spot that, that, that tends to work in your favor. We can hate analytics all we want, but you are going to play the percentages. We do it in life, and, right. and they do it in sports. And uh, freaking out to, to, to take timeouts, which, by the way, you have no idea, could have created more time for Mahomes to turn that into a touchdown instead of well, a field they goal. they had their timeouts, too. So they, they were in complete control of the clock, and you had an opportunity to stop the clock 
and force them to make that decision with 40 seconds left as opposed to seven yeah, seconds it can left. Go a lot of ways, and you get man. the ball back and you give your team a chance to maybe go into a hurry up and maybe get three points. Your kicker was showing unbelievable range in that building. So you get the ball back at the 25, you only need 35 yards. And you've got an opportunity to maybe get some points before the half. And, you know, Kansas City is going to get the ball to start the third. So, you know, you you chose to be conservative and you let Kansas City keep hanging around. And that's what happens. Uh, Idris in Hayward. Hey, Idris, what's going on? What's going on, fellas? So I'm I'm a, I'm a preface my thing. I'm saying I love Kyle Shanahan and he's done a heck of a job. Now that I've said that, <laughs> um, here we go. Purdy, pur, 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 <laughs> there were two things I was looking for. What's our defense going to look like, and what's Purdy going to look like? Purdy came out looking poised. I was like, oh my goodness, he looks more prepared than Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, he looked good. Our defense came out there. <laughs> our defense came out there lit. I mean, Greenlaw and Fred Warner and Bosa are special teams. I've seen Conley clothesline a guy so hard I thought we were going to get a flag. I was like, oh, my goodness. Look, everybody was ready to go. But the coaches did not do their homework. I'm, I'm going to say something. Jamar Tate, Stephon Diggs, um, A.J. Brown, those are all top receivers. Do you know what Snead and that defense did to those receivers? They shut them down. So it should not be a surprise that Debo and Ayuk were literally getting glued. That they couldn't do nothing. So this was a George Kittle game. But guess what? Kyle Shanahan almost never uses George Kittle the way he should because he's a great blocker. Help out your quarterback. And then when the second half, I get the whole pass and then penalty. and that, You put your players in a position to win or are you coaching them to lose? So, Aegis, we got to we got to run. It's a real good phone call. We can talk more about the Kittle situation coming up next. One of the things I always have trouble with is when someone doesn't put up stats, we automatically go, "They didn't get him involved," or do you actually have no idea what what the plan was for Kittle and it got taken away? The Jawan Jennings touchdown to Christian McCaffrey. Option one was Kittle. He's double covered. He was covered. That was supposed to be a touchdown to George Kittle, and the Chiefs took it away. So I think there, there, there was a plan for Kittle, and, and the Chiefs were more prepared for it than a lot of you are giving it credit for. Uh, we're presented by Fremont Bank, full-service banking, no compromises. It's nothing but your calls today, and we'll keep going with it next on Willard and Dibs. Hey, it's Willard and Dibs for Safeway, and Safeway is the perfect one-stop shop for all the Valentine's Day needs. Dibs, big Valentine's Day guy. I'm a huge guy for that. Yeah. yeah.
Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. First and goal, Pacheco cuts it outside, tries to do it a second time, and he lost the football, and the Niners are on it! Unbelievable play by this Niners flying around defense right now. Kansas City's knocking on the door with that huge play, and this is why you have everyone fly to the ball, Jim, because one guy's going to come flying in at the end. Hargrave with the recovery, and the Niners take over. Now, back to Willard and Dibs on 95.7 The Game. Streaming live on Twitch and YouTube, twitch.tv slash 95.7 The Game, youtube.com slash 95.7 The Game. You can watch us live if anyone swears, which seems likelier today than normal. You'll get to hear it while the radio audience won't. Subscribe to the channel for all the 95.7 The Game content on Twitch and YouTube. Hit the thumbs up button because that makes us happy. It's all powered by First NorCal Credit Union. How about that Steph shot this weekend? Am I right? That game was just fun. I just want to throw a positive image into it's everyone's good. head for one second, and then we'll go right back. Really but good. Yeah. Really good. Nice little uh, nice little beepity bop by the Warriors right now. But, yep. Uh, yep. you know, I know. That's and back at it game. today. Yep. In and, Utah uh, tonight. Yeah. Steph rescuing a terrible pass good by Pajemski. Well, he had a, tw yeah. Speaking like a Brock of, Purdy pass. Speak <laughs> Who are you throwing it to, Stop dog? It. Speaking of Twitch and YouTube, like he admitted, he had a Twitch. He's like, "What? what? I, I tried to." He, he tried to bring it back. I thought it was a great pass. If that it was ended, right on line, Bradley Beal might have picked that off. It ended up being a great pass, but it wasn't. It wasn't on purpose. He knew what he was doing. <laughs> hey, Bradley Beal, what are you doing? What are you doing? 
And, and what do you get? He looked like the defender on the double pass yesterday, the chief defender who he tried to jump jump up and steal it, but he was like five yards behind McCaffrey. What do, uh, what do you get for uh, Kevin Durant's facial expression when the ball went in? Did you see that? He was sad. That was kind of nice. He was a little bummed. I enjoyed that. Not, not like rubbing in his face. It was just like from somebody who knows. Don't let Steph shoot the ball. No. Don't let Steph shoot a three. And Draymond, man, I've never seen him so angry. <laughs> Maybe I have. Yeah, you have. Uh, okay, Jason in Ohio. Hi, Jason. What's up? Hey, hi, fellas. <clears throat> uh, if I can, I'd like to give uh, uh, my thoughts as a non-fan of either team, just an objective view of the game. I thought it was a great game, uh, especially the second half, great defensive game. Uh, both teams uh, gritted it out. Uh, there were stops when they needed to. They coughed it up, and uh, it just happened to go uh, Casey's way. You got, uh, you know, the me- national media would say, uh, you know, San Francisco had the most talent, but nobody wanted to bet against Mahomes. So you just have you're dealing with base uh, football's greatest player. And it just happened not to go your way, and I don't, when you can't, I don't think you can really blame anybody or say this. This would have happened. That would have. You, that, those are no guarantees that they would have gone right. That you'd won the game. So I just think everybody should just buck up and and try to get over the grief and not let it rob your joy of life. Uh, Jason, you. Jason, Come did on, you Jason. did you bring peanut butter and jelly sandwiches to the players after the game with the crust cut off? <laughs> It's Nick in, in, in Ohio, by the way. Oh, Nick. <laughs> hey, Lucas. The word Jason and Nick are not the same thing. Wow. But anyway. So, well, Nick, thank I you. Have my Thanks, phone Nick. On. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Yeah, not There's, my fault. Thank yeah, you. no, all, all good. Well, and if Nick's in Ohio, he's probably a fan of an Ohio team. Yeah, which Browns means or they Bengals. They never win. So they did when they play the Niners this year. Not the big thing. No, not the, not big, the big game. So. That was, yeah. a, that, was, that was nice of Nick to call in, and I actually agree with just about everything he said, but there's also no room for that today. No. No no room for rational. They were good, and they were good. Exactly. And, and then Four one of them won. And, and Capri Sun. And, 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 and a round of applause for the gladiators who have entered the arena. Are you praising Mahomes, or are you ripping Shanahan? Line him um, up. I mean, I'm praising Mahomes. Yeah, I I think it's more for me. It's more praising Mahomes, yeah. but there is still I have some room in my heart. Maybe it's the dark part of my heart to rip Shannon. I didn't know there was another part. Yeah, come on, kid. I didn't know. You see me with my daughter? Yeah, but outside of that, yeah. I mean, when you're here, she's not here. Whatever. So it's just I'm all sunshine the, and lollipops. Prince of Next darkness. to you, shout out Amy Trask. Next to you, anybody looks like uh, Doctor Negatron. Yeah, it's it's not, folks. It's just it's just another one of these flavored waters. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mark Willard, and oh boy, I got, I'm all uh, hopped up on sugar. I got cranberry hibiscus today. I like Cran- it. Cranberry hibiscus. Yeah. Uh, this Throwing is- some vodka in that yeah, bad boy, and we're talking. Uh, you won't. I, that's, how um, I, that's how I got through the game last night. Let's go to Jonathan in the city. Hi, Jonathan. You all right, man? Man. Yeah, it hurts so bad. It's like soul breaking. You know, it's it's a series of events for me. It's, it started with a special teams fumble that opened the door for the Kansas City. Before that, Patrick Mahomes wasn't doing anything but you know a bunch of three and outs and just three points. Uh, you know, late in the game, third and four, a better play call would have sealed the game for us. Killed the flop, kick a cheap shot, field goal, parade. Uh, you know, in 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 overtime, le- leaving Chris Jones and block. That was horrible, and then and then how you're not prepared to defend and 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 be aware of the corn dog, right? And if I may, just to close out my 49ers 2024 season, we've spent all our time waiting for that second chance, for a break that'll make it okay. There's always some reason to feel not good enough, and it's hard at the end of the day. I need some distraction. Let's go Warriors. Okay, yeah. yeah. Dubs coming up in a bit. How about those Warriors? Jonathan, thanks. Although I did hear one contradiction in what Jonathan had to say. Third and four, he says a better play call gets it done. Two sentences later, he says leaving Chris Jones unblocked is unacceptable. Well, you just answered your own question. 
I think it was a tremendous play call. There were two wide receivers open in the end zone. Yep. And leaving Chris Jones unblocked was a blown assignment by Jake Brendel, and the 49ers lost the game. Now, th- there's no one play that I'm going to say, well, that's why they lost the game. But, yeah, that's not that's not on anyone but Jake Brendel. He blew an assignment, and it disallowed Brock Purdy from completing a pass to either of the two wide-open receivers who would have scored. We can do this. There were seven plays where you could at least where you go, well, if that goes the other way, the game might have been different. Well, say that expression again. There were at blown least... Blown assignment. Yeah, blown assignment. Blown assignment. And if you want to talk about who blew more assignments, who made more mistakes, the Niners made more mistakes than the Chiefs. And the turnovers were even. Uh, I don't know if I agree with you. The, the Niners... The Chiefs fumbled the ball four times. The Niners penalized themselves out of two drives in the second half. And the Chiefs penalized themselves out of a three and out to open overtime. Right. I mean, I, that was just that was one penalty. The yeah. penalties, the Niners were way sloppier on penalties. I mean, and I, the turnovers were even. What was the penalty uh, tally? I don't, I don't disagree with you. I'm just, I'm just saying the the Chiefs were not perfect. No, they were. My weren't. God, they were not even close to perfect in this game. Penalties were uh, six apiece. Okay. Oh, 55 for the Chiefs and yardage 40 for the Niners. I'm thinking about just the way the Niners penalties came though. and but but we and we, we think about it we those remember terms, yeah. what our team does wrong and we act like the other team is not out there doing something to them it, it I'm just don't even remember the Chiefs penalties well you, you mentioned remember, the one in overtime you remember the defensive the hold. Yeah. yeah absolutely I'm trying to remember the other penalties and whether or not they were consequential or um, not um hmm any others that were like very very consequential uh, they had they they did have one somewhat large play get called back. I think it was a hold. Yeah, I think there was there, there was a hold on offense. Yeah, they had the uh, awkward horse collar tackle. Oh, the off. horse, horse collar. collar. That's that was 15. big. That was that's big. Fifteen. 15. That's 30. why the yardage is. Uh, so. Mahomes also the intentional grounding that took away a sack. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Good call. There you good call, go. Grandy. Yeah. Thank good you. memory. Yeah. So I like again. It just here, here's one thing, and this it just makes me laugh. Just indulge me for a second, right? Okay. The 49ers, whenever they make a mistake on offense, it's you choked, you you gave them the game, you messed up. And then the very next sentence will go, but our defense was out there playing. Well, so was theirs. So not like, like in other words, how come when the Chiefs offense, which is run by the best player in the game and, and a Super Bowl winning coach, when they don't get first downs, which they repeatedly did in this game, we don't go, well, their offense is, is turtled up and they don't know how to call a play and they don't know the right situational play calling. Andy Reid, no. These are great football teams. They're great football. You have to, in this case, there's got to be some room for credit the Chiefs. For sure. There's got to be. And I, I think that our poll on Twitter is a great one in terms of, you know, what's the one thing you look at in terms of blame? And <laughs> right now it's running... Almost in a dead heat between crediting Mahomes or blaming, blaming Shanahan. Shanahan. Those I'm are laughing because Lucas is now celebrating because you called it a great poll. And you don't like it. Well, I think the other two answers are not answers that anybody would point to. Nobody's blaming Brock Purdy for this game. 3% of the people okay. are. You, either they hit the wrong button or they're wackadoodles with an agenda. Period. Nobody blamed Brock Purdy for this game. What on earth? Brock Purdy. Yeah, or Brock Purdy. I think Cam Newton's one of those 3%. Yeah, exactly. Blaming Cam's Brock on Purdy. the pole. Yep. <laughs> Brock Purdy. All right, we're right. sponsored by In at the Tides. They're back. Legendary all-you-can-eat Dungeness Crab Feeds at Tides Wharf Restaurant. Just 99 bucks a person February 2nd and 23rd and March 8th and 15th. Make it a getaway and ask for the Crab Feed Special. Room rate info at inatthetides.com. It's more of your phone calls coming up uh, on Willard and Dibs. With heating bills as high as they are.
And dibs on 95 7 the game. I'll also say that Jake Brendel owes Juwan Jennings his MVP trophy that he didn't get. Yeah, wow. Slide to the right, make that block. I don't know if Purdy's going to see Ayuk standing by himself He's in not. the end zone. He's but, not. But he doesn't Jennings, need to. He doesn't need to. Jennings is going to score also, which would have been his third touchdown of the game. Two receiving, one passing. Right. And if the 49ers then find a way to hold that, which I don't know if they would. But uh, Juwan was on his way. If if the Niners, how about this? Niners go up 22-19. If they stop Mahomes on that drive, does Jennings win the MVP? Yes, I think so. I think so, too. At 400-1. to <laughs> Cash me out one time. Many times. Yeah, 400-1. Yeah. to And yeah. I, I wonder who outside of the Jennings family would have thrown any chicken at that. <laughs> right, Major. I, I had a buddy who went with Ayuk, and he's like, there's like a lottery ticket, you know? Like, let's just find some receiver. Let's like see what 40 happens. 40 to 1 or something. Yeah, yeah. Jennings? I didn't even... Could you bet on Jennings? Oh, yeah. You, I yeah, mean, yeah. They're all listed. The, is Jennings part of the field? No, I think, uh, you know, in some books, you could definitely get it. I don't know if you could find that stuff online, but yeah. in person for sure. Uh, Ray Ray McLeod, the only Niner who had longer odds at uh, 500 to 1. Uh, don't blame Ray Ray for the. Uh, I know a lot of people are like, fall on it, Ray Ray. It's like, that doesn't mean he's going to hold it either. Like, no. that's not. Uh, Ray Ray did the call. Uh, Looter didn't hear it. He didn't get out of the dang way. And that's that's on him. That that's plays a on him. Ask. It's a, it's a well, tough ass. It's a tough ass. That's special teams. You right. hear that call, you vacate. You know what it is? Right. It's a vacation sensation, right. Mark, is what it is. But 
Easier said than done. Sure. So you're running full speed down there to block, and you hear the call. Go away. And it, yeah, but go where? You don't know where the ball is. Out of the middle of the field. Right. It's I like, don't know how long the call came before the ball bounced and hit him. Yeah. That's always difficult. I do know this. Uh, for 49er fans, the new uh, punt return model is going to be Rush 11. Nobody back. Just leave nobody back let's there. Just, let's just Can't stop. fumble it. Kyle nope. Williams? Can't fumble if no one's back there. I mean, it's PTSD. I know it. It's I know punt it. traumatic stress disorder is what it is. Yeah. Um, all right, back to the phones, 888-957-9570. Uh, John in Healdsburg. Okay, I got to preface. This one's a special one. So, uh, lovely Christy and I. Who the hell is John? John I met John yesterday oh. at uh, Gloria Ferrer out in Napa, Sonoma. Look at you. Well, we figured, okay, what can we do because waiting around till 3.30, I've been waiting all day for Sunday totally. night. I mean, like, it, it's it's too long. So we're like, all right, let's just let's get everybody where they need to be. Let's have some adult time, and let's go take the edge off. Let's go a little relaxation sensation. And so we went out to uh, we went out to Domain Carneros, and we did a flight, Dibs. A, I saw the picture. A full flight. You had four in front of you. Yeah. The lovely Christy had four. Yeah, we were like uh, Norman Dale from Hoosiers. How many glasses of wine? Four. 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 Yeah. Exactly. You had the red. She had the bubbles. Correct. So we do that, and now we're feeling good. Uh, her favorite place, though, Gloria Ferrer. So we're on the way back. She's like, let's get a capper. One more. One more. Can we do one more? One let's, more. Let's get one more. Sound like my daughter. So we, <laughs> One more. So we pull into the parking lot. We get out. The first thing we see is this dude. Sun shining off of his bald head on the balcony at Glory like for Guy. Yeah. And he's wearing a freaking one five on the chest. Michael Crabtree. No. He's wearing and not not third and Juwan either. He's wearing a Mahomes. Oh, I hate this guy. And uh and, and me and my girl who had, you know, we had had one. We start yelling from the parking lot. No way. I'm booing this guy. That's not your style. I'm booing him. Christy's just like, no. And I'm like, Boo! Get out of here! Look right? you day yeah. drinking. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, I'm not having any more of this crap. <laughs> uh, next thing you know, uh, you know, an hour later, everybody's hugging and uh, and and eating uh, brie cheese. So let's go to Mark uh, in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, John. Uh, how you doing? Congratulations on your Super Bowl. Oh, your God. your fiftieth Super Bowl in the last three years, John. Run this guy. You know what? Just relax. Mr. Gibbs, the Bee Gees are kind of an old school band now. All right, just sit back and enjoy. Because I'm not that guy that's going to gloat. Because I lived in the minority yesterday at Jack uh, London Saloon in Glen Ellen. I took a lot of crap, right? But here's what I told them all. You have two class organizations, right? And I've heard a lot of crap, more crap on 680. Don't get me started on that. It's ands and butts and candy and nuts. But we, we, all, we all were missing key players. I like what my new friend Mark said. Oh, God. We had more turnovers than the Niners. We all blew our chances. But the end of the day, it's Hall of Fame. Or are you in that second tier? Which Brock Purdy, last year, I had to educate all the Niners fans at Rocco's. Shout out to Rocco's in Walnut Creek. Who's this Brock Purdy kid when Garoppolo went down? I said, well, those of us from America, University of Kansas grad here, big eight, ex-baseball, minor league player. I was just going to ask. I watched this kid at Iowa State for four years. That didn't happen a real football conference, especially offense. So I just want to congratulate both teams. I've heard a lot of Niners fans just throw darts at Shanahan, this player. You know what? Niners have nothing to hang their heads on. That was a top five Super Bowl of all time game yesterday. I don't disagree. Thanks, John. Hey, John, it was awesome meeting you yesterday, man. It was awesome meeting you yesterday. And a hearty rock chalk Jayhawk to yeah. you, too. And he called you Gibbs, which is funny. Well, and then he, he, <laughs> he tied it into the BG, so yes, I appreciate that. Yes, he did. And, John, I know you're still listening. I think he's The uh, Chiefs did not turn the ball over more than the 49ers. The turnovers on, were 2-2.
I think two, that two. he is no longer thirsty. I can uh, diagnose well, that for I your mean, buddy. We, we, every, everybody was doing Quenched. fine yesterday. Oh, everybody, no doubt. And, and responsibly, by the way, I don't want YouTube to think that we didn't take the right amount of, of hours course. as if I just rocked a flight and then hopped in the car. Didn't work that way. Relax. Ask dibs. There's no one in the world Dude, more responsible guy. in terms of alcohol than me. So just take, take, take it down a thousand. But, <laughs> but anyway, um, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Like, we had our very first call today. Remember Roxy? Remember what she said? Yeah. And we said this. We said this for three weeks, Dibs. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going to forget it now. It is a very different, that this is painful. It's painful. It's not going to go away for a long time. But there is a very different, I believe, it's a very different feeling than if the Niners had lost to the Packers or the Lions. For sure. You we made, talked about you this. You made it to the end. You made it to the last game. In fact, you made it past the last game. They had to go put another quarter on it. If you like it, then you should have put a quarter on it. Seventh longest game in NFL history. Okay. The fifth quarter of the last game. And, and a lead. And the ball is in Mahomes' hands. I, uh, it, it, this isn't to excuse all of the mistakes that happened yesterday. There were plenty. But I don't think that shame is a word for yesterday. I just don't. I don't think you're there's ashamed. No, there's no shame in what happened yesterday. There is disappointment. There is frustration. There is no shame. There's devastation. Yeah. And you look at the numbers and bottom line, Kansas City was better than you were. And that's why yeah. you lost the game. You were 3 of 12 on third down. Kansas City was 9 of 19. Kansas City made six trips into the red zone. You made two. Mm -hmm. Uh, Kansas City was 2 of 6. You were 1 of 2. So the turnovers, I think, were the biggest factor in why you lost. You got outgained. You got outconverted. You got outscored. But you still could have won the game if McCaffrey doesn't fumble and if you don't botch the punt return that it wasn't even a muff. It hit your own guy, yeah. and you lost it. So, And I know that they turned it over twice, but you didn't convert. And that, to me, was where, really where the game swung. And you can say, oh, it was Banks and a false start. Whatever the reason was that you went three and out after the Mahomes pick, that's where you needed to take the game well, by the scruff of the neck I, because he, he gave you that one. I don't disagree. I don't disagree. I like In theory, and, and I know we're frustrated by the McCaffrey fumble because I do think the Niners were going to go in, but I also think the Chiefs were probably going to go in on the Pacheco fumble. So we, we, we could let, call those a wash. Call those a wash, okay? And neither team did anything with that turnover. They did not go score right. with that turnover. All and right. Pacheco was actually in the deep red zone. Deep red zone. He was zone. at the 9. Yeah, and, the, and McCaffrey was out at like the 25. The 25, yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So let, let, call those a wash even. And uh, and then go to the other turnovers. Patrick Mahomes throws an interception in his own territory, and the 49ers are unable to make a yard out of it. They're unable to do anything with it. Um, the punt happens in the red zone, and was that a one-play drive? I mean, it felt like it was the very next play that uh, that they threw it uh, to... Uh, two plays, yeah. Okay, two plays. And was it Marquez Valdez-Scantling? Is that who yeah, it was? No, no, it was one play. Oh, yeah, one play. Sorry about that. Marquez Valdez-Scantling, yep. touchdown. And so when I look back on this, if you want to just look at this mathematically, those seven points off turnovers that the Chiefs got and the Niners didn't, combined with Brendel's missed assignment, which in my opinion turns a touchdown into a field goal in overtime, there's your game. There's your game. So who do you want to blame? You Shanahan. Want to blame Luton and Brendel? I mean, is that the take we're going to walk away from with this? Luton and Brendel. Right. I mean, nobody, law firm. nobody even knows who that is. Exactly. But I own it. That's the game. That's how close this sucker was, man. I mean, John's not wrong. This is a memorable, epic Super it's Bowl. A great Super Bowl. If you take your emotions out of it, which we can't do. No, I'm not ready to do that no, yet. I'm not, and I'm, not ready ready. To, I'm not ready to look back and say where this ranks among great Super well, Bowls because it's the worst one of all time. Exactly. How about that? Exactly. It's the 58th best Super yeah, Bowl exactly. of all time. It, the pain is raw and it's searing, and you can look at those players and blame them. I look at the stars because stars, and I was listening to the roast this morning. I had it on in the kitchen. 
when I was uh, serving eggs to my baby. And Bonte's right. You had premium players needed to make gold jacket plays. And your premium players did not play like premium players. And that's a big reason why you lost the game. Um, Lucas just whispered in my ear something that's perfect. I didn't even get the guy's name right. His name's not Luton. It's Luter. Yeah. Daryl Luter Jr. I'm sorry, Daryl. Like, I mean, yeah, dude, you're in the wrong spot. However, if you know how this play works, it is his fault. Like, you got the call. He said it. He goes, I didn't hear it. I didn't hear it. I didn't get out of the way in the time. It's my bad. But, you know, I'll learn from it. What do you do? No one's going to come down this guy's road. The ball landed on his ankle. He wasn't even looking. I mean, I've had a lot of people reach out today and go, <laughs> that's just bad luck. That's just bad luck. Yeah. So, you know. Well, special teams. And when you special look teams. at you look at the special teams uh, element of this game, your special teams cost you eight points. You had a rookie kicker kick the ball too low, and it got blocked. And you had a punt return that didn't even get a chance to be returned. Yep. And that cost you seven points. So special teams, it was a thing all year where their special teams were not elite, and it bit you in this game. Uh, it did. It absolutely did. Doug and Berkeley is next up on Willard and Dales. We're taking your calls all afternoon. You want to vent. You want to blame. You want to just share the experience. We're, we're, we're here. We're not going anywhere. Five o'clock, we're going to kick over to Odyssey app, YouTube, and Twitch because Warriors Live will start. But uh, but we'll get to each and every one of you today. So 888-957-9570. Hey, Doug, what's up? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Uh, tough, tough day. Tough day. Um, a couple things, a few things. One, that's the way the ball bounces. I remember, I think it was Tart, our defensive guy in the last Super Bowl. Interception thrown right in his hands. He dropped it. We would have won that game. That was the NFC title always, game, but you're right, Doug. That wasn't the Super Bowl, but NFC yes. NFC title, yeah. yeah. Yep. Okay. There's always, there's always these little plays. But the main thing I wanted to say was um, Andy Reid uh, got respectfully run out of Philly after, what, 10 years? Because mm -hmm. he couldn't win. You know, he couldn't win the big one. He had a, a quarterback who was capable enough uh, and McNabb, but he couldn't win the big one. He basically got respectfully run out. He made a comment yesterday after the game that was really telling to me. He said, Patrick Mahomes sees things on the field and he comes back to the sideline and he tells me, and he sees some things that sometimes I don't see. And he makes the play. Okay. I think we shouldn't, I mean, Kyle could do better, but I, I think Kyle's got some time because Purdy's going to get better. He's, he was very good this year. He's going to get better. He's going to start seeing things instead of just kind of following the play that's supposed to be there. He's going to do more stuff like he did a couple of weeks ago with his legs. Uh, and he's going to, he's not going to be Mahomes, but he's going to be, he's going to be better and have a broader view of the game. And maybe he'll help Kyle out a little bit in the future. I'd give Kyle a little bit more time because huh. we're, we're, we're praising Andy Reid now. Like he's the greatest, you know. He couldn't win until he got this otherworldly player. Uh, Doug, you're That's you're spot it. on, yeah. and I, the only Super reason Super Bowl or try again, yeah. Doug, is well, what we like to say around yeah. these parts. I do like to say it, and by the way, I, I like don't, you can blame me if you want for speaking it to existence, but that's exactly what this is. Anybody who is even thinking about Kyle Shanahan's job status, take take a, a non take a seat in the back. Just well, take it. Take a lap, by the way, first, and then go take a seat take in the back. A lap. Seriously, seriously, take a lap. It's an absurd, yeah, absurd opinion. And by the way, let me add to it because this was just brought up. You want to know what phrase I'm done with in sports? I'm done with it. And today's a great example. I'm done, and it's not just him. I don't want anybody using it for anyone because it's just a, it's a boring, lazy take. So and so can't win the big one. What does that even mean? What does it even mean? Do you honestly believe these people are suddenly different human beings when they get to the last one? Two weeks ago wasn't big. Three weeks ago wasn't big. We did it to Belichick. We did it to Andy Reid. We did it to Peyton Manning. We did it to John Elway. We're doing it to Kyle Shanahan. We're doing it to, we did it in the NBA to those guys I brought up earlier. Patrick Ewing and Charles Barkley and all the people who 
We've done this too through the years. You can't win the. We did it to Tony Dungy. You can't win the big one. Yes, they can. Well, then do it. Well, but then they need the right scenario. That was the right scenario. Andy Reid's got the best player, and he never won without him, and now he's winning a bunch with him. Like, if you're going to make that point, you need to explain to me how this person, whoever's filling in that blank in this particular day, is a different player or coach when it comes to that last game. He's not different. Was, was Peyton Manning different in the Super Bowl? He finally was able to get it done. Yeah, and then he got another one after that. Right. And so, in a situation and, where he wasn't even a good player until anymore. You, until you get it done, it's fair to say that you can't win the big one. No, it's not. Of course uh, he can. Absolutely. And he How hasn't. He, he hasn't. So he hasn't. So let's do that. He so, hasn't won the big well, one. Well, and I can say that he can't. And well, when he actually does it, it, I think it's a lazy take. When he does it, then, it's a lazy okay, take. yeah, you, you proved it. I, I don't think it's a lazy take at all. He's 44 years old. I think old. that he when you look at the, the fact that he's been in the Super Bowl now twice, and twice he's had a 10-point lead, and twice his team has been unable to I win mean, the game. So guy's you younger can call than Tom it lazy Brady. all you want. He's younger than Tom Brady. But... Yeah. He's younger than someone who played last year, and we're going to label him. I'm not just he can't, he win. can't win the his big one. His career is over. He can't do it. Nobody said that his career is well, over. Then don't say he can't, because yes, he can. He hasn't done it, there so I go. can say that he so can't. He hasn't. He I can hasn't. believe what I want to believe. You can do whatever can, you want. Exactly. I think it's a lazy take. Well, I, We've done this yeah. to so many people who okay. then prove us wrong. Right. And they we've can. done this to so many people who haven't proven oh, us wrong. I, I, who? So, who? Well, I mean, many coaches who haven't won the big one. Not the ones who were labeled as Jim it. Harbaugh, he can't win the big one. I'm, he can't. He won a national championship Not the this Super year. Bowl. <laughs> and he, he won the national championship I mean, uh, through a nefarious means. Uh, and so you can... Nefarious you can, means? Yeah, they cheated. They spied on the opponent. What? How many times did they spy on the opponent? I've never heard He's you He's being get, investigated I, by the I, NCAA I've for I've never heard you loud. get mad at Belichick. I've never I never heard you get, I've you never didn't heard hear you get my, my shows when uh, when they deflated yeah. the football. No, I no, did I didn't. many many hours on that <laughs> deflating the football, cheating exactly, <laughs> and spying on the opponent. Absolutely, it was such a ref. Everybody, whatever cheats. you can, everybody cheats. Yeah, and you Who's can not cheating. I mean, if you can, you want to look at Kyle Shanahan and say, you know. He he can win the big one. Great sure, coach. he's a great. Coach. He's a great coach. He's a great coach. He was unable to get it done. Yep. for a second time. He is zero for two against the right. player. Right, he that may many, never have that, another chance to get back. You're there. right. I bet. I bet that he would. But you're obvious. Yeah, I hope that he's no that he way will. to know. He, they're the um, second favorites going into next yep. year. He is zero for two against a guy that the majority of the public today are calling the greatest player of all time. So okay, he can't win. Um, Greg in the city. Hi, Greg. What you doing? Hey, I'm just outside enjoying this breeze. Uh, I just had two things to speak about. One, you know, it was a great season, great game. And I would say we know what our weaknesses are, which is a positive note, because there's some teams out there that don't know where to begin to fix the situation. What do you think they are, uh, Greg? The Greg, is, let's, let's hear those. Yeah. What do you think they are? Uh, well, let's First thing is the O line. We got to adjust the O line. We got to, I don't know, free agent or through the draft. We got to fix the O line, help Purdy out, give him some time for his situations like this occur. They want to rush him. They want to see that quarterback clock up. And uh, a little bad omen that we tend to think of in my side of this town is if you do a trick play in the first half, it never ends well for your team because it kind of puts the defense more. To think what's going on, and it has the defense on their toes more. That's but interesting. Went out because we did get a touchdown. I don't know but about the yeah, Greg. Is, I don't know. Is there data on that? That's that's. I mean, that's an interesting comment. You do a trick play in the first half, it never works out well. What half was Philly special in? Eagles Patriots. I thought that was in the second half. Feels like it was. Yeah. Feels like it was. Um. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know that. I liked it at the time. <laughs> Niners went up 10 nothing. I was right. not mad at it at the time. Well, it's their first touchdown, and they hadn't yep. been able to do much otherwise offensively. So I don't know. I don't know if there's data on a trick play as it pertains to the future success in that game. I don't know. I agree with him on the O line, though. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't have thought this until yesterday's developments. If I'm the 49ers, the biggest thing you need to figure out for next year now is who's the linebacker next to Fred Warner. 
Um, because Dre Greenlaw, I mean, we'll talk to Doc about this. I mean, he he probably he probably gonna miss the whole year. He probably, yeah. I mean, I know Aaron Rodgers was like, oh, now it only takes four days. But like, right? He hasn't played. Dre, right. Dre Greenlaw's probably gonna miss the year. I would imagine. Yeah. It's I think six to nine months. And so here we sit. Maybe he's back by mid season. Uh Philly special late second quarter. By oh. The way. Philly first special. Half. Yeah, about twenty something seconds to go. I just uh punched it up the clip, so it's a late second quarter play. So, so a little works. bit of a myth buster, yeah. Yeah, yeah in that, terms of that, uh that worked. Of that. Yeah. Um but but I, I agree beyond the linebacker thing. Yeah, I think that the 49ers um I think the 49ers need an offensive line that can pass block better than they do. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, you don't have a first-round pick. So the idea of getting the tackle of the future in the first round, probably not going to happen. Don't know what happened with Trent Williams in uh, last night's game, but he had he had his worst game of the year and maybe his worst yeah. game as a Niner. Um, we're presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. We keep going with your calls. Promise, we'll get to them all. Keep them coming. 888-957-9570. Willard and Dibs. Hey, it's Willard and Dibs for Safeway. And Safeway is the perfect one-stop shop for all the Valentine's Day needs. Dibs.
and lofts it. He is picked off. He overthrew a target. And Brown comes down with it. Jair Brown, the rookie from Penn State, with the interception. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. I'd like to thank Mark Grandy and Lucas Alexander for, at least so far, mostly playing the good moments. Oh, well, just you wait. Yeah. I <laughs> like it. The game started pretty it's, nice, and I'm going yeah. in chronological order. Uh, good, it's, Grandy. It's, still, it's early. It's early, yeah. Um, one thing I like about, well, Grandy's the one who's making these calls, but he keeps it real. As much as he wanted the Niners to win, he's going to reflect actually what happened in the proceedings. He's not just going to fanboy out on the on the, uh, on the the rejoins. Yeah, well, listen, I here's the way I look at it. There's room for both. There is complete room for this to be devastating. This is this is like completely gut wrenching. There's complete room for that without picking one person in a Niner helmet or hat and saying, You blew it. You messed it up. You choked. You this, you that, you gave it to him. I just did not walk out of yesterday's game feeling that way. I like I did not walk out of yesterday's game feeling like the 49ers gave it to them, choked, whatever, any more than the Chiefs did in the other direction. The Chiefs could, Richie James, you could argue, was still on the Niners. He fumbled the ball <laughs> half, more than half the times that, they, they was out, that he was out on the field. Pacheco fumbles in the, in the red zone. Pat turns it over. The holding penalty in overtime. All kinds of mistakes. So, look. I don't know, man. I, I have a hard time saying Mahomes is is the best player in the league and then feeling like the 49ers overwhelmingly, quote, should have won the game. They could have. Yeah. yeah, the opportunities were there. Not overwhelmingly. And I look at the first half. I look at the McCaffrey fumble on a drive that would have resulted in points, most likely three, possibly seven. They were on the move, hot knife through butter. And I look at a first half where... Your defense was dominant. You had Patrick Mahomes flummoxed. You had Travis Kelsey pushing Andy Reid. You had the Chiefs not only on their heels, you had them on the run. And you look up at the scoreboard and you're up 10-3. to three. Part of that was ineffectiveness on third down. Part of that was the fumble. Part of it, in my opinion, was Kyle Shanahan not using his timeouts to try to get the ball back when you had the momentum. At that point, I thought, geez, you know, if there was no scoreboard... It felt like they should have been up 17 to 3, maybe not 21 to 3, but it felt like they should have had a bigger lead at the half and when they didn't, that's the part that makes me think that they let this get away. Yeah, I, again, the, there's no arguing could have the opportunities presented themselves and they were not quite able to do enough with it. Opportunities presented themselves to the Chiefs as well and they largely were not able to do a whole lot with it. Until the end. I mean, that's the one thing that, that, that sticks out to me about Patrick Mahomes. Is that overtime drive. Think about this now. Every 49er fan was like, oh no, he's going to go on a touchdown drive. Yet, for four and a half quarters, he had not yet. Not once. Nope. They scored one touchdown and it was a one play drive in the yep. red zone. The 49ers didn't allow Patrick Mahomes to go on a full length of the field touchdown drive the entire game until that. And that just speaks to who he is. It speaks to who he is. This is the Michael Jordan of the NFL right now. And um, it's a problem. He is incredibly difficult to beat. Yeah. And you ask have Lam to ask Lamar, ask Josh. Sure. Ask them all. You have to, Tua, when you have a chance to put him down, way down, you got to do that. And I thought Kyle Shanahan left some opportunities out there in terms of going for the jugular, including in overtime where you take the ball first and you get the three. And even though he hadn't driven his team down yet for a touchdown drive, as you mentioned, I felt for sure that Kansas City would at least get three. And then as that drive was unfolding, fourth and one converted, third and three converted, third and one converted, yep. converted, converted, converted. 
big holes. Niners tried to they, – they brought seven on a play. He beat it. They brought four. He ran for 20-something yards. It just felt like a fait accompli the more that drive was going on. Yeah. No, look, I mean, there is nothing more uncomfortable in the NFL as a fan than sitting down to watch football and hoping that Patrick Mahomes doesn't move the ball down the field. There's nothing more uncomfortable. And um, he's gotten them all. He's gotten them all. And, it, it, like, yesterday cemented it, don't you think? This, I mean, it's a dynasty. This is a dynasty. Oh, yeah. And it's not over yet, no, according to Mahomes. Not even close. And they are favored to uh, three-peat, mm-hmm. which is something that no one has ever done in the Super Bowl era. And I really thought, I mean, I said it, I really thought this team would not even be in the Super Bowl. I did not think that they, I certainly didn't think they would win the Super Bowl. And I was completely wrong about that. They found they found a different muscle in in January, which is yeah. really impressive. Think about it. This is not a team that was dynamic offensively all year. Right. And for Patrick, he had a bad year. And then the playoffs start and he goes Dolphins, Bills, Ravens, Niners, and only one of them was at home. One of those four games. Yeah. I mean, come on. It's, it's impressive. Un- it's unbelievable. It's impressive. And you think about it in terms of what this team has become. They traded Tyreek Hill, who is arguably the best receiver in football. And since they made that trade, they got a bunch of picks. They've won back-to-back Super Bowls mm-hmm. without the best <laughs> receiver. Without any receivers that you would write home about. Right. I mean, Rasheed Rice is a nice young player. Last year, Juju Smith-Schuster already... On the backside of his career, Marquez Valdez, Scantling, Sky Moore, Justin something. Yeah. Whoever the hell they I mean, it's a very, <laughs> it's a very Tom Brady esque deal here. Miko Hardman. Yeah, Miko Hardman, who was on the Jets at the beginning of the year. And they traded to bring him back. And he and he ends up winning the Super Bowl with a I mean, it's just it's very Tom Brady. It's very Tom Brady. Kadarius Tony, healthy scratch. Healthy scratch. <laughs> Ouch. Unbelievable. Would have loved to see him out there yesterday. Robin Conquered. That might have helped. Robin Conquered here on Willard and Dibs. Hey, Rob, what's up? Hey, gentlemen. How are you two doing? I know that's a silly question, but... Yeah, not good. Not good, Uh, Rob. I know. I know. I know. Silly question, right? But what I really think is something to look at aside from... Everything that's been mentioned, and it's just going to sound like a broken record for from now until I think until the start of next season, is yeah the the missed opportunities that the 49ers had, and those turnovers that the defense were able to create, and the 49ers coming up with nothing on a scoring uh, or having no points come from them. That you, you just can't have that. And and Mahomes and the Chiefs, you know, they, they capitalized, unfortunately. Late in the game, like you said, when it mattered, that's when they showed up even more. And Kyle, unfortunately, did not have, I think, the best game plan set up for that moment. And again, it just seems like Kyle second guesses himself or gets into his own mind and and it, it's just a, a repeat of other games where it's very close or uh, there's a little bit of, con, you know, conservative from, from Kyle. But really quickly, the, the other part of this that I want to say is, as well as Brock Purdy played, and this young man being the quarterback for the 49ers, and from the last Super Bowl that the Niners had in 2019, a lot of these players are now five years in. A lot of them have their contracts, but what do you gentlemen think about what is the longevity? How many opportunities do we really think the 49ers are going to have? Hopefully a couple more in terms of Super Bowl visits. But the reality is we know that free agency, they're going to lose a lot, a couple of players this season. And what can they go and get hopefully in the next season in terms of personnel? Thank well, you. Yeah, Rob, thanks. I, listen, I, I firmly believe that, that this roster is going to be very good for at least two more years. And then comes the question, um, you know, I know it's after next season, but but what do you do financially with Brock Purdy? What's the situation? Uh, you know, for those of you who are worried about Brock's money, well, <laughs> then yesterday was a good day. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, save some money, right? 
Now you can go get a linebacker sure. or whatever. I mean, And I was wrong. They do have their first-round pick, so they'll be yeah. picking 31st, okay. which is, again, not Something. great in terms of you know getting, getting a tackle, but you need offensive line, and unfortunately you probably will need a, another linebacker. Yep. Other Oren Burks has been good, and you got Flanagan fouls, and you, you do have some pieces there, but you probably need some depth. And you're going to lose some uh, – some free agents, I know, on the defensive line, you got a bunch of guys who are coming up. Um, yeah, although they're not, they're not losing any uh, of the centerpiece people, and I do think that Brandon Ayuk is going to get paid. The Greenlaw thing's tough; you can't just go find another Dre Greenlaw because you want to. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be very, very difficult to deal with. But um, I, the roster is still going to be really good. But a good roster doesn't guarantee a trip to the Super Bowl either. You know, that's why it's so devastating. That's why you hear what those guys say yesterday. It's like (laughs) everything has got to go perfect. It's such a long haul to get to this point and think how close they were, how many different times for not making it. The Packers game, the Lions game, anything in the regular season, they were very, very close to not even making it this year. And then you make it, and then you've got a lead in the fourth quarter, and it goes away. So it's it's absolutely heart-wrenching. Let me ask this, though, because I keep hearing people say this, and I'll ask it right after I tell you that you're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM and HD1 San Francisco, always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch and YouTube, powered by First NorCal Credit Union. Smart choice for low auto loan rates and super simple online application process. I can tell you this. I hear this a lot. I don't agree with it. The idea that Kyle Shanahan overthinks or second guesses himself. It's an interesting criticism because when you hear what he said after the game yesterday, he's like, what what, what I regret when games don't go well is if I go out there and I get away from the game plan. And we had a plan, and then in the moment I go, ah, oh, let's try this, and it doesn't work. He goes, that's when I get upset at myself. He says, we didn't do that yesterday. We had a plan, we liked the plan, we stuck to the plan, and it almost worked. Yeah. But it didn't, and I don't think, for me, I don't think it came down to the plan. I think it came down to execution on certain plays. Yeah, I mean, the plan, you can like it or dislike it, and I think that part of the plan was to get Christian McCaffrey the ball a lot. He got the ball 30 times. There was times that I wanted him to run it even more. Than they did. And the plan is maybe not the approach that I sometimes take issue with, and that is his his clock management. When you let the clock run, you're on defense and you let Kansas City be in control of the clock as opposed to using your timeouts, forcing their hand a little bit to make sure you get the ball back and you get an opportunity to try to score again. It's a philosophical thing that Kyle Shanahan believes in that I don't agree with. And that's just part of the deal being a 49er fan is you're not going to love everything that your coach does. And the way Kyle goes about managing the clock is something that I don't agree with, but that's just the way it goes. When he's your head coach, you know he's going to be conservative in that way. 888-957-9570. Let's uh, let's keep rocking. Steve. Steve's down in Southern California. Hey, Steve. What's up? Hey guys, thanks for taking my call. Um, Mark, I agree with a lot of the points you made. There's a lot of people trying to get to the heads of the players and Kyle Shanahan and things of that nature. But let me offer you guys something about this season that is absolutely true. In games where the Niners scored 25 points or more, they were undefeated in all of those games. In games where they scored less than 25, they were 1-6. in six. The only game that we won where we scored less than 25 was the Green Bay game in the divisional round, and that was an average defense at best. The Niners had difficulty grinding out games. In that three-game losing streak, I guess the Rams to the final week of the season, which didn't count all that stuff. But if the Niners are going to advance to that elusive next level that seems to be eluding them at this point, they have got to build a team that could grind games out when things are going as well offensively as they normally would, and that starts with the offensive line being a better pass blocking unit along with the rub blocking that they're capable of doing and going from there. But that's the thing with the Niners this year. They had trouble grinding games out where offensively they were not firing on all cylinders like we saw so many times 
during the season and against Detroit in the NFC Championship game. Steve, it's interesting because, and thanks, you look at the defense from four years ago and a Jimmy Garoppolo-led team, and the 49ers were trying to beat you that way. They wanted to beat you 23-20. to They wanted to beat you 20-17. to And now apparently that's the game that they can't win. Well, if that's the case, then that means something is different on the defense, which is it's hard to say on this day. I think it's a fair point. It's hard to say on this day. For the majority of the game, the 49er defense was fantastic. They weren't in the end. I told you all week that 24 was the magic number. Whoever got there was going to win. Whoever didn't was going to lose. I didn't think it was going to take a fifth quarter in order to do that. But I can't argue with a defense that holds Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs to 19 points in regulation, and then you need a whole nother quarter in order to get to 25. However, the other point remains, which is that when the 49ers only score 17 or 20 or 23, I mean, that that defense used to be able to handle a game like that. And this year they couldn't. They were, they were, they were giving Well, yesterday you- they couldn't, and it's in large part because of who they played. Yeah, but they couldn't against P.J. Walker a number of weeks ago either. Yeah. When when they right when they had seventeen on and the Kirk board, Cousins, right, and then Joe Burrow who was perfect yep. for the most part in that game. So those are games that the defense too at the time was playing much better than we thought. And then yesterday they came out and the defense was dominant in the first half and even in the first three quarters. And you lose Drake Greenlaw and you had a couple of other injuries on the defensive side. And that absolutely changed things, I think, for you yesterday. Um, 888-957-9570, we keep it going. Again, for you to vent, uh, for you to, to to blame, share your experience yesterday, whatever it is, keep the calls coming. That's what we're doing today. You're our only guest, 888-957-9570. Son in Concord. What's up, son? What are you doing? Hey, guys. Hey, guys. How you doing? Good. Well, no, we're terrible, but anyway, yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I, 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 have, I have the hangover, too. I'm pissed off with Kyle. Anybody who says that Kyle deserves more time, he, his time was yesterday. I'm sorry. His time was yesterday. Being conservative and going for the field goal on fourth, on fourth and four in the overtime in the Super Bowl, instead of going for it, because you know Mahomes is going to get a touchdown. You know he's going to get a touchdown. You gotta at least get one. You gotta get the touchdown. See what Mahomes can do after that. Uh, son, Thank I you, don't son. know, man. Are you, so you're suggesting that at fourth and four, in overtime, you're the first team to touch the ball inside the ten. You're going for it. I mean, I would. I and, you and, don't. You don't I'm get home. it. You don't get it. And all Mahomes needs is a field goal to beat you. Yeah, no, that you're right. You're right on that. But if you're if you're gonna if you're gonna go for it, you might as well go for it. I here here's here's yeah. my issue with this, son. Appreciate the call, thank you, son. I it, it's it, I get it, I get it. But here's my issue with this. My issue with this is the concept that you just it's like give up. Patrick scoring a touchdown, yet he hadn't the entire day. I understand he's the dude. No one's questioning that. And I was terrified of it as well. I'm not saying I don't get it, but I don't think you can coach that way, can you? Can you coach with just the assumption in overtime there is zero chance that we stop Patrick Mahomes from scoring a touchdown? No. I don't think you can play that way, man. I'm with you, son, in terms of the approach, only if you get the ball second in overtime because then you know exactly what you need. Then you can go for it on fourth down. When you get the ball first in overtime in that spot – fourth and four, you can't go for it there because of what you're saying. So you you go for it, you don't get it, now Mahomes just needs a field goal, and you lose the game. So if you get the ball second, then you can be that aggressive, and you'll have to go for it. If Mahomes gets a touchdown and it's fourth and four, well, now it's, it's pretty clear in terms of what you're going to do and how you're going to approach it. But that's not what Kyle Shanahan does. Kyle is more conservative, so he would rather get the ball first and he's thinking already about the third possession in overtime, which I think never, you, I, I think never happened. I, but I think you have to. See, I, I disagree I, with like, that. Like, like, play that out. Play that out. Patrick gets the ball uh, first. 
They go score a touchdown. Yep. And I know we've talked this out to where you say you'd go for two. Niners go down the other way. They know they need a touchdown. They get it. They kick the extra point. Fine. You're tied. Now it's sudden death. Mahomes goes 30 yards. Butker hits a 52-yarder and wins. I think Kyle gets torched. Torched today. No worse than he is today. Oh, I think so. I see. I, I disagree. So. You can't give Pat the ball. If that's how you feel you about Pat. give Pat the ball knowing that all, all he needs is a field goal to prolong the game. And he marches all the way down and scores a touchdown, and you don't get that third possession that you so were coming. Yeah, but that's prolonging the game, not ending it. I just I, no, like, he ended it th- last no, night. Well, I understood that. Yeah, I understood that. But but I'm talking about the potential for the for the third possession, the sudden death. I like if everybody feels the way they seem to about Pat, which is just. Shrug your shoulders. It's over. He's going to score every time he touches it. If you feel which that way, he didn't way, do. He did. He did in what? overtime. Yes, yes, he did. The only time he he touched it in overtime, yeah. he scored. Well, then so? give it to him first. <laughs> that way, you know what you need to do, and then and you can match you, it. And then even if you do it, then he beats you anyway on the next possession. You have the chance to go for two. Yeah, you have again, the you have the again, chance to I, control your own destiny. That one I accept. You but do I, it this way, but I, and man. it's just it's conservative, uh, and it, it drives so, me crazy. So play that out. You give Patrick the ball first. He gets the touchdown. Niners now know they need a touchdown. They come down. They get it. They go for two. Oh, yeah. They don't get it. Torched. Torched. At torched. Least, torched. At least he torched. went for it. At least he, at least he would you know, uh, put it all out yeah. there on his shield. Yeah. Instead of you get the ball first and you go down the field, fourth and four, well, we're going to send out the kicker because we want the three here. It's 20, 26-19 if Brendel doesn't blow an assignment. Yeah, this is not about blown assignments or it, blown calls. It, it this is, is for about me. well, to me, the, the conversation is about the approach. The philosophical approach of Kyle Shanahan is conservative, and that's the way he approaches it. And it drives me crazy. Really Which quickly, is, yeah. What if it wasn't fourth and four? What if on third down, so the throwing, they ran it, got three yards. It's fourth and one. Do you go for it then? I might have. Uh, same a thing yard, at the end of regulation. A, a yard, third and five. A yard. A yard is a yard's different. The yard's different. Also, watching it live, I wanted him just to run it twice. And if you get in fourth and two or inside, go. If it's and, fourth and three, and, fourth and four, I'm and, kicking. And but. keep in mind that, that, like, McCaffrey was not going anywhere. Uh, it, it wasn't like, great, but. It was not. Like, they they were ready for that. They were going to make someone else beat them. You know? I I hear you. I'm, I mean, there's a lot of different stuff you can do there. There's a lot of different stuff you can do there. But, um, I mean, <laughs> I feel like that's kind of what I'm getting at. All the different scenarios that that we're painting there, if any one of them doesn't go right, Kyle gets torched. He got to pick one. Well, got to do something. You get torched anyway if you're Kyle Shanahan and you lose the Super Bowl. Do you really think he's getting torched today? Yeah, absolutely. Read the YouTube uh, comments. I mean, we had a caller saying, you've had callers say they want him out. Right. That, to me, is getting torched. And they're wrong. Of course, but you're asking asking if he's getting torched, and he's getting torched. He's not getting torched by, like, you know what I mean? The decision makers, the people who matter. We're a sports radio show. Of course show. not. The decision so, makers. It's Super Bowl or try again. I, I they mean, gave the guy an extension. Uh, we're sponsored by O'Reilly Auto Parts. More of your calls next. Willard and Dibbs. One in four car batteries is weak and needs to be replaced. Let our professional parts people test your battery for free at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Right.
You knew something was happening there. You just felt I just it. wasn't sure what yeah. it was. Master Donis again. Oh my gosh, what a huge, huge play right there. Now, back to Willard and Dibbs on 95.7 The Game. Well, we get to all the calls. I don't want to get too far into the weeds of the whole, like, overtime strategy thing. I've told you a bunch of times. I, I don't have that much of an issue with your idea of deferring, provided that you also say, if it goes touchdown, touchdown, we're going for two. I'm not giving Patrick Mahomes the ball Sudden death right, where all right. he needs is a field goal. Give me two and a half yards so to glory. If you want to say I'll go for two, like, first off, okay, I can see that. Second part. <sighs> right. <laughs> I can see you getting a little nervous. <gasps> oh, my God. Totally. One play. But, but one play. One play. Thank you. But check this out. I just saw this, and I want to thank the listener who tweeted this at me. East Bay Breaker. Sent this clip from Sports Center. Mahomes went on ESPN. Did y'all see this, Grandy? Did you see this, Lucas? Did you see it? Uh, I don't. I don't know. Mahomes went on ESPN and they asked him, "Hey, what if the Niners had scored that TD, and then you went down and scored a touchdown in the other direction? What are you doing?" Mahomes goes. I don't know if Coach Reed wants me saying this, but we're definitely going for two. Wow. There would not be a third possession. Which, look, you're playing a chess match, and are you going to say Kyle should know that? So you're playing for a third possession that essentially never would have existed no matter what. It It, never would have existed. Right. Okay. So that's point Andy Reed, no doubt. However, obviously, it's not point Andy. If he goes for two (laughs) and he doesn't get it, I mean, that's a six-month debate. That's a six-month debate. And he goes home and polishes his two Lombardis. Which is is why he can do it. Sure. That's why he can do it. Well, Kyle can do it, too. He's a made man. He's got his extension. He's considered the best play caller in the NFL. You know it's not about that. It's no, not it's about, about getting it done. Yeah, it's not about contract extensions. I know. It's about winning a ring. Well, at some it's about point, winning a ring, man. and I, I like that Kyle took some chances going forward on fourth down and converting, yep. running a little trick play. That was impressive. I want to see him go a little bit further in that direction and be even more aggressive with clock management and getting after it. That's fair. That's totally fair. I, I Again, I would say this. If there's one thing I'd love to see change with the 49ers in terms of roster, it's a little bit of a conceptual change to the offensive line. I still think they have a Jimmy G offensive line, which is to say, like, we can do a little bit of pass blocking. We're really devastating with the run blocking. But you have a quarterback now and a group of receivers where I think you can do a little bit more. And quite frankly, in today's NFL, you probably have to. you got to be a little bit more consistently effective in the passing game, and therefore you've got to have an offensive line that does a better job of that. They were a middle-of-the-pack pass-blocking team. Now, if you've got a better pass-blocking team, then I think what you're saying comes along with it. You were able to get a little bit more aggressive in some of those 50-50 situations. Yeah, and it's tough because Kyle Shanahan likes to run his offense a certain way, and they're very good at it. 21 personnel, two running backs, and one tight end, which means you have two wide receivers. They don't do a ton of three wide, although yesterday they went to an empty set a lot more than they normally do. Which did not and feel great. Yeah, yeah I didn't, didn't really like it. It takes away great. the threat of Christian McCaffrey running the football, and you had him on the field. He played almost every snap. He got dinged up on a play or two, and he went out. But I would like to see, I would have liked to see them have more just straight up. Bully ball yesterday. You know what? You know what my question is though. Like when you say Kyle Shanahan likes to run his offense a certain way, uh, does he, or, or or is that how he's run it here? Matt Ryan won the MVP with Kyle Shanahan as his offensive coordinator. Yeah, they weren't running the offense this way, so that's what I wonder. Brock Purdy, halfway through last year, is coming in as a seventh round rookie, is totally unproven. Kyle loves what he sees in training camp, apparently. But you don't know how that's going to go. And then this year, he's coming off arm surgery. So is Kyle building an offense 
around a quarterback that he's like, I don't know how this is going to go. And, and and therefore, would he still build it this way if you had more confidence, which now I think you can rationally have. You can be like, no, Brock Purdy can be a 30-touchdown, 10-interception, 4,200-yard, fourth in the MVP voting quarterback. So let's build the offense around that a little bit more, especially as Christian McCaffrey gets older. And you don't want to do 30 touches a year every year for, for Christian because that is going to be hard to maintain. Yeah, it'll it'll have to be I wonder. it'll be determined, I think in terms of, you know, how how you're going to build the roster. Right now you you have a fullback and so you use your fullback and that Atlanta team, they had a fullback and they used him a bunch as well and you tried to run it and you had a better quarterback so you threw it more. I wonder if he if you go out and you draft another wide receiver and you try to go to three wide receivers more, which is what most teams do in the NFL, one running back, one tight end, and three wides. I um, want to let everybody know, again, uh, what's coming up at the top of the hour. So we're going to get back to your calls here. We're going to run basically all the way up to 5 o'clock right now, just taking your phone calls. And the Warriors are playing Utah at 6 o'clock tonight. And uh, Warriors Live with Evan Giddings will start at 5 o'clock right here on 95.7 The Game. You can hang with E-Dog and 95.7 throughout the 5 o'clock hour along with Tim Roy and the rest of the group that's working out there in Utah. It's all brought to you by Xfinity, the Xfinity 10G network made for streaming live sports. However, if you'd like to still scream about the 49ers and you would like to maybe even get over to YouTube or Twitch or the Odyssey app, but YouTube and Twitch where you can both watch the show and comment on the show, we will be much more engaged in your specific comments, commenting back with you, we will have a full, uninterrupted, one-hour live stream, just me and Dibs, 5 to 6, um, looking at your comments and talking out the Super Bowl loss. So Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube from 5 to 6 with Willard and Dibs. And that's what the uh, the rest of the next 95 minutes are going to look like. All right, um, back out to y'all. Uh, Jan in Mountain View. Hi, Jan, what are you doing? Listening to you guys, but uh, I wanted to bring up a couple of points, and that was that uh, uh, Andy Reid's been in the league longer than Shanahan. He's been a head coach longer than Shanahan, and uh, I uh, I found out that he also, uh, in the past uh, few years, he's uh, had uh, like uh, oh advisors or someone on the staff like he had the enemy to help him with uh with the offensive line and uh Shanahan needs somebody like that too because yesterday the reason why uh McCaffrey couldn't run so much is because uh Kansas City was stacking the box like uh eight or uh, ten uh, personnel and uh he couldn't get through there and so that uh Purdy had no choice but to try and pass, and uh, every time he tried, uh, they kept bringing them, bringing this, um, you know, this pressure uh, from uh, their defensive coach. And uh, that's another thing, you know, uh, if he had a, if he had somebody else to help him, perhaps maybe he could in the second half uh, when he needs to make adjustments, be able to see what they're doing or about to do, and. Uh, be able to bring that uh, trophy home instead of, you know, uh, running into these, you know, uh, running into the conservatorship and everything else and uh, try to, you know, have this person help uh, Shanahan realize this. Hey, look, you know, listen to me. I I can help you uh, make some adjustments that you haven't made. Well, Jan, I, I, here's what I would say. Thanks for the call. I, uh, Shanahan is not the only member of the offensive staff with the San Francisco 49ers. Uh, one example you brought up was Biennemi helping Andy Reid. How did Andy do this year without Eric? Did it go okay? Someone remind me. How did it end? Yeah, it worked out all right. All right. Um, and so, uh, Eric is currently uh, up for grabs in case anybody wants to hire him. <laughs> that went well. It went well in Washington. Yeah. Yeah, I guess my, my point is, I look, Kyle is the czar of the offense. That's true. But... Look, Mike McDaniel was his right-hand man not clock, too clock, long clock, ago, clock, right? Clock, 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 clock. Now he's doing a great job in Miami. Like, there are other 
There are other voices. Like, he's got a headset on. Right. There are people talking Brian to him. Brian Greasy is yeah. there working with the quarterbacks. And, just, and Kubiak, who may end up right. in New Orleans. Like, there's there's people there. Help. There are other suggestions out there. Let's put right. it that way. And I don't think, and all of the people who want him to bring in an OC, he's not going to do it. Oh, my and God. And all the people who want Shanahan to do different things, he's just not going to do it. He's not going to bring in somebody who is older and wiser well, to work with him. Hey, Kyle, I think now would be a good time for you to maybe use a timeout. <laughs> That's not what you do when you're Kyle Shanahan. Here's the super hard thing to say today. And, and maybe in July we can say this and get away with it. Today you kind of have to say it and duck. But, like, because I know how... Let me oh, find something to throw Yeah, here. get something to throw at me. Oh, that that would hurt. Don't throw that. That's a water bottle for crying out I'm gonna loud. I'm going to get my money's worth. It's metal. It was just a, yeah. All right. Do you have any ahead. more of those little gold footballs in the other room? Give me some gold footballs so Dibs can throw it at me with what I'm about to say. Okay. Because um, I get it. This is going to sound, thanks, Grandy. Whoa! Duck! I got to catch that. D- That's all Well, me. I wasn't even ready for it. Anyway, I get, thank you, Lucas. I get that this sounds like you're being okay with coming in second place. Nobody's okay with coming in second place. But this idea that a lot of you have, Kyle needs to this, Kyle needs to that, he needs a helper, he needs an OC, he needs to be fired, whatever. The Niners' response, maybe it'll help if I do it that way. The Niners' response to you would be, do you want to know why we're not going to do that? Because what we're doing is working. You literally took the Warriors logo down. <laughs> <laughs> he ducked too soon, YouTubers. That's my bad. We'll get that. Sorry, Lucas. We'll get that fixed. Uh, too oh, sweet. God. Yeah. Oh, Lucas is mad. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. I can fix Lucas, it. Lucas, I'm sorry. I can fix it. I know how to fix it. Mark, and to your but point. You, do you know what I mean? It's, it's working. Look, they're, they're They've looking. been to the last four, four years. Four of out of five, five years, they're sitting there. It's not, oh, well, boy, if only Let's we blow could. blow the whole thing up. Boy, if we could just call a play. They're like, yeah. If we could just have a winning season. I mean, if they could play someone in the last game not named Patrick, they'd probably have a ring. Well, and that's, I know that that's, that's super, an excuse. It, and that's fine. Win the damn game. I'm not making any excuses. The, it is painful. The same way it was painful, thank you, Lucas, for Barkley and Ewing and Reggie Miller. I'm going to have to stop you because I'm sorry. I, I don't want that comp to uh, to be the comp. I will make that Because they that never comp. got one. I will make that. I, I know. And, and Kyle, this particular group might not ever either. Patrick's not going anywhere for a decade. A decade. That's fine. You had you've had two chances to beat him. Yep. It's not like he's beating you. You're over two. It's not, yeah, he's over two. Kyle yeah. Shanahan's got to figure and, out a and, way to get this done. And whenever I keep doing the Michael Jordan Mahomes thing, all of you who are like that's disrespectful to MJ, don't say that. Patrick lost the Super Bowl. Forget this. I y'all think MJ never lost? Yes, he did. Never lost in the finals. Played more than six years in his career. Right. Right. So, like, actually, would argue getting to the finals and losing is more effective than losing in round two, or whatever, which Michael did many times. Yeah. So couldn't yes. get by Detroit. Yeah. So Michael has lost, and Patrick has lost. But to argue that Patrick in this moment is anything other than Tiger Woods, Michael Jordan, at minimum in the making. This is the NFL. Parody is king. Hard cap. And this guy has the biggest cap hit in the entire league. Loses receivers every year. And they have gone to the Super Bowl almost every time he plays. And he has three rings and he's 28. Yeah. It's a freaking dude. Yeah, you were favored. Dude. And you had chances you to favored. win the game, yeah, and, and yeah, you did. Yeah. No, I'm so, not saying that you can't. It's not impossible. It's really hard. Well. It's really hard. It's it's not as hard when you have the better team. And they had the better team. Yeah, but Go out not, there and, and win the game. No doubt. But you're not arguing that they make some sort of wholesale changes. No, of course right. not. Well, you do have, and I want to get the number right, 19 unrestricted free agents. So, you got 19 guys you're going to have to make decisions about. What are the big names? Uh, the big names, well, both your quarterbacks, 
Brandon and Sam, so they're both probably going to be gone. Okay, that's eh. uh, Oren Burks, the okay. aforementioned Oren Burks, okay. John Feliciano, okay. Cleland Furl is uh, mm. unrestricted, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, so that's two linebackers now who could be on the move, to Sean Gibson, not a huge deal when you get Hufonga back no. and. And nope. you've got Jair Brown, so yeah, maybe you know maybe. You, you've got some depth in house. Uh, Kevin Givens, Randy Gregory, no big deal. Javon Kinlaw, who actually played yeah, he better did. this year, he did. He was better. Ray Ray and uh, Chase Charlie Warner, Chase Young, Chase Young. I was going alphabetical. Yeah, Charlie Warner and uh, Ross Dwelly also, who didn't really uh, didn't play that much this year. Zero core pieces. Yeah. But, well, but but no 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 I'm not I'm not yeah. dismissing it. But okay. Zero zero core piece. Well, I'm just looking and it's in terms of starters. Feliciano starter, Gibson's a starter, and that's pretty much uh, Gib- Charlie Warner and the two the, tight end. Gibson's the closest one to what you would call Chase a core, Young, a core piece. Chase Young's Chase, a starter. Yeah, but he was never he was never going to stay. Right. He was never going to stay. Of course, but in terms of your depth, that's a lot of your depth pieces right no doubt, there. No doubt. No and doubt. So. You know, you're going to have to go out there and find replacements in order to run this thing back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as you do every year. Uh, Paul in Pleasanton. Hi, Paul. What are you doing? Hey, guys. Uh, yesterday during the game, kind of had that sinking feeling throughout. You know, even at halftime, uh, 10-3, my son was like, they're not going to win this game. You, know, you had to put your foot down on their throat when you had it. So uh, it, it was just a slow burn in the end. Huh. You know, I have called in here before and I've shared that I lived in Boston, you know, from 2000 to 2006. This kind of looks like another repeat of that. We have another, you know, Brady version two. But, you know, it's good to point out that over his 20 years, he like got in the way of a lot of teams winning Super Bowl, but not like every single one. Right. The Steelers got right. theirs. Um, I think uh, uh, Manning got his couple. So we should take like a five, 10 year view. Purdy is our quarterback. Let's not waste a minute talking about, is he game manager or not? He's our guy. Let's build the team around him. Well, one thing I wanted to sh- get your opinion is there is this consistent pattern with Shanahan in these big games. He does some stuff where the whole world is telling him to go the other way. So is it time for him to get a play caller? Maybe not like a full-time play caller, but, Somebody who's up in the booth and is calling him like before the half, like, hey, coach, take a timeout, you know, or don't, you know, have nine plays, pass plays right after the half. Just wanted to get your input on that. Uh, Paul, thanks. I, yeah, I just, I mean, it's sort of like what you said a second ago. I, I have a hard time with this idea because, A, I believe that there is more of a group think tank than we realize. Um, but then again, the the structure of this organization under this regime is never going to change until this is not the regime anymore. Right. When it comes to the offensive side of the football, Kyle's the dude. And you can hate that. You can advocate a change. I wouldn't. Not even close. But that's the way that this cookie is going to crumble for as long as this group is in place. That's the way it's worked from the beginning. Um, He is the one who built the offensive side of this roster. He's the one who calls the plays. And again, I'll duck. They would argue that it has worked very well. They just haven't gotten the last game. Right. And I I don't think that that means... this damn close twice. Yeah, close, uh, unfortunately, doesn't count. We're not playing cornhole where you get a point for your bag being on the the board. That's fun, though. I do love great game. game cornhole for sure. Yeah. Any game that you can play with a drink in your hand, I'm in. But this is not close. In the Super Bowl, you don't get points for being close. You get the Lombardi when you win. You get nothing. You get a set of steak knives, as the old expression goes. Second place, well, set of steak knives. My, yeah, Glenn I, Gary, Glenn Ross. I, I, I'm not arguing that you get anything for uh, for second place. I, I've never been somebody who thinks that. Losing the Super Bowl is the same as finishing six and eleven. I don't believe that. I do believe that reaching the Super Bowl is an of course. it is an accomplishment. You got the George Hallis trophy yeah, that you can not, go to bed with. Yeah, no, it's not it's not it's not overly special. It's not what anybody's looking for. Um, but that's what I mean. An organization is not gonna look at years like this and 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 think 
failure. Sure, they didn't achieve their goal, but there's two different ways to go into an offseason, which is, well, that didn't work, so <laughs> let's make a bunch of changes. Or you look at it and go, I mean, damn it. Like one play could have gone different and they could have they, sure. they could be champions right now. No so, doubt. so you don't make wholesale changes when that's the case. No, and you hired Kyle Shanahan to take your organization from what the hell was that when you're two and fourteen with Chip Kelly and you you entrusted in him to build the thing up and hopefully turn it into a winner. And he's done that. Yep. Now he hasn't been able to win the Lombardi, but this franchise is in a far, far, far better place than it was when he took over. And when you go to the Super Bowl twice and you lose twice, you don't blow it up and you don't throw out the baby with the bathwater and you don't look at all the players who struggled yesterday and say, well, you're out and you're gone. So you're going to cut Trent Williams because he had a bad game, your Hall of Fame left tackle. Now you're going to look at what you can do to improve the roster. Maybe you make some tweaks to the coaching staff. I don't know if Steve Wilkes is back or not. That'll be an interesting one to see. In terms of you know the the fit with Kyle yeah, Shanahan, I got to imagine that he is. Well, a lot of things will will change in the off season. Yeah. we know that all those unrestricted free agents they're not all coming back. I would bet the majority of them don't come back. So you're going to have a totally new team. Maybe you have a new scheme on defense. Maybe you have a new coordinator. What's Juwan's contract? He is a restricted free agent. Restricted. See, now that's going to be the interesting one. He to and me. Ben Barch. Okay. That's fine. Anyway, <laughs> the Juwan Jennings one is that's one to watch. That's one to watch. I wonder if somebody makes him an offer that the 49ers can't hang with. He's a good player. Yeah. He's a good player who could also. I wonder what Juwan wants. Seems like a good dude who loves the place, but at the same time, you know. He, oh, it's time for paper. He well, but he but he also might I wonder about role. I wonder about role. I wonder if he wants a bigger, you know, piece of the pie. Somewhere. I would guess. I'm just looking at know. his uh, snap counts. Yeah. 45% of offensive snaps. Yeah. I wonder. Well, as we mentioned before, 21 personnel, two wide receivers. You've got Debo and you've got Ayuk. So you're basically going to be in there if one of them is hurt or on those times where you do go with the three wide receiver set. Just looking at his snap counts, 45%. That was, Last year was 47%. Rookie year, 33%. So... It's not like he's trending toward being a mainstay. And if you're a team out there that runs a lot of three wides and four wides, I'd much rather be a part of that system as the third wide receiver a in a two-receiver team. Valuable player. Man. Yeah, big time. Yeah, valuable player. Uh, well, one thing about Juwan, really quick, he is a restricted free agent, so right. the Niners can match any can match. offer. And yeah. if he does go, they will get draft pick they compensation. They will get compensation. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, but obviously the the Ayuk extension talks will uh, will be a part of this. Um, and the Niners need to plan financially for what happens after next season, which is obviously significant. Um, although it won't kick in until the year after that. Right. Trent Williams has said he's going to play for at least a couple more years. Christian McCaffrey's got a couple more years left. I mean, today's not the day for it, but um, <laughs> the window is not closed. No. Good of Lord. Not. Those of you who are like, oh, gosh, they're running. Like, I get it. You don't get to the Super Bowl every year. So. It's tough. It's tough to keep getting these chances. And Nick Bosa said it best yesterday. And, you know, you start to wonder how many how many chances you're going to have at this thing. Uh, but the window's not closed. God, they're going to be good next year. You would figure. Yeah, they'll be good. They'll be good. And, you know, a lot of it is determined by the luck, the luck of the injuries. And this totally. year they were not. They were not bitten by the injury bug. Well, next year's already off to a bad start. It is. Yeah. No doubt. No doubt. Already off to a bad start. Um Scott and Hayward. Hey, Scott, what's up? Gentlemen, uh, great show. I uh, I, I want to start by, by saying I was listening last night on my drive back from Livermore, and you had two dudes on the radio who were literally ranting and raving and screaming for Shanahan to be fired. And <laughs> hold, on, hold, say, on, I, hold on, I, Scott. I, hold on, hold on. Got to stop because one, uh, of, the, one uh, of those human uh, beings <laughs> is right here in this room, Scott, and he may have said because I'm – I think you was laughing. Well, but he, we, they, they weren't – they were mad. You guys were mad at Shanahan. You didn't call for him to be fired. We were mad, and we explicitly said he should not be fired, and, of course, he will not be fired. Of course, of course. So, Obviously. anyway, I just wanted sure to adjust that, Scott, but, but keep going. 
So I, I just want to, I, I got to say, Shanahan wasn't the one who had a fluke punt clip off of his heel. Shanahan wasn't the backup tight end who committed an egregious hold on, on a big run. Shanahan was not the one who uh, false started at a critical point in the game. That was Ayuk. Shanahan did, in fact, put his team in a chance to win. As far as the aggression, I thought he called a pretty aggressive game. His Jennings to McCaffrey touchdown, uh, I made a, a modest sports investment at plus 2,200 on it. Any non-quarterback to throw a touchdown. And his aggression paid me handsomely. That was, that was a fine investment. Uh, at some point, you really just have to tip your cap to the Chiefs. Their defense played lights out. The coverage on the IU, on the, the Debo Samuel should have been touchdown was magnificent. Uh, they, they held the Niners defense held Mahomes and company down most of the game. Uh, they're sh- certainly not the first team to get beat by Mahomes inside of a short window at the end of a game. It's a long, long list. He's probably the greatest quarterback. Uh, in the game and making a good resume for the greatest of all time. It was a hell of a game. Uh, as a fan, I'm crushed, of course. But hey, cap, cap tip to the to the goat and uh, and to Andy Reid for for everything he called and for the Chiefs for just playing their hearts out. Uh, and hopefully, we get back and we can have round three, maybe. I don't know, but but I, you know, Shanahan <laughs> oh, certainly got us there. So go Niners. Yeah, no, Scott. I think I, you know, that's a that's a very rational take I, I here's where my head goes there. there this is one thing i've been i've been meaning to say um when that thing ended last night and you see those people run out onto the field again there's something in me that was just like i'm i'm surprised i'm really surprised i was with D'Amico ryan's man on friday who was just like it's just the niners year it just felt like their year, especially with the way their playoffs were going. It felt like something different was happening. And I watched the Chiefs all year, and at no point, at no point, did they look destined for a championship. Never did I think less of them. Never did I think they weren't a threat. I certainly didn't think they were going to win the Super Bowl. But I've never thought... That uh, that they were anything less than great, I really just did not visualize that happening. Travis Kelsey and Patrick Mahomes on the microphone again, man, I just did not think it was going to end that way. All the way until it did. Yeah, until uh, they got down to the inside the red zone, and time was running out. Mark, they only had three <laughs> seconds left. <laughs> Except for the next Except quarter for, of overtime. Except for time was not running out. Yeah, so. Why do they even, why do they even run the clock? for the, fir- the first two possessions, the clock is relevant. Why do you even run it? It's for the direction, as I indicated during right. the crossover. Right. So if but, you're playing outdoor, for which, example. Which in a Super Bowl you almost never will be. Yeah, I wonder who is going to get one. I wonder where the next few are. I know that uh, L.A. is an indoor. Yep. Levi's is getting one. That's true. That's outdoor. That's true. I That's think true. they're getting it in two years. That's true. Super Bowl sixty. And I we and, and we damn well know it can rain this time of year. I don't know. You seen any rain lately? Not lately. No, you haven't. Well, not in the last four or five days. Okay, it's coming yeah. though later this week. I know, and it's supposed to stay for a hundred and thirteen straight days. I already directionally at my app. is why they uh, they yeah. do it. So at the end of the quarter, they switch it up. Yeah. No, I get it, but it's just it's kind of irrelevant. Um, Superdome. Levi's, SoFi are the next three. Okay, so New Orleans, Santa Clara, Inglewood, indoor, outdoor, indoor. Correct. Okay, all right. Um, about thirteen minutes away from our live stream, we'll go Odyssey app, YouTube, and Twitch. Ninety-five-seven. The game listeners will get Warriors live with Evan Giddings, Warriors in Utah at uh, at six o'clock. How about Fox in Oakland? Hey, Fox, what are you doing? Hey, were you the one that sent the tweet of the picture? Of the the hoop that somebody put up on a tree in the East Bay and wrote "shoot your shot" on it. Yeah, buddy, that was me. That was on the Cal Berkeley campus. I saw that. Thank you for sending it. Yeah, of course, man. It was interesting that I saw that right when, um, right when you know during the morning roast uh, when Bonte was making that point. But hey, I'm absolutely good today, gents. Uh, but thanks for taking the call. So I'm guessing neither of you has had a chance to. Rewatch the game yet, but even if you've watched the extended highlights, 
you'll notice something that I think answers the question that Steiny posed earlier. So just give me a minute here. What Steiny said was that he thinks that we as 49er fans are saying to ourselves today that we just can't pinpoint the area that really costs us the game. And I actually think the answer to that question is in-game awareness. And yes, it's a team game, but I want to share a couple of examples with you guys in terms of lack of in-game awareness. One example Dibs actually mentioned earlier, and that was completely missing or not blocking the defender who shot the A-gap. Of course, there was that punt that McLeod was pointing at uh, Darrell Luter's foot as it hit him on the leg. Um, another is Kittle, thinking the play is over after he blocked for McCaffrey's run, and then he just kind of stops while his defender, Carl Loftus, recovers the CMC fumble. And then in overtime, at around the 11-minute mark, Purdy dumps the ball off to McCaffrey, and CMC's high-stepping down the sideline. And then there's Ayuk who's just kind of walking and watching Christian instead of blocking down Phil, which allowed Sneed, who was guarding Ayuk, by the way, to track down McCaffrey and push him out of bounds. The bottom line, you keep playing until you hear the whistle blow. And there were too many examples yesterday, I felt, where various Niners players seemed to lose their in-game awareness and weren't playing hard until the whistles were blown. So please share your thoughts on those if you don't mind, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, Fox, thanks. I mean, Brandon Ayuk has been uh, one of the best downfield blocking wide receivers in football all year long. Um, Juwan Jennings, uh, maybe one of the most devastating wide receiver blockers all year. Kyle demands that of his receivers. They've been great. I didn't actually catch that. I didn't see that play if uh, if Brandon kind of uh, begged out of the whole thing. Um, you know, George Kittle, yeah, he had his back turned. I mean, when, yeah. a, when a running back gets wrapped up by three people and they're on the way to the ground and your back is turned, I, I, I don't It's know. hard to recover It's the hard to know that you're supposed to keep... Uh, grinding and grinding and grinding. It, you, you don't know that it's going to be. I get in our head, run a thousand miles an hour at all times. It, I, I don't know. It's it's attention just, to detail. Yeah, yeah. Ray Ray McLeod trying to pick up a ball that he saw hit his own teammate's foot instead of falling on it. It's attention to detail. And so Ray Ray is going to scoop that up and go where? The answer is nowhere. So it's those little details where it came down to so many of those, whether it's Jake Brendel going the wrong way on a line shift where he's supposed to slide to the right and pick up the blitzer, and instead he slides left. Ray Ray McLeod trying to scoop up a punt instead of diving on it. Kittle's got his back turned. Jake Moody drives the ball like he's trying to kick a 60-yard field goal instead of you know kicking the bottom of the ball, as you mentioned during the crossover. All these little details that were missed led to plays that weren't made which in in large part led to the loss. Yeah, I uh, l- like I get it. The Ray Ray one, for example, I know you, you right. Go go down. Yeah. Does he recover it? I mean, that ball shot at sure. him. You know what I mean? But he, he got had. At I him. mean, he had plenty of time to run over, tippy toe, bend over at the waist, and try to pick it up. He was all alone. There was no chief within three or four yards. Yeah. Until. Yeah. He failed to pick that up. And I'm not, I'm not going to disagree with I know, you. It's, just, it's like I'm not trying to find a goat. I'm just Fox had me thinking about what Lo Neal always tells me about attention to detail and those little plays where not everybody's doing their job. It comes back to haunt you. Yeah. Eight 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 nine five seven nine five seventy. We keep going with uh, let's see Niels in Truckee. Uh, hey Niels, what are you doing? Hey guys, uh, I'm driving back from. The Reno airport uh, to the Bay Area. That's uh, where I had to go to get a cheap flight to Vegas. So I was at the game. Uh, I was in the end zone where uh, Mahomes, you know, drove the dagger. Yep, the the drop. Um, but I, I'm calling because I'm calling because I'm just devastated. You know, I mean, I was I was at the game. It was in a, a second away from the best night of my life and everyone's life. Who's a Niners fan? It didn't happen, and I'm I'm just. I love listening to you guys, and I'm looking for maybe a little a th- little therapy, a little explanation as to where you think this really went wrong, because I think it's easy to look at the, the muffed punt that you guys just talked about or, like, Moody missing the PAT. But for me, it was like the way we started the second half and the third quarter, I think the first three drives were negative two yards total. And I was just wondering what the explanation was for that, you think. Like, it, it seemed like there were some drives where McCaffrey was just running into walls, and other drives we had a nice balance, and he's busting off seven-yard chunk gains. So, anyway, 
really appreciate you know the pick me up today after yeah. a really tough well, night. Well, Niels, can we start by picking you up by telling you that you sound like a much uh, like a little bit quicker cadence, Nick Bosa? Have you ever been told this before? <laughs> well, I appreciate that. You do. Uh, I, I met his brother yesterday. He uh, you know, didn't take a picture with me. I think he's got some PTSD from. Uh, no, I like accosted him in the hallway. I didn't have any VIP access. Um, I maybe the Philly fans, you know, who got after right, him last year right, didn't right. want to didn't want to take a pick. But uh, yeah, it was, it was a great experience. Um, yeah, yeah. Congrats on your DPOY award last year. That was awesome, man. We uh, <laughs> we and, and congrats on your contract. But no, to, to answer the question um, with regard to you know where where we see that it went wrong. It, like, that third quarter, uh, it turned into a defensive slugout, and nobody was moving the ball. Nobody was moving the ball. I, I know everybody was like, oh, why didn't Christian touch the ball? We've detailed it a little bit. If you, if you missed the first half of our show, I think that it's a little disingenuous to be that simple and just say, give Christian the ball because you're forgetting what actually happened on those plays. First down, incomplete pass. Then it was about to be a run play to Christian, but Aaron Banks commits a false start. Now it's second and 15. You're not going to run the ball. You're behind the sticks for the next two plays. You're not going to run the ball. You punt. Then you get it again. Pass play first down. Ends up being a a, a fire drill, and you throw it out to Juwan Jennings in the flat, and he loses eight yards. And now it's second and 18. Again, you're not going to run the ball, and you don't. Third possession. You do give it to Christian on the first play. He goes nowhere. He gets totally stuffed. It turned into a defensive struggle and chess match, and that's why that punt muff was so huge because it, it it flipped the whole thing, and it went from Niners up four to Chiefs up three. But I also look at the beginning of the game. Dibs, I know you do too. I think we all felt like there were opportunities presenting themselves that the 49ers did not grab, and I really felt like that opening drive was headed for 7 nothing, And Christian put it on the ground. Those are the plays that I remember along with yeah. third and four in overtime and a missed assignment on the offensive line. Those, those are the plays I remember. For sure. And I also remember the second drive where you had it humming again. You get 18 yards on the pass. You lose two, and then Trent Williams on back-to-back plays commits two penalties. So you go from... First and 10 at your own 42 to second and 27 in the blink of an eye. And so that drive ends before it even got started because, again, attention to detail, false start from your Hall of Famer. Then he holds on the very next play. These are things you you can't do if you want to beat the GOAT. We are presented by Fremont Bank. Full service banking, no compromises. Warriors Live with Evan Giddings is next on 95.7 The Game while we, Willard and Dibbs, are going to continue for the next hour on the free Odyssey app and Twitch and YouTube. So commercial-free, full hour, all Super Bowl. Get in the chat. Get wherever you can on the app. We will be looking at the chat. We will be responding. We'll be talking it out for all of you 49er fans or those who want Super Bowl. Or Evan Giddings on 95.7 The Game will take you up to tip-off at 6 o'clock, the Warriors in Utah tonight. That's all coming up. Willard and Dibs, 95-7 the game. Hey, it's Willard and Dibs for Safeway.
life-threatening. If you're 65 or older or 19 or older with certain chronic conditions like diabetes or asthma, you're at increased risk. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist about vaccination and learn more at nopneumonia.com. That's K-N-O-W pneumonia.com. Sponsored by Pfizer. You're listening to 95.7 The Game, KGMZ FM in HD1 San Francisco. Always live on the free Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube. Powered by First NorCal Credit Union. All right, good to see the uh, the YouTube numbers going up right now in front of our eyes as it is a full hour of a live stream. Willard and Dibs post 49er downfall, 25 to 22 in overtime at the hands of the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, Warriors Live is over on 95.7 the game. We'll hang with you all the way up until 6 because it's obviously, I don't know if this is the right word, special day. It's a different kind of a day. We're going to hang with you all the way till 6. Odyssey app, Twitch, and YouTube. Get on over there and really get your comments going because we can uh, we, we can connect with you now a little bit uh, more focused on you. Like Cruiser DC, what up? I see you. Um, thanks for uh, for being here. We uh, we really, really appreciate it. And I've seen all of all of the comments we both have throughout the uh, the afternoon with regard to 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 where we're at on on this whole thing and I know I know how this works when you lose the last game the number one thought is change the number one thought is what do you do differently so it'll work and I hate this it's gut-wrenching it's nauseating it's nauseating but it's one of the reasons I coined the most annoying phrase. Super annoying. In the history of sports. But it's true. Super Bowl or try again. Um, I don't think the 49ers need to make some massive adjustment. If they execute a couple of things differently, they win the football game yesterday. So to me, I, you don't need wholesale changes. I'd love to see them tweak some things on the offensive line, yes. But when it comes to personnel, when it comes to coaching, I think the 49ers have been wildly successful and just frustratingly close um, without getting over the top. Yeah, and frustratingly close. And you bring back the majority of your core, and we already mentioned the 19 unrestricted free agents, and the majority of them are not on the offensive line. John Feliciano is your only starting offensive lineman who is on that list. And so... You're going to have to figure out who comes in and replaces him unless you want to re-sign him and keep him around. But the one thing that, that does trouble me a little bit about Super Bowl or try again, <laughs> this is an older team. And your core, everyone's, of course, going to be a year older by the time the season starts again. But you've got you've got a veteran core that is is older. Trent Williams is older. And Kittle is 30, or he's going to be 31 next year. Debo and Ayuk are younger, yes, but Feliciano is older, so Trent Williams is really old. You look across the board, and it becomes tougher to do it again with the same core as they're getting up there in their years. Well, I mean, it's always like somewhere in the neighborhood of impossible to get to the Super Bowl. Like, it takes a bunch of stuff to uh, to fall your way. This fan base knows it better than anything, man, for the last five years. You know what I mean? Like, think of what's happened in each of these cases. Okay, 10-point lead, six minutes to go. Nope, that doesn't do it. Okay, Jaquaski, that ball's in your lap. No, that doesn't do it. Uh, okay, whoops, now we don't have a quarterback. No, that doesn't do it. And then this experience yesterday. So, like, it, <laughs> and the Dre Greenlaw thing is such a kick in the you-know-whats. Like, the whole... The, you can say it. We're on the stream. Yes. Yeah, 
big kick in the nuts. Oh, God. <laughs> you could have at least gone balls. It's kicking the balls. Yeah, Mark. It's kicking the jewels. Okay. It's kicking the, uh, anyway. Right? Right in the, yeah. right in the Brock. Yeah. So, it, 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 it takes what feels almost like a miracle to even get to these moments. And I, you know what comment I've seen a bunch today that I find interesting? And I, I would assume it's just the day. I think Bonte even said it this morning. It's just like the journey it takes to get here is so long and takes so much energy. I hear from a lot of people going, I, I, I don't have it in me. And I'm like, you're so not even what, playing. So what is it? But, but what does that mean? Does that mean you're not watching 49 of football anymore? I, I, I get it. It's a moment in time. It's a situation today. And, and yes, by September, you'll, you'll, you'll have built the thirst back up again. But I don't know, man. This is what we do. This is what we do. And this is, this is an incredible run. And it's, it's absolutely heart wrenching for the guys that they haven't gotten over the top. But I don't know, man. This is usually kind of the way sports goes. There's there, there, there's a team or a player that just like that's the definition of of greatness. Well, and this is you, why you, we all do it. You think you had him, but you don't. Well, you, you got You think you had him, but you don't. You should have him, but and you that, don't. Yeah, and, and that's greatness. But why? And because it's not he's just great. Because he's great. It's, there, it's things, a big part of it. It's a part of it, sure. But if that was really the reason, then you wouldn't. Super Bowl or try again because he's going to be back next year. So well, but you, you figure out a way to go about being better than the one guy or better than the combination with he and Kelsey. And this year you had the superior talent. You had everything lined up. You had health. And then you got in the big spot. And I do think losing Drake Greenlaw was a huge part of that game. Forget Tremendous, next year. Yes. And it's devastating that he won't be around, it looks like, at least for the start of the year. Who knows how quickly he can recover from the, the ruptured Achilles. We'll talk to Doc Pant- Pandia tomorrow and get his thoughts on you know what he'd be looking at in terms of return to play. But that's a devastating one for next year. But it was even harsher yesterday because he was, he was your defense early in that game. He was flying around, and he was hitting Kelsey. The first catch Kelsey had, and Greenlaw comes in and just cuts him in two. And then next thing you know, Kelsey's over there pushing his coach. And the defense definitely revolved around those linebackers, and you lost one of your two, and then your defense got tired late in the game, yeah. and those were big factors. I, I, I thought everybody came out looking great. Like, the first quarter, yeah, I, I loved the way the football looked. I loved it. Like, that, you you sit down and you watch that, and that's when I think it got in our our system. Because no matter what everybody says the whole week leading up to the game, and I know how the conversation goes, we did it on Friday for four hours. How you feeling? How you feeling? Yes. That's how everybody comes up. What do you think? How you feeling? Hey. Well, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, I feel, feel good. I had it on 24-23 Niners. Yeah. Was, uh, was what I had. But a lot. But I just mean as a fan, like, are they going to win or not? How you feeling? Yeah. And and both of us went back and forth throughout the week. I was feeling more uneasy by the yeah. time we got to Friday. But then, you, you know, whatever you say in those conversations, I think that all goes away when the ball gets kicked in the air. And you sit down and you're like, I now I would like some evidence of what I'm feeling. And if you're a Niner fan, the way it looked in the first quarter, you're like, oh, oh, they're going to win. Or, or, or they're going to have a shot to win. Nobody wins it in the first quarter. Right. But Brock came out and completed his first seven passes. Right? Christian is moving up and down the field. And then they fumble. Like, oh, for Christ's sake. Right? But then the defense comes yeah. out. And as you said, I, out. not just Dre, by the way, like the pass rush. Chase Young, they looked great. They legitimately looked fantastic. So that's another reason why. I've defended all 49er coaches today. The Niners were ready. Okay? Coaching is is a setup. That's all you can do. You're not playing. Right. Coaching is what's our game plan and how do I put my players in their best position for success and also are they motivated? Like are they emotionally ready? Check, check, check. Yeah. 
They were ready to ride Kyle and Steve, and they did a great job setting it up. And then comes the adjustments and the execution. And the 49ers missed out in execution in some very, very key spots. Yeah, huge spots. In my spots. opinion, it's why they lost. Well, and you look at the Trent Williams consecutive penalties, that kills a drive. And the Banks false start, that killed a drive. And a pass to Jawan Jennings that goes for negative eight yards, that kills a drive. So those are all little things. And Brock, with more experience, will get to a point where he throws that ball in the ground. Now, he doesn't throw it to Jawan Jennings. Right. He throw that one in the ground at his feet, and you live to fight another day because you see that Jennings is about to get bottled up for a huge loss. Brock Purdy buys time, and he did what young players do. He's trying to make a play. Even though in that spot, there's no play to be made. I got a question for you, something we didn't discuss over the first three hours. And it just came through. Hang on, I don't want to lose this. I want to call him out. Uh, Everyone's Worst Nightmare on YouTube. That's a fun name. Uh, Everyone's Worst Nightmare. But but this is an interesting question, and I wonder what you think. Why He says, why, or she, why did 49er players say they never went over the new OT rules? Kyle Juszczyk and Eric Armstead, among the players who came out and said they didn't know. They, they had no idea. And, and, and so that's not like the greatest look. That's not the, no. It's not the greatest look for Kyle. It's not the greatest look even for the players themselves. It's, it's worse like, for the players. Yeah, I, like, but I'd also say it, I, it doesn't have an effect on the game. I don't think anybody went out and they're like, we can play half speed because, right. right, it's over. Right, so I don't think it had an effect on the game. This is not the cleanest look, though. No, it's borderline inexcusable because it's your job and your job is to know the rules of your profession. It would be akin to you and I not knowing certain rules about certain things that we do here on this program. For example, there are certain phrases that you cannot say because they are copyrighted. And if you utter those phrases, there are people out there who listen for those phrases and you get sued. Or it'd be like if I threw it to break right now. But we don't have any breaks. Correct. Because there's different rules in the live stream. And you understand oh, that because right. it's your we profession. Just, we just hang out. And we, we can certainly swear, <laughs> although I got stared down by the boss when I referenced that. Oh, yeah. He peered at the window and gave me that little, that little, that little face he has. He gave me the look and he gave me the head shake. And that's, clock, just, clock, 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 clock. that's just when I was uh, referencing <laughs> potentially <laughs> swearing. And he came down my road. So I think that it's somewhat inexcusable that they don't know the overtime rules. But then again, most of us didn't know the overtime rules. And people are freaking out as the Chiefs are lollygagging with six and then five and then four seconds left in overtime. Aren't you going to run a play? Well, I, I, I knew the rules, but there were two things where I was like, so, right? I, I think I know the rule, which was if we get to a third possession, is it, it's just straight, you know what I mean? Like it's it's sudden death, right? And then they put that up on the screen, and then the clock thing. I knew that that was not the end of the game. I knew that possession was to be seen all the way through. But it's unsettling. I get why people. You know what I mean? Like it's the fifth quarter. We've been here for four hours. People have had a lot to drink, and all of a sudden Mahomes is hanging out at the four yard line with the clock ticking down almost to zero, and and so you're just trained, I think, as a viewer to be like, dude, the game's going to end. The game was not going to end. Um, and as it turns out, and we, we told this to you about an hour ago, turns out there was definitely never going to be a third possession either. Uh, as if to say, had the 49ers scored that touchdown on their opening drive, the Chiefs were going to go down the other end, and if they scored a touchdown, they were going for two. Um, and, and that's I think that's important to know going forward. I mean, obviously, a situation like this will almost never arise, which is the Super Bowl in overtime. Almost never, ever happens. But this whole debate about do you take the ball first or you defer, I think you do have to take into account who's the coach on the other side and are they the type that's likely to go for two. So if you are going against a Dan Campbell or an Andy Reid, I don't know, maybe you do want to defer. Because for me, the whole reason to take the ball is because then you get the ball for that first sudden death possession. Well, if you think that that possession's not even going to exist, then I'll agree with what many of you have said, 
which was that you'd rather have the ball second. Yeah, I'd rather have the ball second. Yeah. And then you have kind of your destiny in your hands because Mahomes goes first, whatever he does, then you have the clarity of knowing what you need. Maybe you hold him, and Mahomes punts. And, well, he doesn't punt, but the punter punts. And you know what I'm saying? You get the ball back, then you know three wins it. If they get three, three ties it, seven wins it. If they get the seven, well, now you know you need six, and then you can go for two and make it eight for the win, or you take the extra point, and then you're in the same spot where the third possession does matter. And you know we are so new to this overtime rule change that we don't really know you know what the the analytics will say what the history has shown this is the first time we've seen it in, in the super bowl to be yeah, sure yeah yeah the whole thing is i mean gosh yeah it's just a this is a wild way to end it and uh we totally get it we totally get the uh the deep deep frustration of this whole thing i have seen it move throughout the day have you noticed that i don't know if you noticed that with the people you're texting like in other words this happened. Did you go to Twitter last night after the game? No, I did Twitter Spaces with right. uh, Guru and the boss. But did you just read? Like, did you tweet no, anything no. or read? My God, woof, <whistles> toxic. Of course, no, and, which is and, why and no surprise. Honestly, I I was in like, a spot where geez. you know watch the game at home with uh, my wife. Supper is the name she goes by, and my baby girl Myla. So we got to the end of that game, and it was bath time. So off we went. Yep. Teeth. She likes to brush her teeth, so teeth. She likes to brush her teeth. Loves it. Can't. I mean, if you mention teeth, she immediately to the stairs and she starts. You crawling guys must up have got stairs. some of that good toothpaste with the little straw. Yeah, flavor it's uh, or like bubble gum. Yeah, bubble gum. She's uh, she's go. into the bubble gum. So <laughs> by the time we do that, we go upstairs. It's bath time, story time, jammies, sleep sack, all the rest of it. And then I go downstairs and I have some moments to just kind of reflect. Yeah. And I was just watching the post games. I didn't really want to jump into the into the cesspool because. You know, people, especially on Twitter, are prone to venom and anger. And I was already feeling, I mean, angry, sports angry. Right. It wasn't going to ruin my life. I was bummed. And I just wanted to reflect with my own thoughts on what I had seen. And then I got a text from Goo saying, Twitter spaces. And I said, you know what? I'll jump in on the spaces. So I did about 20 or 30 minutes with uh, Nahigian and Goo. And by that point, it's about 9.15 now. It's like, all right, I, I don't need to jump on Twitter. I can make myself one last drinky poo and call it a night. Yeah. And I had I, three more. Well, I couldn't. I, yeah, <laughs> nice job. I should have done that. I kept hopping on there. I couldn't hop off. Yeah. And then, you know, what What? What? some people ended up saying to me last night, they circled back this morning with, with actually apologies. And even my uh, friends... On the, uh, you know, all my high school friends have our have our group chat. That got hot last night. And a few people, after talking it out this morning, they're like, I was just mad. I was just mad. Um, oh, that's no fun. Somebody come in here and help me. My screen just decided to reboot, and that's where YouTube is. I guess I could pull it up on my laptop. Yeah. Pull it up on the laptop. YouTube didn't go down, did it? You no, still no, got it? You're doing great. Okay. Yeah. Okay. My screen just went down. Let's get over to YouTube. It's funny because I want to be able to. I'm looking at the feed, and I guess it's a little bit behind because uh, there's a picture of you with your uh, with your hand and your your face in your hand. What's going on here? Right there. Yeah. I didn't do anything. No, his. Yeah, your it, camera's frozen. Yeah. I have I have you like this. Yeah. No, I I know. What if I just do it for real? No, it's crazy because, yeah, I'm actually talking and I can... Uh, I actually look like I'm doing something from the movie Kingpin. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. You're... Uh, anyway, yeah, this whole thing just yeah, died. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Don't you... No, I know Fix you, it, Tech Lord. Yeah, I know you're speaking loud because you want to be all on it. Oh, there everything. I am. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's dibs. Dibber time. Oh, okay. I'll leave. You do the show. Oh, uh, so anyway, uh, boy, flew just flew in from Poughkeepsie. Boy, are my heart's dying. Poughkeepsie kid. Totally. Um... No, this is I, actually going to be in alphabetical order. Oh, Grandy. Perfect. Keeping it fresh <laughs> from the back. <laughs> Drew down, Drew down. Wait, thank you for getting the joke. I appreciate you. Anyway, uh, there is a debate going on on our YouTube feed right now. Why don't we, let's go ahead and do this. Let's do this, okay? Who are we blaming? Well, no. Can we just get to the blame game, please? Oh, man. Let's man. rip somebody. Listen, listen, listen to this. I got I to gotta scroll back and find it. I got to scroll. Can we, I, like, we've spent three and a half hours and not addressed this mob of people, because we've acted like they don't even deserve to be heard. You're talking about the fire Kyle right now, people. Yeah. 
Like this, this. Well, he, he's got to go, Mark. There, Miguel Rodriguez Jr. He started it, although he's not the first one to say it today. Shanahan needs to go. Oof. All right. Bye-bye. Don't let the door and hit then, you where the good Lord split you. And then Gamer for Life 07. Yeah, hits speak in. on it. Agreed, Miguel. And more fans need to realize that. Yeah. And then some would ask, okay, who 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 do you want? Who do you want? Who are you going to replace him with if he's gone? Gosh. I uh, like Al with a great one. Marty Schottenheimer. Mark, he means Marv Levy. Marvin Lewis. Jim Mora. Dan Reeves, Jeff Fisher, Chuck Knox, Sam Weish, Kyle Shanahan. Do you keep going with Kyle, or do you stop the pain now? <sighs> <laughs> Shout out Susan Powder and stop the insanity, because you got to stop the pain, Mark. You got to get this guy on the first train out of town. Run him. Shout out Chris Brown. Run it, run it. Kyle's got to go. Got to go, got to go, got to go. Don't go. Mark, I understand it. It's it's anger. It's visceral. And uh, people, I think a lot of times people don't know how to. Why are you cutting off my hair, man? How to react. I actually have hair. Don't cut it off. What, Dibs asked you to do that? No, you cut off Dibs. No, I, I didn't. I didn't cut off Dibs. I'm just sitting here. I, I haven't was, said a word in about two and a half minutes. What an odd change that exactly. is. Exactly. All I can see right now is your forehead. Which looks more like a five head because you have right. no hair. There he is. There's my hair. There's my guy. There's Hi. that handsome guy. Hi, everybody on the live stream. Let's see. I see Drew down yep. in San Jose Jazz, man. And uh, let's see. Far side. Damon Chang. I see Damon Chang. Uh, those of you old enough for romper room references, welcome. Anyway, look. Helicopter. Chiefs will take Kyle as OC. So no, Chiefs won't take Kyle as OC. No, he's, he's about, out because about fifteen teams would take him as their head coach if he were available. Uh, the very next day, they'd literally fire the guy they have right now. Uh, Renee to, to Santos bring in Kyle. with an interesting question, What's and I, I posed this before: Is Wilkes back next year? What do you think? You're I don't the one think who, so. You, you don't. I don't think but so. Why? It'll be a mutual parting of the ways. <sighs> I think that, and you can look at last night; it happened. Uh, yeah, Niners on defense. I remember the play. Yeah, Kyle and called timeout. Kyle out. called timeout because yep. he didn't like what Steve was putting down. Romo said he was right. Romo's like, you're not going down like that. He was going zero blitz again. Yep. He was going to go zero, the hero, and Kyle didn't like it, so Kyle called timeout. You don't often see that. He did. Uh, there was a third down play. This was after the Chiefs converted the fourth and one. The very next set of downs, I want to say it was third and six. Steve sold out. Like, he went, he brought everybody. They didn't get home. They didn't get home. And to me, that was the end of it right there. Rasheed Rice made a catch. Yeah. Got a first down. was third and one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Well, no, I think it was longer than that. I want to say it was like third and six. Y'all rack it back. I have it right here. Yeah, rack it back. Bring it back, y'all. Bring it back, y'all. Oh, yeah, the third and one is when they, they rushed four and Mahomes ran... He ran for uh, seventeen hundred yards on that play. Correct. Guy thought he was going to go the whole way. I, I thought he was going to score. He's so annoying. <laughs> Just the way he runs, like all upright, and he wiggle, wiggle, wiggles. It was third and six, Mark. It's very third and six. There third you go. and six at the they're at the their own forty six, and he brings. Oh boy, I, can, I don't even everybody. know if I can count them. One, two, three, he everybody. four, five, six, seven. He brought everybody. Yeah. And uh, they couldn't get to him. No, because get Mahomes there. gets the snap and he does his little drifty, drifty, drifty back. And Rashi Rice is running a crossing route. And I'm looking at a still right now. The Seven Niners, Gibson's coming. He's not going to get there. And Fred Warner's coming. Fred actually broke through Jarek McKinnon's block attempt. He's the one who's got a chance to get Mahomes, but there's no Niner defender. And this is where. I think Kyle looks at this and probably shakes his head because you're going to go zero blitz, which means it's man-to-man behind it, and you've got nobody taking the underneath route on third and six. You're playing too far off. And I know you don't want to get beat over the top for a big play, but you bring seven, you're hoping you get home to well, where, you know, you, you got to have... I, I get I get it, though. I get it. At that moment, you're like, we got to set up fourth and fourth and twelve. Like, this is our chance. 
or at least make Mahomes throw it away and set up fourth and six. Yeah. Because even if he gets fourth and two, they're just going to convert it. They just they got Kelsey, they got Mahomes. Yeah. They're so good in those situations. I get the thinking from Steve Wilkes, but anyway, the larger point is the one that you brought up, which is yeah, Kyle didn't like did not like the call, and he called timeout to sort of readjust what was going on. And it just we've seen enough of those things this year to wonder how on the same page are Kyle Shanahan and Steve Wilkes. I don't know. I don't know. I do know that there were four or five situations that showed themselves this year that we never saw with D'Amico. Right. We never saw them with Salah. Never. Yeah. And, and and maybe they were there and they just didn't get public. I'm sure. You don't go a whole season and just like, we never had a fight. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, there's but there's yelling, right, on a, on, a, on an NFL clubhouse and sideline. But, um, but it was like just evident somewhat repeatedly at different times and up in the booth and come down and this, that, the other. You might be right. You might be right. I got no idea, but I, I I don't think the Niners are in a place to fire him. I don't think that he is sought after enough to just leave on his own. So, yeah, maybe that mutual parting is it. Yeah. Or maybe he's back. Maybe. I mean, I still feel like right now he'll, he'll, he'll be back. He'll be the defensive coordinator for the 49ers next year. Well, his track record would indicate that he's probably going to be moving on. You look at his years, and you go all the way back, two, two, one, 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 one. He was with the Bears for three, Chargers for two, Panthers for two. Well, he, Panthers for a long time because he was DB coach, D back coach, assistant head coach, defensive coordinator. Then he got the head job in Arizona. Then he went to Cleveland. Then he went to Missouri. Back to Carolina. Guy moves around a lot. I would imagine that he's gonna. He's going to be on the move. The other one that hurts, and I know we're not too far into next year just yet, although I do want to remind people the Combine's coming up here in about two weeks. That's exciting. Now well, we've got to pay it's attention. Two weeks? It's at the end of the month, yeah. Good Lord, really? Yeah. I. I My God, that earlier. feels quick. Yeah, I think it's the 20... Oh, you're, I'm sure you're right. The I'm 29th not a, of February. I'm not a huge Combine guy. I know. Ever since Rich called it the Underwear Olympics. I just kind of go with Ornberger. that. Yeah, Rich Ornberger likes to call it. Uh, Monday the 26th, so two weeks from today. Oh, jeez. And the big one, Mark, is uh, Adam Peters is gone. Correct. And that's, you want to talk about the 19 free agents, the unrestricted free agents, that loss might turn out to be the biggest of the losses because he's your number one talent evaluator in that building, and he's gone. So who replaces him? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I do know this. Um, I look at a game like yesterday, and I think as fans, it takes each of us a different amount of time to get there. Some of us never get there. Some of us get there right away, and I'm not here to say who's right or wrong. Everybody gets to have their their own experience. But when I, when I look at a game like yesterday, um, I do want to run it back. I want to run it back. I don't I, – I, I, like – I don't think there is some magic change or addition out there that puts you in even better position to beat Patrick Mahomes. You can beat him. Everybody can lose. He has lost. It can be done, but you have to have the right package, and then you have to perform at your highest level to really give yourself a great chance. When the Bucs beat him, they performed at an unbelievable level. The 49ers did not yesterday. They performed well at times. They performed well enough to be right there and have a chance. But let's be honest. Remember that conversation you and I had last week about, okay, would you rather be down four with the ball in Purdy's hands or up four and the ball in Mahomes' hands? And so many were like, Purdy. Yes. And I'm like, you know that's analytics the wrong way to go. And you're like, yep. But I don't want the ball in my home. And you get it now. And, well, you get it now. Like, that's I mean, why I said Purdy. Yeah. And that's it came true yesterday. And I actually thought of you yep. when overtime happened. Niners win the toss and they take the ball. And in real time, I was like, good, take the ball. It was only after more understanding and reflection that I, I think that that was a mistake. But in the moment, they get the field goal. And I had that same thought 
about the conversation we had because here we go. This is everyone's worst nightmare. You got the lead, but Mahomes has the ball. Uh-oh. Here's the thing, though, that I do still think about, and, and, and I'm going to follow this point with a, this is the real question that we need to talk about. We haven't talked about it at all today. Oh, damn. Real. This is serious. You're keeping it real. Remember the Wonder Pets? This no. is serious. I don't remember the yeah, Wonder Pets. Yeah, it's because your kids are, you, you, have that, you have that gap. You've got that 20-year gap with your kids. Totally. Wonder Pets was an amazing, maybe it still is, but now I'm, I'm in the gap. But when the commercial, like when, when the uh, cartoons, like about, I don't know, this is may, maybe getting on a bit about a decade ago. Yeah, 06 on for three seasons. Okay. But, it, but like Cartoon Network still has that stuff on all the time, I think. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, Wonder Pets was great. Anybody out there? Uh, thank you, Renee Santos. What's going to work? Teamwork. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go, Wonder Pets. Um, anyway. Wonder Pets. Yeah, there was this little duck. There was this little chick at the end. Whenever they were about to, like, right? There was an what animal. What's going on here? Ming, no. Ming. There was an animal in Ming, trouble. Ming, duckling. Yeah, there was an animal in trouble. I had to Google and it. And fi- they would find out that the animal was in trouble by the phone ringing. And she would go, the phone. The phone is ringing. And they'd go through the whole song. <laughs> Thank you. Totally. They'd go through the whole song. <laughs> and at the very end of it, she would look at the camera and she would go, this is serious. She had a little bit of the like she couldn't right. couldn't hit her arms. Yeah. Anyway, um, all right. Back to whatever the hell we were talking about. I Wonder know. pets. All right. What would have happened if the Niners were up by four instead of three? We're never ever gonna know. I bet, just a bet. I bet they would have won. I bet they would have won because I like the way their red zone defense was performing all game. When they got condensed in the red zone, the Niner defense, led by Fred Warner, was really good. He was really good on Kelsey. Um, you saw that one play where Rasheed Rice ran open and came over and started yelling at Mahomes on the sideline, that whole thing. But the Niner red zone defense was largely good. And so I like their chances if the Chiefs did not have the ability to kick field goals when it was 16-13, 19-16, yada, yada. They kept kicking field goals. And we know why. Jake Moody missed an extra point. I don't want to hear about how blocks are not the fault of the kicker. They are when it comes to extra points. That was on Jake Moody. So let's ask. Need a new kicker next year? No. No. I mean, no. You don't need a new kicker. Hmm. The guy made a Super Bowl record length kick, and he was almost perfect on points after touchdown in the regular season. I think he made 70. Maybe he was perfect, or he missed one the entirety of the year. He's got a big leg. He is an automatic touchback, and you invested third-round draft capital to get him. And if you want to talk about reasons why you lost that game, I would put him on the list, but... To me, he's behind Luter Jr. He's behind, you know, a lot of a lot of guys out there who made bigger mistakes than he made. Trent Williams made bigger mistakes well, come on, than man. he we're, did. We're talking about a future Hall of Famer here. No, though. but we're talking about the game, and the reason why you would want to move off the kicker was because of that. I would assume he missed a game winner against Cleveland, uh-huh. and other than that, he's been pretty solid. He missed in the playoffs. Yeah, not. Not a high leverage kick. He all, came. All all kicks are high came leverage. Came through kick with in the a huge, playoffs. huge field goals against Detroit. He did. I'm not going to say that he didn't come through with big kicks, but he also missed. He missed two kicks in the playoffs that he's got to make. He missed. Um, you know, he missed against the Rams. He did not have a good game, and it didn't matter. But it didn't inspire confidence going into the playoffs. And he missed the biggest kick of the year, which was against. The Cleveland Browns, and that could have really bit the, the, the 49ers coming down the stretch, even though it didn't. Here, here's why I asked, though. Because the difference between having a good kicker and a great kicker does come down to just a few kicks. Um, it, it, it's not about what you do when it's a 35-yarder in week three. Like, if we were to apply the same pressure on Jake Moody that we do to Kyle Shanahan... Like, wouldn't you say he has trouble making the big kick? I wouldn't he say that. Makes a lot of kicks. Kyle wins a lot of games, but a lot yeah. of you are like, but he doesn't win the big game. 
Well, Jake Moody's misses have come at the worst possible times. And I won't put the blocked PAT entirely on his low trajectory because the Chiefs had four or five guys who could have blocked that. Your offensive line didn't do anything to discourage them from getting up in that area. And, yeah, he's got to kick the ball higher, but like anything, a blocked field goal or a blocked extra point, the blame is is shared by the entire unit. The unit did not get it done. Moody made three field goals, and I disagree with what you were saying about they win the game. I think Mahomes goes in. I think they Mahomes might. goes in and scores a touchdown. So I don't think that that PAT when? at the end of the game when they settled for three to force overtime, they were down to the eleven yard line, and the Niners right, but I'm the ta- Niners but I'm stout about, defense was not as stout as it had been. But I'm talking about the prior possession, sixteen thirteen, not nineteen sixteen. Right, sixteen thirteen. Mahomes goes down, and I think that they 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 stalled on the six, stalled on the six yard line. About five minutes to go in the game. Do you go for a touchdown if it's seventeen to thirteen, as opposed to sixteen to thirteen? I'd argue they do. I'd argue it's less than fifty-fifty that they get in. And if they don't, 49ers have the ball and a four-point lead and an opportunity to even go kick a field goal that would make it a seven-point game. And now you're asking Mahomes to do something different. Would he? Score like there's no way. This is the obvious. The whole whole thing is hypothetical, but it changes the dynamics of the decision making the rest of the way in the game. That point, and and so here's the question, and uh, our friend on YouTube, Mike Rotunda, who's who's been with us the whole afternoon today, um, he just asked. So here's the question that you want to ask yourself in this position, and that is this: ask yourself. If he were lining up for a game-winning field goal, how would you feel? We've asked it all year, and we wouldn't feel good. You would not feel confident. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so your score, like Chiefs 23, Niners 21, Jake Moody, 48 yards. Oh, yeah. One second to go, lining up for the kick. You feel good? Absolutely. Yeah. And I, especially the way he kicked yesterday. He had a great game, and he had the PAT blocked, which is not entirely on him. He made a 55-yarder, a 53-yarder, and a 27-yarder in overtime. And that's a pressurized kick in a tie game in overtime of the Super Bowl. And, yes, 27-yarder. 27-yarder. Still. He yanked it. It went through. It went through. Between those two beautiful yellow uprights. So, I mean, the the guy had a PAT blocked, and... Of all the mistakes in the game, that was certainly one of them, and it was costly. Not as costly as the the gaff on the punt, I would argue. That was a oh that was no, more that a was yeah, gaff. that was way worse. That was way worse. Absolutely, it didn't, didn't help though. No, and I if mean, you look at, you could list off. I'm not going to call eight to I, ten mistakes that the Niners made. Yeah, the Chiefs just, made I, some as well. But if you're a kicker, I'm not. I'm not giving you the label. You had a great game when you missed an extra point. I'm just not. Yeah. You got to make all of them. Okay. You got to make the extra. Well, points. I mean, talk to your offensive line who didn't push the Chiefs back at all. They you had four guys with a every, clean a clean jump. Yeah, but you're but you're it's an extra point. Every kicker will tell you that they should be able to elevate a, an extra point up over the line to the, to the point where there's nothing anybody can do about it because you don't have to get distance out of it. You just need to get direction. So you can kick that thing straight up in the air. And uh, and he didn't do it. He hit the middle of the ball. I think that one's on him, and therefore I'm not I'm I'm not going with the label of he had a great game. He had some really nice kicks. He hit some long ones. Those were big. He's got a big leg. He was hitting from 65 in pregame warmups. You know what I mean? He's got all the leg in the world, and 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 the Niners need that. There's no question. Um, I'm not saying I'm going into the draft to replace the guy, but I certainly would do the same thing. In next year's camp that they did this year, remember when Zane Gonzalez right. was there the Zane whole time? Zane Gonzalez, yeah. Is who it was. I, I would have, I would have another kicker there. I would have another kicker there to really challenge him because you can't, like the Chiefs aren't dealing with any of that. Chiefs aren't dealing with any questions. You get that thing inside of sixty yards, it's good. The Eagles aren't dealing with that. The Ravens aren't dealing with that. They got Captain Automatic. 
That's well, the Ravens you, guy might be a Hall of Famer. Not and, might. Well, I mean, you yeah. know how many kickers are in the Hall of Fame? Uh, uh, what is it? One or none? No, Jan Stenrud. Jan Stenrud got in, right? And I think that there's another like George Blanda. He's a kicker, but, yeah, but he made it in yeah. as an everything. Uh, Morton Anderson. Mm. I'll look it up. Vinatieri's going to get in. Adam Vinatieri, I believe, will get in. But Justin Tucker likely will get in. The reason why you got a new kicker is because your old kicker couldn't make it from outside of 50. So Morton. now you have a guy. Morton is in. Morton's in. 2017. Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Now you have a guy who can actually boom it from outside of 50. Yes, so, you do. Yes, you do. I mean, if you want it, if you want to get a new kicker. No, then, but I want to challenge him. I'm bringing in a second kicker for camp. That's for fine. Sure. Challenge him. For sure. I mean, push him. You use third-round capital to bring this guy in. Yep. And he had a good rookie year. And I think he had a good game yesterday. Three, two big, big, long field goals and Dog. one in overtime. I know. Dog. But, I know. You're but being it, a little harsh on the kicker, I think. Well, I mean, I, I don't think I am. To ask a kicker to make extra points, I do not think is harsh. In a dome. That's a, that, like, that, you... <laughs> That's a no from me, dog. You 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 cannot miss that in the Super Bowl. You cannot miss that and have me still say, "Atta babe, you had a great game." There is no two ways about it. I can't firmly state it, but there is no two ways about it. They might have won the game if he makes that kick. And they might have. They might have won. That changes the entire dynamic coming down the stretch, especially yeah. since the Chiefs. Tied it twice with a field goal. I think twice. it'd be interesting to see what Andy would do fourth and goal from the six on the first field goal that they took to tie I mean, the game. I mean, they still got almost six minutes left. A guy that's going to go for two in overtime if they, in a scenario where both teams score a touchdown, is the kind of guy that with five minutes left down by four at the six-yard line is going for it. I think he's going for it. I already had this debate. It's a baby. I had this debate. Lovely Christy yesterday was like, "You're not going for it." He would kick the field goal. Like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know about that at all. Because um, if you're looking at that as Andy Reid, and you've had the Chiefs defense play a pretty good game, I'm gonna like go for it. And if you don't get it, well, the Niners are at the six yard line, and you'd probably pre- feel pretty good that you're gonna get the ball back, put it in Mahomes' hands with another shot at it. But a field goal? Field goal, now I'm down one. Yeah. And the Niners get the ball, but they get the ball out at the 25. And all the, like, now the clock is in their hands. Clock, 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 clock. The clock's in their hands. In theory, they could run it all the way down, which, by the way, they almost did. Almost. God, if they come out of that two-minute warning and get that first down. They're going to win that game. Yeah. That's another play we haven't even talked about. Hey, really quickly, guys, yeah. do you want to hear some uh, Twitter drama going on right now with the uh, Niners? I do. Yeah. So uh, the, we talked about this play earlier when we were on 95-7 the game, but um, it was the third and four in overtime uh, where Chris Jones ran free at Brock Purdy and it was an incomplete to Jawan Jennings. Yes. Someone posted a clip of that video saying Colton McKivitz has one of the best players in the game lined up in front of him and decides to give him a free run to Brock Purdy. Jonathan Feliciano quote tweeted it. He was the starting right guard for the Niners. Uh, actually replaced Spencer Burford midseason but got hurt in this game. Correct. Uh, Burford came in 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 replacing Feliciano who, when he went down. Feliciano quote tweeted the tweet essentially calling out McKivich, the right tackle, and said, I know you all know, so you should know that's not Colton's guy. A fan responds uh, and kind of asks him, asks him to es- explain whose guy was it. Uh, and he says, uh, if the guy that was supposed to block him blocks him, it's not a problem. Spencer Burford responds to Feliciano because he's clearly calling him out and says, sheesh, I open up my app to this. Get well soon, bro. Dot, dot, dot. Wow. It was, okay. it was Burford. We've the, been saying yeah, Brendel. We've been saying Brendel. Brendel's the center. He's 64. Burford's 74. I'm and, looking at the play right now from Baldy's Twitter. Yeah, let me let me first apologize to Jake Brendel yeah. because we've used his name about eight times today in this. Yeah. And uh, and I, it's funny that you bring that, and I'm glad you did, Grandy. Good job, Grandy. Well, we did it about eight times, and about an hour and a half ago, I went back and I go, I know 74 is Burford, and I'm looking at Burford, and 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 you and I had talked about Brendel, yeah. and there's no way to know which one was supposed to go right. We just knew one of them, one of them was supposed to, and I wasn't sure, and because of that, 
Like, I'll just speak for me. My bad. No, like, my I bad feel, too. feel terrible that we've been bringing up Jake Brendel's name all day because now there's people who aren't listening anymore and they went off to their day to tell their friends. Willard and Dibbs say that Jake Brendel cost right, the Niners right. the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, it was Burford. Burford. But the bigger issue is infighting, Niner on Niner crime on social media here. Yeah. And uh, as mentioned previously, John Feliciano, unrestricted free agent. So I don't know if he comes back in this uh, in this scenario, Mark, when you're you're calling out your your former teammate, your possibly future teammate. And I'm looking at the play right now from Baldy's breakdowns at Baldy NFL. And it's clear that Burford needed to go right. McKivitz, McKivitz is waiting there for the edge rusher. And if Burford would have gone to the right, he picks up one of the two pass rushers. He probably picks up Jones, and then you've got the the safety who's coming later. Purdy would have enough time to get that pass off if Burford would have gone the correct way. Hey, uh, Grandy, did you say this was on Instagram or Twitter? No, it's on Twitter. Well, I'm looking at Burford's feed right now, and I don't see anything. Uh, click on replies because he was oh, replying replies, to a tweet. Replies, 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 yeah. replies. Yeah. You'll eventually see it there. Um, I know you all know, so you should know that's not Colton's guy. A quick chop is not needed if the guy that was supposed to block him blocks him. There's Spencer. Sheesh. I open up my app to this. Get well soon, bro. Wow. <laughs> That's not good. That's not good. Yeah. Yeah, Feliciano threw Burford under the bus. And here's an issue. How, however, Spencer, however, you know, sometimes, like, and I know this is a thing. Offensive linemen never get attention until they do something wrong, and that sucks. However, the other thing is Kyle Shanahan and Brock Purdy have been taking bullets all day, all day, and will all off season. And let's be real, dude. That plays on you. Like, sometimes offensive linemen also get protected because our eyes as fans, we don't know. We're just like, oh, that Purdy guy overthrew Jennings. And Shanahan, he turtled up again. No, no, he actually schemed two wide receivers wide the bleep open, and Spencer Burford whiffed and went the wrong way. And the Niners might have won the Super Bowl if he hadn't. Interesting so. uh, retweet from Spencer Burford uh, from Paisano Sports. Former UTSA offensive lineman Spencer Burford in Super Bowl 58. Zero sacks allowed, zero penalties, one touchdown saving block. Yeah. Spencer Burford one retweeted whiff. that. One whiff. They forgot that part. Yeah. Turns out it wasn't a sack that he allowed. It was a it was a free runner who disrupted a, a touchdown that would have occurred. So that was left out of the retweet. Anyway, I thought that was an interesting, that uh, is interesting. retweet. But I don't like this. I don't like this at all. What, the back and forth? Yeah. Well, I, what it tells me is that John Feliciano is going to be playing for another team next year because Spencer Burford, fourth-round pick in 2022, I don't think he's going anywhere well, unless they choose to cut him. But look at but look at where John starts. Jonathan Feliciano starts with, I, I'm, I'm here to actually pick up for my guy, Colton McKivitz. Yeah. Because Colton McKivitz is getting torched on Twitter, and John's like, that's not... That's not his. That's not his guy. Not his guy. That's not his guy. And then there's a discussion, the back and forth about, you know, about what was supposed to happen, and that's where Feliciano, in my opinion, should have ducked out. I'm not getting into this any further. I'm just telling you that's not Colton's guy. There's your answer. But Instead, a quick shot. Yeah. Now, now here's where Spencer goes wrong. Feliciano, a quick chop is not needed if the guy that was supposed to block him blocks him. Uh oh. Well, he didn't say your name. Well, pa you and I have been on. talking about Brendel all day. We wouldn't have known. We were we, we were wouldn't just have using known. the wrong name. But well, we knew who it was. It was the right guard. Okay, but the the world is not going to be like, well, that definitely Burford. Who knows? Right. John is simply saying, get off of Colton. <laughs> Get off of him. Yeah. And Burford 
gotten his feelings. This stinks. See, I hate this. This is part of what social media. If I'm an athlete, like I had a hard time getting yeah. off there last night, and who cares about anything that I think or say? Steve, do we lose you? I mean, if I'm on these teams after a big loss, good God, throw the phone in the ocean. Steve Kerr got off of Twitter for that very reason. You know, the it's just a cesspool of negativity, and I'm with you in terms of, you know, if I was a pro athlete playing in a game oh, like that and you had your crowd. heart broken, dude. No thanks. It's gonna be it's gonna be a no for me, dog. Friend of a friend. Uh Whoop. yeah, friend of a friend. I, I like I heard this just through kind of a you know pipeline, but like this is somebody who's in locker rooms. Let's just put it that way. They're in locker rooms. Whoop, whoop. And they're 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 Does share- his name rhyme with Barry <laughs> Mooger? <laughs> no? no. Okay. <laughs> I had to get one in there. Oh, no. Hi, Barry Mooger here. Stop whopping me. No, not him. Okay. No, I mean in the locker room when the media is not around. Stop this whopping not a, me. This is not a media you. person. Stop whooping this me. This is somebody who actually gets to see the players in their element. Okay. Let me just tell everybody this. I think this is important for our listeners to hear. Maybe you know this already. Maybe you don't care. Um, the social media thing, the social media thing is heavy like what do you mean the social media thing when players come off that field they are no different than what we do when our of course. when our alarm goes off you've got nba they players who do it at halftime they don't go to the shower they don't take their shoes off they don't call mom they don't call wife they don't if they're a giant they don't take the hat off their head they do the same thing you and i do when we wake up in the morning <laughs> phone and if you just blew a save or missed a block or missed a three-pointer at the buzzer, what's on your social media, and I, like, it'd be the, the Tuesday night and the Brewers are in town in April. They're like, it, it, it's just death threats and commentary and cussing and all, I mean, everything that has isms at the end of it. Yeah. Discrimination. I mean, it's bad. It's bad, and they're addicted just like we all are. So, I don't know. PSA number 8 billion as far as this thing that we all talk about over and over. Yeah. Don't do that. Stay off of Twitter. No, but don't do that. Don't fire shots. Death threats? Just Or or anything. I better scrub my feed. Just like, if you want to be upset about the game, be upset about the game and share that. But, like... And you can name names. It's pro sports. But don't tweet directly to them and be like, bro, I'm drunk and you should die. Like, Ooh, good boy, God. Yeah. I just, what do we do? I need to clean up my feed. I just sent a couple things to old Spencer Burford. <laughs> <laughs> you couldn't, you couldn't Spence, hold Brindle's Spence, jock. Spence, Spence has got, Spence. Spence has got one. He's got 20% of the followers that you and I have. Man. Spence. A little offensive lineman on the right side. Shoot. I mean, he did cost the Niners the Super Bowl, but other than that... Sure, sure. I don't know. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, dude. You want to watch the Warrior game? I kind of do. All right. Hey, everybody who... like, I, We see those numbers. Everybody who hung with us on Twitch and YouTube, yeah, thank, thank you. Yeah, thank you. That's very, very cool. Odyssey app listeners, what's up, okay? Um, look, it's been a, uh, that's been a tough 24 hours. And obviously not done yet. I actually have a feeling that this uh, Feliciano Burford thing probably going to come up on the show tomorrow. But we've also got a Warrior game to check out. And uh, we look forward throughout the weeks to come to start reincorporating uh, Warrior hoops. Uh, Farhan will make a move. I feel great about it. Let's go. Here we go. Uh, he Tiger's might, playing this week. Might even Damn make it, two. Carhartt. Yep, Tiger. Tiger is going to uh, going to play, but we're also going to be working through this all off season. Yeah, there's there's no way around that. Combine so. two weeks from today. Can't wait. Yeah, I can. <laughs> uh, you want to do it again tomorrow? I do. Okay. Uh, over to the Warrior game on uh, 95.7 The game, Odyssey app, all of it for Dibs, for Lucas, for Grandy. I'm Mark. Uh, shoot your shot. That's all you got. NBA's Washington Wizards and the NHL's Washington Capitals to relocate to Northern Virginia.